Oh my goodness, we could very well be live. Uh, wow, say that sounds excellent. Wholesome. Um, no. uh, gosh, um, I'm trying to think of something, but right now all I all I can think of is hate. Well, that's, that I'm sounds just like a hate you problem, machine, buddy. Sounds like a I'm you just problem. churning out irate takes on these movies that we're forced to watch. Why'd you gotta do against it? our wills? Yeah, true. All right, so the only um, thing left is to list that we're this. Forced yep, to watch. we're definitely live. That's good. Are are we? Because I can't see. You I can't see it either. I said it's not listed yet, but we're live. All right. Okay. Now oh. it should be listed, or at least in a couple seconds from now. Oh, listed, excellent. Unlisted. Bloody wonderful. Delisted. Yep. Blacklisted. Not allowed to say that anymore. Um, expensive. Listed. Blacklisted. Mm-hmm. Well, how else am I going to keep track of my slaves? Do you know what I told Jay about the, the blind playthrough one from Twitch, and he thought I was joking? And I was like, no, 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 for real. And he was like, yeah, that sounds like a meme, though. Like, were they serious? And I was like, yes, they were serious. And he was like, <laughs> oh. You can't, you can't say blind playthrough, because all those Twitch watchers who are blind are going to get really upset about it. I Expect some so. angry emails. The problem is that if a blind person sends you an email, all it's going to say is... <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You can here. touch type. So if you went blind, you could send a very good email. If, if I, if I suppose, if I went blind, I could probably do yeah, all so right. Yeah, so there's a chance how I would the get blind to. Moon. Maybe someone would probably have to set it up for me. They'd have to like click on the places and say, "Okay, you're now typing," so you can you go. You're on an email, but maybe they put in the wrong address, so they like, play jokes on you, like convincing deaf people that when you get an erection, it makes a sound. <laughs> what? <laughs> he goes bloop. I think that would disturb them. Well, now that we've offended those two groups. Yes. Three. Um, well, I was going to say three disabled groups, the blind, uh, the deaf, and Zack Snyder fans. Oh. So now that we've gotten oh, that out of the way, dude, we as can As if there was ever proceed. any hope of Zack Snyder fans having anything to do with us, ever. Yeah, at least if you're blind, it, it maybe it's possible Jesus walks by, spits in the mud, and rubs it in your eyes, you know, and you can see again. <laughs> But if you're a Zack Snyder <laughs> fan, you're just you're just out of luck. Like I don't, I don't think there's any any help for you. If Zack Snyder spits in the mud and rubs it in your eyes. Um, it's oh wait, what? What the hell happened to you, Rags? On my I just like is it me? Yeah, <laughs> he was stabbed. Fucking teleported to. You know what? We're not even in Singapore. That's the problem. <laughs> Let's go to Singapore, everybody. Get your travel gear. And there we go. Here we are in Singapore. The singing pole. Singing it's singing funny. pole is uh that's I I oh um Fiddler oh, on the shit. Roof. That was a movie about singing pole. I just realized the uh the thumbnail's inaccurate. It it baited the idea of metal being here. Oh no. I'm so fucking sorry me. about that. You know I'm going to change that on I fly. can hear everybody leaving the stream. Well, yeah, that's it really. <laughs> Um, you also don't have Theo's name in in the title. You know what? I'm going to correct all of that while we talk, and I'm going to pretend Dale. this is all the intro and that it was planned. Oh, yeah. how are you guys Dale. doing? Oh. I'm doing okay. Hey, you, know what, you know what's cool? Uh, Southport and Theo being here when they're both chat people who who ended up being yeah. dragged onto the stream in their intros, and now they're both on an episode. Drug. Have you guys been on an episode before? I can't remember. Like together? Yeah, yeah I think it was the uh, Last of Us Two one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we covered <laughs> Cosmonaut. 50 and 100, that I think. No, that was a thing. Yeah. Theo 1 and Theo 2. Yep. Well, um, Don't guess which is which. You'll and lose. I'm the cat in the hat. So, chat, I'm, I'm gonna here believe it, for shenanigans. But I will tell them the truth regardless. I, uh, we Metal very tuck it out from the streaming of the Halo, I assume, from last night. And he didn't get uh, quite the right sleep, so he can't make it. But just so happens that Theo unprovoked watched bvs yesterday or something so um he's master a sleep. and you said you remembered it really well like you know back to front at this point yeah yeah i paid very close attention to it excellent while I was watching yeah. as you know yeah. justice league is definitely or sorry not uh batman vs superman is definitely not the kind of movie you fall asleep halfway no. through because oh. it's so fucking boring <laughs> Funny, like I don't even. I feel like I might have told you this before. I probably haven't, but um, uh, you know, Smiler. One a funny gag that we had running with him was like, whenever a new DCU movie came out back in the day, I would be like, I want to see it because I want to see how the DCU is doing. 
and he'll be like, uh, Wonder Woman, he fell asleep before the trench part. Um, and I was like, oh well. And I told him about what happened in the third act. I remember laughing a lot while explaining it. Uh, Man of Steel, I don't think he got past like the first half an hour before like falling asleep. And then Batman vs Superman, I remember, is just like uh, 10 minutes after the jelly bean thing, or the Jolly Rancher, um, that he was like snoring on microphone. Um, oh, the Jolly Rancher thing happened, yeah, fuck. Like, he legit so, has fallen asleep to most of the DCEU, it's quite impressive. Or does least... he does he fall asleep normally at your house? Does he just, does he have a troubled <laughs> well, home no, life only one and of he just goes to your person. place to get some sleep? Only one of these was in person, the other two were on Discord. Oh. <laughs> he just, oh, I guess. just considers the DCU boring as fuck. I, just, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, amusing, though. And It's a fair reaction. All right. Um, I can totally believe people would fall says, asleep. Where did these. you sleep? On a farm? <laughs> Good news, everybody. The BVS EFAP movies is is kicking around. It's almost ready to go. Um, and hopefully, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but to be honest with you, continuity-wise, all of you in chat, you, you, you're too early, okay? This stream is going to be best enjoyed after seeing our coverage of the EFAP movies, and I might try and release these so that that matches up. Like... When this is on Moolah, this might actually, in continuity, be after the release of the EFAP movies for BVS, because it'll work w well, because we'll, um, we'll have developed our arguments by now, I'd say. I Oller, certainly have. You mean, you mean to say that we're too early, kind of like the Flash was in yeah, BVS? Yeah, chat is Flash, going, you have to say, Lois, Lois is the key, you were right about <laughs> Superman, I'm not going to tell you what I mean by that, I'm just going to say you were right. Lois Fear is the him. key. I like how it's as <laughs> ominous as possible without being specific at all. Yeah. Well, supposedly Batman. the Snyder Cut's going to show Batman sending uh, the Flash back in time to do that scene. Yeah, but which, oh, that's, that's going to be serious. hilarious. <laughs> it's going to be hilarious seeing uh, Batfleck uh, go to the Flash and be like, all right, here's what you have to do. You have to, to go back in time, and if you if you arrive too early, you have to you know talk in the most cryptic, vague, <laughs> ominous way possible and not be specific in any way, shape, or form. Batman and says And you just to need him, to tell him that what he already believes is true. So. He just tells uh, the Flash, he's like, right, so the problem was I accidentally killed Lois and he went nuts. So tell him. Oh my goodness. That, uh, tell me, rather. Do not protect Lois Lane at all costs because Superman's going to lose his shit if she dies. Say that, okay? And say you might have to kill him, I guess. I don't know what the plan is, well, but yeah, make sure you do all that. Like he pops forward and I... then pops back and then says, yeah, I did it. I think he got it. I feel like, honestly, if I was Bat future Batman, and it's like, oh, Lo he goes insane when Lois dies, it's like, hmm, maybe we should put him down. <laughs> well, like, it was really. actually, as I was making that joke, I was like, damn, this is good, actually. The yeah. uh, the idea that if you kill Lois, he just fucking wants to kill everyone, that's, ooh. It's that's not good, he's a really right? bad that's person. Less than ideal. Not entirely out of limits, though, for what we've seen of these fucking <sighs> people in this world. He must have learned some really weird morals and principles from his farm. parents, whoever they were. Yeah. I like how we have to ignore Justice League, because I was about to say, like, doesn't sound like the kind of guy that would also say, I'm a big fan of justice. Every morning, Ew. I have a big bowl of justice. I don't know, it's, I, I think it's hilarious. Uh, and, and I love it, but... Yeah, so up to date, we have all seen up to Justice League, and we've got Aquaman mm -hmm. next, right? You know, on through. Monday. Yep. Meanwhile, um, as people might be wondering, you know what, EFAP, why, why, why do the EFAP movies and an EFAP podcast? Why, why do it on the same topic? What's the point of that? Well, this is to properly discuss and lay it out. The EFAP movies themselves, you get a. It's people a didn't say that experience. about TLJ. Oh, I mean, I don't think they would say it about this even. I'm sort of just trying to justify that. I decided. If there are people out there who say to rewatch Batman vs Superman in my free time, I know, why? crazy. And my goodness, do I have things to talk about. We're probably not going to get... I think we'll try and do this the same way we did Man of Steel, where I will bring up different things at different times. We'll try and get through lots of different things. Uh, maybe even over more than just the one EFAP. I don't even know. And then, I wouldn't mind talking to you guys once again about our listings, because my god, does it fluctuate. Uh, and, and ones that are rising to the top feel like they shouldn't be rising to the top. And yet, <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> Um, wait, you know what, Theo, do you have a ranking for, um, up to Justice League, so, uh, where you place Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84, uh, uh Man of Steel, Man of Steel, BBS, BBS and Justice, Justice League. League. And Suicide Squad. 
Oh, oh yeah, right. that's too. How do you, how do you what write a selection? <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow, spoiled for choice as to what goes in that. They're all bad. They're all really <laughs> yeah. bad. Uh, I don't know that I remember any of them well enough to differ- differentiate how bad they are, other than that maybe Justice League is in a league of its own oh. in bad terms. I it might, be in a it might very well be yeah. I agree, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> Ominous laugh and Theo's just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you think Justice League's probably right. the worst? Well, Suicide Squad exists, so... So that's the worst? Yes. And then, who who's third from the bottom, then? Justice League? Oh, I thought, wait, so it goes, at the bottom is Suicide Squad, then... Oh, right. At the bottom is Suicide Squad, then Justice League, probably. Uh-huh. Uh, and then... Who the fuck knows, man? I don't know. <laughs> I, no, hate I don't blame you. It's a tough one. They're all so terrible. Yeah, they're not um, great. Yeah. They're all really bad. Yeah, I suppose this feels uh, this is gonna have to be myself and Southpaw trying to tell this story because I got um, all I've got is the when we did the Filmento video, uh, the title had Filmento and Twin Perfect in it because the plan was to cover both of them. But then, and I know this is gonna shock you guys, it took us a long time to get through the first video. Yeah. Yeah. The silence is shock right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we decided we'd do a second one. And as I said at the beginning of the recording, for several reasons, first and foremost. Um, being like a, a timeline thing, as well as a uh, copyright thing, as well as uh, trying to catch up and keep up just with everything else that's going on, and we probably well, don't don't lie, Mahler. You also said that you didn't want to have to read out super chats at the end as well. I mean, if, if well, this is the thing. I still have super chats to catch up on, um, but I'm also trying yeah, to. I mean, it's perfectly in... okay to admit it, though. Well, I'm I'm trying to chalk away on the uh, the boys video while also juggling the, uh, the the movie recordings, which we have like two separate things going on for getting them done biweekly with with timelines, and then there's obviously Batwoman, and I was like, it makes more sense if we just do one offline. I can pop it out whenever, and there's no uh, you know worry about having to to do a, a ten or eleven hour one because it's it's usually preferable to do just one of those per week alongside two two hour to three hour recordings for movies and a Batwoman one. So, yeah, well, and it, and it's not like we have never done pre-recorded EFAPs before. Yeah, we've we're done... not breaking the mold by doing this. And and uh, I was about to say we're probably going to do one for BVS because today this this will be a nice chunky EFAP. We might do another one of them because the next EFAP is going to be off DCU and then it'll be back on with um. Wait, what's the th- is it Suicide Squad we're on to then? No. Yes. Wait. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, we'll right. probably, yeah, I feel like we'll need, I'll have to find, like, one video defending Suicide Squad because we did not think it was good. Huge shock. I'm happy to. <laughs> Shocker, to yeah. Stifle your collective gasping. And so that's kind of how I was planning on doing, uh, uh, planning on doing this arc. I figured that's, that's the best way to work it. And then I discover, because I guess I was just so taken away with our coverage of Filmento, that Twin Perfect was in our chat while we were, uh, covering Filmento. And he had a different idea for why we ended up recording his offline rather than reacting to it live. Um, I don't know what else I should say rather than just passing it over at this point. So, folks, you seem to know better of what happened next. Um, well, so I, I looked in uh, Mahler's server, uh, I think the day after the... Uh, well, it was either the day of or the day after the, uh, I guess, EFAP 124 premiered. And a fellow called Verdad uh, leaked some screenshots <gasps> from the server that he is in with Twin Perfect. The scandal. Um, and so, wait, you, wait, calling it leaked is like it's all like, ooh, it's it's leaked. It's uh, it's secret. It's fine. Secret he he server. posted screenshots of Twin Perfect server. Uh, Twin Perfect himself, also known as Rossiter, Rossiter. I I don't know how to fuck to pronounce that. He um he basically was talking about it on a server. Uh, people were telling him that hey efap covered your video they 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 uploaded an efap today where they covered your video and he found out oh it's pre-recorded so yeah this um, video was really bad it was really bad yeah it was it really, was really painful was, like, one of it the was, worst we've covered i'd say it was really funny too it, <laughs> like lots of the it, it, was, it was it was funny in a desperate kind of way i feel like it made for a very strong uh, efap offline sort of thing and i think people enjoyed it quite oh, a bit. I enjoyed yeah it quite a bit it was a blast as a listener mm-hmm um and yeah, and it just sort of, it, I think it further cemented Man of Steel as one of the worst fucking movies 
in superhero as a genre. Like it, it does easily. It's, it's probably worse than like stuff like Catwoman and Daredevil from back in the day, which everyone shits on. Like I guarantee you, we well, would find me... less wrong with those movies than we would with Man of Steel. Let me ask you this: Would you consider the Resident Evil movies superhero movies? Oh. <laughs> Nothing makes any sense in those movies. <laughs> well, nothing makes sense in the DCEU. Alice so. is my favorite mm. superhero. True. Um, superhero. Um, I, well, I, I'm not, I don't want to say that. I'm not going to say superhero because they never make anything about her being like, it's not like an identity politics thing. She's just a fucking amazing. But I'm, I've seen I think most people just call them zombie movies rather than superhero movies, right? That's, that's all right. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I stand. I could see it either way. I don't, you know. Super zombies. Know. Yeah. There's, I also saw someone in chat I mentioned a while ago. Shazam was okay, mm -hmm. and the first Wonder Woman is average. So no, no. no. <laughs> no. Um, I'm very sorry. I think sorry the Overton to... window of cinematic quality is um, askew. I I am so sorry, guys, but Shazam is not that good, and you're gonna see in a few weeks. Tr trust us, okay? Well, We're gonna <laughs> more that Wonder Woman isn't average. It's like pretty terrible. It's pretty oh yeah, awful, yeah, yeah. Wonder Woman's it's, bad. It's it's pretty bad, and yet it still might be the best DCEU movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's demonized. Yeah, it's, it's, it might, yeah. might be. There might be another one. Oh yeah. So a screenshot the the one I guess I don't know. It says very conveniently pre-recorded, considering I was in their chat last week. They don't want me there. They want to make fun of me. So I want yeah. you here, man. Come on, so, please. Yeah, um, <laughs> number we one. Talk, we can talk about your horseshit video live. That's Come fine on, with me. When... I did, also, I didn't know that you were in the chat. There's a lot of people in the chat. I didn't know you're not so special that you're chat, like, like nerf actively. I, and besides, like this is the thing we have like things with this when we're like busy watching um, people's videos. Them them coming on is never like a guarantee. Often, t like remember with the uh, internet janitor, we will just like come back again, and he did. Like when we knew that was an interesting uh, <laughs> sequence of events. But, so, I, um, I just well, want to say, by the way, like we are all really qualified to uh, argue much hotter takes on media than Man of Steel being bad. Uh, not even a hot like, it shouldn't it, even it, be a hot take. No, yeah, it shouldn't even be a hot <laughs> no, take. No, what I'm saying is, like, you guys are capable of arguing that Knives Out is bad. I'm capable of, of you know, arguing Spider Man Two is bad. Uh, but like, Man of Steel is going to be nothing for us. It's super easy to take down that movie. Well, so we wouldn't have an issue with debating him if you were to come on. Like, Twin Perfect, if you want to come on right now, come on in. Well, what was it yeah, that sure. Twin Perfect um, said that three skyscrapers that Superman was directly responsible for destroying <laughs> were probably... <laughs> His defenses yeah. were hilarious. And the they were kind is, of funny. It was but, funny, yeah. Before I carry on with, with, with what he said here... um. I'm really looking forward to covering him today because I saw we're watching part three of his defenses. We're not doing all three because we can't do them because the the panel here is most interested in someone trying to defend Lex Luthor's motivation because that's hilarious as a concept for that movie. Um, now um, I watched the other two in prep just in case there was anything continuity wise we're gonna miss, and there was some things that he said that I just want to show everyone here in a different video. It's gonna be really funny. Um, Keep that in mind, and the previous video we covered in mind when you see some of the other things he says in a minute, but... Oh yeah, um, what I was gonna say was that, uh, when you try and define... Foreshadowing. When you try and... Is the word divine a motivation? Like, like, figure out a motivation, um... Usually you word? could, yeah. like a divining rod. I suppose you could, but yeah, ascertain, I, maybe, might be a... Yeah, yeah, there's probably better words. Uh, when you're trying to figure out a motivation, you usually rely on just, you know, fucking past choices. Now... Have we ever had a video creator on while covering a video when it comes to EFAP? Has that happened just the once? Twice? Um, Over 20 I'm times I'm thinking it's happened... I'm thinking it's happened before. We're pretty thinking on board so. with it. And um, I would actually say yeah. that I am more eager to have someone come on to defend those movies than most of the things we covered before. Yeah, because these are this is a baffling position, kind of like it's kind of it, it's amazing. Like, I feel bad for you a little bit. I need um, to know. Yeah, uh, I sort of do. What else we got here? Like, right. I want to know the person who likes these movies. I want to know what movies you think are good. We have to try and establish some kind of a like a, what our scale is. I do. I do wonder if it is like hardcore copium because. Like yes. the MCU for all of its flaws well, is still on average a lot more 
like reliable than the DCEU. So if you like these DC characters a lot, and this is like the quali- the caliber of the films, you know, <laughs> like it's they have not a pretty good defense though. For you. you didn't understand it. I I do like that we've now we're in a world now <laughs> where these movies are really smart. Um, despite it's just, being it's so basic. edgy. Like the idea that this this kid submits his scraggly scrapbook with this edgy story about. Batman shooting people through the face and going like, me, do you bleed? He's like, this is, uh, I also read Plato's Republic. <laughs> so yeah, like, oh. <laughs> That's what smart kids do, right? They read Plato's Ew. symbolism as well. Like, hey, look, Jesus, isn't that clever? It's like, nah. <laughs> it really isn't. Everybody um, does that. So yeah, he said, uh, I'm not going to respond. My policy is I talk about things I like and other people can talk about me. It's like, okay. He said, and hearing their level of discourse, their talk isn't worth much anyway. So, all right. I, I thought you. <laughs> okay. I thought you said that they don't. That we don't want you to come. What? Which is it? Um. And they said, yeah, already bored. Just can't bring the bands. Efab can bring the bands, mate. We fucking that's, that's, that's what Efab's half about, right? Is banter and then film yeah. criticism. Okay. Two K losers. That's you, chat. How do you feel? <laughs> He's oh, talking about us. losers. He's talking about way you. more than this. Way more he than just 2, called out chat. chat. We have way more losers than that. Why? Yeah. Why? Um, <laughs> have you ever noticed that there's like a weird attitude with some people where they're like, "Lol, easy content. Yuck, yuck. Look at me, how smart I am." Yeah, I hope you. I hope you dislike it. That just means they get more algorithm. I get engagement. more money <laughs> and more, more ad clicks. It's like, yeah, I get you? four extra cents if everyone in the universe hates my video. <laughs> I'm just... the real winner. Why? Why? Why losers? Like, what? what because we responded to your video. Like, all right, we'll be okay. I mean, we lost valuable time in our lives. Yeah, well, that's, you know what? I think true. it was funny yeah. as hell that he made the video, so like, I'm, I'm cool with it. I think it was funny. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've managed to make sure chat haven't missed the point here. Losers, that's you. The arrows could be chunkier on light shot, but I do what I can with the tools I am provided. Um, you should draw words, that arrows. Arrow. Draw like a bunch of really crazy looking arrows. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm giving it a listen now. The rebuffs haven't been very good so far. Imagine. Imagine thinking Imagine. that the rebuffs to... I mean, Superbad only blew up a couple buildings. <laughs> Why? It was Sorry. an incident of damage. It was, Sorry, I, it was I, an incident of damage. It's, I didn't quite you know. appreciate this comment. 2K losers can enjoy them dumping on someone they oh. don't know who was willing to chat with them last week's stream. I'll be over here enjoying my tune. You... Man, I what is it know with you. people? I don't want to actually. What is it with people who being so obsessed with views? Look at my views over here with my views. What's what? Like this is not a reliable way of just being happy in life. Like I gotta tell you, what's, well, it's yeah, really it gives me clout with which I can try and flex on people. And it looks kind of impotent and you know. Yeah, but I don't even understand like this line of criticism. The whole like enjoy them dumping on someone they don't know was willing to chat with them. I'm still what, super. Why cool would that play you, into like, it at all? We didn't know. Yeah. Wait, it's like two it's, once again, he's ago, talking he about that, something he doesn't know anything about. And two comments ago, he said that my policy is that I talk about things I like and other people can talk about me. That's a weird policy. And also, I'm willing to talk to them about but it. But they're also losers. It's not a policy. But they're also losers. I didn't yeah. like the idea that, that he has a policy book and it's just one page and it's <laughs> that. <laughs> I also, it's, it's a whole book with like a hundred pages, but only the first one has anything on yeah, it. Yeah, the rest is blank. I also Just that sentence. It's not lost on me. It's an open invite for them to come and have a real discussion if they're feeling uncowardly. Alright, calm down, buddy. <laughs> I mean, here we are, yeah. yeah. I don't think we have- we don't have much to prove, and we're not so insecure that we feel the need to prove it to some Randy on YouTube who makes shitty superhero movies. And yeah, we're really- we're really not bothered, plus, just so we we're are, clear. We're, we are talk very... about, like, really- Oh, like... go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, talk about, like, really bad faith assumptions of our motives for uploading it, like, pre-recorded. <laughs> I just would have thought by now we, we would have had enough of a reputation to not, certainly not be the ones that considered like, oh, EFAB always backing down from a discussion. It's like, yeah, that... They like, never talk to people. Like, uh, with the... I remember when we were covering the janitor on EFAB 100, he wanted to come on at, like, that day, but we just couldn't make time for him, so we made time for him for a later EFAP. 
Yeah, that's like the only oh, allegedly. allegedly. And that only happened because uh, it was it was like the fucking episode 100 and Wolf was there. It was just like, yeah, this is just bad timing. I'm sorry. Look, guys, he would have been perfectly happy to talk to us, except that his policy is that he doesn't respond to criticisms, but also <laughs> your criticisms were bad. And also, you know, if you actually want to talk and be uncowardly, I'm willing to talk, but I don't really talk to people, <laughs> but I'm willing to talk if you want to come talk. That's like, a That's like the logic of a Zack Snyder movie. Throw out, you know, an answer from every possible angle, then, you know, he's you've said everything. all of it, yeah. Yeah, he's throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. So then this last one. Hey, Muller's alright. I'm sure the followers are reasonable as well. And then it shows Mac from chat. I hope you're not here right now, because I don't think you can handle this public <laughs> shaming. I don't know if Mac can oh, deal no, with this. Mac. He's not here. He's there not here. Poor Mac. Mac, look away. There are people who unironically think <laughs> Man of Steel is better than Civil War. So that is hilarious as a statement, but they consider this embarrassing to say. That is pretty funny. Which is uh, funny to me. Could that's amazing. Imagine, could you imagine watching, like, Superman float out of the ship with his arms out like Jesus, and then watch <laughs> what happens in like, Civil War where characters are informed and they have a history and the world is starting to change based on their actions, and it's all ramping up to a big climax between two really good friends who are, their, you know, their friendship is forever damaged, or at least it would have been if Endgame was good. Um, but then, <laughs> and, then, and then, like, you watch that and you're like, oh, well, I mean, it's obvious, right? Man of Steel, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it obviously, it was Man of Steel. Did you not see Space Jesus? Did you not see it? He was right there. I, he took I the like the screen. idea that you're what watching. embarrassing imagery. Yeah, no, it's hilarious. <laughs> no, this is a movie for adults. That's why it's so subtle. <clears throat> um, and yeah, I, I guess uh, it, it, this this kind of comparison, like Man of Steel's War, like for me, I'm just like, oh, the, it's it's like you you're telling me the spoon is better for chopping down trees than the axe, and I'm just like, yeah, I, I got, I can't even see, even vaguely how like, they come close. Hey, I just I don't see. get it. And they start smacking the spoon against the tree. It'll work. Shut up. It's smart. <laughs> it just, it I takes... like it. Yeah. Yeah. I like how it's difficult. <laughs> I like. <laughs> it was meant to be that way because yeah, life is that's, a, that's, that's a stylistic whole point. choice. You just don't understand. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm making a crucifix with it because Jesus. <laughs> Guys, please talk about Jared Leto. Jesus, please. <laughs> what is there to say? <laughs> What? It's Jared Leto Joker Jesus, guys. Like, I Look, really Jared Leto Joker like, Jesus. What would picture, Joker do? You guys are gonna get peak Snyder. a fucking five hour long EFAP movies when that that's that's gonna be a really long recording session for Snyder Cut. Only five hours? And Probably. could you imagine? There's gonna be a discussion imagine, afterwards too. Can oh, you yeah. imagine if if it's worse? <laughs> Can you imagine? It, it can, might be. It's not I don't a think thing. it it's will be, but it well, might be. I think, I think I, the big thing that we've taken away from this DCEU uh, EU arc is that there are no foregone conclusions, because I think we all came into it thinking Man of Steel would probably be the best one. And that and like, it's Justice League bottom. would be the worst. Yeah, and that Justice League would be the worst. But is it? Is, is it? Justice League <laughs> the worst? Is it? I, I am banking on the center cut being worse. Lito oh, well, I, well, I meant like yeah. I meant I meant broadly though. Like, do, do we want to have that conversation? Cause well, we bring all... it up. Well, um, we can once, guess. once we've talked a bit about BVS, because BVS is our current uh, number one, right? Sure. Yes, it's, it's either that or Wonder Woman one for me. Mm -hmm. They um, they float around the same area. So I uh, got. We should stream for two hours about that comment. Civil was fucking great. Go ahead, do your own hate stream. You just added one point five hours, man. Content is easy. I so, love when people say that. It's well, I can believe that he happens. thinks content is easy. Well, yeah, I, I can believe that. We're gonna, we're gonna get an example today of what he considers to be, you know, dare I say, easy content. content. Yeah. Ooh, um, yeah, boy. It seems that he has taken the position of becoming like the defender of of. Snyder's movies because he's got Terrible several movies. videos oh my that goodness. get referenced when it's like, oh, you got to see these videos. So it feels good to be back in like <laughs> this. Feels like such a like a comfy space for EFAB where it's like we've got to take someone else has got a popular take that's apparently pretty good. It's completely opposite to ours. Let's check out their references versus ours and let's see how it ends up going. Now, again, like I said, I watched BVS ahead of time because. Uh, on top of the times we've seen it, just to, just to get everything right, and there's way more that's wrong with this film, but um, we'll see if it comes up as as he talks about, uh, you know, what, whatever he's going to talk about. Um, you guys have got the link. Is that is everybody in? Um, yeah, yeah. Let me use the loo really quick, and I'll be right back. No we dive problem. Into this amazing adventure.
Yeah, what we'll do is, um... We'll, I will get that portion ready for you guys first that we're gonna have him uh, talk about, and then we'll jump to his... Something or something, like, the, the demons come from the sky thing, it's like, I guess angels come from, like, the bottom of the earth. Yeah, that's why <laughs> like I said, that I say that in the, the movie's coverage, I'm like, if, if you want to be... The, the, we went over this, it only works yeah. in the specific example, but even then it's confusing. And also, is there any reason why Lex Luthor even knows what parademons are? Not at that point, because he couldn't even have gotten it from the, the stupid Krypton computer. Well, the problem is, the world building in the DCEU is pretty bad, so, like, for some reason there was a massive battle with all of, like, the human tribes that just nobody has ever heard of, nobody wrote it down, it's bigger than the Battle of Hastings, and, like, nobody... They were fucking flying Green Lantern people, and nobody wrote it down, like, and... really, not one person. <laughs> So no, there was a rags. flying Green Lantern in person, not people. It was rags a singular a, Green Lantern. Uh, yeah. Just rags, one, someone suggested just you get a piss jug, by the way. A piss jug? I have one. It's a toilet. I guess, I guess they mean a piss jug. No, it's just it's over a... there. It's over there. So I drink a lot of I drink a lot of water and a lot of tea, which is basically no, no, water. No, 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 no. So no. I have, what? Rags, they're referencing something. What? What do you think they're referencing? Piss, they should they should have said jug? piss jar, not piss jug. Springy, I thought he was talking about Superman when jar? He was demons. Oh, he was, but but at the end yeah, of the yeah, film, yeah. he flips the painting upside down, which is parademons. Because I mean, like, yeah. Springy, we're trying to talk about piss jars. Springy, it's not oh, just sorry. you in this call, you fuck. A reference to <laughs> yes, right. A and, reference and, and, to piss jars. I'm desperate for you. Nobody help him, okay? Piss jars. You were wrong about me. Piss jars, <laughs> because <laughs> this video is a jar of piss. No, it's spe it is specific to the DCU though. Think piss jars, a jar of piss. Hold up, hold up. Oh yes, yes, I remember Granny's peach thing. Yeah, yeah. An actual a, jar of piss. You need one of them I so see. you can survive the stream. I only. see. You need one of those so that you can give it to a U.S. senator and then blow them up <laughs> straight away afterwards. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's something. To, there's more to talk about that in terms of i think i've discovered what the movie wants to be the motivation of him blowing her up by the way um but we, again we, we'll talk about these things again this is this is oh to take goodness. place after our man of steel no sorry bvs efap movie technically so we'll try and only add to that rather than repeat it but you know we'll do what we can everybody uh yeah so this video is number two and it's called the martha controversy and it's about uh batman's motivation Majority of the video is talking about how it's okay that Batman's killing people and that this vision is okay because of, and he references the comics as well, he's like, there's visions in the comics that do blah blah blah, so you guys should chill out. A lot of the arguments are simply, I don't like Batman being like this. Which is just not really what I'm interested in. Um, that, that'll be a surprise for Twin Perfect. he probably thinks that we're going to roll out comic arguments. But we won't. I, I've, I've never, I don't even know what comic are. This is... Um, and so, I was listening to it, I was doing some, some getting some things ready, and then I heard some arguments, and I was oh, like, you know God. what, you guys have got to hear these two. So like I said, this is him going through different arguments, he's about to present one and then counter it, and uh, we'll play this for a little mm -hmm. bit, and then we're going to jump to the main video we're covering today. This is just a, a preamble. This is so maybe in. this isn't actually Doomsday, but... So oh yeah, he just says that people should, shouldn't be annoyed that this is Doomsday, because there could be multiple Doomsdays. Oh. Uh, um, what? Oh, well happen. that's a, that's an interesting baseless conjecture piece he, great work um, he i can do that too this because Zack snyder in some kind of interview said that there could be more things to be afraid Zack of in snyder this world a lot of things in interviews i i don't think that's so is george lucas i don't care yeah i don't think we're ever going to see something like that pan out especially because it's like <laughs> the mcu it's like kevin feige going don't be mad about the mandarin and iron man 3 because there could be multiple mandarins isn't, well, like, okay. isn't, it, isn't that, isn't that actually happening Mandarin. now, that they're having the proper yeah. Mandarin? Mm -hmm. Oh, are they? Yeah, I yeah, think so, she. yeah, because, yeah. Um, well, anyway. I, 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 would, I mean, I would still say uh, you can't really uh, use that as a defense for your shitty version of the Mandarin from Iron Man 3 uh, with, like, without actually promising that there is going to be another Mandarin. Just going, oh, well, there could be multiple Mandarins, or there could be multiple Doomsdays. That's Silly. That's a, a really shitty defense. It's really weak and lame. So some new human Kryptonian hybrid doomsday, and this is why he looks so different. I'm mostly here to ignore this. This is the next argument is where we're stuck. Just By the way, this is a great time to point out that during game. the doomsday battle, the very first thing Superman does is to punch him into space. 
Hey, no. I thought you said that. Mm. You should also, you know what? I'm He's just going to come back down again. Chat, I'm yeah, so sorry about instead this. Instead of just. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, but um, he's already played enough of the movie that I'm worried about getting fucking shot down like we were with the other one. So I'm gonna uh, put up the enough. copyright <laughs> yeah. shield. But while you've got the copyright shield, I mean, this bring only brings up the issue of when he takes Doomsday into space. Why doesn't he just push? No, I, do, just do I, nothing. I didn't mean and just um, let Doomsday float away. I didn't mean copyright shield as in I'm pausing it. Copyright shield is in on screen now. You're gonna see a 50% opacity EFAP symbol. Um, oh, that, well, you oh, guys yeah, won't, the, but the chat will. And trust me, chat, it's for it's for the sake of you guys. Okay, the worst thing we could have is is yeah, you, you know. So um, if ever there's a confusion, it's for the greater good. Yeah, yeah you, you trust us. You need it to happen. Right, talk on. But we can the see it all clearly, good. so do not panic. Milch. Copyright shield activate. Anyway, yeah. So he's pointing out. That, hey, isn't it good that Superman actually punches Doomsday? Like one of the first sort of things he tries in the fight is this, which, yeah, you know what, clap, but... That is good. Good job. Good job. But... <laughs> Unfortunately... Listen to what he says next. This is a great time to point out that during the Doomsday battle, the very first thing Superman does is to punch him into space, showing that he did indeed learn a few lessons from the end of the first movie. Doesn't really work, which kind no. of proves my Man of Steel video, right? When no, I... no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> so the reason that you aren't vindicated... Oh my god, you're dumb. So... <laughs> The issue that we have with Batman vs Superman where he's fighting Doomsday is that he takes Doomsday into space and he could have just pushed it. Doomsday cannot fly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's correct. Just, so he just jumps. if you just push him into space, he's gone forever. He's, he's he's there's nothing that he can do. We don't even know that but he could survive in space, old... you know, like just in general, but he certainly can't escape space or get back to Earth, so he's fucked, yeah. What? That's that's the he's interesting thing fucked, is like yeah. this this version of Superman if he if he gets his powers from Earth's atmosphere rather than the sun then that technically means that he couldn't go too far out into space right that's the theory it gets a bit weird though because when he's on Zod's ship it's like ah you have no access to Earth's atmospherics not the sun itself just its atmospherics I thought it was yellow suns which that was means the only thing that added. Superman doesn't have access to Earth's atmospherics in space, because it's space. But he heals in space, so clearly it doesn't yeah, But is um, he within... Yeah, that's... Is he no, still within no, Earth's atmosphere, though? No, not, I'm not accepting No, not that. technically. He's in space. No. He is in yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree that he's in space, it's just uh, I'm trying to nah, uh, get that, that possible I mean, defense covered. I don't accept that, <laughs> personally. <laughs> <laughs> the whole right, reason okay. being... And Zod so, didn't even learn how to fly until like later in the fight. Yeah. Yeah. So he could have flown into yeah. space, and that would have been it. <laughs> yeah. So, but he doesn't do it like... there. They they miraculously happen to hit a satellite. <laughs> what are the odds? Miraculous <laughs> coincidence that they just happen to hit a satellite. And it crashes down to Earth and right. kills even more people. <laughs> That's just how. Right. So it, it's crazy. Like he could easily send Doomsday out and. Doomsday would never be an issue for Earth again, and the government decides to nuke Superman while he's carrying Doomsday away. Like, is that really a, a rational decision to make? Where, wow. hey, Superman is carrying the giant monster out into space, and, uh, you know, we can assume that the monster isn't going to fly back because we haven't seen the monster fly at all. It just jumps around. So let's just let Superman do his thing and punch him into space and not interfere. And what do they do? They interfere. And that causes the whole thing to, to fail. But even it is then, Superman's you know, fault that this doesn't work. There's no one else to blame except for Superman for um, not just pushing Doomsday into space. I agree with you. Um, it's mainly his fault, but my god, what the fuck, government? What are you doing? Um, I think Meme Repository has an edit for this, but um, blowing up a nuke that close to Earth, is, like it'll wipe us out, or at least a severe portion of us. Um, fucking insane move. Secondly, the fact that they uh, suggest and successfully launch the nuke in about 20 seconds from the moment Superman starts taking him up. Like, that's just not a thing. It would never be that quick. And there's no deliberation about the idea that Superman can knock him into space, which is a clear win, but activated, like, yeah, detonate a nuke above you... Metropolis is probably not a good idea. <laughs> Well, yeah, if you're watching that, that, if you're watching Doomsday being carried into space by Superman, you're thinking, oh, it's done. It's over. It's 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 finished. There's nothing Doomsday can do it once seems he's in space. Okay. From last he's time. gone. So we're getting a shitload of people in chat saying, well, to be fair, it's the government and the government is incompetent in real life. Uh, so of course, not, not that level of incompetence. They don't want to blow up their own <laughs> fucking city. 
So oh, just but, because well, what about someone... the Avengers Mauler? Well, no, no. Uh, what I'm suggesting is blow up their own city like for no reason, like no reason at all. Like it, it's it's fucking <laughs> no crazy reason. that they would try this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just because just because they government has done things that are not intelligent in the past doesn't say it's totally justifiable for them to do any stupid thing in also, the future. I would argue the Avengers that one was reasonable reach. to a degree. I agree. No, I'm, I, like I, I, I was literally just uh, saying that because I know that someone's going to say it. Why do you guys say that it's stupid that the government sends a nuke to destroy a city in Man of Steel, but it's not stupid in the Avengers? Because you know that we're going to get that bullshit. Um, yeah, and, I, I, and I'm pretty sure it takes because a lot Superman longer. Because Superman is fighting him. And um, he delays them, Fury does, I'm pretty sure. Like, like quite mm -hmm. significantly. Martian Manhunter couldn't do fuck all. He was like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm calling him that because I'm assuming he will turn out to be that 100%. I don't know. Um, I just want to add that even if uh, we blame the fact that it didn't work, that Superman wasn't able to send Doomsday into space entirely on the government, that doesn't excuse that he didn't do this with Zod in the first movie. It's it, it doesn't vindicate you for saying he no, shouldn't it have tried him it. at all. He, um, it's yeah. like uh, it's bizarre. I don't know. Like like I I guess like what like a scatter shot uh, uh, to fire like rags. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I do. And all of it misses by luck. It just all it just happens to miss him. And um, he's like, see, there was no point in firing the gun. It was just gonna miss anyway. You're like that's an. It's true. I'm too great. Interesting gun. conclusion you've drawn there, um, <laughs> because of course, I, and yes, by the way, the the speed in which they f fucking fire that nuke, it still doesn't mean that it would have caught up to Superman. I don't believe for a second that it could have before he gets Doomsday out of the atmosphere. Superman can travel like the speed of sound. Oh wait, sorry, he can travel faster than the Flash. So, yes, he can <laughs> travel yeah. faster Ball than man. the Flash. Everybody, he's gonna boom into into Doomsday, and Doomsday's just gonna go whoa into the sun, probably. <laughs> it's just <you're> like, oh god. <laughs> um, yeah, none of it makes sense, and somehow in this scene, they are both. It, it looks to be that Superman grabs him by the head, and then his head it takes the new kit. Superman f flings into space, and Doomsday like just just rockets down to Earth. And it's like how. The physics of that are nonsense. Yeah, Doomsday they... rockets down to Earth. Superman floats around up there, I guess. It's like, imagine if Superman had crashed down and Doomsday had floated away. Imagine they both floated away. Why the hell did we get the worst case scenario for both? What's that about? <laughs> and why would that even have happened? Why wouldn't they just blast away from the nuke? The whole scene is really stupid. And I just like that he's like, see, the writers accounted for it. Like, no, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't at all. I say that taking it up into the sky isn't the end-all solution people seem to think it is. It's but not, it is. But it is. That's the thing. It is. It is. It's and if you argue against shot. that, it just shows also, that you're an idiot. Also, why doesn't he do it again? The first time there was a new... <laughs> exactly. It's so yeah, funny. So like, when, you have a, when you introduce a character into a world who can do things that Superman can do, you have to account for a lot of shit. Superman can exist in space, he can breathe up there, he can fly around, he has super strength, he has laser vision. When you give him all of these attributes, a lot of potential opportunities are opened up, and you have to account for those. I really just hate the uh, the defense that, oh, why didn't this character do this thing that would be a totally common sense move to do if if they had their uh, attributes and, and powers and everything? Um, and the, the defense is, well, because it might not work. Like, okay, try it anyways. Yeah, it could work. To the people who are still saying the government would absolutely do it, um, whether or not they would fire the nuke is not something I necessarily have the issue with. It's just the speed in which they decide it. Superman is starting to yeah. take him up, and they go, fire the nuke quick. Like, whoa. Whoa, calm down. He's going into space. It's over. Nukes are fucking insane. Like, no intelligent city, person would look at that. Huh? It's crazy that they would fire it just above Metropolis. It's fucking insane. Yeah, for maximum damage to the city? Like, <laughs> it's fine, they've recovered since last time. It's about time they <laughs> fuck it up it's, again. It's, I don't know. it's empty, alright? Metropolis Someone is Someone said, I guess it's Rags is big brain compared to mid-level you... Yeah? Compared to who? Compared to mid-level YouTubers. I was like, well, yeah, we all are. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're high-level <laughs> yeah, YouTubers. Over I here. agree, <laughs> yeah. Dude, one of us we, is two we are, people We are in smarter one. than the mid-level YouTubers we clearly cover on this show all the time. I mean, they say some weird things. This is That's how you derive an yeah, intelligence scale. I mean... <laughs> Have you been watching this video with us?
Yeah, we're already off a lot of people say stuff. really dumb shit. Um, I'd also like to point out that he's he phrases it like, "Oh, see, Superman clearly he's learning, but also <laughs> he shouldn't have done it in the beginning anyway because it wouldn't have worked." So, is it a lesson he needed to learn about you know good strategy, or was it pointless like, that he shouldn't have done it at all because it didn't work? Um, Especially considering he just came from space, like he was just up there, and he flies down. I feel like the whole scattershot thing is a pretty good way of summarizing his defenses of these movies. He just throws it like, you know, with attacking you guys for doing it offline. It's the same sort of thing. He's just like, oh, what about this? And also this. Who cares if they contradict? Someone just wrote out like the government would have planned to use it against a Superman level threat. They had one. This is all laid in place. They just needed the OK. That's my issue. They wouldn't have gotten no. the OK. They wouldn't have gotten it. Yeah, there's no. no way they would have committed to a nuclear bomb over a very, very highly populated city like Metropolis, when that quickly, when Superman was there. Superman was killed the last <laughs> threat of this level, and now that Superman's back and is fighting this threat, they should go, oh, Superman is currently in, he, currently in the middle of bringing him into space, which is an intelligent and like, very simple way of dealing with the threat. I just want to How about clarify like just that... let him do his thing for a few minutes <laughs> just and see minute, what happens. Yeah. And, and the idea mm -hmm. is like, but the government would try and use a nuke on a horrible doomsday monster. It's like, that's really not the question at hand, whether or not they would nuke that thing. That's not what we're asking. The... Yeah, because Superman exists in this universe and everyone knows about him and they're watching him do things and fighting this creature and he killed the last threat of this level to the world. Yeah, they should be just watching Superman and seeing how things play out. Oh well. Uh, anyway. Doomsday comes right back down to Earth where the only thing that can kill him- Why is that? Why- why is that, <laughs> person? Why- why is it that Doomsday comes back? How- well, how could this have possibly occurred? I guess you didn't- you weren't paying attention. There was a- there's a big roof on Earth. When you get high enough, oh, you bounce oh, yeah. right back oh, down. Oh, the- th Oh, that's- that's the firmament. So, yeah, you can't really boot anybody <laughs> into space, and that kind of answers that in Man of Steel. You see, Superman knew that. Oh, he forgot yeah. it in this movie, though. Does does that mean that the moon landing was faked in this universe? Well, yes. No, the moon the moon landing was real. It's just that the moon is very low and it goes in a circle around the flat earth. Oh my go. goodness. Yeah, that's how that's how it works, I guess. Crazy. There you go. Batman's kryptonite spell. Oh well. Whoops, I guess we miscalculated that one. Oh, wait, sorry. Let me roll him back wait, a little bit. Yeah, go back. Yeah. I don't I don't get it. Yeah. Turns out Doomsday wrong. comes right back down to Earth where the only Shockingly. thing that can kill him is Batman's kryptonite spear. Oh well. That's oh well. Weird. Whoops, I guess we miscalculated that one. So miscalculated what one? If you didn't get the impression he was smug from those screenshots, <laughs> that'll probably do it. He thinks he's so yeah, right. But he's making fun of the he... people for suggesting putting Doomsday in uh, space or Zod. You don't have to kill him. No, this guy's an idiot. So you don't have to take... Doomsday doesn't have to die in space. Nope. He can just keep floating into the vacuum of the Dark Abyss forever. In fact... Like, that's um, fine. It's probably going to be really easy for Superman to actually boop him into the sun. Because he can't do anything about it, really. <laughs> yeah, he could have just taken him to the sun and pushed him towards the sun. And the gravity of the sun would have sucked him in. towards the sun, like, no! <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing he can do. Yeah, absolutely. For years and years and years, he just floats towards the sun, just getting, getting hotter, hotter and hotter. Every day, yeah. He's like, oh, sweating. Um, maybe he can fly in space by firing his laser, and he just goes the opposite direction wherever he looks. Like a, <laughs> like a fire extinguisher or some shit. <laughs> when, when they grab him in the cartoons, they just go, wee! This guy hasn't thought this why... out at all. No. Nope. Is there any reason why Superman didn't try and get him back up into space again? Nope. <laughs> no. Nope, he just doesn't. This guy he actually... Because we already did that for the movie. Like, like so Zack Snyder took a shit, <laughs> and this guy just took his knife and fork to it and just swallowed it right down. Like, yep, nope, there's no way that would work. It's like, you... My... You... <laughs> My interpretation is that because Superman got nuked the first time, he was like, Dad, I'm just going to send another nuke at me <laughs> if I do that again. nuking me. <laughs> just... <laughs> well, so that's another problem. Superman doesn't account for the nuke really at all. Like, what he, all of his options. He could have gotten out of the way of the nuke, for one. That could have been a move. Um, he could have, like, made sure the Doomsday is in its way, but then left him. Like, because Doomsday can't move while in the air, if you know what I mean. So once he's lined up. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Superman can fly out of the blast zone of a nuke before it would catch him, probably. Again, speed of the flash. It's fucking... No, he, in, he insists on staying in the blast zone of the nuke. 
And then, of course, that it caught up to him at all, and the fact that he could have gone, like, punched Doomsday up, gone to the nuke, and fucking, like, tossed it some other direction. Or dodged it! You know, there's so many things, man. It's so annoying. Superman's just such a fucking idiot. I like that our bar is so low that he decides to try and use space as a weapon to his benefit, and now we're like, yes, he is now intelligent again. It's like, oh, just that. And doing it once, as well. If it doesn't work, that's how it goes. What are you saying, Calvin? I'm saying it's unkillable. Um, how have you determined this? He thinks that that's supporting the whole Kryptonite Spear thing. Wonder Woman's sword can cut off his limbs. Yeah, yeah, she cuts his arm off with the swing oh. of the sword. If he, if she stabbed him with that sword, I assume it would kill him. And it ain't a fucking Kryptonite sword. It's just a normal- well, Yeah. We don't even know what sword it is, but the point is obviously- It's just her sword. I well, think it's actually, safe to assume it's a special sword, yeah. but like we don't mm -hmm. know its real full properties. But I mean, there it is. Could it actually be possible limbs to? Off him. Could it actually be possible to uh, choke it to death with the lasso of truth? Possibly. Because uh, the lasso of truth, like, kind of wraps around him and like weakens him. And uh, one of Superman's canonical weaknesses, at least in the comics, is magic, which I believe would include the lasso of truth. So, if that's the case, then wouldn't other Kryptonian beings like Doomsday be weak to magic? Possibly, but we haven't, we haven't really got any references for that in the movie. I don't even know that they've done the whole he's weak to magic thing yet. Like, mm -hmm. in any way. Um, but yeah, I, I just find it interesting that it's like, he's unkillable because we tried to nuke him and it didn't kill him, but it also didn't kill Superman. Um, like I, it's, it's just weird, and and he's like, this supports the evidence that he should only be trying to use kryptonite rather than space. It's like, no, it actually doesn't. Throw him into space and then stab him with a spear. Well, just throw, throw him, him into space, space and just do nothing. Yeah, in a way, it's like, <laughs> fuck you, Doomsday. You can enjoy life just floating away, and if ever you come back, oh, we're yeah. doing this again. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah, man. but in space, he can't defend himself from being stabbed with kryptonite. If you really want to make sure he's dead. You oh know, yeah, that's, space seems like a good place to do that. You sort of get closer and closer, and he's like, "No, stop! No, you gotta, no, don't do it." You're like, "Sorry, dude, but like, I don't know. <laughs> we can't let you flow around. What if you land on a planet one day and fuck everyone up on it? Okay, can't delay." Why does Batman lead Doomsday back to the city? That what's this voice? I don't know, I don't but get um, it. so this is a very valid criticism. Um, and before he lines up his uh, his defense of it. Uh, you picture. I'm do you remember when hilarious. it crash lands and they have that really awkward line where they go, "He's on like Riker Island or something," and he goes, "It's uninhabited." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, they, they, that quick little like, "Oh, it's okay, guys." Uh, maybe if I can find the visual because basically, like Riker Island is quite. Um, th th it seems that Snyder was very aware of everybody shitting on him for the previous movie, and so that it's like it's a relatively big island, at least you know, comparative to Doomsday. And there's lots of water surrounding it, and then there's, I guess, Metropolis and Gotham on either side. And, um... So it's, like, really good. That's, if you could get him, Doomsday into any position, that's probably the most ideal in the situation. Like, it, it, for miles and miles and miles, that's probably the best place for him to be. And Batman, as I think we say when we're watching the Infant movies, we're like, why the fuck did he lead Doomsday to the spear rather than just getting the spear and coming back? Like... Not only for the fact that he's going to drag Doomsday across all of the places from A to B, but also because that risks you, and you're the one that needs to kill it. So, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really bizarre choice. Um, yeah, had, had Wonder Woman not showed up, or she just didn't exist, uh, that's game over for him <laughs> and the world. Yeah, he, that's actually uh, something that worth mentioning. Um, he was incredibly lucky that Wonder Woman decided to fight and she showed up at that moment. If she was even a minute later, she'd be dead. Such a shame. She was Damn, still in yeah. DC saving pedestrians and antique stores. <laughs> they fucked. I, my interpretation is that she was just watching on a nearby statue that she was posing on and once Batman crashed in his bat wing, she figured, ah, this is my cue. Time to do the big damn heroes moment. Mm -hmm. She's Where very, um, she fights very differently in, in BVS than her movies as well. She's very like, she comes across as she enjoys fighting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But not in her movies. Right, here we go. Ooh, uh, let me take that off for a second. The copyright cover so you guys can see it. Eh. Should be okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just slightly cleaner. So that's the island that uh, 
uh, Doomsday is on, and of course that's Gotham and Metropolis, as is laid out. Why would you want to move him away from there? That's perfect. Yeah. That's fucking perfect. It seems pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Extremely convenient that that's where he lands. Like, wow. Yeah, it's uninhabited. Wow. Everyone, it's, it's uninhabited. An, an <laughs> uninhabited piece inhabitable. of land. With... <laughs> Is it inhabitable? I don't know. That's the it's not question. habitable if Doom stays on it. So, to clarify, the, the primary arguments are, one, he's in the safest place to possibly be as a big destructive asshole. Two, Batman shouldn't be risking his own life because he's the one that's just figured out the best way to probably kill it. And, uh... Three, by taking him to the, the spear, he's very likely going to drag it through other places that very likely will be inhabited. Uh, everyone, everyone follow that? Yeah, those three arguments are pretty solid, I think. Yeah. Let's see yeah. how he does. Boy. That's so stupid of... You know, Wonder Woman asks him the same question, and he answers in English with his words and his... Oh, you are... <laughs> you. No, he's, he's, he's awfully smug for someone who's defending one of the shittiest movies that have probably ever been made. He's, he's he thinks he's so right when um it's, it's like, did like, he watch the movie it's almost like we've uh, we haven't even so like you know the set information we all have before either of us we we either defend or attack the movie is batman wants to get the spear that's the that's the baseline information we all understand that and then we make the arguments on top of it and he's gonna like be like like that's what batman says he's like i i'm trying to get the spear that's what he says to what because she's like what the fuck are you doing batman bring it into gotham but he's like oh you know the spear that's not an like answer. That he, yeah, he yeah. accepts that answer. What we're trying to say is, no, but he's wrong. He should have just gotten the spear and then gone back. I don't care what his answer is, because it was no, bad. No, Leia decision. was right to slap Poe, because the movie says so. That's, I like yeah, it's in the movie, guys. Were you paying attention? Yeah, didn't you watch the movie? Watching the movie? Yeah, it's why a... did you lure the big monster to the inhabited area rather than just go to the inhabited area by yourself without luring the monster over here? Well, well I think, I think there's a line in the movie that where he gives a reason. But, like, he, <laughs> and his logic will be, oh, but it's abandoned. It's like, yeah, but the rest of the city isn't, which he's very close to and can just walk yeah, around in. It's not like there was a straight line, and then, even if he gets to the spear, you're taking him closer to populated areas where he was in a yeah. safe zone. You idiot. Um, also, it's like someone it's swallowing really ball dumb. bearings, and you're like, why are you swallowing ball bearings? You go, I'm hungry. See, there's the reason. It's like, no, that doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, did you not listen to him? He said he was hungry. And his mouth He said it in out of his English. Mouth. It was in the movie. With yeah. the answer. Why did you bring him back to the city? The port is abandoned. There's a weapon here that can kill it. The port is abandoned. Why that's, would that's, you leave him to the port? That's the third <laughs> how, lie First off, how movie. do you know the port is abandoned? There's Two, no why would you... The, the port is in Metropolis. No, it's in, uh, it's in Gotham. It's in Gotham. Oh, Gotham. Which, inhabited city. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Take your pick um, of which one. This is where it's getting a little bit weird because it's like, why would the why why would the area of the port and the surrounding area all be like safe to just crash Doomsday around on? Like, why would you even want to risk it? Yeah, it what not... if it wasn't abandoned? The Gotham port you, had its know? chance. I just don't. Where in any I'm major here. city is it completely abandoned no at way. any point in time? And he's yeah, bringing no him way. closer to Gotham. Why would you do that? You're Batman. Yeah. Like, this is what I mean, this is just like a, a cataclysm of, of an entirely dumbass decision from like an intelligence point of view and an out-of-character decision. If anything, you would drag him toward Metropolis. <laughs> Total <laughs> catastrophe for writing. It makes no sense whatsoever, no matter how you slice it. Yeah, what you actually have him do is fly over to where the spear was, grab it, get back in his thing, and fly back. And, and, th and then when someone goes, Batman, you fool, he's been attacking the abandoned island while you've been gone. He's like, oh no. Think of the wildlife. <laughs> Think of the bacteria. Think of the real estate <laughs> value. The dirt is churned his words and burned. And his mouth, coming out of his mouth with the answer. Why did you bring him back to the city? The port is abandoned. There's a weapon here that can kill it. And what exactly is your alternative? What? So, and also, like, this assumes that Doomsday will be doing the things that you want him to do. Yeah. Like, I'm what if Doomsday just talking. doesn't? What if he fucks off somewhere else? This was, I what think... if he's concerned about Superman and so he leaves or he goes another place? I think this came up in the, um, in the E5 movies, but it's like, imagine he didn't attack Doomsday to make him follow him, and Doomsday, like, after the crater gets up and he's just like, oh, what is happening? <laughs> he just looks around <laughs> on his little island like... <laughs> Oh, what a weird life I have. What a life I I am need. like seven minutes old. I am so confused. <laughs> I'm very angry. <laughs> I, I have spikes now. I don't know. I don't know my shapes or my colors. I 
don't know the alphabet, I am just a mess. And whatever argument you want to make, the, the damage it'll do to Riker's Island, it's like, it'll do it to Gotham. So why would you even want to go anywhere near this argument? There's a weapon here that can kill it. And what exactly is your alternative at the moment? For Batman to go and get the spear and bring it back to where Doomsday is? Yeah. Yes. 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 Exactly that. Yes. That's the one. That, yeah, that resounding is, yes. That how about, is a, how about, that is a yes. How about you how about Batman uses his bat duct tape? He duct tapes the spear to a rocket and then he fires the rocket at Doomsday. Dude, how about the, that? Attach to the bat wing. And then fly well, Wonder into Woman him. could go get it. Yeah, you Batman do that too. could go have one of Alfred's robots go do it. He could have the police do it. He could have so he's like call someone. He's like, well, hey, at this location, there's a spear. We need it to get to Riker's Island. I like as well. Also, um, I bring up the risk of we need Batman to live. He fucking nearly dies because of this plan. Like it, it was a it was a fair argument. He does, to make, yeah. And it's a risk that he takes, and it's really dumb because he nearly dies. It's Wonder Woman that saves him. Have have any of us also mentioned the fact that Lois Lane threw the spear in a place that Batman didn't see? So even if he got back to yep. where he had left the spear uh, with Doomsday right on his tail, that he wouldn't have been able to find the spear in time because Lois Lane threw it in a puddle that he, and, he and didn't the, know of. And the film deals no with that. No fucking clue why Lois did that. Yeah, well, it's, it's a mystery. <laughs> Lois is running around and she spots the fight happening and she goes, ah, oh, the spear. It's like, what? What? <laughs> what? It's such a bizarre moment, but it's like, shut up. It's got to happen. Otherwise, the film won't end. <laughs> and you're like, okay, that's fair. <laughs> and Doomsday's just waiting for him to get back? It's much smarter for Batman to lead- Okay, this is so fucking dumb. So, <laughs> if he doesn't move or if- It's like saying, well, maybe he would have done the thing that we would have had him do in our terrible plan. Yeah, also, he's literally standing here, He'll, right he, now, he, on the images that you're showing on screen. Yeah, Batman baits his weaponry, and then he pulls him into Gotham. How is that better than leaving him to maybe use his weaponry on an abandoned island. Worst case scenario, nothing would have changed. Best case scenario, he's still on the island. This is this reminds like, me of the defenses it, it, for um the Hux thing in TLJ where they're like, what if he destroyed the um the ship and then the people the base it, what if the whole planet disappeared? What if the base ran away? <laughs> you know you gotta make sure you destroy the base. What if even if the rat escapes, they can catch the rat. It's like, why are you doing this? You're bending over backwards to defend a really stupid decision. This is it's like nuts. You're, it's like you're camping in the woods and you come across this rabid grizzly bear on, on like crystal meth or something. And you've got a rifle that's uh, perfectly capable of taking it out in your tent where the rest of your family is. So rather than just quietly go into your tent to retrieve your rifle that could kill this grizzly bear on meth, you decide to piss <laughs> off the grizzly bear and have it follow you straight to your campsite where your family is. <laughs> There's like, a weapon exactly... there that can kill it. <laughs> <laughs> that's how retarded this is, guys. That's like it the is, simplest it way. It's a pretty apt analogy. <laughs> that's, it, it's, just, it's just simplifying it to like something that could happen in the real world, you know? <laughs> I mean, I agree. Doomsday is like a grizzly bear on meth, I would say. That's about right. And if you leave a grizzly bear alone on an island who's had meth, um, he might not do anything. He might just sit there. He might, yeah. I seriously, I want to see that movie mm -hmm. where, where they all leave him alone. Doomsday's just like, he starts like tearing up. He's like, I don't like this. I don't like being alone. I, I don't, uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man. Run around what waiting is... for him to get back? It's much smarter for Batman to lead Doomsday to an area he knows is abandoned rather than leave him to run he off somewhere completely. He doesn't know that though. He, like he says it, but he doesn't know that. Like also, goes... it's right next to the city that isn't abbandoned. Yeah, also, this is the, the thing. island is abandoned. You can keep, uh, tr if Doomsday sees Batman flies away to get the spear and then he's like, you know what, I'm hungry for human flesh and jumps all the way over to Metropolis and starts burning everything. And it's like, damn, if only I'd made him follow me, this wouldn't have happened. Like, well, yeah, he could do that anyway. Yeah. Th this, you, you can do whatever he wants whenever he wants to. And, like, I gotta be honest with Batman here. It's like, we need you alive. You understand? You need to be alive. Like, I feel like yeah, it like trumps it everything. Mm-hmm. He's got a laser that can vaporize your ship as long as he looks at you. Like, just please, you need to be alive. You it's have to it's kill this miraculous thing. that he didn't shoot Batman out of the sky. Well, he, he does did. that like on the screen. He does that thing where he just like looks right behind the ship perpetually it's instead kind of, of just, just <coughs> looking at oh, it. Well, yeah, he keeps missing until he like clips a wing and then he crashes and it's like right. 
even though it's one of those point and click <laughs> things where you you can't fuck it up. Yeah. Completely unsupervised. It's moving. Okay. It was stupid of Lois oh, Lane to dump that. the kryptonite right. spear into the pool of water. <laughs> Did she think nobody Aww. else would find it? So my criticism of I... it would just be it's bizarre. She decides I need to throw this in a pool. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is really weird. It's fairly natural to me. And, um, in a pool of water. And yeah, and, it, and then it just—I'm happy with it though, because it sets up the really funny of her drowning herself. Like I was—I was super on board with it. I think it was a really great payoff. Um, <laughs> she's the key have, to all of this. Questions for you. Number one, again, what exactly is your alternative? Leave it. Nothing. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's it, you just don't fuck with it. It's, it's actually really easy. <laughs> Nothing. Just leaving it there. Hold what is your alternative to, to picking it up? Anyway? Not picking it up. Wait, what? What does she do after she threw it in the? She just hang. She just hung out there, right? She just leaves, yeah. and then she she sees the fight that's going on. And then she's like, "Oh shit, that spear! That'll be useful." It's such a weird Man, moment. I, so it's, it's like, this, this is a shame really valuable I threw it thing. in this pool of water. <laughs> because at the time, it was just like a pool of water. You could see it glowing down at the bottom. What did she think that would accomplish? I don't know. I, I honestly have like, no idea. Like, what about all what? the people who come here to the rubble to clean it up and everything? What do you is Superman not gonna ask where is that spear? Is Batman not gonna ask where is that spear? Are yep. they not gonna go back and find it? Because he just walks a little bit and throws it in a pool of water. Walk around what with it. In what does this accomplish? It put it in a pool and then she drowned. That's what it accomplished. Alternative. Was she supposed to walk around with it in the street? <laughs> Who's to say no. Lex Luthor's goons weren't hanging around to make sure everything goes to plan? <laughs> Why wouldn't if, they, if if you bring up Lex Luthor's no. goons looking for kryptonite into the equation? Why wouldn't they have just come here looking for it and found it? I don't, it yeah. It's glowing in a pool of water. Do you know what I mean about the desperation to defend the movie? It's like this, this is, is pathetic. I thought most, if not everyone, agreed that this thing that Lois does is so funny and stupid. And he's like, "What if there's Lex goons? <laughs> what if you, what if they I want guess to none see of them can swim? Look." <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, the goons... Well, the... she moved it 20 feet to the left in this pool of water, so they won't say, find it. I would say it's too late if there are goons. They, they would have gotten to her and the spear by now if they were goons. Mm -hmm. She's like, done Lex Luthor was able to find a, like a... Uh, if Bruce Wayne could find that chunk of kryptonite in the ocean that the Pearl Divers found on some island in the middle of nowhere, then I'm pretty sure that Lex Luthor goons could find this right next to where it was left. To clarify, that was Randy's found the kryptonite and Lex tried to import it, then it was blocked by the Senate, and so he, he sneaked it in with his evil black marketisms, and then Batman stole it from him. Just just to, just because I know someone's going to be like, wow, Rags, it wasn't Bruce that found it in the stupid... Whoever it was, it doesn't even matter who it was. <laughs> I know. The, the fact, it, having it, in fact, having it not be Bruce makes my argument better. Well, yeah, it was Lex's, Lex's goons. <laughs> These it was Lex's, Lex's goons. goons. <laughs> These goons, they're, they're good. Number two, whoever said she... But they can't take it from this water pool. That would not have been possible. They can't swim. Leave it there. Nope. Wouldn't it make sense that she was getting it out of the way for the time being until all of the crises were averted and Lex Luthor was behind bars? So she was just going to come back for it later and there would have been no investigation or any of these factions or groups coming to look like for it. the kryptonite spear? So he's arguing she was hoping to hide it so that it couldn't hit Superman and then, oops, she decided, oh, this is the one thing I need now. I don't see how she could ever conclude that. Because that just supports the idea that she would want it even further out of play. If Superman is battling someone, let's involve the spear that makes him so he can't even walk. It's like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Think also, she, would... she didn't... Why not run a little farther and throw it into the ocean or something? This is the best she could do. Why is there a, a submerged, like, room in this building? Because, <laughs> like, um, that is a good high question. tide. Yeah. It's high tide. Oh. Apparently, whole sections of this city are just abandoned. <laughs> Underwater. I'm <laughs> being until all of the crises were averted and Lex Luthor was behind bars, and then someone she trusts could come back and get it later when the world wasn't coming to an end. Because that's right. That that's that's fucking brilliant of you to assume the rest of the world would not care about the Kryptonite spear. It's fucking brilliant. That's Actually, amazing. Batman. 
do you really think Batman yeah. would be wondering where the fuck is this spear? Superman would be wondering where the fuck is this spear? Alfred would be wondering where the fuck is this spear? The Lex Luthor people would be wondering where the fuck is this yeah, spear? Lex's goons. Um. So the next one is, why does Superman fly the kryptonite spear into Doomsday, getting himself killed in the process? They could have figured out some other way. So, for one, uh, I think we did this in the in the EFAP movies as well. Uh, Wonder Woman ties him up, gas grenade from Batman, Wonder Woman chops his head off. You don't even need the spear. It's all good. Everything worked out. <laughs> High five, everybody. Yes. Um, because we his... know that her sword can chop off body bits. But how about we do a different one, which is Superman, take the spear to Wonder Woman, tell her that this, put through its chest, will kill it. So, Batman, gas grenade, Wonder Woman, go, and Superman's gonna have to stay awake because Kryptonite hits him. Yep. There, there you, you go. go, I came up with two. Yeah. They have the equipment, <laughs> they have the materials, they act as if they should, they just don't do it. I picture this is the kind dumb. of person, though, that would say, yes, Wonder Woman can cut through his arm, but his neck muscles are far stronger. <laughs> Just in jaw flexing, yeah. What, what if she used? What if she used the lasso? Okay, she tied the lasso around him and then got him to see the truth of his ways, and that he was being a meanie. <laughs> he, he like he like his eyes gloss over. He's just like, I always wanted to be a farmer. I wanted to be a hairdresser on a farm. Just... <laughs> on a farm. On a farm. On a farm. The man. Kryptonite spear into Doomsday, getting himself killed in the process. They could have figured out some other way. Oh, you mean like we just did? Us well, people just here? Hence why the chat that, it's going to be interesting to see what his response is because there's only 30 seconds oh, more boy. of this before yeah. we'll, get, we'll be switching videos. His response will be what other way? Oh, that boy. will be his response, right? <laughs> what do you got? This scene is purposefully set up so that the oh, threat yeah, is too care. great and the time too short to come up with any uh, other way. Nope, that's not uh, true at all. Though. Nope, mm, wrong. that's not true at all. Do you know how fast? Do you know how fast thoughts happen? Well, what's pretty cool is check this out. I don't think he does, um, Rex. Unfortunately, if I knew that the only way to to kill Fringy is with an anti witch doctor plague mask tism grenade, I can I can tell that to Rex pretty quick. I just did actually, right there. There you go, Rex. Do it. Throw the grenade. Huh. I can't throw it because I have a gas mask. It could hit me. And then kill <laughs> it's, it's just oh, funny to me. There's no time. It's like, no time to do what? There's no time for me to tell you the plan. Oh, what, there's no time that for you to tell me the plan? Time. It's like, no, there is no time for me to tell you the plan. Can't okay. happen. Because it'll take 10 seconds to be... It won't even take... 10 seconds is like if they talk very slowly and they assume that Wonder Woman's as dumb as she is in her own films. You could do it with okay. side language. I'm going to hit him with a green gas grenade. When he is stunned, stab him with the spear. <laughs> the pointy end. Okay, and she's like, not she. She gets it enough. She's not that bright, but she gets it. She nods her head and like, okay, go team. And then you do it. High five. And then the movie's over, oh. and everyone lived happily ever after, except for us because we had to watch it. Mm -hmm. The three heroes. Superman is the only one that knows where the kryptonite is, and the only one able to get it. Yeah, and then he can give it to them. Cause yeah, because he's, he's a person who can provide other things to other people. This is also assuming that Batman or Wonder Woman didn't go to the place. Because if you sent them to this place, they'd be like, oh, where's the spear? Oh, it's over there in that pool of green water. Why did? Why also, is this here? Oh, well, I'll ask him about it later. Also, can, can we just ask why Superman chooses to stab Doomsday through the chest rather than the head with the spear? Wouldn't the, the head be a Hasn't he way seen Infinity War? <laughs> the other be keeping head. Doomsday busy. I could think of a few ways they could have changed this scene to allow for a happier ending. Oh! Why excellent. doesn't he hold it further away from himself? I don't know, he's an idiot. <laughs> Very yeah, long. Yeah, he is an idiot. Well, in this universe it's weird like stupid. how Kryptonite works, especially the spear, because it only kills Doomsday after it goes all the way through him, and now the Kryptonite's no longer in Doomsday's body. <laughs> when it's body. further away from him, yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. weird. <laughs> and it's it, don't, also, it, don't, it don't make sense. It's also enough to <laughs> prevent Superman from getting up at all but in this scene he's able to fly with it it's like all right interesting good point, chat. why doesn't he throw it it's a spear that's another good question one that we will probably get no answers for i mean i guess i'm willing to accept that he's not strong enough to throw it but i mean he can fly so like he can he's fly he got some Wonder strength going and of course one at least could yeah but it. yeah he could at least I mean, like batman could throw it because he's a person who made it to it's use it's also worth remembering this is an amazing tool against a Kryptonian. You walk up to them and they start going, "Oh, my, my, oh, oof, when is it down?" Ah, oh, I've oh. got gingivitis. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
So like, yeah. Just, I got herpes. You need to go over to Wonder Woman and be like, seriously, this thing? Oh, it's like, it's like a cheat code. It's so good. Just go over there. <laughs> you should use it against that bad man right there. Right this will fuck him up. You're, you're, it's, especially when you consider Wonder Woman has super practice with like obsolete melee weapons. Mm -hmm. So she would be the perfect person to use a spear in this oh, scenario. Yeah. You, you look at her and, and you're she like, has you super know. speed. You know how to, yeah, yeah she's yep. super fast. Two are she busy could run over to him, grab busy. it, and come back. And I like, could think of a few ways seconds. they could have changed this she's scene to allow for a happier. Ending, yeah, yeah. but it would defeat the purpose of the scene. Sorry. Mm. Also, I don't care about the purpose of the scene. Well, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, let me, I just want to catch that in full a second. Where the kryptonite is, and the only one able to get it. The other two are oh, busy someone, keeping someone doomsday. Someone brought busy. up a good point. They said the bat spear is calibrated to Batman, so Superman can't oh, throw it and hit. True. That's very, it's very true. That <laughs> well, is very they've true. got Alfred on the phone. That. Surely yeah. he can recalibrate it for them. Yeah, he can recalibrate it on the mainframe. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Quick, use your hacking. Boop, boop, boop. I'm in. <laughs> Think of a few ways they could have changed this scene to allow for a happier ending, but it would defeat the purpose of the scene, which is to have Superman care. sacrifice himself to save humanity. I don't care. I don't fucking uh, care. So I literally that's the don't worst care. excuse possible. Yeah, yeah. this perfect. is horrific. Just a piece of advice. You can use this argument forever with everything. Literally anything. It doesn't matter how bad it is. That if was it wasn't point. that way. Then it wasn't the point. You see, so it's Huck, okay long, because that's the point. Hux didn't as long shoot as the, the scene Rattus has because it wasn't supposed to be shot in the scene. Like that's why he didn't shoot it. As oh. long as the scene has a purpose to fulfill a plot point, it is a okay. Doesn't matter how the execution goes. Okay, then Civil War is better. I like how you say that Civil War is crap when Civil War has purpose but actually executes. <laughs> it's just funny that that you think that it's so obvious that. Man of Steel. I'm just like, this is so boring to me, these arguments. They're so crap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this well is... we, we had to have Superman sacrifice himself. I'm mm -hmm. Like, well, mechanically, that's a big fucking problem because he's, <laughs> you know, Superman. Yeah. He's, so we're going to have to work really hard to make this work. No, just shoot him in the back of the head with a desert eagle. <laughs> it's going to go right through. <laughs> desert eagle can shoot through anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I just complain even harder if Superman lived through the death of Superman story arc by th no what? <laughs> because then it would be the death of no! Superman you <laughs> fucking idiot oh my god no I wouldn't <laughs> we will be complaining why did, shit. why did Superman die in the death of Superman you're like what do you mean <laughs> it wouldn't be the death that's of Superman. not what the name of the movie is <laughs> it's called by the way BVS before, Dawn of when Justice. I these the first when I watch these the first time I had no idea this was the death of Superman arc. I, I just thought these were shitty movies. <laughs> I had no idea that was like the arc they're going for. Plus, oh. this movie's called Dawn of Justice. I would not assume that Superman dies when he's in the Justice League, and this movie's called Dawn of Justice. Well. Why would I? I, I, uh. It's a really good what, argument. That, what is this? What is this trash? Yeah, I like how. Throwing a. I like how they were like trying to fake us out to think, oh my god, Superman's dead. He's totally dead, guys. Two movies into our DC extended universe, Superman is dead. It's like, okay, so um, Justice I don't League, believe the, you. Movie, the movie where <laughs> we're supposed to have all these heroes together, now has to waste time to bring <laughs> Superman back from the dead, which we're not going to care about because we barely had any sort of emotional connection with this version of Superman, who's like the shittiest superhero ever. Like, it's just, it's a disaster. I don't the Snyder see, Cut's not going to be good. <laughs> I don't know why he wouldn't have understood when he was writing this that he'd given up when he said, but it's the point. Like, yeah, yeah. we understood that Yes, that was and all films point. can be justified with this. It's the point. What a, because that's what the script said. And that he Superman sucks. So pathetic. Man lived through the death of Superman story arc by throwing a kryptonite spear through Doomsday's chest from 300 yards away? That would be great. <laughs> I mean, she what? could throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Skip fucking throw it. If that hit some guy, he'd be dead. Why did they have to use? Um, and that's oh, I was gonna say we would carry on oh, with this video, <laughs> but we, we, we got to move on to the to the other video. They that was just a primer. How excellent are these men's this man's defenses? Mm. Fabulous. They were uh, so they good. Were just they were magical. And now we're they gonna... were unbelievable. Crazy because, oh, see, because yeah. 
Okay. Uh, we're moving on to we're keeping the format and 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 the man himself. But now we're moving on to trying to justify uh, Lex Luthor and his what you could call motivation. Um, if I were to try and do my best to steel man the shit out of it, it is when he was growing up, he was beaten by his father. And his father would throw flowers to tyrants. Um, and so when he was doing his stuff, he was like, man, I hate you, Dad, but also you left me, and I wish you would come back. So that's, that's your baseline history. Really embarrassing. And then mm -hmm. it, it moves on to him describing power being something that cannot be innocent. And if God was all-powerful, that means he should have been able to stop Lex's dad from beating him, and he didn't. So he's an evil son of a bitch. And that means that uh, all powerful equals all evil or can't be all good and should be stopped. And um, he then says, we need a silver bullet for gods. And so with Superman, he's, des he's designing his silver bullet being kryptonite. And so if you stop there, you'd be like, so he just wants powerful people to not exist, I guess. That, he, just, he just doesn't like it. Powerful well, yeah, people. because if, if you're powerful, you can't be all good. So you should die. Um... <laughs> then it gets really weird, because he's like, I guess, pro-Batman, but not really. He doesn't really get an opinion on that. Um, but he does sort of aim to have Batman kill Superman, because he wanted him to steal his kryptonite. And then he's going to aim to push Superman to want to kill Batman. And so, if you disregard everything I just said, this gets weird, because it seems to me that he's excited to have them duel in general. Like he he calls it. Fight yeah, night. he's like excited. Like at the 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 conversation at the top of the building, he's so fucking giddy about it. It's strange. He's like, oh, it's so exciting! Can't wait for it. And uh, the way he's gonna do it is, you know, Batman kills you, you're dead, and your mother's dead. If you kill Batman, um, and bring me his head, I will free your mother. And it's like, what? How does this like? What does that have to do with what Lex wants? You know. He's like, he wants Superman gone, but he's willing to have Superman kill Batman. I, I'm, oh, I'm lost. I'm it, totally it, lost. It really seems that it becomes, he just wants to stir the pot and see what happens. Yeah, because like, that's then, what it turns into. I think that's bad that's enough like... in terms of just he's made choices that have nothing to do with what I thought he wanted. And then he creates Doomsday. Why the fuck <laughs> would you create Doomsday? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh well, he, he describes him as he's Superman's doomsday, and it's like, you thought that Batman might have killed Superman, and you might have created a giant monster for no reason. Also, Imagine if he kills Doomsday, it, or if Doomsday kills Superman like you think he will, that'll leave Doomsday around. Exactly. It's like, he can't what do you want? Control Doomsday. And so, because it flexes issue. Well, if Lex's issue is that we can't have super powerful entities be around because they're not all good, that means he's appealing to, like, goodness. Yeah. I assume so that the world <laughs> won't get destroyed and people get yeah. destroyed and all that stuff. But he creates Doomsday with the intention of him destroying Superman so that now he's just replaced Superman with, with Doomsday. Instead of having a not all good superhero, he creates a literally all evil superhero. Why? Uh oh Stonks. god guys guys it's the guy that says Evil that this, it's the guy that says BVS is good and civil war is bad saying Doomsday would never live if Superman died. Why? Why? So Lex, Why? Lex made a timer to have time to kill Doomsday if Superman dies. With what? He doesn't have kryptonite. Water. He's lost all what? of his kryptonite. He went to Batman. This is, this what? Is, Does he have like a, black psoriasis this of the heart? This is the guy that says that uh, Zemo is a terrible villain in Civil War because his plan relies on Tony Stark being upset upon finding out that Bucky killed his parents and yeah, not being um, willing to like listen to reason. And I'll be honest, you've just highlighted to me another issue. Why would Lex allow Batman to steal all of his kryptonite instead of like half of it? And then why wouldn't Lex have that be his contingency plan when Superman returns? Hey, <laughs> is this, that's Superman. Oh. Anyway, also, wait, wait, the timer wait, is wait, for... Wait, okay. wait, I was making a fucking joke. So, <laughs> when Superman returns, <laughs> uh, he'll land and be like, you weren't successful with your... And then he just holds out his kryptonite rock, and Superman's like, ah, no, ah, stop. And then he just stabs him with his little kryptonite knife that he would have made. And it's over. Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> thank you, Defender, for making the film worse. This is a commonality when it comes to... Uh, EFAP, but, but also, the film timer? doesn't need your help to be bad. <laughs> what timer? Like, that's not in the film if, at all. Well, he so, gave him diabetes. The timer, but it's for, Type it's 4 for, diabetes. Uh, 
it's for Martha. Like he gets a timer that Why goes Why did you off. say that name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the timer is just uh, to indicate once Doomsday's finished cooking and when he's run out of time to save Martha. I think. Oh, yeah. the cookies are done. But it, like oh. the timer has nothing to do with killing Doomsday. He has he has no way of of killing Doomsday. There's nothing that Lex has that can kill Doomsday. You fucking idiot. I don't even think that he um, world, he has world. to do any kind of activation for Doomsday. It just sort of Dude, just, just uh, erupts. It, it, this this is reminding me of the uh, Doc Ock set up cameras argument. That's that's well, what this is. Oh, he's he set up a timer to kill Doomsday. Is is he trying to suggest that Doomsday is like in a microwave, and if he turns off the microwave at any point before go, that Doomsday won't have completed his gestation? Is that is that the argument? Because uh, Doomsday is already wriggling okay. around when Superman arrives so like that doesn't work either but uh that would mean that, that even if the the argument for rag still stands that if he beats superman then what are you gonna do you got a giant orc monster that is probably twice as powerful as superman twice as angry and has no interest in helping people at all running around metropolis yeah he's just evil he's just replaced superman who at least is trying to be good and is mostly doing good i guess in a weird way like he's, he's yeah trying god bless him but you replace that with <laughs> Doomsday. Why? You just remind. Are you gonna create an extra? You gonna create Doomsday's Doomsday to kill Doomsday? Um, in that scene, because it's really funny. <laughs> I don't know. So you picture yourself as Batman, right? You just blew up the room with all the fire. Martha Kent's in it. You rescue her, and you start to leave. But then before you leave, you're like, "Wait, is that a phone over there?" Huh? Walks over to the phone. And he's like, "Oh, it's a direct line to Lex Luthor. I'll pick it up." And then he hears Lex Luthor say, "Is that the cook? I presume the, the she's dead." Then and then Batman just goes, "Oh, he he says like a is, is whatever broken." And Batman just goes, "I'd rather do the breaking in person." It's just like, did you did you call Lex to tell him you're gonna kill him? <laughs> and just, what the fuck, Batman? He's such a weirdo. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's some hilarious shit. I would say. What a oh, sweet 20 seconds to animation. There you go. You're running out of time there, Lex. And it just doesn't seem like a great plan, you know? But uh, apparently the Kryptonian computer told him that if he was to drop uh, a Kryptonian body into the goo and combine it with his blood, he would create a giant monster that is capable of killing Superman. And so he did. Well, that's Wait, just intuitive. That? Yeah, Wait, that how sense. did he know that? The Kryptonian because, I mean, told him, presumably. Because that's the bio juice for the oh. Krypton babies. <sighs> <laughs> or That's something. So, so it, it only makes sense if you put Zod in there and your blood <laughs> that it makes a super monster that could kill Superman. It's it's only it's totally intuitive. There's nothing yeah. about that that doesn't make sense. Just, yeah, the UI is super easy to use. It's so yeah. fucking insane that I wish one of the characters like Batman would be like, "What the hell is your plan? Like, what <laughs> what is any yeah. like, dude? I know you're evil, but Yeah, if I was his like assistant, you know. Is that it? <laughs> yeah, pretty, well, uh, I guess it's time to begin his, his just, just... I was going to say, Lex doesn't make any sense is the point of that. Um, and Lex will never make yeah, any sense ever again because he's got all of the Kryptonian knowledge in his head. That's like a justification for how he does anything now. Um, is He spent like an hour in that computer and just told him everything ever. By the way... <laughs> That's all you need to know. The Kryptonian computer says um, we, have, we have knowledge stored from over 100,000 planets. So it's confirmed that Kry Krypton managed to spread to over 100,000 planets. Like, it's not just that they but spread for 100,000 years. when Krypton years. died, they all just stopped yep. living. Yeah, they just abandoned all of them. Before they even died, they 100,000 planets. They actually say, I think, 100,000 worlds, so that could refer to systems. Uh, yeah, is there any reason why Earth is so important to Darkseid? Oh, I guess well, this is all going to be fun to talk about when the Snyder Cut falls out. Hey, his name sounds like the words Darkseid. Yeah. <laughs> Is he a villain? Yeah. Uh, uh, I hope so. Apocalypse, so cool. but it's, it's oh my goodness K gracious. And, uh, He's like Shadow the Hedgehog. 100,000 um. planets had their chance. <laughs> <laughs> This is part three of my defense of Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman. <laughs> Imagine part. having to say yeah. those words. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's my such a, god. It's like, I'm so sorry that you did this. Or oh, I attempt to answer common criticisms about the film in order to show that there might be fail, more to appreciate than people think. In part one.
more to appreciate than people think. It's like, oh boy. Oh, you, you maybe appreciate how terrible it is. This film's portrayal of Batman, and in part two, I covered its portrayal of Superman, as well as the fights hmm. he gets into. This time, we'll go over the portrayal of Lex Luthor, as well as his oft misunderstood master plan that drives the plot of the movie. I would Ooh. love to see how we misunderstand master that. plan. His, oh, his I love master that. plan. <laughs> oh, this is master fun. plan that should have no way of working in any way whatsoever, and it manages to work anyways somehow. <laughs> Just burst of years. That is a three syllable word for any thought too big for little minds. That's also a cringe. That's line. not true though. <sighs> That's a suit. Yeah, that is super cringe. It's also not true. So, odd start. Let's soldier forth. Mm. Next category circles. <laughs> oh, that was just a clip in there because this is a weird character who's. Yes, he um, I think it's. Player. I think it's more broad. A lot of people who are super into like the Snyder stuff will always talk about how smart it is and the people, you know, one of the common ones I see is, oh, people hate what they don't understand. It's like, you guys gotta, like, oh, I, get off that. I hate it because I, I understand know. it. Well, <laughs> yeah. if you remember, uh, and I know this because of the Red Light Media coverage, in, like, an interview or a panel, even um, uh, Ben Affleck said he, he like, oh, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was, like, too, in the script was a little too intelligent for him and he couldn't quite understand all of it. <laughs> 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 He's playing with all these themes that are a little too smart for so me, but you know. <laughs> also, I like that it's Jesse Eisenberg's master plan. It's not even Lex Luthor. <laughs> this Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor just isn't Lex Luthor. It would have been much better with some older, more imposing actor that's more stern and. I'm more than happy for you to adapt away, but holy shit, was this character frustrating, mm. annoying, yeah. and idiotic? Like, oh, I, I would I was... have. If you said we're gonna roll the dice and we're gonna cast like a different actor, I'd say fucking go for it. Just do yeah. it. Like they Tom Selleck with... is Lex Luthor. I'm like, okay. If they ended up with Danny DeVito, I'd be like, well, I feel like you could probably <laughs> do something with it. <laughs> um, At least the film could say that it's playing him as a joke, and I would have believed them. And yeah, and I would, I would honestly be like, so you want to go for this like darker, more realistic take on the superhero world? Why not go with a safe adaptation of Lex Luthor as in like a, a ruthless businessman who's ready to take down the threats he perceives, but he himself wants to be powerful, research wealthy and stuff. And like a lot of people say it, and it, it just should happen. I think I think uh, Brian Cranston would have been perfect. I think I think the uh, Lex Luthor from him. Brian Cranston. But um, and I'm pretty sure or Mark a, Strong. Yeah, yeah, I'd be on, on board with that. Um, the I, I think there was a thing about like someone asked him in some interview, was like, "Would he do it?" He was like, "Yeah, I'd be on board to do that." It's like they went with Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> it's like okay then. Um, and also, people people have said that they thought you know, especially the way he acts in this movie, that he might have made a better Joker. But it's not just that it's Jesse Eisenberg. It's, his motivation seems to be chaos for chaos sake. Yeah, and that's quite a bit more like the Joker. Than Lex right. Luthor, from what I understand, I'm not super familiar. What's Lex Luthor supposed to be like? Ideally, like what's and I think pretty like the, I mean, my impression from all the different Lexes I've seen is just that um, control, power, intelligence, wealth, like the he's just a, a classic businessman in a way. Cold, calculating. Uh, but he, yeah, doesn't lose his shit. He's uh, a too -ish. easily. And, um, yeah, a little bit. But you, of course, you don't have to do that. But I don't know why you wouldn't have. I like honestly. But, all right. Someone in the comments said Michael Sarah wasn't available. <laughs> 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 oh, that's Nimble, great. Older and bald with no hair. Jesse bald Eisenberg, no hair? Lex Luthor. Wait, isn't it? He has no hair. Bald with no hair. Bald with no hair. Oh damn! <laughs> like on his entire body, like well, eyebrows that must be and what be, yeah. everything. Oh man! It almost felt like, like, yeah, like giving him that much hair was a very deliberate choice. It's like, look, he's not at all. He's gonna become the Lex Luthor, you know. You're like, right? Okay. And imposing, yeah, he and does. older, uh -huh. and bald with no hair. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor is an attempt to update the character for a modern audience. Uh, that worked yeah, well. well. Right, right down. That's to why the book modern book, audiences right? loved it. Uh, <laughs> update. I bet Gene Hackman's Lex Luthor is more adapted for a modern audience than like than this Lex Luthor. Hell yeah. I, I bet that Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor is better adapted for a modern audience. They probably all are. <laughs> Compared to it's. <laughs> like... 
It's one thing to say that, hey, it's different. It's allowed to be different, which I totally agree with. But he's like, no, this is more updated. This is how it should be for a modern movie. Like, oh, come on. Mm. Now you're just now you're not saying that, oh, it's different. It's allowed to be different. You're saying that yeah. it's actually better that it's like this. What about old like Lex Luthor as an archetype is ill suited to, you know, modern audiences. It's very, I don't want to say typical, but, you know, fairly standard villain template yeah, there's shit tons of those people in the real yeah. world yeah <laughs> it works station of legs compliment for my superman because that's essentially no, what we tried you, to do with man of steel was bra- <laughs> <laughs> he was reading his scripts guys don't listen to him yeah. he was paid to do this he d- doesn't mean it he don't mean it the modernization of legs is a good compliment for my superman because that's essentially what we tried to do with man of steel was bring superman to the present day in the modern world and Lex is a facet of that. Rather than the tired old depiction of Lex Luthor as an But those are all three different depictions. Uh, is, like, is he really just gunning what's, what's for like, well, doing in the middle? Look, he's wearing a suit, so... <laughs> the new Lex can't be wearing a suit. Yeah, if you need an evil, maniacal, crazy ideologue of a businessman, just have him, like, own a social media company or something. Well, that's probably um, what they were going for. I think so. Yeah. Uh, oh. Of course, he was he was um, Mark Zuckerberg in the Social Network, and he's not like. <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't know. Like this is the thing. You've got a lot of different. Uh... Oh my God, that's terrifying. Um, you've got so many different options, and uh, I guess they, the, as as Henry said, and I guess they all agree the best complemented. This Superman, which in some ways is true, I suppose. Um, it's all terrible. It's just like you just sort of mix more terrible in, it sort of blends. And you're like, yeah. I just wouldn't have recommended it myself. An evil capitalization of corporate greed, the filmmakers realize that the self made billionaires of today are more likely to be philanthropic. Wait, but the top left would look way closer to a Luther <laughs> archetype. <though>. Yeah. <laughs> also. Like you, could, like if you don't think people wouldn't believe a billionaire could be evil, I don't know what to tell you. Also, it's a lot of anti-corporate sentiment. This is the, the argument's yeah, changed quite a bit. now for me. Like this is all five of these people would probably be a hell of a lot more compelling in the movie than whatever the character they tried to generate in this movie was. Mm-hmm. Like, um, they're not insane. Like one of them's a meme lord. That's not also. really. Lex Luthor in this movie <laughs> isn't a self-made billionaire. His dad, he inherited it. Oh, that's true. He didn't. Yeah, he never talks about like his achievements. He just sort of fell into the business. So it's, like, All right. it's not even apt to compare him to Jeff Bezos or like Elon Musk. I'd actually quite like an affable Lex Luthor that's very charismatic and doesn't seem villainous at all uh, for much of the movie. I think yeah. that, that'd be interesting. Or maybe also, I never buy that. that... I, you only have shows what? that side, like in secret, sort of thing. Yeah, like you know, when you first see him for the first few scenes that he's in, he's very likable. You almost kind of root for him. I think that that'd be an interesting way to take it because uh, the character of Lex Luthor kind of relies on him having good publicity. Mm-hmm. So I think really trying to uh, to nail that would make for a solid depiction of Lex Luthor, not guy that you know shoves Jolly Ranchers into senators' mouths. I, I don't buy him as the CEO of this massive company. Like, no, no, in that everyone who works for him is like, oh yeah, totally fine with it. He's clearly insane. And uh, yeah. I just, I guess, I just find it amusing. He's like, oh, the archetype of the bold guy in the suit. It's like it's not what we have today. Shows us a bold guy in a suit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a bold strategy. Type. Involved in the tech industry, people like Mark Zuckerberg, for example. And so, who better to play uh, him than Mark Zuckerberg himself? We wanted a character who would okay. show us exactly what a genius entrepreneurial businessman. <laughs> no. Entrepreneur. So you no. failed magnificently. <laughs> Excellent. No. Thank Stop you. it. <laughs> Stop saying those things. You. you don't even have him act like Mark Zuckerberg in the Social Network. You have him act yeah. like. Yeah, they're not auditioning for the Joker. Or he the is Riddler. quite a character in the Social Network. It's, it's a good movie. I would recommend it. Um, it in this, he's mm-hmm. just really annoying. And and I guess you, to get more substantive than that, um, you don't understand him at all. He's really confusing in every scene. He's um, he seems you to just don't get it. Conflicting motivations throughout, and like all of his lines are attempting to be really um, 
uh, the word lofty, I think, where like, quirky he says something. And the combination like of quirky and lofty. Like, he says it, and it's like, oh, how weird that you said that. But at the same time, someone who fucking loves Snyder movies will be like, oh my god, think about what he just said. The angels, they come from below. Okay. <laughs> like, Wait, what? <laughs> and you're like, all right. That's deep. Whether it's a Steve Jobs or the guys who started Google. Do you know that all those people have personalities, though? <laughs> I also like the implication that all of those people are like act like Lex Luthor. It's like probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's an insult, isn't it? <laughs> hey, you're like Ma Mark Zuckerberg. Is this you? It's like what the f what. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not he, that overtly evil. Yeah, he's closer to like Superman. He's like an alien. They've not got it right, you know. Jet, we wanted a young, compelling guy to play that role. Hmm. This new Lex Luthor is more concerned with elevating his public image than he is with merely accumulating. He no, he's not. No, no he's, he's not. not. When this was like, that a part of the thing that he did? What? This is like the one scene that he does anything close to that, but the purpose of this is to put uh, Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne in the room. Or at least I thought it was. Because he wants I to, thought so. Like, I don't remember what this is for outside of that. The whole, like, he wants the public he has to, to see him to make him aware of each other. I don't remember that being an element in the movie. Remember when he gets on the stage, he gives a really unnerving speech. Where he's like, mm -hmm. yes. and you're just like, what yeah. the fuck? He like Everyone's has these like, random uh... outbursts where he's yelling. Yeah. I love the idea of Public um, image. Very Lex, cool. Lex Luthor actually. caring about everyone admiring him and stuff, but like they didn't do that with this. Wealth. This revision of the character wasn't planned from the beginning. In an interview with Entertainment that. Weekly, Zack Snyder revealed that Jesse Eisenberg was originally supposed to play Jimmy Olsen. What? The photographer okay. from the beginning who shot in the head after after, after, <laughs> watching, after watching his performance of Lex Luthor, I really want to see the cut where we see Jesse Eisenberg get shot in the head. Yeah, I what an upgrade! You're like you're gonna be in it for one minute. Now you're a main villain. You're like, oh, cool. <laughs> okay. But during his audition, he cold indifference about the film's subject matter that Zach began to think that this was what the smartest man in the world might be like in real life. What? Oh my the god. Man in the world. Wow. Why would you put this really? in your video? This is awful. The smartest oh my man god. in the world. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think Zack Snyder is actually a 14 year old. The smartest man yeah. in the world would conclude. It explains I should, everything. I the writing, the characterization. A fucking doomsday monster to kill the strongest hero on earth You're like why i can't believe it <laughs> what real life ego driven sociopath with more than a few personality defects he's dealing with a lot of what we would consider kind of modern psychological problems <laughs> what <laughs> Modern uh, okay. problems, okay, <laughs> such as my dad doesn't love me. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, how relatable. Oh my god, this. Oh, <laughs> very modern. So, I'm, I'm glad there's. Kids. I'm glad there's tape on the ground so he knows where to stand. I'm glad there's those images of his incredible character in the background to just illustrate like how wonderful he was. So memorable. And we'd probably diagnose him today as some kind of narcissistic sociopath or something where he doesn't- Why would you let Why... someone do that to you? Why would you uh, include this in your know. footage here? Just why? This is what narcissistic uh, sociopaths do. They shove Jolly Ranchers Because it's quirky and it's mentally unstable, so he, he slides Jolly Ranchers in your mouth. It's cherry. And he is, he's a narcissist sociopath and everyone's fine with him. Like, this is what a like, narcissist- oh, yeah. A narcissist sociopath will give you candy. I'll put it I guess. in your mouth and be really. He'll creepy, slide yeah. that sucker right in your lips. And they made it so weird. And you'll just he, like, stand there and eat it. He like offers it, and the guy's like, "Nah." And then he goes, "It's cherry," like as if like, do you, do you, you, of course you want it. It's cherry. You're like, what? Do you, do you think that the original <laughs> actor for Lex Luthor was uh, was Kevin Spacey, but they had to fire him because he wouldn't he wouldn't do this scene if uh, if the actor. That he's shoving a Jolly Rancher into is above age. That was a that was a long joke for a payoff that everyone <laughs> saw. I I but I appreciate it. I understand. Doesn't have you know that are maybe like kind of empathy. He sees people as kind of you know paper dolls. Pawns. He did he to keep he, this real. He sees people as paper dolls. Does he? 
Okay. What do you mean by paper dolls? <laughs> like, like, does he mean puppets? Paper doll, like um, things that he can paper dolls? play with. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. No one would say, no one would say paper dolls if they meant puppets. Surely, like That's, paper yeah, dolls I mean. must be like its own thing. Let me Google that. Maybe paper dolls are a thing. Doesn't have you know what we like, would consider I, maybe like kind of empathy. Dolls. He sees people as kind of you know paper dolls, pawns. Paper dolls. They're figure. They're, yeah, they're just like they're just pictures of things. Oh. So he sees people as like, like hollow. Is the point, I guess. It's not even hollow. They're two dimensional. Oh, he sees people as two dimensional. Then I guess. Reminds me of him. All right. <laughs> oh, pawns! I thought he said pawns, as in like P O N S. What the fuck a pawn is? <laughs> pawns. Uh, paper yeah, pawns. That's the American accent. Pawn pawn pet a pawn. I remember that game. Yeah, okay, so he sees them as two-dimensional and to be manipulated. Alrighty, I follow now. I didn't really get that from the movie, outside of when he's like, Well, Superman, I got your mum. Now you gotta go pill kill Batman. I'm so smart. I'm the smartest man this... in the world. Redesign in line with comic book history, Luxembourg is lifted directly from the pages of Superman Birthright. Uh, Luxembourg? I don't care. I guarantee you. So, what happened the last time we covered... Quinn Perfect, and he referenced the comics to support his arguments. I got several DMs, and uh, also several from Meme Repository. He misrepresented like crazy what he gave as evidence for how it was faithful in the previous video. So we can basically throw and, all this out. And also, Which, he's defending the movie like it doesn't have to follow the comics, but now yeah. it's good because it follows the comics, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is the thing. Even if there was... A, a comic, well, like 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 one for one, every pe everything that was in the movie is just in this comic called Superman Birthright. I wouldn't give a fuck. I'd just be like, oh, that comic sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter what the medium is. Yeah, did we just ever? Uh, did we ever address the context for why Superman was fighting Shazam in that one clip that he included in his previous video? Oh well, that would I guess we could. Uh, we never did it on like an actual EFA, I don't think. Yeah, so I got I got DM'd by a guy, uh, Hero Speed, who uh, provided just a very brief summary of what the context was. It was that uh, Lex Luthor tricked them into fighting in an empty part of the city that Lex Luthor built for the homeless. So not only no civilians were hurt, but it was all set up to make Superman look like a massive threat to everyone. This was one of the worst examples Twin Perfect could have chosen to justify Man of Steel. There you go. Do you not destroy the homeless if you give them homes? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's good. He could be a bad guy. I'm trying See, to have some I fun like here. With already more video. more likable than Lex <laughs> Luthor. Um. So yeah, I. Uh, Someone who worked on this comic is called Lenal F U. What? Is that supposed to be? Yeah. Is, is that a like an artist name or a F U? Lionel Lionel <laughs> F U. Lionel Lionel Lionel. Yeah, I don't know. That's quite the name. F you. Uh, yeah, the, the the reason I brought that up was just, one, we don't care for these arguments anyway, but two, there's probably a lot of context he won't include, so, you know. Nope. And we can't, and this is the thing, it's not nice to do that to people who don't read the comics, like like poor old EFAP. We, we, we can't even fight back, so it's Why? not even, you shouldn't be doing this. Lex as a man prone to outbursts and feverish ravings about how alone he is in his intellect. Wait, let's read some of this dialogue, hold on. Uh... Translation. This is it, Clark. This is the week. By Friday, Saturday, and the latest, at the latest, everything I've labored for my entire life is going to pay off. Do you hear me? Clark, I'm going to make history slower. No, faster. Faster and further and across the stars at better than light speed, Clark. And you are there. Oh, all right. I'm going to stop. Where? That's... <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on. This Do you know why, of all the amazing, cutting-edge, technocentric cities on Earth, I came to this jerkwater burg? I assumed your dad moved you here. No, I moved him years ago oh while traveling. I unearthed something in Smallville, something that validated every single theory I've ever had that we are not alone in this universe. Oh, you also, mean... the United States' largest ball of yarn. So wait, this is to support that Lex Luthor had a son who was eccentric, and so it's okay that Jesse Eisenberg is terrible. 
I don't yeah. see the through line. Perhaps <laughs> yeah, that will be explored. I mean. like, though oh. my hopes are not high. I'm I'm just being told by a, a, a guy in the EFAT podcast talk channel that uh, he's read Superman Birthright and this dude is straight up lying and misrepresenting it to help his oh, arguments, great. which you know isn't a surprise. Well, I'm assuming I that this. I'm, I'm assuming this Lex or Alex, like whatever <laughs> the name of this character is uh, is got nothing in terms of connections to the Lex we saw in. Uh, at least, like, maybe, I don't want to deny the idea that, um, they may have used it as inspiration or whatever, but, like, the execution, I, I've got some faith that this comic was written in a way that was stronger than what we got in the movie. That's, the, there you go. Intellectual and this birthright Lex was captured in Eisenberg. Also, everything we just read, that doesn't even feel like Eisenberg's Lex, you know? Yeah. Uh, a completely I'm... different character. Yeah. Like, this guy actually seems like a more stereotypical mad scientist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mad scientist is a good way to, yeah. Berg's performance. Because God Perfectly. is tribal. God takes sides. No man in the sky intervened when I was a boy to deliver me from daddy's fists and abominations. Mm. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is like one of those things where you, if you're the director, you see this and you're like, clearly I was mistaken. <laughs> this was the wrong move. God I selected the wrong thing to do. God didn't say, "Hey, from Jesse, Daddy's I, like, uh... I love the enthusiasm, Jesse. Let's reel it back just a little bit. Maybe drop the hmm at the end. Hmm. Just we're gonna cut. Like that you're part too out. quirky to take seriously. Like I don't believe um, you. To give it feels like he's just to trying to be Jim Carrey's Riddler. To give it feels example, like an actor. Um, to give to give another example of of how you can like. I think Fringy and I end up in trouble with this a lot with people. It's the whole subtlety thing. We like when I'm talking about dialogue. Yeah. So he's like, "My dad beat me." I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, there's there's, there's, this, there's this show. I never reference it, but um, uh, I'm gonna give a new example today because I can keep doing them because there's so many of them because the show has really awesome writing in it. But um, Sleep they're discussing. The potential for um, domestic, like, like abuse for a, a father on a child, and uh, the team are like, "Oh, there's no, um, there's no evidence that the, the parents ever hit uh, the kid." And one of the characters says, "A father doesn't have to be physical to be abusive." And then they all look at him, and then they look back at the work, and it's like, "Ooh." Um, and there's just a subtle implication of something that may have happened with that person in that way, and that's why they said that. They, 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 they wanted to push back on the idea that you can only be physical. It's like, oh man, that's something to think about. Meanwhile, God didn't stop Dad from punching me. <laughs> oh no. You tussle his hair like, you'll be okay. It's just uh, what a what to me. Like, this is where you start. You're like, oh, your character says exactly what happened to them. That's the best way to explain a history. But, um, yeah, I guess you guys are endeared. I don't know. <laughs> there was a or from a book called Superman Birthright, where Sorry. he was too smart. He understood too much. He was. That's not this Lex Luthor, by the way. He is not. <laughs> no, they said he's a genius. <laughs> they said he's a genius. It's not this Lex Luthor, though. Isn't that all you have to do when you write in a character? You say, this character was a genius, and then they're a genius. Pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, it worked for the BBC Sherlock. He was really yeah. rich. Oh, um, you yeah. wouldn't be rich unless oh. you were a genius. His mind could never turn off. There are many who say that they okay. don't like this Lex simply because they don't like Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> That's weird. I'm, 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 I've I'm, never I'm, met Jesse Eisenberg. I'm fine with I, Jesse Eisenberg. Just, he, he's a good actor. Yeah, I don't. Like, Maybe it's his performance. Have you thought of that? <laughs> It'd be the okay. casting and not the actor. Well, Maybe yeah, Lex his, I think he could have played a Lex Luthor, probably. Especially, I could see him playing a Lex's son, but not with this writing and not yeah. with his performance. Yeah, if things like are that, different, it's... then they'd maybe be better. Yeah, yeah, he needs to go for a different personality entirely to make uh, Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor work. But um, Yeah, you're stacking the, stacking the cards against you on this one. Not saying you can't win, but it's a interesting decision. Yeah, just yeah because... A... Uh, well, I guess that his defense would rely on the idea that this is the only kind of Lex Luthor that Jesse Eisenberg could do, implying that Eisenberg doesn't have the talent to have like a, a larger range of possible performances yeah. for the character. He, um, yeah, it's he, kind of an insult to him a little his, bit. Well, his Mark Zuckerberg was closer to Lex than this was. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, or at least I, I say closer to Lex, uh, 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 closer to a character that I would presume to be someone like Lex in Lex's position. Uh, yes, because he's agree. still not like the Lex that I understand to be Lex from like in a faithful way. Because again, Lex is supposed to be charming and charismatic, right? Or at least to some degree. No, oh, and this guy isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's not a safe choice to cast Eisenberg instead of Heisenberg. But at the very least, Snyder should get points for boldness in the absence no, of boldness. No, no points for boldness. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed. Uh, yeah, okay. you don't get any. Yeah, you, that's not a. Yeah. That's like, oh, if he got his dick out and did a little helicopter, that's pretty bold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it would, it would earn that R rating in the extended edition. <laughs> I'd be proud of Zack, I suppose. Pop that in the Snyder Cut. <laughs> you know what? It, it would yeah. honestly, it, it would fit the performance rather well. It'd be like, yep, that's a thing that this Lex Luthor would do. Jesse does really successfully is he's able to really Very get across the complexities yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Complex. The complexities, huh? I'm getting very I mean, red complex. flashbacks, man. Which ones are those? And if you don't understand its complexity, you're just an idiot. You don't get it. So there, I can't lose. Oh, so complex. I'm an idiot. And to, to be fair, Mahler, there is a comic where where Lex does a little helicopter with his dick. So ah. that means it's good. Oh, it would be faithful then. <laughs> yes. It's called it's called Superman Helicopter. <laughs> Very simple name, but applicable. <laughs> simple name for a simple dick act. It's not about the subtlety. Subtlety's overrated. When no one was looking, Lex Luthor took 40 cakes. He took 40 cakes. That's as many as four tens, and that's terrible. <laughs> Why is it terrible to have... Is it terrible that he took them, or that there are 40 and 10 cakes? Maybe like, 40, if he had 10, stolen four, the ten one, cakes. it would have been okay-ish. Like, they can replace pretty easily. But taking the 40, that was probably meant for a lot of people. It could have been kids. Mm. Like, stealing 40 so, okay, cakes, yeah. It does feel like that's probably going to have more of an impact. Um, than it might what have he, if it was well, one. Well, I mean, what was he planning on doing with the cakes? That depends. Was he stealing it to give away? He was to going homeless? to eat them and then fall on Batman and crush him into a pancake. One way to do it. Oh my God, this really is movie Bob's Lex Luthor. Uh, the fairly small cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a small number of cakes for an average sized person. <laughs> I will become the cake. Of Lex Luthor. If you go back to the canon, in a lot of ways, it's very much in keeping the canon, with some the fuck traditional. That means. Look at this dude, and then think, "Oh, this is faithful." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, enough of your like dudes in suits. We 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 want we want. A, I mean, insane. I don't even Quirky know what man. to call him. Like he's like a hipster, insane person. He's quirky gimmick man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh, successfully, he's, so he's able to really get across the complexities of Lex Luthor in the film. If you go back to the canon, in a lot of ways, it's very much in keeping with some traditional Whatever versions of Lex means. that we just haven't seen in sort of mainstream pop culture recently. Again, how does that? Yeah, that's. that's <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't right say there. it. Oh, I love Lex blood. Luthor's motivation is muddled and confused. Finally, so what does this stand to gain from a fight between Batman and Superman? That's not the, no. The criticism isn't that. It's why would he? Uh, he would, why would he want him to fight? The answer I would assume is he's he's hoping Batman kills Superman because he hates Superman's power level. But the confusion well, for me is, it... is the if he like legit was like you better win Superman or I'm gonna kill your mom. And so if he did and then he didn't kill her, is that just game over for Lex? I guess my question would be, what does he stand to gain from Batman winning? Oh, sorry, Superman winning. Um, well, the idea is that God cannot be all powerful yeah. and all good. So it's either <laughs> but he... it's either Batman kills Superman and God is not all powerful, or Superman kills Batman and God is not all good. That's but the he already knows that. that. He'd just be proving to himself a thing I was, he I was knows. Gonna say, and Superman's, is already Superman's mm. literally like in trouble in this movie for being portrayed as someone who lets people die a lot. Uh, like he's like a, he's already hated by several people. There's the protests and stuff. So what, what would doing this do? Also, Batman is not quite beloved right now. 
And, um, Precisely. And if the report said yeah. Batman tried to kill Superman and Superman had to kill him to stop him, also that Superman's mother was being threatened, like, I don't know, this doesn't seem like a very effective plan uh... there, but, um, again, I don't know that, like, Lex won't survive. As soon as Superman's mum is safe, he's gonna fucking melt Lex. And then so, uh, the whole motivation of stopping so a god because they're too powerful is ignored in that case for the sake of proving a point that Superman can do evil things, which wouldn't even be true because he's trying to stop the death of his mother. This is a film for adults. Yes. <laughs> like, I think the, the idea is the only way that Lex doesn't kill Superman's mother is if he brings him the head of Batman, right? Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> what, what happens if, um, if Superman decides to just fly over to the warehouse where, uh, where they have Martha? Save her and then come back and kill Lex? Precisely. Like, like well, I mean, like, what's, what's Lex Luthor's plan if that, if that happens? Well, that's not the purpose of the scenes, so that was never going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you, it never could happen. Lex Luthor that reminds me of Kylo. It's, um, you start out kind of okay, oh my God. you get the basis, and then you add a thing in. You're like, okay, no, it's fucking with my basis. And then you add another thing, and you're like, okay, so that fucks with the first thing I threw in, and the baseline. I don't know what's happening anymore. And then it's like, you just have to stitch it all together in some way, shape, or form, whenever it needs to be in the, the way that it is. Also, he's insane. Shut up. Stand to gain from a fight between Batman and Superman. As a storytelling archetype, Lex Luthor is Superman's opposite. Oh. I don't care. I don't care. Well, once you start off by saying, like, as a storytelling da 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 and try and get into the meta of it, like, you've already kind of, like, uh, not a good start. Let's we'll just, see. let's, we'll ignore that part and see if he can argue that it just, it makes sense. Come on, you can do it. Ground it for us. At its core, Superman character is about having godlike powers and then choosing how to use them, if at oh, all. Oh, don't bring the up the scene, it's terrible. <laughs> oh, don't bring up this fucking movie and these fucking he scenes. He could have used oh. normal human powers to save his dad. Oh. Yeah, he could have used legs. Of this character would be one who has no such power, but seeks all the power they can get for personal gain. But what is the personal gain and what? But we don't want. Does, is it established that Lex wants a bunch of power for personal gain? Not really, no. I'm really mm, curious what no. the references would be for this. Yeah, he doesn't. If he come did, he would turn greedy. himself. Yeah, if he did, he might turn himself into a godlike monster, but he just creates one he can't control instead. Yeah, so, I'm I'm really curious how this is justified. And if you look at Lex Luthor, the opposite in every way to Superman. He's human, he's ego-driven, he has no powers, wants power and accumulates power, and Superman doesn't try and accumulate power, but he has power. Okay. Would be any kind That has that nothing to good. do with BVS, I'm sorry. <laughs> Which is funny because these are all behind the scenes. Jeff yeah. Johns, man, you did a great job, like shepherding this universe. You know, Kevin Feige of the DCEU worked out so well it feels, under your watch. <laughs> it feels like fluff. Like he's just he's he's putting this in to make it sound like he's saying something when he's not. Well, I'm, well, I'm presuming yeah. like that's the argument. Now give me the references, please. As power. The only way such a character would be any kind of match for Superman is if they could consistently outsmart him. They did, he did not outsmart Superman. He just hid his fucking mum and then said, Oh, you know what, Lois? I need Superman to be here right now. And what's the way to do it? Toss you off a roof. And he appears. And it's like, oh. And he does it later. So you're like, so he must have some kind of thing where he just knows where Lois is and he can instantly teleport to her if she's in danger, but he doesn't have it for his mother, which fucks the whole film. It's very strange. So you didn't outsmart him if that's something you've concluded, Lex. You're like, I know that Superman will just be able to hack onto anybody he loves who's in trouble, but simultaneously I will hide his mother and he I won't tell him where she is unless he kills Batman. How was that smart? Yeah. It's it's like it's like saying I snuck into your house while you were gone, and then once you opened your front door, I punched you. I outsmarted you. I was like, not really. You just no. you just ambush someone at their house it's not really outsmarting someone yeah and like it's not a and contest of, of who was smarter and do any of uh lex's goals and actions actually succeed in the end like uh, i mean no, he doesn't it, convince everyone that superman actually killed those yeah. people in the middle east I well it's it implied that he wants the parademons to come and they do eventually but oh, well, that's bizarre too if we 
ignore once he's gone insane. Um, it's a catastrophe for him. When does it's, that start, Mahler? I, I know, I know. We'll, we'll put that into the equation second, okay? First, without the insane, it's um, his doomsday project is fucking dead. Superman is considered a, like a hero and a martyr and everyone loves him. And he's dead now, so he can't even do anything evil. And, uh, and Batman is going to make a hero team that are very powerful. So it's just like, wow, Lex, and you're going to jail. You, you uh... <laughs> you really outsmarted us. Smartest oh. man alive right here. So <laughs> genius. In the past, as a Lex Luthor who's only trying to destroy Superman so that Superman won't get in the way of his plans for real estate monopolization. The rest of the world will be begging me for a piece of high-tech beachfront property. I mean, it makes more sense. Yeah, it does make more sense. This is dumb, but it makes more sense. At least you like understand, oh, this is what he's doing, and this is why, and this is what he's doing to accomplish it. You're like, okay, I get it. I understand. This is something. In fact, they'll pay through the nose for it. As rich and influential as he already is when Superman goes public, Lex probably wouldn't regard Superman as much of a threat to his empire or bank account. I don't see... So he's an idiot? Is that what uh, you're arguing? I don't even know what to do with that. Like, this Lex wouldn't care about Superman getting in his way because he's already rich. It's like, most Lex Luthers are already rich. Yeah, that's, that's general. That's if you had a poor Lex Luthor, that would be a departure from the norm. Yeah. Weird, weird argument. And Lycraman would probably not be all that interested in corporate greed. This. What are we? What are you doing right what? now? Like he's like okay. He's, he's, so Lex Luthor isn't just attacked by Superman strictly because he's like an average greedy capitalist or something. He usually does something a little bit more catastrophic. Um. Yeah. The the idea that he's like oh he's invested in Bitcoin. <laughs> piece of shit <laughs> fuck him up. Like, oh no because that's what he's trying to do right now he's like why would Clark Kent care about that it's like well no you write it so that Lex does something that would gain Superman's interest not just Actually, what's going on with these stories right that's, yeah like since when does Superman only get involved when he's like wait which offshore account did you recently move your money to and Lex is like <laughs> you'll never know Superman <laughs> new update of Lex would need a different reason to want to destroy Superman. One that's in keep- No, that one is still You wouldn't fine. have to, you made him that way. Uh, you could still uh, do the, the, that classic motivation, yeah. if you want to call it that. Like, it, yeah, the, per, the a villain's greed is, is a, it, the timeless classic. Because greed is understandable. Being with his new narcissistic things. drive to improve his PR. And is again quite similar to the Lex yeah. Luther in Birthright. The birthright Lex feels alone, care. an outcast from a society that's afraid of his intelligence. Uh, I don't care about this comic. Afraid of his intelligence, okay. He's driven by a need to find extraterrestrial life in his hopes of finding a place to fit in. This has nothing to do with the Lex Okay, from BBS. this isn't the movie. I'm sorry. He said they adapted it perfectly, and now he's talking about all these things. <laughs> Something completely different? Yeah. Like, if someone said, like, oh, out of curiosity, did you catch in BVS the whole, like, um, Lex is so intelligent that, like, people, f like, fear him? Like, no? Oh, no, I saw a guy awkwardly let him stuff a Jolly Rancher into his mouth, <laughs> yeah, like, but most, that was about it. Most interactions in the film have people being standoffish with him. They're like, you're a weirdo. Not yeah, that he's no one sees him as the super charismatic hero that they admire or respect, or, or even are afraid of. They're just yeah. like, you're weird. He's just a fucking weirdo. That seems to be what everybody's consensus is. And then it's like, okay, but you caught the how he has like super interest in aliens because he's an outcast. Like, no. When was that in the movie? With people as he is, as Superman puts it, he just wants someone to talk to. It's a more sympathetic. When Superman makes himself known to the world, Lex is upset that the alien life he spent so many years searching for looks down on him as if he's unimportant. This is nothing to okay. do with Okay, I don't... Yeah, I don't... I don't care. You're just telling me about a different cool. story. It's like, all right then. He tries to destroy Superman by exposing him to the public as an alien, and then stages a Kryptonian invasion that he frames Superman for being part of. Oh, like, you're describing events that could easily just take place in an ad adapted version in BVS if you wanted them to. Lex could do fucking anything. You don't have to make him a weird social network type leader as if that was your only choice. It's just funny to me because he's like, 
describing how Lex had to be the way he was in BVS for it to make sense that Clark would have an issue with him. And then simultaneously he's like, this story about Lex Luthor depicts him as someone who is, is feared for his intelligence and eventually finds kinship in the idea of aliens because of the outcast nature of his like personality. And when he discovers that Clark um, is an alien, he's like, oh, I'm going to stage the Kryptonian attack on Earth to make him seem like a bad guy. It's like, oh, you, I mean, that could, that could just be in the film, actually. <laughs> yeah, because I don't because I watched the film, I think, and I don't remember any of that. Well, of course, I'm, yeah, not, he's I'm just... not sure what point he's getting to now, because it can't possibly be that they adapted this. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know where yeah. he's going. Uh, all, all he's currently doing is listing different versions of Lex Luthor that sound a lot better than what we got. Yep. Kill Superman, stop his pretend invasion, and make himself look like the world's savior. That the Batman dumb. v Superman Lex is exactly like this. No, 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 no are you insane? No. no. Why would you this say that? This is bizarre. Exactly? No. I th I I <laughs> thought I was memeing when I when I was like, oh, there's no way he's gonna say that this is like accurate. Because for reference, I saw the first two. I haven't seen this one. Literally, uh, I, I, I didn't realize he was going to say that either. I just said he's just listing different versions that sound better than what we got. <laughs> how <the fuck laughs> immediately, <did you> clue. <laughs> what? How? How did you? How do we get here? Look like, like the world's savior. The Batman v Superman Lex is exactly like this, with a pathological need to assert his superiority over everyone. Where? Like he's just. I mean, he's a. He's kind of a condescending prick, but that's sort of as far as it looks like it goes. Um, I mean, I guess I guess I felt him really trying to assert his authority over the guy that he, you know, he stuffed a Jolly Rancher into his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so a okay. So asserting authority and like superiority over people. Um, I guess you could say that when he's like when Superman's on his knees and he's like now doesn't he say something like now God does my will or something? Is yeah. is that like the only oh, reference yeah. we even have? And the job that and the Jolly Rancher, <laughs> we're, we're doing good, guys. Uh, the, the problem of of evil in the world, uh, the problem of absolute virtue, the problem of you on top of everything else, you above all. Ah, I that's can't believe God this is. is the final like what they used for the film. Yeah, it's it looks like he's like practicing learning his lines in front of a mirror at home. This is weird. You have that cringe Pepe face. You're just watching me like, oh. Yeah, this is cringe Pepe face. Stop. You cringe verse Pepe, Donna. Because ah, that's what God is. Tism. The entire plot of this film is hinged on Lex Luthor's jealousy of Superman. His anger that someone as intelligent as he is is. No, no it's, it's his hatred of. No, it's, it's explicit that he wants he, to he, kill him because he doesn't. He thinks all yeah. powerful people can't be good. I, I find he doesn't want to become all powerful himself, or else he would do something to make yeah, he himself would be evil. a better human. <laughs> or he yeah, would like... reference that in some way in the movie. He says, uh, "Yeah, if he, he, he there's says, plenty if... of Superman stories where Lex Luthor has some type of power armor that gives him the powers of Superman, but that's not this movie. Yeah, they didn't do that. And... <laughs> it's not about television. Has this is fascinating to me because, like, in this video, he's he's basically making the the argument that Lex Luthor's goal is to attain power. To well, it's very confusing because traditionally Lex Luthor wants to attain power. This is a different interpretation of Lex Luthor where he wants to attain power. Um, but the reason why is because he feels alone because he's too smart for the world. <laughs> um, but also he, I don't know, like. I, I feel like he, it's a lot simpler and worse. How does which he attain power? He, just, he creates Doomsday. You're like, he creates no? Doomsday. Yeah. He nearly punches he him. He doesn't in the attain face. power. He, yeah, yeah, he doesn't he attain any dies power at all in the movie. When, like, Doomsday's barely removed, like, the womb sack, and he's already almost killed he's Lex. Already, already <laughs> killed <laughs> like, oh, shit. I, um, like, his action motivation is that he hates God. Um, he's an edgy internet atheist. <laughs> yeah, it's really that, that's what I was gonna say. Is like you've got Man of Steel with all the the cringy uh, Jesus allegories, and now it's just continuing in BVS with Lex Luthor being the fedora wearing Reddit atheist. He wants to kill God like, with the kryptonite spear because God didn't stop his dad from hitting him, <laughs> from beating him up, and also uh, all God man, that's evil. pretty deep. It is. I know it's, it's really wow. clever. Don't forget. It's really clever that he had a painting with devils coming from the ground and then he flips it. 
Don't it forget, he's a genius. Does honest, it it reads like bad fourteen year old fan fiction, doesn't it? Like, it does. not even the good Zach, Zach Snyder's work, man. Yeah, that's his MO. Um, he it's so smart. It's so smart that I did he's... the religious imagery for Superman. When he's talking about the kryptonite in the early parts of the film, he says, um, why not create the silver bullet so that we don't have to rely on um, a monster to save us? Or something like that. Like, the idea being that Super Superman, sure, he defended us, but um, why not have the silver bullet ourselves? We don't have to rely on like him. Like, okay... But um, again, he's super confused. This, why do you? The fact that you had to make a video explaining his motivation in the film when he's the main villain is probably indicative of how fucking confusing it is, at least to some people. And the way he explains it is to say, "Oh, it's just like this comic that has a whole different plot." I was gonna say the amount of fluff that we've had to deal with without like understanding the actual film's portrayal of him yet. Like all these, he's been showing us loads of Lex Luthers. Yeah. And, like, um, well, it, he says it's exact. It, Lex Luthor in this movie is exactly like the one in the comics, where he like tries to stage an invasion, and then he's the one to save the day himself. That doesn't happen in the movie. Ugh. So the god like Superman. The bittersweet pain among men is having this knowledge is without us. power, because because that is paradoxical. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. He cares about it. He really cares about his personal image, guys. Yeah, he really cares about his public image. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I love the, this this fiction that he's invented about what this film actually is <laughs> keeps looping in on itself. I can't believe it. People do like, that all the time. Like, they have to invent it, a different film to defend. Yeah. Is it, but is it not an oxymoron to say that he is very outwardly focused, yet his fundamental goal is he wants to meet aliens who are as smart as he is so that he can have something in common with them? Isn't that like a? Isn't that an oxymoron? Well, he just said it's paradoxical. In what, way? what do you mean? So, he's making the argument that this Lex Luthor is very concerned with like his outward appearance and status, but like he's his actual motivation is that he wants to be friends with aliens because everybody's too stupid for him. I don't. You know what I mean? Like I don't see how those two can be. You're saying like he doesn't. Like, he doesn't if want he to be doesn't... seen as better than everyone else, but, like, he belongs Well, I think them? the problem is, if the implication is that he doesn't even value human relationships because he has nothing in common with them, why would he care what they think about him? Um, if Especially if, like, he wants to be friends with aliens. You know what I mean? Wouldn't he care more about what aliens think? So wouldn't he care more about what Superman thinks more than anything else? If that That's only assuming well, that what this guy's saying his motivation is is what it is it's not he, in the film. i don't know why he threw it in like it was really confusing i don't know if he's actually saying that that's what's happening for lex in this film because lex clearly fucking hates aliens yeah and he also makes his own <laughs> yeah he wants to make his own that can punch him in the face as soon as they're born you know it's not an alien he made him on earth He's um, a naturalized right. American citizen. I don't even he know if that, uh, how that works. Yeah. If you take like a body of someone who's Kryptonian and then you you poke them with electricity, goo, and blood, and then they wake up, is that does that count as like rebirth? I guess. You know, as long as they pay their taxes, I'm sure they won't care too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Rags? You can go and ask if he does. I just want to get you a bath bear. And. Uh... The only way he can prove that he's superior to Superman is to paint him as a danger to society. I don't know where you're getting this oh, from. Okay, so I don't know. But like Superman was already kind of like before the bomb and stuff even went off. People were outside with signs saying like Superman's a dangerous weird man. And they clearly oh, didn't like him. Well, first of all, they have reason to not like him, but the movie doesn't yeah. actually really touch upon that. Yeah, they the, just kind of they fuck that up too. about. Yeah, um, they, they, they forget about, like, the legitimate issues that would, you know, that Superman kind of caused for himself, among like, for his public image. So, like, first off, Lex Luthor doesn't have to do that. And secondly, the, uh, the thing, like, Lex Luthor could have really capitalized on that. He could have really done something to, uh, like, kind of get people up in arms about what happened, yeah. like, how Superman handled the Metropolis incident. He doesn't do it. It's like, it would have been a really good idea for him to do it. He well, just imagine, doesn't um, do it because... Imagine he roped in <laughs> Bruce. Like, Lex went to Bruce, because they're both the most richest people in the respective cities or whatever. Um, and he mm -hmm. was like, we need to create a campaign to warn people of Superman and what he's done. 
And so that, like, the Bruce yeah. side and the Batman side both have, like, an antagonism towards Superman. I think that would be pretty neat as well. But, um, I've seen this movie three times, and when he says to me he wants to prove Jesus. he's better than Superman by, or more powerful or whatever than Superman by making him hated by everyone, I should be like, I don't, I don't even... I just thought he wanted to kill him. Like, I, I, I've got several references for proof that Lex is looking to kill Superman. I haven't got much in terms of Lex wants to prove he's better than him. Which, by the way, lame? Yeah. They need to see the fraud you are. With their eyes. Again, this lines up in terms of he hates God because he didn't save him from his dad's fist. And so now he sees, like, that appreciation of a godlike figure in Superman. So he's like, no, everyone, you need to understand, this guy sucks. Look how bad he is. But Superman and... Became God, lame. So Superman didn't save him from being beaten, so he's upset. Well, God didn't, and he's, he's, like, he's like, projecting that onto Superman. And Superman's power... I guess, but that's dumb. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I was gonna say, at least there's I, don't a, I guess there's a through line there, rather than, oh, he wants to be better than Superman. It's something, I okay. guess? If it honestly feels like he's he's torn pieces of Lex from other iterations, and he's trying to be like, see, that's what they're doing here too. It's Super like, glued him. Are yeah. they? I don't think they are. The blood on your hands. This is what Lex Luthor really wants, and the events of the movie revolve around his plan to get it. I don't hate the sinner. I hate the sin. And you're what the fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> yeah, I was actually about to be like, he just Wait, hates so the gays, all right. I don't hate the sinner, I hate just, the sin. I just... no, he doesn't hate the gays, he hates the gay. Ah, uh, that's true. That's Sorry, it. you're right. Oh man, like, this is so cobbled together. I don't hate the sinner. I hate the sin. And yours, my friend, is existing. <laughs> that's oh, so that's you like the indistinguishable Or he doesn't actually from... want to find aliens. He, he actually thinks that they're bad for simply existing. Yeah. If like, his sin is existing, then like he, the way to cure that is you have to make him not exist anymore. Right, Again, like, you gotta kill him. Thought, his whole plan it. was to kill him. Yeah, I don't if, know that's what he just sort of implied right here. Pretty I strongly. Think so. I think combining that with <laughs> your the sin is existing. Comment, combine it with the silver bullet comment and the 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 satisfaction that he knows Batman has the kryptonite, meaning he knows Batman can kill him now. It's like to, seems to me that his motivation is kill Superman because all powerful beings are not all good. Yeah. He, con he concluded this Superman because his dad powerful. beat him. It's a real <laughs> shit villain. <laughs> this is amazing. This is a villain for adults. And then you have all those references that go against that motivation, but at least you can fucking fish that out of the movie and be like, look, I found it. It's, a, it's Lex's motivation, guys. It's there. I knew I'm not insane. Luther's plan. None of this makes any sense. What was Lex Luthor's plan? <laughs> oh, I, I agree, boy. it doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, he hope so. This, this is, I guess, we'll go back and, and repeat a little bit on this. If uh, let the six of us putting our brains together, we've got a big hunk of kryptonite. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Well, plan Plan A. My idea: we just need to lure Superman here. Once we've sharpened at least. If our goal is to kill Superman. Yeah, yeah. Goal is to kill Superman. So, right. um, yeah, just get him here. We'll fashion some of this into a nice shop. Uh, as soon as he gets in range of it, he's fallen over. We'll move it toward him, so he starts like vomiting, or whatever. And then we could just drop it onto his head. He'll probably crush his skull, but at the same time, stab him again and again and again until he just dies. That's Plan A. Plan B, I suppose, would be to try and provide the kryptonite to the local vigilante who fucking hates Superman and try and get them to fight and hope that the vigilante wins. It's a bit weaker as a plan, I'd say. Um, but I suppose it could work. Um, plan, plan. Oh, uh, without without yeah, if we had a bunch of money, willingly. Plan C. By the way, we will we will create a Urukai with our own blood in the hopes that it kills <laughs> Superman. <laughs> okay. Sure. Oh, I have yeah, a, I feel I like a... if you gave a really if you gave a lot of money to some super trained killers who had all this equipment and stuff, and you hey, had a bunch of money to help them, you know, and you gave them the get? kryptonite, they'd be able to do it. They should get dead shot. <laughs> you should give him kryptonite <laughs> bullets, and then yeah, you can kill he Superman. Can. There you go. <laughs> Wait, right. so, did quick it. question. Uh, I, another potential plan. Does Lex Luthor have all the kryptonite by the time he sets off the bomb in the capital? Does he have it by that point? Yes, because uh, Batman 
takes the kryptonite after the capital yeah. bombing. We see that in the movie. Okay, so he could have done a krypton bomb there. Bomb. Like, I yeah, mean, uh, yeah. Krypton, what's the word? Uh, Ooh, kryptonite yeah. Kryptonite bomb. Yeah, he could have yeah, just bombed a bunch Superman's of pieces be of kryptonite. There. Yeah. It would yeah. kill him and probably, maybe not everyone else, depending on how much of a bomb it is, you know? And this, he uh, as long as the shrapnel old... hits Superman. He had a big old hunk of that kryptonite, and all we got out of it was three gas grenades and a spear. And the gas grenades don't even like consistently work. Ugh. Mm. Like they they, really they injure lie. him for a second, and then he it it just wears off. Like why would it wear off? It it should be like destroying your I mean, lungs. Yeah, right that now. shit would go into his blood, and you'd be like, Whoa. yeah. Well, it when yeah. Batman uses it against uh, Superman, he is out of commission for a while. Um, Batman doesn't take advantage of this mysteriously, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's so weak that a regular guy could go toe to toe with him. Why a kryptonite spear rather than like a blade that pops out of Batman's gauntlet? As Rich Evans suggested, why not kryptonite brass knuckles? <laughs> why not like you liquefy some of the kryptonite and you like dunk your big metal bat suit in that? So, yeah, we kind of just jumped to a different criticism of Batman's ineptitude when trying to kill Superman. <laughs> um, good God, It's Batman. all in the same universe. It's all, it's all fair game. It bugs game. me it. as well that Batman's supposed to be intelligent and seasoned and veteran. It's like, no, he's not. <laughs> he's, he's, do you remember when... Uh, you know what? No, we, we'll get into that another time. We should probably let it... So, yeah, that that is... What we lined up was several things Lex could have done. And he does like a whole combo of all of them all over the place while also seemingly looking to get any result. Like, hence why we're talking about the chaos thing. Doesn't seem to actually, but let's let's see what he says, I suppose. Wait, also, we could give Harley Quinn a kryptonite bat. That would oh my god, be she'd be unstoppable. -er. Yeah. <laughs> Lex's plan is more complicated than the Luthers of the past, with many threads leading to many outcomes and win conditions. Oh boy. Name three. <laughs> It's a very complex plan. Let's hear it. Lex ensures that he always has just one more trick up his sleeve. He loses. Until the end when he loses. Okay. He literally loses. Wait, so he had one trick up his sleeve, though. I guess so. And the trick was... I mean, assuming we don't count the original thing as the thing. Well, that's does this Doomsday a trick up his I, sleeve? I, I think so, yeah. I think that's I what guess. he's saying right now. Doomsday was this backup plan. <laughs> he may have planned thing from the beginning, or he may be adjusting his plan as There's events There's no unfold. way you could have planned for he this. He may have planned it from the beginning, with all of these variables that are all over the fucking place, sure. That make no but sense. But either way, They're... his plan yeah. is working behind the scenes of every event. Oh. I'll map it out as I go to make it easier to see how it all ties together. Destroy Superman, that's the main goal. At least we were Oh, I thought he that. didn't- I thought he didn't want to destroy <laughs> Superman. Well, he defines destroy, I guess, as proving that he's better than Superman. Oh. Uh, I'm guessing. I don't know if he actually, because my thing was I thought he wanted to kill him, like, end his yeah. life. Yeah. Lex Luthor's Superman, or possibly to okay. control his power, and at the very least, to ruin his reputation. His Why power? would he want to control Superman's power? That I'm, wouldn't do anything from his perspective. Yeah, like, like you, you, I'm guessing you're asking, like, does he want him to kill particular people? Does he want him to do particular things? Like, what, Yeah, what's... like, what is... Yeah, why... I thought, because it's pretty clear he wants to destroy Superman, because Superman's, his sin is existing. So how would controlling him, like, change that? His first step toward his main goal of killing Superman is to research possible methods of doing so. The first and most obvious method is the kryptonite he discovers at the wreck of the world engine in the Indian Ocean. And by the way, what better place is there to look in a quest for power than a crashed alien ship? With kryptonite... Uh. I guess, yeah, I agree with this. This is back when it makes some sense. It's before it all falls apart. Tonight, Lex yeah. Luthor situates himself as the one and only Superman deterrent on the planet. And why would we want to weaponize this material? As a deterrent? A silver bullet to keep in reserve to use against the Kryptonians? So the day does not come, madame, when your children are waving daisies at a reviewing stand. And I, I thought that was fair when I first saw it. I was like, yeah, That's fair, right. yeah. Yep. So it's, it's, yeah, it's like he went just in case Superman's a bad man or other Kryptonite people come because that's happened before. We got precedent for that. We should have weapons to be able to fight them to not rely on Superman. It reminds me of when Jeremy Irons is like, you want to steal his kryptonite to destroy it? And he's like, no. To, and, and, and you get the sense of like, Alfred, it's not a bad idea to have a turn Superman off switch. Just saying. 
Just, you know. Just in case. Especially because you're a vigilante operating above the law anyway. I don't feel like this is really much of a principled step in a, well, I mean, a direction funny, you haven't tread down before. If, if uh, one of the things that often happens with Batman, like, in terms of Justice League, is that he has a, like, he has sort of a uh, silver bullet for all of them. Um, because it's like, well, obviously, yeah, you're all incredibly powerful. Um, you know, what if you all go evil? Like, it's it's worth it's it's worth it. You know, I why wouldn't so. she have a silver bullet? This I could like, obviously uh, give him a great deal of. Le there's like an animated movie where I think uh, one of them says to Batman, "Like, we wouldn't do this to you," and Batman's like, "Then you're damn fools." Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's. that's right. That's what Batman does. He has he's he's always prepped. Yeah, no, for, they're not in the movie. From what I understand, like the plot is basically that his his secret plan to get rid of all the Justice League members gets somebody steals it and uses it against the League, and they're really Which mad is... at him. They're like, "Why did you do this?" It's like, dude, like if the, if the Justice League was out of control, like if you guys don't see that that could be a problem, then it's like I don't want to be part of this team. It's like, yeah, that sounds like something Batman would do. Someone said a man it's like it's a down is all about that. Like, oh, don't don't reference Suicide Squad at all. Just don't. Okay, we don't have to talk yeah. about that yet. We don't have to. <laughs> Suicide Squad will have its day, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Uh, it it it's like it's a downside that could happen where someone finds out the ways to kill all the Justice League members, uh, and it gets into the to, into the wrong hands. But, um, I feel like. That's a downside that's worth existing, given how mm -hmm. powerful the Justice League members are. Yep. Mm -hmm. So hey, this is pretty easy to follow right now. Goal: destroy Superman. Yeah. Uh, option: use Kryptonite. Yay! Leverage affairs in the name of public safety, should the cleverly manufactured need arise, and leverage over Superman. If Lex can hurt Superman, then he can threaten and manipulate him directly. The second, and much less obvious method of killing Superman is hinted at in the scenes with Diana Prince and that the other like, Justice League yeah, heroes. Yeah, definitely less obvious. Wait, he's, he's suggesting the reason that Lex found these people is in hopes of using them to kill Superman? Wouldn't they be more people he'd be threatened by? I mean, yeah, especially why wouldn't he want to kill Flash. Wonder Woman? Yeah, that, that's he would of, want to kill these people. That's what I, I thought, that's what the implication was. That's, that's where I was going with it, basically. Like, he wants to find people with the power to take out someone he thinks has too much power. Okay. <laughs> I feel that like we sense. just kicked the can down I mean, the road. If you, yeah, bit. exactly. If you're powerful enough to kill Superman, then you are better than Superman, I mean, which same, means you're more powerful and dangerous. It's the same problem with Doomsday. Like, oh, Doomsday mm -hmm. can kill you. It's like, but then we have Doomsday. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking moron. It's like, no, I'm the smartest person and you fear me. <laughs> Yeah, you just don't understand my plan because you're a big dummy. What would Cyborg do? He would he would hack Superman. He'd type buttons and he'd be like, oh, <laughs> I got you. As everyone thought were irrelevant to the rest of the movie and were only there... They're irrelevant to the rest of the movie. They're fucking they are, trailers. Yeah. Don't even go there. <laughs> like, try it's to just set up sequels and shit. Because they were shoehorned into the film by the studio to introduce future DCEU characters. The, like, that is explicitly what exactly. they fucking are. I don't even know why you would even Absolutely try this. Absolutely what the reason's for. Come on. Those scenes with the other heroes were oh, just shoehorned yeah, into yeah, yeah. the film by the studio wait, to introduce- Wait, you made a graph for three things? I, wait, does he think that's it? For, holy shit, I didn't even just register that. Oh, what? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's done. We're on the next thing. That what? <laughs> so the problem- <laughs> I can't believe this is this was a reality. So the problem with with Lex, right, is if we created our graph, there would be about eight points, and three of them would line up, and then a different four might line up, and then a selection of two on either side might line up with different ends and goals. But together, it's a fucking disaster. And if you cherry pick the points, you can make a solid Lex Luthor from this film. But that's not what's in the film. Yeah. Sorry. You have to really, really ugh, mix and match here. But maybe not a clear um, through line. Maybe there's more to it, because that graph had a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he'll come back to it. Maybe yeah. maybe we're just waiting for him to get we back to it. We can only hope. Yeah. got a guy in chat saying, why not Why not shove kryptonite Jolly Ranchers into Superman's <laughs> mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, imagine he, he like has to poop uh, it back out before he can get back to full strength. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'll it's, be back to normal in a couple days. Um, it's green apple, uh, Superman.
<laughs> As for, so if someone said, do you agree with the idea that those trailers don't say the story at all? I'd be like, yes. I, I don't think yep. they add to the story in any way, shape, or form. They're simply to, to give you hype for coming movies. You can, you can literally yes, cut it's only out part of the story because they existed. Like, if you were describing the story, they would be in the description of the story, but that's just because they exist at the end. Oh, make him eat a Kryptonian almond joy. Ugh. <laughs> oh, no. lace, lace some crystal meth with kryptonite, feed it to a bear, or send the bear after Superman. Yep. Crypto meth. They don't serve the story at all. Contrary to popular opinion, there is actually a plot reason for these scenes. <laughs> Go right ahead, my if friend. You just, if, Go you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, I, I bet he's gonna say they're gonna set up sequels. Well, I'm. He's gonna. But have that to would be the argument. That. I hope he does better. No, it to Not show for this that video, it doesn't. Lex was looking into other superheroes, perhaps to dissect and analyze them in his quest for power, or perhaps to kill them for the same reason. He Thank you for saying that. You have no idea why these are on screen. That's <laughs> you just confirmed. Hooray, Good job. Perhaps. Yeah, he already. He starts off with perhaps. Like, oh, so you don't or, know. Yeah, perhaps, so, or maybe, who knows? The equivalent, Lot reason, maybe it's this. The equivalent mm -hmm. is like the camera sort of just goes to the left and there's just this boot, and then it carries on with the story and it's never brought up again. And I'm like, well, that boot might be important in future movies. You can't really say it adds that nothing. That boot could be Darkseid. It could be Darkseid's boot. He, he took on human form <laughs> using magic from space. He took on boot form. He, took, he turned into a boot. <laughs> <laughs> then he's sitting there unassumedly watching it all unfold. Got, and then, got, perhaps. I mean, perhaps. I mean, got the shifty know, eyes on the boot. Like yeah. they zoom in. It's just shifty eyes looking around. Like, well, no, it'd be shifty um, shoelaces. They just sort of move <laughs> left and right. Around. And then when they go to sleep, he, it, like the top of the boot separates from the sole, and he starts <laughs> laughing maniacally. <laughs> well, General Zod, he was a boot, but Superman oh. took his soul from him. Someone just had a great example. So. <laughs> Mandalorian season one episode five when the dude walks up to the, yep. the, the thingy, be like, "Well, that added nothing except baiting future shit." And you go, "Well, no, it could be future shit." Anything. Like that's what I just said. It's it's baiting future shit. It's like, well, no, it could mean a lot. It could mean a lot. <laughs> so it's baiting future shit. Thank I really you. like the idea of General Boots uh, and Superman takes his soul General off of him, Boots. and then they fight each other. <laughs> you know, like, maybe when he lasers the ship, his soul gets ripped off of his, you know, the bottom. That's a comic book You've game, You've taken my soul. My Silas soul. Stone. That is what you take. Yeah, I wanted laughs, but I got none, so I'm gonna hell into the corner. <laughs> Gotta make and a dick cry. joke, then you'll be alright. Is this what you want? <laughs> he wants to kill More likely than not, these exceptional beings live among us. You don't have to use a silver bullet. But if you forge one, we don't have to depend upon the kindness of monsters. Given that, I mean, that silver bullet wouldn't work on any of those others. So I don't know. But yeah. Like, well, you know, at least it's yeah, a start. With Flash, well, I guess if you stabbed. Yeah, I guess if you stabbed Flash with it, he'd die. Um, I guess with Wonder Woman. If you stabbed you Wonder Woman a, with it, I guess. But you could just stone. shoot Wonder Woman. Yeah. We'll just get the Dreamstone and wish her powers away, and then well, kill her. Don't you guys find it <laughs> staggering that his information on Wonder Woman? Switch is, your dead, Bringy. Is... <laughs> it's a, it's not a two-step process when you can make wishes. No, I, I just wish I'd dead. Yeah. You're overcomplicating it. <laughs> <laughs> it's simpler than that, yeah. Uh, don't you think it's... Wait, what would, what would have Lex have wished for? Oh, I guess he... Would, he... would he not be alive at that point? He, he would have wished been. Superman dead. What would his dad he would have, have been alive for? in 1994, right? Oh, oh his dad would have wished that he could have beat, beaten his son for longer. No! <laughs> it's like, I sure love beating my son. I wish I could I beat my that... son forever. Wow. I wish there were more hours in the day to beat my son. Yeah, don't you find it, <laughs> I wish um, there were eight days in a week. I mean, so <laughs> staggering that it is. I wish there was a sunbeam day. If we're to believe that Lex Luthor is as uh, is as old as Jesse Eisenberg, Jesse Eisenberg was born in 1983. Oh, well, so I guess he'd be a one-year-old one making a wish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, could a one-year-old make a wish haphazardly? I mean, the, that's, I mean, that's the wish, thing. You don't have to speak it, right? Yes. You can. Yeah, it's true. Just Imagine think it, all of the wishes. But it would that, probably like, be lame. Like, I wish I had making. some food. Oh, yeah. I wish I had some Jolly Ranchers. Did all the two year olds run out hazard. their wish? Or, um, <laughs> when they're watching the TV in 1994, did they all renounce their wish as well? 
I'm sure they did. I mean, everyone saw the truth. Just wait. <laughs> I can't believe parents. everybody in the world did that. I, that's <laughs> that movie. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to highlight, I guess, that uh, isn't it interesting with Lex's capabilities? All he's got in the Wonder Woman folder is when she went up to like a random, I guess, like like uh, I'm not even sure where she is. She's, she's just on camera and she looks at it. And it's like that's all you got. Wasn't it like an ATM or something? Oh, it might have been, like, yeah. I, I, I'm getting mixed up because I was thinking about the picture he showed with her getting out of the car, and I was like, wait, was it, what was it? Uh, whatever. He's got imagery of her, and it's just like, wouldn't, wouldn't he have, like, shit tons on her? Like, imagine the information that's available with all the stuff that she's been doing. I mean, she destroyed all the cameras, though. And so, she destroyed you know. cameras, that's true. <laughs> Lex possesses a woman's photograph. We can assume he has leverage on all of these heroes. But no. What? Leverage? Oh, no, no, it's just that he knows about them. Leverage. There is no reason he has to leverage. assume. Yeah, yeah, there's no he, reason to assume that he has all of yeah, their mums. Yeah, it only means that he was aware of their houses. existence. This is them. just fan fiction at this point. Well, yeah. So I mean, there's nothing we could do with yeah, this other than laugh at it. Like, we're just like, yep, like, whatever you That's want. The story to me, me, bud. Eventually pits Batman against Superman, it's very likely that he was looking into as many superpowered beings as he could to find candidates for killing Superman. Again, and he said all creates, Batman. creates more curious. problems for his motivation, but sure. Yeah. If he were to manipulate be of them oh too. We came back to the graph. One of these other oh, heroes in the fighting, the possible outcomes would include either the death of the hero, which would make Superman a disgraced murderer, or the death of- No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. You already did this with Zod. Why? Just because <laughs> he lost- a, he, when, he, when Superman died, he became like a hero. And he had got his own grave, and everyone was super. They had the big sads that he was dead. Well, it seems so we like know that's not the case. Is that there is a dichotomy: either Superman dies, which is good for Lex, which it isn't, because now it means he's got an even bigger problem to deal with. Yep. Or he wins, and that ruins his legacy. It's like, dude, Superman kills heaps of people in this universe. He's killed civilians. Why would it matter if he killed a rogue superhero? And also, Lex Luthor, if he's supposed to be super concerned about his image, what is his image going to be when people find out that he killed Superman? Yeah, again, that's the a other random superhero this... that's gone crazy with like the branding of criminals and shit. Let's pretend yeah. that he captures Wonder Woman's entire family. There's thousands of them. They're all in a big warehouse with a, it's all TNT in there. And he's like, I'm going to blow it if you don't kill Superman. She goes, okay. And she runs off to just attack Superman. And oh, then... no. Let's pretend for a second she has a kryptonite sword, chops his fucking head off, and then Lex is like, either lets them go or doesn't. Do you really think that's not gonna come out eventually? That, like, ruins your image entirely? Batman already knows it. Lex had all of this shit stolen by Wonder Woman and copied over to Batman. Everyone knows about this now. Like, you can't win. <laughs> Amazing. But it makes total sense. It falls apart in so many ways because Lex isn't really much of anything. He's just this weird collection of notions. Just a weird, quirky me. Of Superman. Now, that's not to say these scenes definitely weren't a studio demand to shoehorn the character reveals in. No, that's just what they are. That is just what they are. Yeah, that is what they are. And, and by the way, it's okay. Yeah, I don't. If care. that's what it is. It's fine. It was an amusing like, scene, because we could all make memes out of it. We're like, oh, here we go, yes. it's floosh. Yeah, they're doing the thing and the floosh. And oh, the and apparently Lex rig. named, he named Wonder Woman, so that's neat. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it's like Captain Marvel naming the Avengers in a way, you know? It's, that's what you want. They very but the writers handled it in a way that adds a little bit of depth to Lex Luthor's character. I like no. the CG, I like the CGI no. mouse on the screen. <laughs> Where it clearly isn't an actual mouse movement, it's a, it's like a CGI, nice, smooth, clean yeah. cursor that's sliding across the screen. Yeah, it always it was... bugs me when they just when they have screens and they just don't mock something up on an actual screen and film it. Because if it was one like, on a touchpad, it would be going eh, 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 across the screen. It wouldn't be going like really smooth directly to wherever she needs to go. Character and actions, so they shouldn't be written off completely. Back to the kryptonite. Now that Lex has it, he could smuggle it into the country on his own, but he uses it as an opportunity to ingratiate himself with certain members of Congress. Now Rocky is radioactive, but what he needs from you is an import license. The ability to destroy Superman would be much more valuable with the American government backing him. It would also make the government reliant on so him like, for kryptonite. At this point, if you're Lex Luthor, I don't feel like you need the government at all to do this. Nope. 
And, um, I feel like all they would do is kind of get in the way of you and your schemes, and they yeah. would want it for themselves, this and post... then they would know about it, so they could ne you could never be secretive about it after this point. This part's also strange, because this guy, I'm not sure what his rank or whatever is, but he's like fully convinced that this is great, and so he's like, I'll give you everything you want. And it's just like, wait, you have the power to do that? You have the power to hand over Zod's body and the ship with full control to Lex Luthor, CEO of Random Company? Like, you, you can do that? Guy. But at the same time, he can't let him have that import. <laughs> she blocks it in Congress. It's like, right. Because you could block Zod, the alien corpse being provided to a random CEO. That's not something you could block. But you could block the import of a rock. I don't know. Kryptonian. Can I call you Jew? You can call me whatever you like. Take a bucket of piss and call it Grand H Peach Tea. <laughs> Okay. Oh, they pay that off so well. <laughs> what a great a payoff. It's so smart. And call it deterrent. You won't fall a fly on me. I'm not gonna drink it. That one line about Granny's oh, peach tea is really weird. What's the deal? Oh, what did we just say? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't give a fuck. It's only there like, so it could be in a jar at the end. That's only that's the only the, reason why it's there. The meme is you can't fool me, and then he fools her. That's it. Good job. How did Nine. he get that I don't jar know, of Rags. piss I do not onto know. that desk? And I don't know why uh, she didn't notice the fucking jar of piss on her desk when she got there. She that stuff like... smells like... <laughs> well, it smells like piss? It smells like... yeah. Yeah. And it says strong smell, generally. It's a really weird scene as well, because if, if any of you watch it again, God forbid, um... She's like telling, she's doing her speech, and then she just keeps like stuttering her speech and looking at the the jar, and then looking away, then looking at it, looking away, then looking at it again, then looking like, oh no, and it, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, uh, mm, and then she spins it, and she's like, oh no, Grady's peach tea. It's such uh, a no. weird scene. It's a play on the expression. Don't where he pee got on my pee, leg I and tell me it's his. It's a play on the expression to pee on my leg. And tell me no, it wouldn't be his. No, there's no way he would use his own pee because just in case the bomb doesn't work, then it would be his pee in the his jar. Pee, yeah. <laughs> and that would link it back to him. I, he had to get someone else's and, and piss. Also, that was a lot <laughs> it's of some pee. some unpaid intern. That was a lot of pee. Like, that was a full... Well, that pee. was a lot of pee. Maybe, maybe it's like <laughs> several pee eggs, you know? I like the idea that Lex Luthor had a jug and just pissed in it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't... He, oh, it was old pee. Uh... Was he wait, wait, so, so, wait, someone in chat. Was he like waiting for her to look at it before blowing up Congress? How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> he, have a he needed I think that. He was. He needed it to yeah. know. Training. <laughs> so, no, it's not the famous expression in the world. And this isn't Don't even guys... like. What's the purpose of him leaving it there based on what she said? Like, if her whole point was, um, like, I'm not gonna fall for your attempts at getting us to let you bring soup I mean, kryptonite in so yeah, she, that means she basically tells him like it's clear you want to kill superman it's not that you want to have something to defend us against him so i'm going to block you that's, that's that's like the subtext if you will and so she says you can't fool me that that's what you want it's clear that you just want to kill him um and so then he's like i can fool you and blows her up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think that's where my confusion was. That I don't see her. how it's fooling. Yeah, it's not fooling someone to just be like, I put a bomb in a room you're going to be in and I blew it up. Fooled you. That's not like, that's Got not him. fooling someone, really. <laughs> Land Purpose just asked a really good question. Would his DNA be all over the crime scene in P4? <laughs> yeah, be <laughs> Sorry, is, uh, Lex Luthor's piss is all over the crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. Superman was covered in Lex Luthor's piss. <laughs> what a, yeah, really a, 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 a weird situation, but possible. You guys watch Judge Judy? Say, he used to say to me, don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Okay, so <laughs> I, I get really annoyed because he said before, like, oh, this is one of the most common expressions ever. It's like, okay, so I don't know what to tell you, but when you say don't piss in a bucket and call it Granny's Peach Tea, how is <laughs> how much to immediately connect that to pissing on my leg and saying it's raining? Because it involves urine. Yes. Oh, so because you say anything with urine, I should be able to connect it. Well, I, for me, I don't know why. Why didn't she just say don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining? 
I don't know. And, yeah. And, but like, that'd be a different, thing, that'd be very thought... difficult visual to pull off later in the movie. Yeah, that would. <laughs> Lex just peeing Lex on a leg. Lex standing in the vent above the, the, the office and peeing together. It's just, it's just trickling out of the vent Chris onto him. runs away really quickly. You, could just, you just hear him in the distance going, it's raining. It's totally raining. Do you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> Like the sprinkler system turns on in Congress, and then it's just a bunch of people. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I guess when I saw it, I was like, oh, I get what she's saying, but holy fuck, was that clunky and awkward? Like, down past the bucket. If it was a regular saying, then pain. not everyone would have a problem with it. I feel like it, it feeds into itself. Again, I think most people have the reaction of that was weird, and um, <laughs> I don't know why you couldn't have seen that coming. Like if if it was in my script, I'd be like, this is probably not going to go over that well. The whole the whole peach tea piss thing, yeah. Mm. Also, you didn't have like to defend this. Like you no, don't you can pick your battles. Yeah, <laughs> it's not a no. big critique anyway. It's just one line. Well, to be fair, if you're defending a film like this, die on every hill. D defend mm. the piss. <laughs> yeah. <of course. laughs> the writers used her as an inspiration for this character. In order oh. to convince Congress that an anti-Kryptonian oh. weapon might be necessary, okay. Lex manufactures the situation in the Middle East. To oh, okay, yeah, he's, he's referenced it. That's a disaster. It. It's time to talk about it. So, when re-watching this film, I discovered a little bit of a confusion when I was really thinking about this opening scene. Everyone probably knows it real well, this opening scene. You got quite a few factions. You find out Lois went here, like, gung-ho. She did not, like, get... Put in through uh, the Daily Planet. She went there, like rogue. At least that's what um, Martian Manhunter chastises her for. He's like, you went there, like un unprovoked, because you're a you're a crazy, reckless, greedy journalist. Like, so it's like, okay. And the reason I'm setting this up is because, as we've talked about before, when you, you you need to know why everybody's here, what everyone's capable of, what everyone's goals are. So like, Lois wants to go out there to interview. Um, a rebel leader because of a local civil war. It's, I think it's just she's there for story, and that's it. Okay. Simultaneously, unbeknownst to her, the CIA are monitoring the situation, and they're sending in an agent under the alias of Jimmy Olsen, I guess, to pretend to be a photographer. Okay. Like, she's expecting someone else, but he replaces that guy, I guess, and he's with the CIA. It's like, right. At the same time... Lex Luthor's security, like, private security firm have made a deal with this local guy in this war to be his security. And, like, I was just thinking about this and I was like, I don't know what order all of this shit happened. So, like, because Lex wanted all of this to, like, the reason he's setting all this up is to make Superman look bad, right? Um, mm -hmm. So obviously he, he knows that, like, that this all comes at the core, that Lois is going to be there because that'll bring Superman there. Everyone knows that's how that works. That's just a constant, that wherever she goes and she's in trouble, <laughs> he'll come. And, like, yeah. I wish I was joking, but they, they treat this like we know this is just a truth. Like, the, the character's like, here he comes. He's like, oh, put a gun on Lois's <laughs> head, and Superman just suddenly has a timer, and he's going to be there soon. So fucking odd, but... Like, I think that's a flaw, but we're just going to grant it for now. So, what came first? Lex organizing his security firm to be with these guys, or pushing her to, on her own, decide to go out there and try and interview this guy? Because, like, the, um... like her decision to go and do that, right, if she did it on her own, then he has a limited amount of time to set up a deal with the local Civil War leader to add a security detail to him. You know what I mean? Like, that seems, that has to be... Uh, yeah. And, like, how would he yeah. know that that's what she's gonna do if she's not doing it in conjunction with the Daily Planet? Like, what, is he, I guess mm. he's just watching her at all times, and he's like, oh, she's planning on doing this thing. If I get my men to make a deal with that guy to be in that place when that interview takes place, I can then have them all kill the people there with my experimental new tech to test it out, but simultaneously have them burn all of the bodies to make it look as though Superman did it when he inevitably comes in to save the day because Lois's life will be threatened. And all of this is under the assumption that people, like, people will think that this is Superman's fault when it clearly isn't. Like, none of this matches to me this is this is all insane and it all relies on it all um, doesn't make any sense it's all very large variables for example jimmy olsen's um 
CIA, I guess, handlers are not that far away. And their initial plan when they find out he's shot is to go in there, extract Lois, and basically kill all the people there by the looks of things. They're obviously taking their guns. But then their bosses say, no, stay back, we're just going to bomb the whole place. Okay, okay, like, I'm assuming there would have been pre procedure for this. Like, they would have known. It's like, oh, if, if Jimmy Olsen's executed, we blow it up. If he's not, you know what I mean? But, like, they hate each other, these two groups. They, they flip them off. Why like, would fuck Jimmy you. Olsen tell him that? Well, not Jimmy. Jimmy Olsen doesn't get to say much of anything. He's just, he gets killed. I'm saying, like, the there's a group of well, people. Well, I'm, but, uh, like, if he was discovered. Well, what do you mean, what would he say? Uh, why would he say what? Like, he would say, if you kill me, they're going to blow up the compound. Oh, um, yeah, I think I think that's fair as well. I, I, everything to do with Jimmy Olsen doesn't make sense either. They decide, it's a tracker, is what they pull out, by the way, and it beeps, like it makes a fucking noise, which is hilarious. Um, it's in his camera, and you'd think, like, well, put it in the sole of his shoe, or even in his sock, anywhere that like, is more likely to Have him to swallow check. it. Yeah, that would, that would actually be a better choice, yeah. Um, assuming it's resistant Instead to stomach Instead of their... Because... They're going to be super skittish about having photos taken. They're probably not going to let you keep your camera. Almost certainly they're not going to let you keep your camera. But they're going to take the film out. They're going to open it up. There's a miracle in that they let him keep his camera. <gasps> but then he decides, I'm going to start pretending to take photos. You're like, why would you do that? You're drawing attention to your camera that has your tracker in it. You fucking idiot. And then, of course, they find it. And then he's like, I'm here to, you know, uh, suggest a, an agreement of some kind. And then they just execute him. It's like, why would you do that? You should keep Cause him. Because everyone's bright, everyone's amazingly smart in this universe. If you if you keep him for ransom, or even to interrogate, that is way more useful than simply execute him. Because they talk about yeah. it in the beginning of the conversation. Um, Lois is like, who are these security guards? Are you, you know, are you, are you working with someone to blah blah blah? And then he's like, uh, his response to Lois is like, oh yeah, who's sending the drones at night? Like, he's, a, he's aware that America is potentially drone striking him, and he's like, I'm going to execute a CIA agent right now. You're like, what? Like, what do you think's going to happen? And at the same like, oh, shit, I mean. someone from the CIA wants to arrange something for us. It's like, well, that's better than them missling us in the night. So, yeah, that sounds like something we should explore. And yeah, of course, nope, you're dead. Jimmy gives away that he's CIA as well. He doesn't even pretend for a second that there could be any kind of misunderstanding. And if that's protocol, why the fuck wouldn't he say, like, do not kill me? You will die. All of you will fucking die. I swear. It's yeah, the... like they're they're watching us right now. This is all being monitored from like satellites and drones high up in the atmosphere, and they got <laughs> missiles ready. And if I'm dead, then yeah, they're just gonna blow up the whole compound. Happen, yeah. Um, and then like he's pissed at Lois, the 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 terrorist leader guy, and he's like, I'm gonna take you into a different room and interrogate you, I guess, because he says something like ignorance and innocence aren't the same thing, meaning that. Her being ignorant of the CIA agent doesn't make her innocent. It's like, okay. Um, but then, of course, he hears gunfire because all of his security detail from Lex Luthor are executing everybody. And you're like, right. And they, that involves shooting people, dropping grenades, and then flamethrowering them. And apparently this is their <laughs> way of making it look like Superman did it. Well, but we, we but they would have known that all those insane. bodies were killed by I'm... bullets. I mean, we all know that Superman can shoot bullets out of his eyes, so it's okay. Well, when they drop a grenade yeah, inside it's like a Yeah, Superman tank, decided to shoot people with all of these guns. This, this is what I mean. A forensics yeah. person would have a, a fucking field day with this. It's like, wait, why is there a grenade that's got off inside a tank? Did Superman uh, grab a grenade, drop it inside a tank? Why do you... What? what? This well, like, we like, all know when you burn bodies, it means that all of the shrapnel inside of them and all of their other wounds melts. and all the bullets in them, it, it disappears. Yeah, it like, destroys... The entire thing, all of it, immediately. Yes. It's, it's strange, it's like, since when does Superman need to use guns? Like, there are superheroes, like Spider-Man, for instance, where you can sort of see them using a gun, you know, in certain situations, but Superman? Like, why does, why would he ever need to use a gun? And then, yeah, well, and, and of course, when Superman kills people with his laser, it does not look like what they see at all. It doesn't look like someone's been set on fire, that's not what it does. They would get cut um, in half. Yeah. They'd have like a big hole burnt through their body. So none of that is in any way possible to believe that Superman did it. Nobody would ever believe that with any rational thought. Um, but then bonus round is that Lois can confirm that it wasn't him. He can confirm that it wasn't him. The bullets in the area can confirm that it wasn't him. And they're like, ah, lucky for me, a random bullet hit my book. And I can pry it out. <laughs> like what? Yeah. 
Uh, Absolutely crazy. Not. And you find uh, out all of these variables, by the way, all these different things could have happened. The CIA could have attacked quicker, and thus the security detail wouldn't have been able to escape. Superman could have got there instantly and killed all of the security detail. Neither of them could have shown up, he, and Lois dies. Yeah, because Lex knows... Because Lex is confident if he pushes a woman off a skyscraper, then before she can hit the ground, Superman will be there. And so the second, right, that they reveal the CIA agent, shouldn't Superman be like, oh, Lois is distressed. <laughs> It'll be over. None of it works. It's all relying on crazy variables. Mm -hmm. They're super lucky, and then they yeah. have to rely on everyone being really stupid. And I guess it's fair to say, by the way, um, the woman who lies, the idea is that she says... Like, my, my family were killed by Americans choosing to, like, attack the, this side of the rebel war thanks to, you know, the, the CIA agent dying and stuff. And so she's simultaneously criticizing Superman for coming down and killing everyone, and then uh, America choosing to swipe through other areas and kill everyone. It's like, how could you, how could you do this? Um, but she says she didn't tell the whole truth. And what she tells Holly Hunter is that um, her parents are alive and well, and that they told her to rehearse a script and read it out in the Capitol building or whatever. It's like, wait, her parents are alive oh. and well? That, uh, what that, was she doing there? Well, it also feels as though, like, wait, so her plan, like, her, her speech, all of it means nothing the second that someone goes, oh, her parents are alive, by the way. Yeah, this is obviously not true. She, this whole thing's a fabrication. She's clearly lying. And it gets even worse. As if we needed to even get to this point, and it gets even worse because, like, the Russian guy clearly decides that uh, they can't live, the people who know this truth and are possibly willing to tell it, and so they decide an arbitrary amount of time later that they will kill the people who gave this testimony. Not suspicious at all, by the way. No, and, and but not effective. Like, if you're going to do it, it would be right after they do it, right? It wouldn't be, hmm, a couple days. Uh, probably a couple days. What do you think it would be before they do it? Well, um, if they... W I don't even... I don't know why you would do any of this. It's so fucking dumb. Like it's it, none I'm of it. I'm trying to make sense of it. I'm trying to make my brain power work for this movie, but it's not possible. And then, of course, uh, she's thrown onto a train, and Russian guy doesn't get in any kind of trouble for that when he's surrounded by civilians. <laughs> yeah. Um. So all of this completely broken, and it's weird because I think when you first watch the film, you don't even know what the idea of this is. You're watching the scene, like, what is? What are we trying to say is happening here? Like Superman did it. It's like, well, no, that that wouldn't be it because that I I think that's what happens in the in the movies <laughs> vision. We're all like, well, no, like that can't be the story because that obviously at all. no. And that's what it's all in service of is framing Superman for this, which is bizarre and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. This is a plot that really only works with the Punisher. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could. I mean, it still needs fixing, right? But like, I see what you mean. Oh, totally. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess uh, the reason I just brought all that up is that if that's in any way Lex's plan, this all fell apart several times before it could possibly be used for anything beneficial to Lex. That's the point. Well, it should have anyways. Yeah. To cast Superman using Lois as bait, which reveals that he knew Superman's true identity. Let the records committee hold him. Oh, also, I think we forgot to mention, uh, didn't they use bullets that were, like, specially manufactured by, like, LexCorp or something like that? Yes. Um, yeah, oh. LexCorp bullets, because... Yeah. Why? Reasonable. Why? Well, it, um... I get big Camino Saber Dart vibes off that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was it's, about to bring out, those, the Camino and Saber Dart. It's made... I can't remember... I remember I, I need to rewatch it to find the specific references, because, like, the plotline sort of fades away, the bullet plotline. Like, they, they establish that it's made of the same material as possibly, like... He says the main's the same material as, like, the... the uh, something to do with the wheelchair. I, I can't remember. It's the girl who's inspecting it. The girl who says the stupid line where she's like, the fact that Lois finds it shocking that they would test how effective live ammo would be on live subjects on live subjects, it's, it's, it makes her a good journalist that that shocks her. It's like, what? Why, why would... You think a season... She's a good person. But that does, I don't even think that covers that, does it? Like, a good person would be aware of bad people doing bad things. Well, it, it's, it's saying that she's a good person because that sort of thing... You mean shocks a naive her. person? Though or, or she should know. Person. A pure person, maybe? Oh, for... I mean, the fact that... I mean, shocked in that... Well, I guess it depends on how shocked is being used. Is it being used as in you're appalled of it or that you're surprised well, by it? Let's put it this way, I guess. Like, if... if um. 
if she's been doing uh, work for like 20 years and Batman's been branding that whole time, and then it's only the recent branding he does that you go, oh my god, he branded someone, it's horrifying. Someone goes, that's what makes you a good journalist, that this stuff still is... Like... You're behind the news. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, wait, wouldn't that make you a bad... Okay. <laughs> just, I don't know, it's hard to follow. Um, I yeah, the... I think we were using different... Yeah, the definitions of the word they used. The more baffling part is that uh, when she's discovering this, she basically sells it to Perry as like, so a bullet that's not sold anywhere in the world, she says not even the black market, um, is being was, was like, used you know? in this area, and this area that they're trying to frame Superman for having done something horrible. Like, this is major important news. And he, he looks at a bullet and goes, uh, she says it hasn't been identified, and he goes, it's a bullet. And it's it's just like uh, you're the you're the editor in chief, really. <laughs> Why didn't they just buy just like bullets from just a place that couldn't yeah, be not? tracked anywhere, really? Yeah, just get them from another place. Not part of the film to happen. Um, just get regular bullets. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't need. Yeah, because it's uh, she finds out through Martian Manhunter that it's Lex Tech, by the way, and so it's like. Which ah. is good. You want to send out your men with special bullets that link that them only back you to make, you. As opposed to when all you had to do yeah. with all of your money was just go and buy some bullets someplace. And I, and I guess worth us mentioning now as well that um, when they're discussing this story, this is just after Clark said, like, why can't I cover this bat person who's doing vigilantitisms in this, in this city? And the response from Perry is, oh, there's crime in Gotham? Shocking. Like, oh, that's there's like saying, oh, there's nothing. corruption in the government? Ooh, shocking. <laughs> well, what do like, you cover? Well, I mean, fundamentally, it's like... They it's cover high school sports suit. games. It's a guy in no, a bat yeah. suit who crawls around and brands they people. Re they refer to, like, because, again, Clark has no idea who Batman is. Neither does, it seems, neither does the team. And he's been doing this for 20 years, and they refer to, like, how Gotham police are sympathetic to Batman. Like, it's the city that's, like, less than a mile away from you. Like, what the fuck? Like, apparently, if you're living in a city that's adjacent to Chicago or Detroit and some guy starts running around in a bat suit and is branding people, you wouldn't give a shit about that. Well, there's this, um, really? there's this comment from Clark nah, to imply boring. an explanation for this. He says that um, like the, the, he's doing these things in poorer areas of Gotham. And so, um, like Clark says, what? Is it because poor people won't buy papers? Like... The implication being, if you were to cover the story of the Batman doing all kinds of crazy shit in Gotham, no one's going to be buying that paper except the people in those poor areas of Gotham, which means no sales, so what's the point in covering it in the first place? Which is the most absurd fucking That's thing bullshit. <laughs> If something happens in a poor area of a place, then no rich people would find it interesting. It's like, that's interesting. What if an alien landed in a, <laughs> like, old Kent Road? Oh, an alien landed <laughs> an in Metropolis. An alien lands in Baltimore. Shocking. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> Yeah. I guess that's why Superman was so willing to give out that he uh, that he's from Kansas. Like no one's gonna care about yeah, an cares, alien man. in Kansas. <laughs> um, at Mola, Batman was retired apparently before Man of Steel, so I I couldn't find a reference to him being retired. Like um, I was no. really looking out for it. I don't know that. But um, I would also say that defense doesn't really work for this because if you had Batman for however many years and then he disappears for however many years and then a guy dressed as a bat starts crime fighting. You're not gonna go. Yeah. Who yeah. the fuck is that? Who who could possibly who could be? <laughs> who is that? Oh, like, well, it's I guess probably Batman. Batman's Batman. Back. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and and like they all just treat it like no one would care about this story of a man dressed as a bat branding criminals and providing them to the police. Like that's well, yeah, amazing. Whoa. Isn't Batman already established as a hero? So wouldn't him starting to brand people not be a big deal? It would be a very big deal if he was established to be a hero. A huge deal. And now he's branding people. Well, uh, that's a superhero. That's and they're dying in rogue. prison What's as a funny, result of the brand specifically. What's funny is the film shits on itself because Clark starts reading articles about how he's branding people. So clearly there's coverage of this. And people are interested in it. Uh, there's, th there's political cartoons of a police officer swinging a baseball bat that looks like the bat signal at a, at a criminal yeah. with the caption, batter up. Yeah. Like, there's, there's some sort of political satire <laughs> over Gotham police siding with this vigilante. So this is a big deal it's a in huge, universe. Yeah. And you know what? There's, yeah. the, there's one of the few sort of moments where it's like, oh, this is kind of cool. Clark goes to the GCPD station. He's like... Um, I, I'd like to have some information on um, the prisoner that got branded recently. 
And the person he's talking to just goes, no, I can't give that out, and walks away. And then the person next to him, after he says he's a reporter, just walks away from him. It's like, hey, that's not so bad. Like, the idea that the GCPD are like, uh, we like Batman, fuck you. So, like, not, yeah. not to say that they're right, just that that's, that's good. And one of them has to nod to him about who to talk to in, in terms of this case, which is where, like... You have moments of good and just fucking flatlines. Uh, the the wife of the person that he wants to speak to or learn about is right behind him, and the police officer's like, "That's the girl." And then Clark's like, "Oh, that's that's a coincidence. Woohoo! I'll talk to her." <laughs> it's like, okay, excellent. Things just sort of work out in this world sometimes. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I guess we'll let him carry on. This this is meant by like, there's just so much more to go over and how bad BVS is. Uh, some of it, some of it sneaked by, you know, as we were watching it, which happens. ...factures the situation in the Middle East to cast suspicion on Superman, using Lois as bait, which reveals that he knew Superman's true identity. That also doesn't reveal he knows Superman's true identity because they were broadcast quite heavily to the point where Zod knew that those two had a connection as Superman and Lois, not Clark and Lois. Yeah, she wrote a famous story about how she met the alien. She yeah, all that. of this... All of this tells us is that Lex knows that Lois is close to Superman. Did this guy Not even watch yet, Man of identity. Steel? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I'd say the evidence that Lex knows who Superman is is that he invites Clark specifically to his party. He, he, that's how Clark gets to that party, is that Perry is like, for some reason this guy wants you to come. I guess he likes nerds. Like, that's his line. <laughs> it's a really good line showed that this committee holds him responsible. This incident is also a step toward ruining Superman's reputation as a self- Use kryptonite. Frame Superman for government support. Create weapon. Kill him. Okay. Uh, uh. I feel like this graph's already mm. fallen apart anyway, but we'll, we'll let it- we'll let it exist. ...selfless hero. By forcing him into a situation that's much more complicated than rescuing flood victims and recovering battleships from the Arctic. This exacerbates Superman's negative media coverage okay, and now? pushes Lex Luthor's untrustworthy alien... He's doing alien good things? Sorry? He's not doing the right good things? Or is what the issue is? That people are mad? Um, well, he said that, like, uh, like, the incident in the beginning of the film is one of many that helped to create suspicion for Superman, whether or not he's a good man. And, of course, um, they argue that he might have been involved or complicit in the capital destruction because he didn't stop the bomb but then of course it's revealed we didn't that... know the bomb was there well yeah it all of this relies on people being idiots again there was one thing i liked about that um and it's one line from clark where he says uh uh he didn't see a bomb but um he's he, he thinks that it might be because he wasn't looking and like he's he's he's, he's reflecting on the fact that he, he just he's losing his like i guess interest in trying to help people because of how things are going and i think that if you pluck that out and put it into a story that's actually good, it would be pretty neat for him to have to introspect about the fact that he may have missed a bomb that he could have found had he been looking for it. Um, yeah. But Lois reveals to him that the bomb was... Well, I don't even know if we have the moment on screen where she actually tells him, but she's obviously told that it was laced with I lead so we couldn't see it. Oh yeah, I don't know if he ever learns. <laughs> Wait, was this just confirmed sure by will. Zach or something? Oh, Apparently, I yeah. Uh, Justice League: The Snyder Four Cut hours, has a it massive end cliffhanger <laughs> ending. Fuck. Well, oh, there was supposed okay. to be there was supposed to be a part two. Right? Remember, guys? There was supposed, there was supposed to be a Justice be, League but... part two. God, it's gonna be that awful. Was... Yeah, it's <laughs> Justice Server. I saw two people not... mention okay. Metallo. Is Metallo what the cliffhanger is? What's Metallo? I'm assuming it's a DC thing. Oh yeah, Metallo. I assume DC it's thing. like a Scotsman who doesn't they, know where his tallow, his his processed no, animal fat no, is, they, and so he's like, "Oh, Metallo, where is it?" I, I, I think he's like a giant robot, like he's referenced in the Iron Giant. I think. Or that. Hmm. If Zack Snyder's Justice League is a four-hour movie that doesn't even end exclusively, I'm going to be very mad. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to fuck that shit. Oh, I'm not going to be Jesus mad, Christ. I'm going to be laughing. It's going to be the Snyder noise that are going to be mad. Yes. We're going to have more Snyder cuts. Oh, but it'll be the Snyder cut. They're going to think it's an actual release. Why would they, they be mad? Better. They would be they like, would oh, it. this is proof that Zyder needs, he needs to make more. Yeah, but like, it's I don't deep. think it would 
I don't. They're think, not gonna make another though. I don't think they're gonna make it unless this makes so much money. Like I just no way. I don't. See I mean, that. a part of me feels like we're just we're just tempting fate. Like they're they're not gonna make another Justice League with Zack Snyder. This whole thing, like that's why they're doing that Flash reboot stuff. Hey man, and multiverse. Why they're gonna be doing a new Superman, know, my, and a new my, Batman. Multiverse. My point is, we say this now. Uh, we say that now, yeah, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they almost did this to be like, all right, leave us alone now. We're fucking, we're moving on. We're not <laughs> doing this again. This is Lex Luthor's untrustworthy alien narrative. Why does anyone? yes. I mean, if you felt that explained something, then fair enough. Why does anyone believe that Superman is responsible for shooting a terrorist? Superman doesn't use guns or bullets. It's not even... It's, it's, it's the fact that the bullets would have killed them, and thus, why would he have shot them when he's Superman. That wouldn't make sense. Yeah, he's Superman. Why would he do that? He's never used it before. And then, if you wanted to believe for even a second that, oh yeah, they were burned, so it must have been his lasers. It's like, so why'd he shoot them In a first? pile. He piled all of them up into a <laughs> pile and then burned them using, like, gasoline? <laughs> it's like, why... Someone's describing this to me and I'm like, so Superman did it. Yeah, it seems like... Clearly, I mean, come on. <laughs> I right. mean, if 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 I was if I was Superman and I wanted to kill a bunch of people and make no one think that I did it, I guess that I would do this. I would shoot them and then put them in a pile and then use a flamethrower rather than my powers. But I mean, it wouldn't make anyone think that I did it. I, that would be the point of me doing it. Yeah. But in this movie, apparently, the point is this will make people think that Superman did it. <laughs> Superman was trying to cover his tracks. <laughs> <laughs> And believe that he was going act normal, shooting the act terrorists. Normal, act normal. Superman doesn't use guns or bullets. Ah, that's what uh, Superman yeah. wants you to think. <laughs> yeah, that's falling Superman. right into his plans. Not one person in this movie ever accuses Superman of shooting anyone. No, the no. Uh, 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 <laughs> I mean, not not, <laughs> not literally verbally, you idiot. Oh my god! Well, how would he have my done brain. it otherwise? Ow, that hurt. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh, good try. Oh good my try. god. This is oh. like. Oh my He put this in a video. Good try. I thought it was good. <laughs> oh my god. That, that was almost so pathetic. Like, it hurt. I was just like, why would you. Oh. So I'm pretty sure that the issue is. These guys are trying to make it seem like these people have been killed by Superman. The problem with this plan is that they shot the people that they're trying to frame Superman for killing. And we know that Superman doesn't use... No, it's not that they're framing Superman by shooting... It, fuck, it's so dumb. Nobody it's literally so... said that he <laughs> shot them with his guns. <laughs> like... Oh. <laughs> they only yeah. used gunfire as a way to frame him. No one said that he... <laughs> they, this is insane. They, they were trying to frame him by, for killing these people by flaming them. The issue, of course, involves killing them with guns first. That's the problem. There's, there's a smoking gun <laughs> that <laughs> Superman didn't do it. <laughs> and the, the writers didn't account for it. That's, <laughs> that's what the criticism is. It was never literally. And what if Superman shows up and he says, "That wasn't me"? I mean, obviously it wasn't me. Like that's not how Wait. my lasers work. Well, he Wait, takes... is he going to argue that they didn't actually even investigate how they died, so <laughs> no one would have had to argue well, that he shot them? Let's see where he goes. Because kind is, of an issue with the movie. This is another one of those things where it's like, why did you try to defend this? It's like I defend the movie as a whole. And you're like, right, okay, all right. <laughs> he came down, then came fire. Even worse came after. The government attacked. Yeah, so the idea Superman burned them with his lasers is certainly in that speech. And um, <laughs> the surrounding, I guess, towns or camps or whatever, uh, the government killed everyone. That, that was even weirder for me because apparently, like I said, her parents were alive and well, and the government would know if they actually did attack you know, surrounding yeah. villages. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, your your parents are alive. Here's they are on this list, and they live at such and such. I wonder if, like, they, they I don't know, blackmailed all of her friends, too? Because, like, for example, if Rags went on, like, stage, and he's like, oh, my parents got killed by Superman, and I'm like, I, I've seen them regularly or something, so I live close, I'd be like, oh, Rags, what? they look okay. What are you Wait. doing? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, I heard on the Wait. news that you were dead, and they're like, yeah, I know. Crazy. <laughs> like, okay. Also, would would no investigators find the special LexCorp bullets from this crime scene no, as well? No, only Lois did, because only Lois is that <laughs> clever. <sighs> Scriptonite can melt a woman's job. What? Mastic saying, <laughs> that his point works that nobody accuses Superman of shooting bullets. <laughs> there you go, he's escaped the criticism. No footages. <laughs> We don't actually know what Congress knows about the incident, <laughs> which is nuts. That I'm, I'm, I. Oh my God, he actually did that. The he said, CIA well, just didn't investigate okay? it, so they don't know. The CIA swarm that compound right when Superman saves Lois. Okay, they're all there. So no, the CIA got doesn't all, investigate things. They've got all the information they need. They could any one of those bodies. They'd be like, "Hey, autopsy man, how did he die? Well, he was shot to death." Well, well, why is he a burned corpse? I don't know, but these burns are not consistent. Full of bullets. These, these, these burns aren't consistent with a laser. They're consistent with a flamethrower. Huh. Does Superman throw flames? <laughs> no. Not to I, don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> All we don't know enough to know that this woman is lying to them about Superman's oh involvement. God, but they Christ. would. All he's done is highlight They would if how... they did any mild tiny little iota of actual investigation. And all he's done is highlight also, how flimsy this plan is. All it, it falls apart if one of the CIA guys fucking kicks a corpse and is like, oh, it looks like he kind of fucking got shot. I don't know. <laughs> Shit. Also, Ray Day in chat points this out. Uh, so, if according to this woman's testimony, Superman killed everyone in the village, why would the government then attack the village of dead people? I don't <laughs> well, They were going also, to, but Superman beat him to it. <laughs> she's, a, she's alleging that the like the CIA also committed war crimes. Like, doesn't that kind of but muddy the waters would, of everything? But that would a bit? fuck everything because the CIA could be like, "Well, no, we didn't. And we've got proof because we've got all this recorded because we've got yeah, people watching." Obviously, the CIA would cover themselves. <laughs> this is so uh. terrible. <laughs> so that they don't know how the terrorists died. And besides, why would Lex Luthor send? How would they not know? Autopsies how wouldn't exist? they know? It's a it's a bunch of bodies with bullet holes in them that have been put into a pile and charred. It's burned. Yeah. It's like a I super em emotionism just... scene. Like they play the music, and all of the CIA agents are looking around at the bodies, and you can tell the idea is the CIA people are like, "Oh God, did Superman do this?" Because they're stupid. <laughs> how do you ever? <laughs> And then the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, would show up and see all this stuff and go, "That's fucking weird. What why, happened why here? What happened oh, here? Exactly." Yeah, it was for me. It's like Superman grabbed like an M16 and just mowed them down, then dragged them all into a pile and burned them with his very low intensity laser vision until they all caught fire. That's so weird. No, y'all, you want to slow cook them to get them, you know, thorough. Yeah, because, like, in the scene, uh, there's all these women who, who, like, appear, and they're all like, Damn you! Why did this happen? In the compound. And it's like, wait, what? What's happening? Like, are you aware of all the... And it's like, oh, well, it turns out Lex had all these... They're all, like, actors. They've all been threatened to do this. It's just like, how the fuck did you think any of this was going to work? Did anyone ask her specific questions? Because she wouldn't be able to answer them. She's got a script to read. Mm. It's terrible. I guess not. And this woman to Congress if he had not somehow manipulated the official story to match hers beforehand. He manipulated he the that? official story. What? How? What? How? With who? With what? How? He Through what means? Even, he can't even bring kryptonite in, like from international waters, without getting permission. Like, how does he have the ability to, to change the CIA's official story? Of yeah, what no happened? way he can do that. That's Through what happened. means and in what scenes? That they don't know how the terrorists died. And besides, why would Lex Luthor send this woman to lie to Congress? Well, this is like somehow this is, the, this is the cascading problem that bad writing causes. You don't know whether it's an in-universe issue or if it's just really shitty writing that you don't you don't know what's accountable. Um, like I when guess... you have these issue where why didn't the anyone investigate? It's like well, I, I it's inexplicable. It's it's like uh, I don't know. You walked into a room, we closed it, then we opened it back up, and you're just a huge blob monster. And it's like, why wouldn't you assume that you have the the power to turn into a huge blob monster? He's like, I I didn't have any 
why would we? I don't know. Like it's just fucking. This just came. <laughs> how is this possible? He's like, it just happened though. That's what. Like these are these events. Everybody being incredibly stupid. It's all because of Lex. He paid them all off. Okay. All right. I guess that's the only oh, way to make yeah, it Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I guess everyone's just dumb. And besides, why would Lex Luthor send this woman to lie to Congress if he had not somehow manipulated the official story? Motherfucker, he kills her because she's unreliable and she could ruin everything. He has her killed, but later, after she gives the te- Like, to imply that Lex has any sense of control over this plan would be ridiculous. He he's fumbling. Lex is like, I don't know, I I I she might tell everybody the truth, we better have her killed. It's like, but sir, you clearly didn't want her killed at first. It's like, yo, I, I guess I do now, because I'm worried. Also kill Holly Hunter because she told Holly Hunter the story. Even though Holly Hunter could have spread this around to everybody by now, it's just kind of too late to control it, but fuck it, whatever, let's hope. Sir, won't all these deaths look, like, really suspicious? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, fuck it, we're in too deep. gotten away with, <laughs> with Granny, more. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Granny's peach tea. <laughs> to match hers beforehand. <laughs> I didn't tell you the truth. You don't really need to see people recovering bullets okay. and incinerating bodies to believe that Lex Luthor has the power to change the story to be whatever he wants it to be. Wow. What? And, and, wow. wow. What, an what an incredible act uh, of apologetics. That is insane. Mm. This guy should write a video on but like, what does how, he to change defend, it to? how to when? defend every story ever. Basically, whatever you saw, however it possibly could have happened, that's what happened. Yeah, whatever you yeah, saw, I mean, that, somebody actually purpose. changed it off screen and without any scenes yes. inexplicably. Writing 101. Lex Lex changed everything behind the scenes to match it all, okay? So you don't need to worry. Yeah, it's never mentioned. It's never spoken about. There are no scenes to support this. He doesn't even have the means to do this as far as we know, but he just did it because that's what he has to do in order for this story to even start resembling any sense. Brilliant. <sighs> EFAP bad writing is, bad writing can't exist. EFAP is giving way too much credit to Congress and the US government in general. What do you mean? <laughs> They're the CIA. Uh, what is that? Like, something I'm, we get criticized for. We assume that the government is too confident. What are you referring to specifically? What have we said yeah. that is out of the bounds of the CIA or the US government? Please, please tell me. Like, the CIA shows up in the compound. They see all of this stuff. Well, Twin Perfect is in chat. Hey, oh, found also, him. check this out. You guys are ignoring context so hard to hit on this movie. The people who burned the bodies on the ground beyond recognition were con beyond recognition. Beyond recognition. You could no, look they were at bodies, these bodies. With bullets in them I and shrapnel take this off in screen. them. Look at that body. You think that's beyond recognition? You fucking moron. Also, <laughs> we're, we're con they're controlled by and hired by Lex. I don't care if these people were controlled and hired by Lex. The CIA come in right after them. They are in this scene. Yeah. Pay attention to the that. fucking movie. Yes, the Central Intelligence Agency. Not only that, but if the CIA was going to be framed for this, you bet your ass they would be investigating this to prove that they weren't the ones who did it. It's a whole Absolutely. strike force. Come on, like, come on. Yeah, come on. And, you, and, and if their way to defend themselves was just to say, oh, Superman showed up before us and shot them with bullets and grenades what? and then he piled them into a pile and then used a flamethrower on them. To make it look like he did it. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, it folds in on Like, itself. there'd be all these bullet holes around the place. There'd be and... tastings. Probably yeah, there'd be serious punched into walls. I can't believe trying to holes in pass walls. a narrative that we're looking to hate it when you you just said we'll like oh, the it's totally chill because everybody's been paid off throughout all of the agencies of the everybody's government. Everybody's been paid off, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, <laughs> off screen and without any support of this in the movie, it turns out that that's what they did. Sure, writing one hundred and one, brilliant. Congress is incompetent. But hey, CIA you want to jump in, buddy? Model. Yeah, hey, we're not cowardly at all. Come on in. <laughs> this is pathetic. Please. This movie's awful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, I'm so... I just, like, I'd love to talk to you about Doomsday and Superman's fight. I, I would love to talk to you about that if you want to jump in. Come in here and face our cowardly asses. Wait, wait a minute. Doing. I'm letting my video I'm speak letting for the video itself. speak for itself. I don't want to get involved. Wait a second. Oh, <laughs> you're already involved. You came to the chat wait, and you were just about wait, us wait, in a wait, Discord. You said that the last one was recorded offline because we didn't want to talk to you. 
Wait but now minute. we're saying that we want to talk to you and you're saying, oh, we'll this... let the video speak for itself. It's doing really badly. If you've got any extra arguments, you don't want this video in. to speak for you. Please. I just want to highlight this this here. <laughs> just putting it on screen for everybody, just, just in case anybody missed this. Uh, All right. All right, <laughs> you 3,000 losers. <laughs> Type C in chat. If <laughs> why, would, coward. why would you say That's that right. we're cowardly and then be like, the video on, speaks for wait self, a I just saw something again. You said you wanted to just talk about the things in the Discord. It's like you wanted. You, I you said you I were am cowardly struggling. for not I having it live. Yeah, I, I'm struggling to like wrap we my saw brain the around. Things you said this. You said that it was recorded offline because we didn't want to talk to you, which is untrue. But now it is live, you're here, and we are totally cool with talking to you, and now you don't want to. <laughs> I, I'm impressed. I mean, I am very have impressed. Have it both hey, ways, like, my dude. Wow. Look, How, this hey, is pathetic. He wants to let his video speak for himself. I wouldn't recommend uh, it. Why did you call us cowardly for what, reacting to it <laughs> not live? Well, I don't understand. <laughs> look, Lex paid him uh. off. <laughs> Lex, how could you? No, I remember uh, he must have done that with in that scene that we didn't see. Damn, That's the, oh, that was in the extended extended cut. Oh yeah, that was in the <laughs> Snyder Super cut. Extended, the jump, the Batman v Superman Dawn of Grey edition. <laughs> jump four by Dawn three. Grey <laughs> Dude, uh, I am loving how many C's are rolling in. <laughs> big I don't think anybody is fucking pathetic. I don't think anyone has self-owned that hard to be like, heck, cowards. That is, it's like, you oh, you want to speak to us? Up. No. <laughs> it wouldn't be you better if you just pretended up. that this didn't exist. <laughs> you came to the wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not. Like, I just, like, I, I was so eager, by the way, man. I was really keen to talk about this fantastic movie. But I guess it's not going to happen now. That's unfortunate. Like, yeah, you should have just late. like not shown up and said anything. This was counterproductive <laughs> to just all of what you are. Well, Ugh. I mean, the video certainly all right, does speak I guess... for itself. I will say that. It, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's 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 saying a lot of things. It is saying a lot. Not the uh, okay, not so what I said... would ever want to Man, from me, he but. He just That's said, why would I join when you people are calling me pathetic? You called us cowardly. You called us cowards, you asshole. <laughs> what? what? Dude, what? Like, you, are you, how stupid are you? With, the number of times I've seen with online interactions where people forget that they start the insulting first is kind of unbelievable. Hey, this, and this, so, to be uh, fair, this guy does think he thinks that Batman vs. Superman is good. Hey, so Twin Perfect, um, we think your video is pathetic. If you have any hopes of convincing us otherwise, you probably want to talk to us. Um, we don't know you at all. I'm not saying you're pathetic, but your video. And what we is do know pathetic. is not great. And you know we will, what? We if will you join, I promise I will not call you pathetic. pathetic. We will. We will rescind our statement of calling you pathetic if you come on. We will. We will oh, do I mean, it. I. I just think well, this is lame. I'll take it back. <laughs> I think it's. I'll real take lame. it back. I mean, I think the video is pathetic. I'll stand by. Oh I think yeah, the video is definitely shot, pathetic. But, yeah, but <laughs> his behavior has for... been pathetic. Yeah, there's that too. For yeah, sure. I mean, it's just it's just so interesting. Like, what, what what's happening right now? You're cowards. Hey, do you want to talk? Nah, the video speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Pat, their audience is two thousand losers. <laughs> Just keep it a one seat. Cool. Keep it a one seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Random uh, in Theo. <laughs> I, like I said, the, the, the I would have so many things I'd love to talk to you about. Twin Perfect. I'd love to change your mind on so many things because, like, for the, like I said, first and foremost, the Superman uh, Doomsday fight. You because again, you don't want to join the chat. That's fine. Uh, the, the the Discord, but at least you'll be listening to this right now. You said. Like unironically stated this as a, as an argument that because Doomsday came back down, that it would be dumb for Superman to try and put him out into space, and that it proves everyone right that it was stupid to have tried that with Zod in the first film. Like, do you not even think you could counter that argument? If we gave you a hundred dollars to counter that argument, do you think you could do it? I believe in you, Twin Perfect. I think you could do wait, it. Wait, you said. Wait, hold on. What? 
Hold on. Uh, my behavior is why I'm here. Let's do it. Does that mean you want to actually talk? He says, where's the link? Because you said you didn't... Oh. Wait. So, the, so we'll you, just, DM... Discord or something? Well, yeah. <laughs> does, I mean, Southport, do you know what his profile is? Can you link him? Or add him, rather? Uh, I don't know what his profile is. I've I have told the guy that was in his server to uh, tell, like, give him my uh, Discord tag, but I never got anything. <laughs> well, so. uh, the way to do it, I guess, would be if he can find me through. Um, if he joins, obviously, you can leave the Discord uh, server. Well, if he goes on the EFAP Discord or something. Yeah. So right, if he joins, can, yeah, with the link in the <laughs> description, if you join my Discord and then look on the users, you'll find me at the top. Add me, and then I can add you. You can delete all of this in post, don't worry. Wouldn't want to infect you. <laughs> you see, it wouldn't be a contradictive narrative in the, uh, in the description of uh, her testimony versus what happened, because anybody who checked the scene of the crime would have been paid off by Lex. That's not true. Not the CIA. <laughs> the CIA clearly not working for Lex as well, so it's just like, how did you... Like, I don't even. It turns out everyone was just working for the bad guy the whole time. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, so that, you that wraps that all up in a neat little bow. Doesn't there was it? a crime. He could have just paid them to say there is no such thing as murder anymore. At least for Lex Luthor, <laughs> with all the money he has. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could have paid off, you know, the constitution. Yeah, just pay off the judge. There is no such thing. As... He just there is bought no such Congress. Thing as crime. So... Yeah. Um, I've not got anything yet. This movie is really. It went perfect. Do you remember when you said it was fine that Superman essentially killed himself to kill Doomsday because that was the point of the scene? That was the point, yeah. Did Superman. <laughs> so I think it's funny is that you think about in Superman's head. Did he know that he was in a film? <laughs> He knew that these were just scenes being shot for a movie. I just, I don't, so Superman could have kept flying him into space into perpetuity, and once he fell back down to Earth, it was a terrible idea to lead him into it. Could you imagine, like, if there was a fight going on, I don't know, like, off the coast of New York, um, and they're on an island, and they're okay, and you're like, all right, they're... Let's let's take him to I don't know Brighton Beach. It's it's empty. It's really cold this time of year. There's nobody around. <laughs> and then because you left a spear there instead of just going and get the spear, and then I I I don't I I still am kind of reeling from that one because it's like I, what's the worst that could happen by leaving that he goes it, somewhere else? It's like I, yeah, <laughs> but he could do that really, no matter what. I really well. actually want to want to ask him the uh, the the meth bear analogy. I want to see what he would do with that. It's... Well, maybe the bear would have gone to a different campsite. True. Or it would have stayed in the woods like a bear. Who so knows? many questions. I would love to know what movie can't be defended with, uh, oh, that was the point. Everything that you guys know. think that makes Civil War worse than Batman v Superman, that was the point. Except it was the point, and it was executed well. So yeah, well, yeah. Civil War is really well written. It's very Civil tight. War is great. What it's... movies can't be defended with that? Please, I'm dying like, to know. And if, and if there are if there are any problems with the the if there are any problems with Civil War, then there were just off screen scenes that you could infer that fix it all. So there you go. That's right. If anything, yeah. If anything didn't make sense but could be explained by someone getting paid off, that's like such a fucking trope with media defenses. They were paid off. Um, it comes up. It comes up with a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah, like uh, you know, why was Luke so out of character? And it's like, well, that was the point. He was paid off. <laughs> <laughs> he was paid off to be out of character by Lex Luthor. Oh my god. Multiverse. Oh my god. Superman was paid off to z snap Zod's neck so that he could um get him and put him in the pool and make Doomsday. A bear found an eight so much cocaine it died. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what a chad. That's my kind Natural of beer. curiosity. Dying he says he's in your Discord. Discord. I don't know how to proceed. At so yeah, I see. Now look at the members list, and at the top right you'll see me. And then you right click, I think, add friend, and then I should be notified. Or, well, I've got my list up. So I'll see it, and I can add you, and then I can add you to the conversation. How epic. Yeah, it's uh, Rostad or... Oh, well, I'm not going to say it on stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, it's in the, if, it's in the, if he's in the Discord, then it's... 
Yeah, I mean, just, they'll know, probably. The yeah. meeples. All right, where are we? I see him. There we are. Well, now we wait. That should be fun. So, how are you, is everybody having a good day? <laughs> yeah, it's going pretty well. Sure. It's yeah. all good. Hey, Rags, remember when I said it's like it's probably over 20? Well, now it's probably over 21. Oh. Over 21, what? Amount of people who've come on while we're covering them. Oh, it's been a bunch. It's been a whole bunch. No, um, I, I wouldn't say that there's any molds being broken with this one. We'll just toss it on the pile. Hello, Drew. Hello there. Hello. Is, is, it, is it working? H hello. Wait, is it, it? Are you speaking? Because if not, uh, how's it going? Oh, there, there we, we go. go. All right. How you doing, man? There we go. Hey. So just uh, I'm trying to figure out why there's screenshots of my Discord showing up over here. Well, the so oh, shared the that's, images. That's how we found out <laughs> that, um, that you called us. Cowards. Did you guys? Did you guys go looking, or did you? Did somebody just drop it on you? Well, someone, someone in Mahler's Discord, I guess, was in your server as well. Saw what was said and shared it there. I guess they thought I it saw was unfair. Screenshots. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this thing that was said, just some backstory. I don't know. I'm not involved with any of this. I don't know what's going on with you guys. This is uh, all new to me. But um, the idea was I was getting information secondhand from other people about what you were guys were saying about me. Um, I was there for the first one when you were talking t about uh, Filmento, I guess it mm -hmm. was. And I had assumed you had saw me in the chat because there were a bunch of people talking to me and you were responding to people in the chat. So I didn't know that you guys didn't know I was there. And then uh, when you covered, uh, excuse me, when you covered me, I wasn't in the chat. I was away from my computer at that time. Uh, all I got was just a bunch of people telling me that you were dumping on me, dumping on me, dumping on me. So I didn't know exactly how that went down. Uh, I didn't really particularly feel like checking it out for myself because of what I understood was going on over here. And then, so I, you, I dropped coward because, and I noticed you said, don't throw insults if insults haven't been thrown. I assumed insults had been thrown. So I just said, you know, I mean, I was there. I'm here. I'm easy to reach if you guys want to talk to me. And, uh, you know, I, uh, if you want to talk trash, which is what I assumed was going on, you know, so do it um, where, when I'm around. That was basically the idea behind the coward thing. And then the other thing, the 2000 losers comment, that is, so there's an emote there. It's the smug Ross face emote. So people who are familiar with my channel, part of my Discord channel, uh, people who have been around since the beginning of my channel know that there's this building uh, in joke about how smug I am and how flippant I am and how dismissive and what a jerk I am and what a terrible person I am. So when I use that emote, the Smug Ross emote, it's I think it's titled Am I Right? But it's the Smug Ross face, which means I'm not, I'm playing up the, that's actually self-deprecating. I know that sounds ridiculous because I'm throwing an insult, but when I throw an insult yeah, with that face, really seem to make sense. it's, yeah. I'm the jerk here. I'm being the jerk and I know I'm being a jerk and there's so usually in in the past when people are insulting me i will put something in one of my videos that is kind of like playing that up like yeah i see that's what's going on and here i am being the jerk of the internet so that's what that comment was so i wasn't at all attacking your your fan base i wasn't doing anything like that with your fan base i was just playing up the smug ross i'm such a <clears throat> jerk character okay um so all the other things that don't have the emoji next to them is that just implied or did you actually mean those things the smug ross emote no the other emote that we've been saying. yes the smug ross emote well like what, what rags is highlighting is like so everything that doesn't have the emote attached is probably just genuine commentary right 
I don't know. I don't remember everything that was said. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, luckily for you, you, you don't have it. to remember. So let me show you. Well, I I was going to say that go. there's there's more than likely, absolutely, some insults thrown at your your video uh, from from the Man of Steel one, just out of like utter disbelief. But um, it's it was it's a weird experience to to call people cowardly and to that be like you're calling me pathetic. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. That seems tit for tat for me, but no. Insults... My my understanding was you guys called me pathetic. I say, okay, well, if you want to call me pathetic, call it to me to my face when I'm there, and so cowardly. So I apologize for that. Well, you don't don't worry about like I, it's not that much. It was more of an I was interested in the mechanics of it because as for like, the, the, I think the video is really bad. But like I'm sure you're very like most video essay creators. I'm sure you're a very nice person, and I, I most take... people are nice. I mean. Typically, yeah. yeah. Um, for context, okay. Well, I think the video is very good, so that's, that's <laughs> there absolutely we go. fine. Yeah, we clearly because you made it, you probably thought it was worthwhile, um, and you've said as much as that what we're saying isn't worth much anyway. So I, I, I get that that's your position. For context, I made a couple of movie reviews. Um, uh, we, we all do media analysis in different ways. This, this podcast is created to watch video essayists, including all of the ones you probably know about in some way, shape, or form at some point, and we just check out their takes, typically when they oppose ours, as in if we watch something and we conclude it's somewhere on a scale, we, we wouldn't mind watching a video that argues the complete reverse. Recently, we've gotten into the DCEU. We're watching them one by one, we're releasing our coverage of them, and then we check out videos that defend them, because so far they've all been absolutely abysmal. And um, everyone recommended your Man of Steel one as a strong one for defending the movie, and uh, we were staggered by it quite significantly. I don't. I think you said you hadn't seen any of the coverage, which is totally fine, but today we're doing uh, your, your BVS one. And okay, it, that's totally fine with me. I don't. I don't really particularly mind. I was just here to talk about those comments that were on my discord which are for my discord fans they all understand the tone and you Clearly guys don't so i wouldn't i wouldn't direct that guys that that at you guys you understand i would it's it's was an it's an in joke that's been building for years mm -hmm. well okay i i, I just uh let's see, like wait so a quick question so real uh, uh, and about my videos my my it took me a long time to figure out what I was doing with my channel, and I think I really finally figured it out recently, was it's not so much that I'm saying the movie is good, I'm just saying that the criticisms that I saw were not as strong as I thought they could be. Right. And so my my whole point is just, if you're going to argue against something, I want it steel-manned, you know? So let's, let's think the make good? the best possible case we can for something. And then talk about the best possible case, rather than just, I mean, I, you know, slinging, dumping, and stuff like that. You know, that's no, that's I'm, my I'm, whole. I'm thing. inclined to agree with you. It, it, whether or not Man of Steel should be considered good, great, bad, or terrible, whatever, is really irrelevant compared to did we get the references right? Are the people being critical and the people not being critical, or rather praiseworthy? And like, I would flip it around. I'd be like, your video was was dire in terms of misrepresenting references or making them up and bvs is doing the same so. thing no i know of um, course okay. i know like, that's kind of the, the problem the, though the thing is like i'm assuming you would hold the same position in reverse because our positions can't coexist like they're, they're impossible to coexist like my references sure. define okay. as like contradictive in terms of uh the movie itself like for example lex's motivations or superman's uh in <laughs> superman's uh, uh methodology of killing uh doomsday batman's choices <clears throat> in terms of kryptonite weaponry manufacturing um their whole battle there's so much to go over in terms of just how broken the film is and uh yeah i, I think a lot of the defenses like i'm i genuinely i'm curious when you said it's the point of the scene though do you think that that's a good defense of a broken scene i don't remember what you're talking about we, uh, so the, the criticism was um, all the ways they could have killed Doomsday, including but not limited to Wonder Woman using. The yeah, spear. when I say when I say that's the point of the scene, so I think your criticism of the movie is not of the point of the scene. The point that your criticism is how they pulled it off, and that's fine. I don't really mind. It's just the point. The point trying to be made is here's 
here's the the end result is the point and then not the the method by which they got to it but you know sure, what i mean it's bad so, so I, it's bad. I get what we, you mean in terms, yeah. i get what you mean in terms yeah, of yeah you can call it bad like... i don't care it's just it's just in the context of my i don't remember the specific thing the, the thing i said in my video but I guess, this is why i said i'm letting my video speak for itself because i don't remember what i said in I the video it's been the problem years. though i think the problem that we had with that is because like you know, every every scene, there's usually some objective that the writer is trying to achieve. It's just whether or not what happens in the scene actually supports reaching okay, that that's end fine. point. I just think well, it's I, more I, interesting to talk about the objective rather than the mm, method. Nah, I don't, I, don't I don't think, agree. I, don't I think, think um, they, yeah. I think that the objective. Just disagree. Can be... I don't care. It's, it's fine. Well, then why are you fucking just... here? The... <laughs> we will clarify the, the disco. Okay, don't if you're just gonna, here. if you're just gonna say it's fine and not engage with anything, then why are you here? I, I have I'm a, here to talk a, about the comments that were on the Discord, like I said. Right, okay, oh. so... Uh, okay, I, you a, have the smug emoji. Anything else? Well, I've got a question. Um, so, in your video, you included a clip from, I guess, a, a Superman animated series or movie where Superman was fighting Shazam in the city and they were, like, destroying a bunch of buildings. Um, what was the exact context that you were intending? Like, what what context does that scene exist in, in your mind? Uh, when when these guys fight, damage happens. That's the context. Okay, so uh, Lex Luthor had apparently tricked them into fighting in an empty part of the city that was built for the homeless by Lex Luthor. Not only were uh, like no civilians hurt in that scene, but it was also actually set up to make Superman look like a massive threat to everyone. Now, the criticism that we have of Man of Steel involves this is not an unpopulated area that Superman is taking this fight to. Superman is right. fighting Zod in a highly populated area. Hundreds of thousands of people would be dead. Right, I remember uh, the, not the, the arguments same about that. It, and it's the point is, is, first of all, Superman's first day, so he's screwing up. Second, a lot of, uh, most of, most of the fight, most of the damage, I mean, most of the deaths happen before he gets there. And then when he does get there, there's this whole why doesn't we why doesn't he just fly up with Zod? And then the point is, well, Zod just told him I'm going to kill these people one by one, whether you're here or not. So do you mind if we um, he's got to fight we, there? That's that's it. There's multiple things to break through, down about. Do you mind this. if we go yeah, like go through that one by one? Because I think I think the main problems we had with that was first the idea that like Superman isn't at all accountable for a lot of the deaths that happened before he got to Metropolis. Because of course it's like the entire plan to disrupt the uh the, the, world. the world engine is really flawed. And like, for some reason, Superman forgets that he has lasers or doesn't try to fly through the world engine um, earlier. Uh, th there were a lot of things he could have done to like make it happen faster, but he doesn't because he just seemingly forgets about his well, abilities. And this is also putting to one side that they only need to take out one of the world engine machines in order to stop the world engine from functioning. So he probably shouldn't have even gone there he should have gone to Metropolis straight away. And, just shot and like it. that kind of on him that he didn't make a better decision. Because of course, it's like, if we could come up with this, like if we sitting here watching the movie could come up with it, he and the government should have been able to come up with a better plan. But like, even if you ignore all of the deaths that happen from that, Superman lasers the Kryptonian ship and then it crashes through three buildings, like three skyscrapers that you in the video said were probably empty but it's like he didn't uh, know uh, that probably that but, that came from the uh the interviews that i was reading i don't uh, nah i don't i don't want to i don't i don't want to hear interviews. interviews that's the thing that's like because it's it's and also the the fundamental thing is like think about because when it comes to culpability and guilt a lot of it has to do with what's going on in your head superman lasered the ship and then it crashed into three buildings which it could have been any three buildings he doesn't know that what? they're empty well, why, so, like, why didn't he's he still it? culpable for that. say, Zod, I'm going to blow this fucking ship up unless you park it peacefully and we can talk. And, and also, like, this, and again, th those buildings, there's no way that they and were empty. Yeah, the, the scale, like, through the, the entire movie. 
the oh, scale so of, of the damage that's happening it, it is not excused by it was his first day. Like what, what Scarlet Witch does at the beginning of Civil War when she sends crossbones up and he blows up a building, that is a rookie mistake. That has huge okay? consequences There's, it's, as it's well. A, it, yeah, it has huge consequences. It's also it, like a heat of the moment, spur spur of the moment decision. And also, and it was only 30 it's, people. It's, 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 it was only about 30 people as opposed to framed, an entire skyscraper. It's, to it's framed as a genuine fuck up and it's a much more reasonable fuck up for a character like that to make. Whereas we, with Superman and his power set, no. The amount of damage that's happening, not excused by he's inexperienced. No I even, way. I don't even think it matches. Like, my first day as a cop it doesn't mean I'm going to spray and pray when like, my machine gun when I spot a bad guy. Like Precisely. <laughs> We're talking about, like, the scale here compared to... Again, like, if it's, if it's one building that gets destroyed, okay, fine, first day... We're not talking about one building that gets destroyed. Oh, that's not us. even counting the fact that, um, that like earlier in the day in Smallville, he flew Zod through a petrol station and blew up a car. There yeah. could have been someone in that, and that's also, his fault. He flew into. Yeah, but that. I gave you that one. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. Right. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> oh, um, oh well, I saw Smallville. Well, but but also no, no, wait, wait, bad. wait. But it, we we got to stop there. Hold on, because there's that, but also the fact that he brought Zod into Smallville puts everybody in the town in imminent danger. Right. And that's yeah, his. That's fault. in the video. Is it in the video? Like, I don't... Uh, yeah, I said that in the video. Yeah, but then you said that he couldn't fly them out of the... He, you said he couldn't fly them yeah, out of the And then I town. showed all the examples of him trying he tried to fly once. them away, and then he... He tried couldn't. once, and then he punches... He punched one of the he minions. He regularly tries, like, punches three times. Three times. I, think I, I think it's three times. I, I'm trying no, to remember my edit. No, I'm sorry, are, are you... And at the time, him? I think it was... Are, it's like there's you... a couple times when he tries to fly away. There's a couple times where he punches people away. Are and you including the time that he's... he punched a dude into a train yard? I because that doesn't off. count. That blows blew up the train off. yard. Well, yeah. He, he said he gave that one. And, and then the guy is able to, like, chuck a train right well, at him the gas station. town. Yeah. Oh. I think this is missing the point that I was making. Which is that it's his first day? Ooh. No, what, the the point that I made in that video, which was which is the it, he screwed up at that time, and he's doing his best to try to amend it, but he let the emotions get the better of him. I don't think so. The film's yes, aware you're of correct. That, like, it's a it's a it's a supreme screw up because of the emotional situation that's going on. I don't think the film was aware. That of that. that was the point of the yeah. The, I, the that response is in my video film. was that. Are you talking about the the uh, the emotions uh, involving like his mother was just threatened and he leaves her behind with those two Kryptonians uh, yeah. to deal with this one? <laughs> yeah, I showed I, I even showed a quote from Zack Snyder where he talks about the motivation behind that whole thing. I, I think it's worth he again left... like we we need to um we need to move past the quotes because it's like it, was is that reader response theory right where it's like oh no death of the author like yeah. I think I think it's important to continue. oh I don't I I if you if you watch my Twin Peaks video you will know. I believe zero percent in death of the author. Ooh. How can how can you say that? And also bring up you, I think the, the like, author. Wait, wait, wait! I just want to clarify: the, you don't actually is, believe that. Is of you don't a believe that. Huge, huge importance. I can guarantee you that you don't believe that. Okay. How? Like, so George Lucas says understand. that Star Wars is is just a, a film about a penguin on a seat. You just couldn't see it. How important is well, that input? Be. There's, there's no way you can. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't really hear the somebody else was talking. What did you say? So George Lucas says Star Wars is about a penguin on a chair. How useful is this author's input okay. in the analysis of Star Wars? I mean, that's kind of like you can add things to it. I'm not saying you can't. Well, add so to you it. made it categorical. You were like, it's absolutely so important to take the the author's input. I think it's useful. Um, in certain instances, but it can never be used as... So, for example, um, how many people died? You you took issue with the BuzzFeed article that was representative, while someone like Zack Snyder says, oh, it was just 5,000 people, I think, which is absurd. Just cause if he Zack said Snyder it, said that no one died, would you believe Zack Snyder? Well, no, but he didn't. Well, but wait, wait, wait no, but that's, but that's important. He was, and, and Zack Snyder was talking about the Superman fight and not the, the world engine? Well, it wouldn't matter what he was talking about. It, it, that's the point I'm making. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's the idea. Yeah, but of, you're like, taking issue with the point that I'm saying, which is that it does. No, 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 so, no, no. Wait, hold on. So basically, where does that the, leave us? I don't understand the, the, the no, point that's I, trying I, to be made here. That. The, the point that's being tried to make uh, the, that's, that we're making in terms of like this whole idea of uh, death of the author is. Let's say, like, in a hypothetical situation, if, if the writer just says something that's just like absurd. 
it's it's ridiculous and it shouldn't even be considered at all because it's just totally incongruous with what is actually like in the media but you said that it's like you zero percent don't subscribe to death of the author but like it's always important that it always needs to be considered and, and the reason i'm not like saying you... that it can't be i'm not saying that you can't have the author's opinion and then also the things that people add to it I'm just saying no, that no, the no, author's I, opinion is very, very important. No, I mean like when when because the then you understand opinion, what it was that they're trying to depict. No, but I mean when I the author's like opinion like flat out contradicts and, what's in the in the story. You know what I mean? Can, like, yeah, yeah like trying to do implies that failure is possible. The process. You can tell what they're trying to do based on the structure. I'm not that saying that he didn't that. fail. I'm saying that these are the interesting no, things that I want to talk about. And my point is that you don't like your claim of like zero percent to death. The author is like, well, no there will be times where you're going to hear an author's perspective or input and you're going to be like, no. And uh, uh, sort of, You can what... disagree with an author, but I don't think it, you, you should think, throw it away. Do you think or... an author can misinterpret their own work? Okay. Uh, do you think no, that? No, do you? Let's see. Yeah. Sure. All, all I'm trying to do is push you off 0% because nobody... That's an interesting conversation to have about the, the intention of the what, what they were trying to do and how they failed, sure. I'm just trying to push you off 0%. That's, that's what I my own goal <laughs> Push you if, away if from you zero. That. Like you can. Feasibly, I don't understand the question. You, you, you. So I take issue with you saying you take you zero percent or death of the author. I'm saying like there's got to be an instance where you would engage in death of the author. Like that's that's just categorical. Uh, Ross, I don't think death of the author makes sense. Uh, okay, Ross. I, I, I think question. it's. I, I just don't find it useful. Okay. Uh, what do you think about J.K. Rowling? I don't know anything about J.K. Rowling. Okay, J.K. Rowling oh, said that Dumbledore let's, hold on, is... Hold on, hold on. Sorry, let's, let's not move too far away because you said specifically you framed your, um, your response to criticisms of Batman v. Superman, specifically how Superman goes about trying to kill Doomsday. You say, well, I'm just more interested in looking at what the author intended, but you frame your video as yeah, the you point are the wrong point. about Superman. Like, you are well, wrong quick, about this movie. You know what oh, so it is, right? Oh, oh, so you don't mean what man. you say in the videos? Cool. All like, right then. Well, well hmm. I don't know. All right. I, well, I don't. What do you mean? You should have let the video you, speak for yourself. I guess, like, when when you say <laughs> when you say like it's clickbait, I guess my question would be: so, what is your actual perspective then on on this film? Like, what was? Well, I'm not saying what, that the that the responses to the questions are wrong. I'm just saying the forcefulness of the word "wrong" is. It's like, yeah, it's kind of an important up, word. Hey, come check this out and and see how you're wrong, you know, and people want to click on it. And then there's the no, speed but that's of outrage not, thing. That is not and then they get into it and then there's an interesting... What I, I'm I guess what I'm saying. It's not belligerent or mean or anything. That is not just the title of your video. That is the tone of the video itself, where you say people who make these criticisms, you, they're ridiculous. Come come on, it's explained. You in outwardly the movie, say that's no, the objectively video, wrong. Let's take a look, or look at them and then maybe we can think about it differently. You, you, that you, is you, not you, how you say, that. say <laughs> no, I literally no, say no. that at the beginning you, you of the You say that some people are objectively wrong. And that's the smug Ross. Okay. So, so, so you don't believe that? You don't actually believe that? Can you see how that might be seen as kind Can, of... Is the real Ross here with no, us I now, or is it how the it smug up. fake just, one? You know. I, I guess once no, we you don't say know. that, that's almost like the cinema sins thing of some of the time it's jokes, but some of the time they're real criticisms. And then it gets really hard for people to know what they're meant to be. You know what I mean? Like, how, how is somebody meant to know, like, which parts of the video they're meant to take earnestly and which parts they're meant to dismiss as jokes? Just to... If the line is so blurry... And out of curiosity, like, like part you... of what interested me in your video when I heard the opening was that you believe people could be uh, objectively wrong and about what they're talking about. So, for instance, I hate BVS because of the scene where Lex kills Lois. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, the 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 okay. So I'm I've I've used the objectively wrong thing more than once in my videos. So I'm I was getting confused about where the context was. So in the in the Man of Steel video, or are you talking about BVS? Man in either Steel case, what you what just said, it the idea is that the all everybody's opinions of why these movies are so bad are based on, and then they give a bunch of reasons, and the reasons don't match up with what I'm seeing in the film. So there's the objectively wrong. That's what right, I meant and that's, there. Yeah, okay, that's absolutely fantastic, and that's part. Of, I was I was hoping to say that's why I had interest in covering your video because I was like, oh shit, you believe that's possible, which makes it easier to 
interlock with you. Because I can be like, oh, I think you're objectively wrong. You've fucked up. You've created context, or you've invented references, or you've twisted the storyline to match something that's more coherent when it's not. And that's why it would be an interesting conversation. For example, your criticism of people saying that he should have booped uh, Doomsday into space, and you're like, yeah, well, it doesn't work, fools. It's like, oh, but it would if he did it again. For for how long? Should the second he do time. Ever. The second for the time. Second or as time, long yeah. as it takes to get him yeah. out of the until, place. Yes. No, until the fuck US fuck second time. Until, okay, okay. Until the US but, military but, but, but runs again, out of the But again, now we're talking about the point with. of the scene versus the method they used oh, to show that's, it. See, Mike, oh, Mike. Oh, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. So, so just to clarify. Here we go. Just that's my whole, my whole, my just entire clarify, point though, is. I just want to say. Is, so you were this, objectively wrong. This thing wrong, that you don't like the death of the you, author. It's yeah, the but, point of the scene. What was he trying right, right, right. to? I understand completely. I understand. I understand. What was the point of the movie? Right. It was to watch Batman vs Superman. Five. Yeah, but yeah, but just to clarify, point. you were objectively wrong when you said it wouldn't work. I don't remember, but okay. Cool. That's fine. And you're Sorry. saying, but I no, you don't have to apologize. What? That's I, absolutely fine. You made a mistake, and you're saying that the point of the scene is to have Doomsday not go into space. So of course he doesn't. I'm not saying I don't make mistakes. That's, I don't I, know where I that came I, in. I that, say, I'm not, that I, that I, I didn't never say that make you a don't. Mistake. I didn't say the reverse, Michael. I'm man. always just trying to walk things back you're to okay. what the point Nothing's was. Nothing is going wrong my here. My point. What's Zack Snyder's point? What's your point? That's it. That, I was simply interested in clarifying that, and that's that's all I got. That's 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 all good. I'm very glad. There we and go. We did it. I just wanted to know because that's from our perspective. We want to get these references right and wrong, so then we can conclude which writers are working the hardest and which ones we should reward the most, like which ones we should praise the most. Someone like Zack Snyder is obviously dribbling all over the page, and we just want to highlight that that's what's happening. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely fine then. But hold on, I wanted to... Uh, could, you said that it was really funny that somebody said Civil War is uh, better than Bat Ma uh, Batman of Steel. Do I didn't. I never said anything about Civil War. Do you think that that's true? Because <laughs> you have. <laughs> we we have we have receipts that would suggest somebody otherwise. else said something about civil war. I don't remember the conversation. Yeah, but you said but... we should stream for two hours on that comment. What does that imply? Oh, that was the that was the reactive response to just the the idea that I was getting about you guys, where you were just talking trash for hours and hours and hours but about then, me. But then another so. guy said civil war is great, and then you said you just added more time. Like, he said, "Man, content I, is easy." Okay, I, think, I guess what I want is like, do you actually that, that, think that, that was the that was the reactive like, jab? You understand? Do you think well, that? I, that I didn't see the Smug Ross emote in that one though. Yeah, is that... <laughs> I guess no, we're smug, like... smug Ross is like a blanket thing, you know? Okay. I guess what I'm All asking, right. yeah, but what uh, I'm asking, card. yeah, but what I'm asking right like, now, is I'm like, obviously that... being sarcastic yeah, there. Yes, but what I'm Ob what I'm yeah, asking yeah. right now is, do you think that, like, do you actually think that Man of Steel is better than Batman than Civil War? I saw. I don't remember Civil War. I saw it one time, and I that don't really remember it. Fine. Um, so I, I okay. can't make a comment. Right. How um, many times have you seen Man of Steel, by the way? In making the video, probably nine. Wow. Okay. And you think it's a well-written movie? Uh, like I said in the beginning of, <clears throat> excuse me, the Man of Steel video. If your if your gripe is writing or special effects or the way it looks or you know dialogue d delivery and stuff like that like you can th you i have no issue with you all right that's great but um but what about the well-written well part yeah yeah you didn't actually answer us can you just say if the complaint is about writing, we're asking you the first one yeah we're, we're asking you about your opinion on it it could probably be Do better think... yeah <laughs> okay so the, again Holy Any movie fuck. could probably be better. But I think there's a way. lot of interesting stuff in there. Do, do you think that written? the movie is well written? It's a yes or no. Yes or do no. Think... Yes or no. You guys know Lemmy? No. Yeah. Quit deflecting. I, I really recommend you look question. up. We're legitimately show, curious. Yes no. it's a really... anyway. We're really curious what what your opinion is on this. Yeah, like and don't don't be. I mean, if, if, if I'm if I'm really pushed, I can say I can say it's not it's not the best written movie. No. I guess, but yeah, okay. But what we're only one movie is, is the best scale. written movie. Yeah. Like, so, it's, it's, oh my god! Wait, wait, wait. What we you, found out? Do you think uh, is, okay, it's you not the best? It, and it's no, it's not pedantic. pedantic. I'm asking you your your opinion on the writing if it's good oh, yeah. or not, and it's, it's the struggle to get an answer out of you. Mean the best written movie. It means I didn't ask if it was the best written movie. If I wanted to know if it was the best written movie, I'd ask, do you think it's the best written movie? 
Like, oh, can you, I'm glad like, I have like, more beers. Jeez. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is going to make it better or worse, right, but so... if you could drop a number, like, between a 0 and a 10, and there's not going to be any problem with this. It could be 10, it could be 0, yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't know. That's totally fine. Yeah, literally shot like in the dark. I'm not, I'm not interested in whether or not it's a well-written movie. I guess as, it's as much as I am interested about in, in the points that I, would, that I was trying to make. I really like this take on Superman. That was it. No, um, that was not like, it. That is not all you said. Well, you you said, said all these criticisms of the movie are wrong and that they're actually explained and there are reasons for all of it. See, it's actually well written. It's not poorly written like everyone did I is say saying well it written? is. We're trying to sorry, find you out. Were, so, sorry, you were responding to criticisms of the no, writing. No, you're reading the well written thing into what I said. Um, I well, guess what, it's I mean, you know what? You're right. Right. Maybe maybe we should just ask you if if it's still well written or not, and then you could just tell us. Like I maybe said, we should I do don't, I don't like I don't like talking trash like that about things that I like. You know, what, wait, wait, talking what? trash about so, things you like. Wait, 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 like I said, I like. the best I the best you're gonna get out of me is it's not the best written movie. It could be better. Only one okay. movie is the best written movie. So, and, and there's and, well, so and he's saying that hyperbole. he doesn't yeah. want to say anything lower than that because it would be, I guess, cruel to the film because you enjoy it, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. I All right. So I really bit. like I really like Batman and Robin. It's a really shitty movie. <laughs> it's easy. I disagree. I think that's a fantastic movie, but for the reasons that you probably think it's also good. Um, just to clarify, because I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't make now. that um, distinction. I don't think that that, that you can is just uh, like is the cross wires... a bad movie that I really, really like. Well, then you think it's a good movie. No, I know. Uh, no, is, I don't. Just to clarify, is the cross wire here that you kind of define those as the same thing? Like how much you like something is kind of how well it's written to you. I guess to clarify, I, have I you ever really seen a film that. that you know is good but well, you, that you just didn't it's, like? It's interesting question. I, I. Like, for the sake of moving on, I'll just say, no, it's not a well-written movie. Okay. Well, well, we'd rather have what you actually think, but all right. But apparently That's we can't I get think. that from your videos. Well, uh, I mean, the impression I just got was that that is kind of what he thinks, and he just doesn't he doesn't want to hang on it because of the fact that he, he enjoys his experience with the movie, and he doesn't want to shit on it. Which... I guess I just find it... I can agree with, I can agree with them all, I said. I guess I just find it confusing because, like, when you're addressing criticism that is directed at the film... And then, like, saying, well, it's wrong, or this is why it doesn't make sense. It's like, all of this leads to a certain end point, right? Like, if everybody's giving all these criticism then, and they're just unfounded, it's like, oh, so either there aren't any actual valid criticisms, or there are very few. No, no, Therefore, my end point is good? come up with better criticisms. I, well, so... You I didn't do a very good job um, of this. Yeah, that was... The, the problem, though, is that... Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Like, I didn't realize that at the time, but now now that looking back on what I my point with the video was, was if we're going to criticize something, then we shouldn't criticize it based on nitpicks. Nip well, no, those were just nitpicks. Well, well, now could you, could you define it? Now we're getting nitpicks. somewhere. Do you think that those yeah, were nitpicks? Some of the yeah, what do you think a nitpick is? Can we get a definition for a nitpick? Yeah. So any of the questions that I answered in the video? Um, any of the okay. questions that you uh, answered okay. in the video are nitpicks. Wow. Okay. Um, like, all right. Yeah, like, well, um, I'm done if you guys are. Um, I mean, uh, I'm going to go. Hold on, hold on, I, okay. Okay. Hold on. I have a quick I just, question. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Real, go ahead. Real quick. Okay. So, yes. Um, uh, pl product placement, that's a bit of a nitpick, right? For sure. That doesn't have a huge effect on the story. But the fact that Superman doesn't do basic things to end the main threat, is that a nitpick as well? Is everything you talked about in your Man of Steel video a nitpick? I don't know if I understand what you mean by basic things. I I made the case in the video. That's what I mean when I say I'm going to let the video speak for itself. Is I don't remember it well enough, but I'm pretty sure I made a, a case for that in the video. Um, well, well no, you're no, pretty no, no, sure. It's just Wait. that um, because you were saying like that most of the you were saying you that said the, they were the comments that you were responding to were nitpicks. So now it's just a question of well, I, if like you were to look at each of the criticisms that you addressed. Well, I mean, I, I, okay, when nitpick was the wrong word. I mean, dogpiling. Uh, what do you mean by That's that? A whole different all the criticism, thing. all the criticisms are dog piles. Okay, there's something about this that I don't like, and I don't know really know how to define it. It's just in general, I'm not a fan of this movie, and then so therefore I will go in and do the cinema sins thing of trying to find all every single like right down to calculator watch. I think is a famous cinema sins thing. 
it's like I'm going to find every little thing that I can find to to pick it apart is is the idea that I'm trying to battle with my and I You're think being, yeah it's what, very ambiguous that, and it well I think with what I've heard you say so far that that is in line because um it seems to me that you would be frustrated by the idea of someone almost looking to not enjoy something rather than simply taking it for what it is is that something you feel that's correct I think that's a, yeah that's a good way to put it um you, you, what if it's just bad? I don't think they. I say they. I don't think they define it that way. Like, I, the, can you can a film be bad? I don't, I don't feel good and bad. I think I think successful in what it intended to or not. Um, enjoy so it. It doesn't. So if it doesn't pull off, I guess. Well, um, so if it's well, not successful at what it tried to do, um, that's bad, right? It's, I guess the clarifying question. I'm after I mean, is... I guess in the in the George Lucas example. Like he he wanted to make a video a movie about a penguin on a seat and then he ended up making something that everybody loves. It's like, well, it, it, it's 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 not what the you end result. It, it's I don't know what people. you would say about that in a video. To be honest, like it's not a yeah, penguin trying on a to, seat. I don't know. We're trying to probe here, find out what we're working with. Uh, well, I guess um, someone I, I wanted to, to just get to quickly. I guess is so like the process of you watched it and you're like, fuck, this movie's awesome. And you, you saw how it all lined up and stuff, and then you were like, oh man, no, look at these people. Okay, that. it doesn't matter, that's not the important part. So then you see people criticizing it, and they're like, CinemaSins does the product placement one, so I, I'm sure that's at least one of the sources for that. And then a lot of people making all these other claims, and you're like, wait, no, that's that's not, they, they fucked up the thing with the, oh, oh, this is actually annoying that a lot of the discourse surrounding this movie is inaccurate, which by the way, we take issue with that too. We've defended many movies on this podcast against um, okay. you know, cool. videos that shit on them. So I was curious, you would it be fair to say you care about whether or not people are being accurate when representing like a film or story uh i would say as as accurate as they could be yeah so I, I agree does it not bother you at all that you might have been inaccurate when defending the movie oh no of course it bothers me if i'm inaccurate yeah if okay. if i if if i made a if i made a misstep of course well, I, I figure that's what you'd be um, interested in potentially is to go through a couple of them or not. We, we've done a couple, and it does seem like the impression I've gotten is that you don't necessarily care now, and that you'd rather just appeal to it was a film made by a person who had a point to make, and it was executed well enough that you could clearly see it, but other people couldn't. Like that would be your stance now. I think so. Yeah. And in which case, I feel I, like I uh, that's probably as far as we can go. Two into these characters that was like unfamiliar like you if you guys are comic book guys i'm assuming then you like you know that, that no. there's a lot of nah. deep-rooted philosophy no. that's been trying to uh they've been trying to dig up with these characters over the years and those haven't necessarily made it into the films and then so Zack snyder was trying to do, to do the uh hey there's the plato's republic thing here's the uh you know uh yeah, we can tell by the book. There's a little killer hero who's trying to deny that he killed the Joker once uh, in in The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's that's the interesting thing here. And it's getting overshadowed by, uh, oh, the CG's bad. And, oh, Superman killed all these people. And, oh, Batman's not allowed to kill anybody. <laughs> well, I feel like that's oh, a big Superman thing, though. Killed all these people. I, I, I killed uh, all these people. He's only yeah, the yeah. hero of the movie. So. However, played in public, so yeah, there you go. And, like, and, and it's up for debate, is what I'm saying. It's like, that's up for debate whether or not that happened. And then if it happened, well, then let's talk about it. Like, what's you, what's yeah. what's interesting? In, um, that's... Did you, uh, did you I, like... I think it's just a better a better way to to think about movies rather than. Well, yeah, I'm I'm than super interested what, to pick what, this one. So the, like the stuff that I was responding. To. Uh, have you? Did you like the Last Jedi? There's no wrong answer to this. Don't uh, I don't, worry. I don't. I don't usually remember movies that I didn't really that didn't resonate okay. with me. So um, I don't really remember the last. So Jedi. that's totally fine. It's gonna. Just, it, it would. It's just an example. I'll use. So like, you could say part of the core philosophy of the Last Jedi is to send the message to its audience that like you shouldn't fear failure and it shouldn't drive you into like a horrible state where you lock yourself off from the world failure is really important and it's one of the best things in terms of learning and growing that's the message of the movie a lot of people pick up on a lot of the space mechanics right like oh that ship shouldn't have had that level of fuel that lightsaber can't do that that person can't do this that weapon disappeared when they're missing the overall point but what if the movie's events contradict that point what if characters save people and then other characters say that was a bad thing you did and then their failure makes them learn to never save people again like wouldn't you then be like wait a minute what the fuck and 
like, like uh, the, the in this hypothetical that, example sure. yeah like the, so i guess what i'm saying is like it seems like you want to focus more so on the thematic elements but what if the narrative elements contradict like partially at least the message because we feel that wonder woman destroys its own theme like thoroughly uh, the the uh, 2017 one i think that's an interesting discussion okay um, because a lot of those Thanks. things can literally come down to whether or not a spaceship has enough fuel in that a character is going to make a decision to hurt someone and the agency they would have to do so is re requires an item in the world that yeah. has certain rules it's binded by. And so if those things are just changed on the fly, that decision becomes a hell of a lot less meaningful. Okay, so then what I said earlier, you would you would agree with where it's like you you guys don't necessarily disagree with the points or the message, but rather just the execution of those? Well, when you say disagree with the points or message, are you talking about whether or not it was the message at all? Because we often recognize what a film's message is. It's just often contradicted or is not at all supported by the scenes. Yeah, yeah. the execution really matters. Like, you know that movie yeah. Cuties? You know, like, do you... So, well, you may it, think that's like how sexual exploitation is bad, right? But Cuties literally expl sexually exploited children for their movie. So that in, in this case, I'm, I'm talking about a Zack Snyder movie, number one, and number two, like I, the 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 clips that I was showing, it's, the, it's the creator really interviews and stuff that everybody, that, I mean, apparently we're taking issue with, but no. those things were the responses to at the time when that video came out, which was 2016, no, I think this was before Batman really, v Superman had come out. Again, our and point uh, was on a lot of the. <laughs> The, the point that I made about flying into three buildings and then and then in BVS they changed it and it's like 17 buildings in a row well, so I guess rip so that where, where I was literally the same. where I was driving with that one was part of what I think is important about Man of Steel's message is like the choice Clark is making to be a symbol for the people of, of Earth as well as being the bridge between two worlds and I think all of his actions in the film basically like contradict those two things specifically when you put together be a bridge for these people, and then you tie it to him lasering through the embryo chamber or his ship. I, I, okay, so in in Zack Snyder's defense, I would say yes, you can try to go for that, and then reality kicks in, and now you've got a psychopath who's going to murder people one by one, and and uh, this is all foisted on you within the the course of an afternoon. What does that have to do with him lasering the embryo chamber? Oh. All the stuff you said. What does that have to do with the embryo chamber thing we just mentioned? Like I said, like within the course of an afternoon, he's got to stop this guy, and so he's going to make well, some mistakes. So he destroys the embryo. Oh, wait, so when we're almost kind of there now. So like, I think you might have seen it possibly as a nitpick for someone to be like, "Why didn't Superman make this choice that would have maybe been better rather than worse?" And you're like, "That's not really the point of the scene." While I'm trying to say, "Yeah, but Superman making these choices is representative of the point of the film, is it not?" Like Superman is supposed to try and maximize. Uh, existence like he takes no issue with destroying the potential existence of possibly thousands of krypton kryptonians but then he takes major issue with killing zod I, I, he's actively trying to kill innocent people than what we're talking about right now but i would just say yeah i think we've hit the the center of the disagreement which is that you guys think it the that the the method is is the 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 result and i think the result that they're going for where do you think the result comes from um, they, they achieved it i think I'd if you make appeal, if that makes sense well i think i'd, I'd no. want to appeal to because when we talk i guess if it's like if if that's all the if that's all that we're really talking about which is the intent of the creator of the story then it's almost like what is even the point of the story itself why not just have the writers yeah, just, sit down and tell you what they think yeah I would just tell us the no message film. i would be curious just say it on like, twitter if if fringy's film, film was i did that you know? if fringy's film was realized, it is what it is we get it if fringy's film was realized and Zack snyder was on a chair and for the two hours he reads the script of man of steel and then he explains like what the point of it was could i then sort of make the same argument i'd be like this movie's fucking amazing think of the ideas it's trying to get across I understand your point and no i wouldn't say that that's the case well so i, I, I guess, feel like that I generates a scale whole... for us like we wouldn't accept that that's pathetic right in terms of like filmmaking it's like yeah, what did you just do but then a step up might be like a b movie where they they clearly tried but it's it's oftentimes like in a, someone's house and you know all everything's awkward the boom mics in the you're know, like oh they're trying and there's loads of horrible writing but all the way at the top of the scale i would 
probably put something like prestige where its ideas are completely realized by like how tight of an incredible script that is and so sure. this is this is popcorn comic books like sometimes you just course. want to watch mm, that um, but the thing is mm, I hate that. but we would want to try and highlight where they elevate above that right like you think it's possible i assume for a popcorn superhero yeah, movie to and so when I they think do they, i think they had the popcorn blockbuster for the masses that also had a touch of the uh, the yeah, philosophy uh, that we were trying to get at in all the comic books sure and yeah and it looks so like you... there's a metric for this and so we would be like oh man of steel's not one of those but there are a couple that we would say are and the metric would just be the execution plus the the <laughs> i guess the point they try to make uh being in, in yeah the... how do you differentiate between a really well executed film with a message and a really bad film that executes the message how do you tell the difference what's your criteria uh, you write a college thesis i don't know no just fucking answer me in a discord call i don't need a college thesis jesus with this dismissive bullshit that you do quit it no, cut it out true. i'm just i'm asking true. you an earnest question true. and you're going into true. college essays i'm legitimately you're, asking you you're a cool guy okay what was the question? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so the um, question so that I like, asked in earnest yeah, was, I was wondering, for you, how do you differentiate? What is your criteria for distinguishing between a film that executes its themes well and one that does not execute it, its themes well? How do you get the difference I between I the two? I thought about that before right this second, so I don't That's know. That's fine. That's totally fine. That's all But I guess, what do you? what do you... If like, what do you think though? I guess right now, like, if you had to figure out an answer it to that seems question, like a bigger you... subject than I can answer in a, in one second. Well, that's fine. We, no, well, like from our from our perspective, as long as you want, you are like, a movie critic, and, though, right? And, and like, that's and what forth. you do. I'm not. A, yeah, I'm it's primarily a, it's disappointing. No. Yeah, it's disappointing that you don't know, but it's fine that you don't know, and it's good that you'll think about it. The idea analogy. is that, like, for us, our scale is sort of how well things are executed. Because we generally kind of hold the idea that ideas in and of themselves are kind of cheap. Just the idea. Um, though, it's the, execu admittedly, well, it's admittedly, the execution I, of those ideas. Admittedly, I well, kind of don't, I kind of don't buy that you actually don't appreciate the difference. Like, I don't feel... I feel like there's no way, like if we were talking about a movie that wasn't, you know, like popcorn superhero movie that, that you would recognize that there is sort of a difference between. Well, he, he already did when he said about the, the guy sitting on a chair in the room, he was like, okay, so that's, that's not good enough execution, right? Like there's a. Yeah. Okay. Here. I guess. Yeah. So you, I it's, guess it's, that's it's, I'm pushing you, like you want me to draw the exact dividing line between. No, it, no, 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 we're no, not. no, 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 it's not that at all. Um, don't, it's don't just jump that, to like a hyperbolic uh, assumption. We're, we're curious about like how this system would even main, because like, of course, when you leave this call eventually, like what we're doing is going through your arguments and seeing how well they account for the, you know, flaws in the film or not. And the more that you can patch the film, the more it'll overall be executed well in terms of whatever goals it may or may not have had. And that can heal it in terms of like how how well it's ex executed. Meanwhile, if they are poor defenses, then the holes remain, and the film is still executed poorly. And thus, we we, we conclude it, it wasn't very good. Like the, there's nothing hugely complicated about this. We don't take like a personal fury against uh, Zack Snyder's Man of Steel or BVS. I mean, he annoys me every once in a while, like with his movies, because they're incredibly immature. But like that's fine ultimately because i adore plenty of immature movies i just wish he was more aware of it yeah like um he's like as someone has said he's like, like michael bay but without knowing he's a child i guess i think his visuals are incredible i think his fight choreography is really good oh. i think his action is very good mm. above michael mm. bay level no, and then, no, oh, no, 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 oh, I'm not, oh, no. no, I don't, ex I'm not gonna, oh, I'm not no. gonna be cool with just, like, I don't think Michael Bay is, is a good director or a good storyteller at all, but like, Michael Bay is a good director, I didn't say that. No, he said that. I said well, that. Said I, said, said, I said, said that. I said that. He said Fringy thought. thought. I don't I, think that I Michael think Bay is. What Zack Snyder tried to do was he, he took his, his comic book, like, visual style, like, that he was, that he, he's, he's trying to recreate comic books on screen and, I mean, it's anybody can judge whether or not he's successful in doing the visual part of it. I think so. Uh, and then he's got cool choreography, and then he tries to put some philosophy in there. And then what whether or not he's doing that. he succeeds or fails 
is up to who's watching it, I guess. Is that really all that matters, though? Like, whether or not some... I've got to imagine that everybody tries when they're making a film. Cool. Like, I imagine that everybody who works on a film is really trying, and that they yeah, probably... Yeah, Tommy so tried. And I, th but, I thought we were getting yeah, somewhere with the, um, the embryo example, where it was, like, what he's going for. Like, if you maintain... This happened with, um, uh, Just Right. I'm assuming you may have heard of him. But he, like, takes it as a point of compliment to TLJ. There's a particular plot point that he thinks is strong. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's Holdo not telling Poe the plan. He felt that it was justified that she didn't tell him the plan, and it was all good. I spoke to him and concluded mechanically it doesn't make sense for her not to tell him the plan, and so that is now at odds with what would be his perception of what is praiseworthy about the, the story. And, like, I would assume the embryo example would have to be the same for you. You're seeing the message flow out, but there's portions of it that aren't functioning or are absolutely going against it. And I'm assuming that kind of cognitive dissonance leads you to possibly conclude something like, oh, it's part of the message, actually. It's, it's more so, and you try and integrate it yeah, instead of... I'm saying that, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a weak link, sure. Okay, but like I will how many, that implies a scale, like enough like weak links means it's broken, right? Yeah, there are strong links. But I think the the philosophy and the points are stronger than the the technical weak links. Um, so well, can I mean, you, that, that, so that can you explain? Problem? That's what I've been saying well, since at, the beginning. No, I, I know, no, no. Uh, no. Well, we we know you've been I, saying the I, words, but I, we're asking well, how is that? How, well, now how we can talk about that, that though, because you said it's stronger. Yeah. So now you have to. Now that's you need it's, to qualify that. I'm more is it? It's the strength of the message based it's on just, how much it means to you. In, in in what your guys are doing, and I'm interested in looking into the philosophy of Batman. That's it. So it's, no, it's just hold a on. You said that it's stronger, but like mm -hmm. that's what do you mean when you stronger say that it's stronger? It's my opinion that it's that it's it's more. Interesting in what to way? Me. What do you mean? I think, I so stronger it, just means more interesting, it, and that's it. It means more to you is what you're saying, right? Yeah. Right. Um. Not bad. But but like if I said the the phrase like I don't know. Don't uh, hit two birds with one stone means more to me than you can learn from failure. So any movie that has the idea of trying to hit two birds with one stone is just going to automatically be better than any movie that has. Don't you think that scale is kind of? No, that's true. Sorry. Sorry. What? I don't think that's correct. I think in this specific example, I think Zack Snyder going after the tired old legend. This guy doesn't really believe in himself anymore is is an interesting and better take than uh the better i guess Wait, better. 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 better what do you mean better yeah better what do you mean better is... more interesting you like it more. you said so more it's just more interesting oh, and better. yeah i like it more that's why i made the video well, you just like um, it more, not, so it's better like your sentence was essentially like i like it more and i like it more and i like it more and it's like okay but you but seem to have an interest. Interest. Is it, You said you like it is more that a because shallow as it is? you said you like it more because, and then you said, "Yeah, because it's it's to more interesting." With as a as a potential killer, rather than just to to talk about Superman punching and doing is that into is that is that really like insanely is that reductive? Really worth? Yeah, that is reductive. First of all, but also yeah, like it's not it's not the kind of thing you'd expect to hear keep, from a film. I, I'm actually like, I, I'm, I'm really this struggling. This conversation right now is that we disagree. I'm really um, struggling because like every time that we I think that we're like almost pushing somewhere, you then default back to like the same thing and then just I say, disagree. "Well, we disagree," and that's it. Whenever Mahler tries to clarify the argument, he seems to be hitting it. So I think he. Yeah, but then you def yeah, but yeah, but the, but then you keep defaulting back to like the same thing again. Well, like I feel like every time at a certain it's point you must default back to this is all just going to be personal opinion because we're talking. No, that's not true. Um, well, wait. So then, no, um, when someone asks me why two plus two is four, I don't say, "Well, it's just my opinion." Someone asks you, did this movie pull off the Dark Knight philosophy the best? You can't, that's not two plus two. Well, the first four. thing I do, well, the first thing I do is ask what that philosophy is. And then once we have that philosophy, we could take it apart and we can analyze it. We could see what's the message is. How do you execute it? What because does the I, scene say? I feel like you would agree with this. Like if the, if the philosophy of like, you always maximize happiness in the world, that's the philosophy. Then the film has them constantly killing as many people as they can, proclaiming that philosophy. Be like, oh, that's broken. And if someone said, no, that's your opinion that it's broken. Be like, no, that's broken. Like the parameters of, you, you told me what they were and they don't match. 
how does how does the BVS then did not pull off the philosophy? Of well, I wasn't the dark. I, I was more so uh, interested in talking about it theoretically rather than a specific example. Like, sure, yeah, you we got to start this. at the base level here. Like, you think it's theoretically I possible, don't, right? And I think we should talk about the thing that we're talking well, no, about. Sure, we can go on to that next. I just wanted to clarify. You think it's theoretically possible, though? It wouldn't be a matter of opinion, potentially. I, I'm I, I'm loath to say yes or no. Okay. Um, Why? What if there Why were... is that? It's complicated to commit, Rex. It might lead you to other conclusions that you're not. Oh sure yeah, that's right. Have. We wouldn't um, want to do that. That's fair enough. Proceed. If if there was like a hundred movies that were all about this philosophy of Batman that you're enjoying, would you? love them all the same amount, or would it be about how they were executed? Uh, I, like I said, I think I made concessions for I like Zack Snyder's style, so of course I would say that that's correct. I don't think that all of the Batman movies that talk about The Dark Knight Returns are going to be good. good. How would you Why? differentiate the good ones from the bad ones? When you say that, you just mean how much you like it, right? Why is it wrong to like Zack Snyder's? No, no, it's not. We didn't it's, say that. No, it's it's that, not. Like, um, it's, you, it's, it's sometimes you'll good. use. What do you mean by good? You mean like or good? Yeah, sometimes you'll say that you like something or you find it interesting or that it's good when in reality all those they all mean the same thing to you, right? Sure. Yeah, the, the, like hopefully that helps you understand why we're getting confused. Because if I said to no, that's the, that's the point. The point of this conversation is that you disagree, and that's fine. I don't mind. The point of this conversation is that we disagree, and that's it. Do you care about? Ch would you, Would you like to? to yeah. Would out. you like? Well, I mean, what I was trying to get to was that I think you do care about not only execution but like the mechanics of it. I honestly think that was behind these videos. Like, why you created them was because you were frustrated yeah. that a film is getting misrepresented, and so I'm just trying to conclude with you that um I think I think that that does matter with with the the things that we talk about and that it's not exclusively whether or not we liked it. Uh, we try to like do our best to substantiate all the arguments we make against or for something, because even our audience will be pissed at us if we say, oh, this was boring or this was really fun. They'll be like, hey, we need better than that. Which again, it's not supposed to be treated as like a demonization. It's just much more interesting to talk about it mechanically because there's other things that we can see hey. rather than simply saying, well, I like it. I agree, and that's why I don't touch on that stuff in my videos. I don't talk about my personal opinion in my videos. I just talk about what what I can make a case for. And I can't make a case for liking Zack Snyder. I can't just make a case for, here's why Zack Snyder is objectively good. But I can make a case for, here's what people aren't paying attention to when we talk about Batman's not allowed to kill anybody. Well, how so about the, the history? So, I would say so it's pretty that, damning okay, so when you say we you got can't a few things then. There are things matter. that we can pay attention to, which means that there are things that are quantifiable or qualifiable. But also, it, you, I, like all, all of the claims that you've been making have to do with, like, it's my opinion, it's my opinion, this is what I think, and this is what I value. But now you've said that your video is things that I'm not talking about in the videos. So, do you, do you well, not you're think here and you're... we're asking you about them now. Well, so that there is that, but, but also, like, moreover, it's just, um, do you not think that you're expressing any perspective in your videos at all, just in any way, by, by making I arguments think. or making claims or making statements? I think I'm expressing the perspective that I literally say in the videos, which is, let's take a look at this and see if we can find something good here. Let's no, what, 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 I, what I mean is, like, um, good. What, what I'm getting yeah. at is, like, that on a fundamental level, there's something that compels you to talk about these things, which means that there's something that you value and obviously it's something that you pull from it. And when you're making, like, claims in a video of, like, this is why this is this way, uh, or this is why this was executed well. Like you are making statements that appeal to like either your values or things that are quantifiable. So you got to pick one. You know what I mean? Like it's got to be one way or another. Yeah, you're, you're you're trying to convince people that Man of Steel is better written than they are letting on, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. So then, then there is such a thing as better or worse written. Yeah, that, that is being ignored. Yeah. So would you say that you are, would like? So uh, I'm I'm sorry, Fringy. Let me just ask this question. Yeah, real no quick. So you you like Man of Steel as is. If Man of Steel doesn't have the flaws that we perceive are in the film, because we've watched the movie, we've paid attention to it, and we've determined that it has these issues. If the movie didn't have those issues, you would like it more, right? Sorry, I what? barely heard that. Could you just say? Yeah, that? me either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, Fringy, you go. 
Well, I mean, if, if the answer is yes, then there is a craft here, right? Which means that you recognize that there is such a thing as, like, well-executed or poorly executed. Yeah, but I don't think it's as interesting a Do conversation. You, like, well, I, I, don't I guess what I'm appealing to is, like, is it valuable at all? Yeah. If it's valuable at but all, then, I'm, like... But, but I'm not going to make the video. You guys go ahead and make the no, video. No, it's, it's not about whether or not... It's not about whether or not you're going to make the video. It's about whether or not you think it's valuable in any way at all, like execution. I just said As yes. opposed to... Yeah, okay. But when... So in terms of, like, when we're talking about execution on a film, like, if you're making arguments in a video and then the arguments are just, like, flat out contradicting the material that's in the film... Like, can you appreciate that there's something, like, wrong with that video, or that the arguments are bad? And again, it would depend on the arguments being made, because if you're- if No, you're I, said, missing... I, said, I said that, like, if the arguments were, like, just flat out contradicting, like, the material yes. that's in the film. Yes, I just disagree that the, the execution is totally without uh, merit in these films. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm trying to appeal more broadly to like a principal thing as opposed to specifically Man of Steel. It's the idea that like, regardless of what you're going in to get value out of or the things that you think are important, that there is a craft to like storytelling or filmmaking and that like how well or poorly executed that is, is in some way quantifiable and like meaningful. And that if you're, and that if you make arguments to counter that, that there is such a thing as like right or wrong and that those things can be taken from the material without deferring to here's what's here's what the director said or here's what the writer said about the film or here's what these comics said i can grant you all of that sure there is um okay. there is an old an old b movie called space mutiny it's very funny <laughs> um but one of the, there's this, there's a a couple scenes in this movie called space mutiny where a woman is killed by the villain and very shortly after this woman who has been killed with a laser reappears in the background of a subsequent scene just at her desk doing her work and the film doesn't address this um generally a good go-to example but would you consider that to be objectively bad filmmaking yes all right and i think why is that's that well, I, I don't think we <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> because you feel. Yeah, it's probably just because I feel it. But it's yeah. it's fine. Like, is there anything else? Yeah. No, I don't I'm not. Keep you I'm for not longer giving than you're comfortable. By the way, the conversation. I'm granting you these things. I'm saying that that's what we've been talking about this whole time. Is that it's much more important to you than it is to me. Um, was I was well, going to say. It, if it's, if it's if it's more important to us than it is to you, then why even make a video defending Man of Steel from criticisms that you think are inaccurate or unfair? To move people away from those criticisms and actually give the film a chance and think about Man, the more well, interesting things. You know, why this is your... going to be more of my this is going to be more of my pragmatic advice. But like, don't even address the criticisms if that's your objective. Just make videos talking about like what the writers wanted to do and never talk about the mechanics of the film because that'll be a much better way of trying to convince people of those things. Because once you start appealing to arguments, then there's ways that you can end up going really awry in terms okay. of- uh, well, In that case, I'm gonna recommend it. my Twin Peaks video. I think you should really enjoy it if you're a Twin Peaks fan. And with that, mm -hmm. I have to I have to get out of here because it's dinner time. So uh, it's been fun Quite talking to you guys and thank you if, for hosting me. If it was your- And uh, again, apologize to the chat about the 2000 comments. I think it got cut, taken a little bit out of context. That was a smug Ross all right. Situation. Um, the Twin Peaks video was that the one that Red Light Media referenced as uh, the way you should not look at Twin Peaks. Uh, yeah, but he didn't watch the whole thing. So. Well, don't worry. Uh, I, I disagree with Jay a lot, so it's all good. I'm sure the video is insightful and uh, well. Well, if it's as good as your Man of Steel video, it would be. Yeah. well, he, my hopes are not high. I think he he doesn't address criticism of that, right? You're just going for your own take on everything that happened in it, right? I'm going for David Lynch's take on everything that happened in it. All right. That oh, is okay. quite All the right. crime. Yeah, sure. Just ask uh, David Lynch then. Um, like I said, I, I hold the creator's opinion in very high regard, especially when it comes to David Lynch. So I think it should be very interesting. I think it's totally fair to like be interested in the perspective of, uh, of filmmakers and writers and stuff when it comes to their intention. Um, sure. I guess I would only ever advocate that, you tr that it's worth not 
unless you're being very selective and careful about when you are appealing to those things to try and not infuse them with criticisms of the material that's in the film that would be yeah it, my suggestion you, personally yeah george again, lucas can't will, say in an interview that that is padme didn't criticism. die also the the cuties director can't say well my movie didn't sexually uh, exploit children it certainly did so all right i gotta go i'll see you guys later see you dude, right, see you, dude. Later on, man. Mm -hmm. we well that was something well ugh. So Hoping for a way. lot more incredible well, disappointment. I think that made a lot of sense. Um... <laughs> I think so too. Well, we were talking about the creator's opinion being informing uh, for us. I that was very informing. Well, I mean, understand so much more now. To be fair, right? Like we're EFAP sort of um, POV on media is quite hated by a lot of regular critics, quote unquote. And, um... I guess, but I guess it's, I don't know, I, I guess I'm a little disappointed that, like, because I, I feel like, I, I feel well. like if we're talking about movies and stories, and if we're, like, really passionate about storytelling and narrative, that we can be, we can be doing a little bit better than that in terms of, you Well, know, he sounded like it was just his job. I just, Almost... I find it utterly bizarre, because his, his video is almost exclusively mechanics and whether or not they're valid. Yeah. It's just like, that's our yeah. jam. Like, that's what we're all about. And then he's like, yeah. well, no, nah, I don't really care about whether or not it is. But themes, but message, but Plato's Republic. Some people said but I'm not nice. Themes. I was trying really hard. I was trying really hard <laughs> to be nice, just because I get a little think, bit mad. I think Theo was an asshole. Yeah, fuck that. that. I, don't, I don't put up with that. I don't put up with hey, that passive-aggressive bullshit. <laughs> Well, the, genuinely, we I think we did the two approaches, right? Because when Yezin did the debate, people were annoyed at me for not calling him out on his shit more. And I, was, I remember that. <laughs> so, like, either oh. you could, like, sort of baby somebody, or you can just be like, nah, I'm not accepting the bad faith. And it, I think you'll piss people off no matter what. Because I think, you know, You're wrong. people in, people wow, in chat are obviously going to be like, to go hard, yeah. this is the way you should have gone, you know, sort of thing. And I think we offered a whole plethora of you know, between good cop, bad cop, mid cop, and uh, <laughs> all kinds of cops, you know? Well, it's interesting because, the, like, the one time, like, w the first time I bring up Cuties, and he goes, oh, well, that's a different movie, as if that deflects from the point that I was trying to make. And I'm has, trying to, problems to with thoughts. convey that to him as he is just going on and on and on, completely missing the point of what I said. And some guy in chat is like, shut up and let him talk. Like, he interrupted me, you dickhead! Like, <laughs> I guess... I guess um, what's really surprising about the idea is that for someone who talks so much about concepts and themes and like ideas, he was really bad at grasping them for the purpose of just a conversation, like hypotheticals, okay, so gonna, getting ideas apart. I don't know. It might just be because I saw, I think it was a Destiny debate relatively recently where he was dealing with someone. He, he was making a point about how a lot of people don't like to commit because of where it will lead them in future. Like... They, they don't know yeah. where it goes, they don't know where that road goes, but they know if they agree it might lead them somewhere they don't want to be, and so instead they'll be like, maybe I do, maybe I don't. But oh yeah, all I, I would totally ever really love all to I would say ever yes appeal. or no. I guess all I would ever appeal to is that you should be happy to be led to a certain point if it means that you're going to be more correct going forward. Well, yeah, just... it's like, it, you sense that in the struggle it is to get him to answer basic questions just, just, just to get his take on something, it is a struggle to just have him answer a question. You're like, this does not bode well. People on the internet are very afraid of answering <laughs> questions because it will get you led into a gotcha. Like well, that's the worry. I don't know. It, it, don't get got. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's the simple got. advice. Well, yeah. That's, that's, that is the like, theme of this stream. I think. Don't one of the things got, I think the but... mistake we all made was assuming that he had like a a sort of system behind his perspective. Uh, didn't honestly least, the, the his system the mistake, was as simple I, as what i like is what i'd like to talk about and what is good it's a it's like a circular thing that just inescapably accounts for everything yeah I, honestly i i am not super interested in watching the rest of his video only because he more I'm or less kind of said <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> he because he more or less said that like oh well I mean that was just clickbait and this is hyperbolic yeah. and I'm just offering the best defense I possibly can and like who cares if it actually lines up like I will admit I it. I didn't walk away from this conversation trusting him to convey his ideas oh, and positions honestly well, yeah. after like being three separate sorry I 
I trust the video more than I trust what we heard just now. Like, he might have stumbled I into so. making yeah. well, I was, an I was opinion gonna say, or a point. That's a what, fair point. What's happened here almost is, like, we gave him, like, three examples or whatever, and he conceded on all of them and said, like, I don't care. And so it's like, whoa, you don't sound like then the person wh who made this video. Then why are you here? Well, yeah. it, it, if you don't what care about what you think, we, and it doesn't, nothing bothers you. We may have to engage in a little bit of death of the author. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. The, the content that we're viewing is of a person who cares about mechanics being accurate. Uh, I think, yeah, however, no, I think that's fair. The person doesn't seem to agree with the person's work. Yeah, uh, the, this is an example of... Um, but, also, but also he doesn't remember it, but also he stands by it. Um, yeah, um, isn't it... <laughs> everything. We covered the video recently where it was, uh, was it Alan Moore that was like, oh, I regret my involvement. Uh, in what's happened, like the Joker movie. That was because... the R-rated superheroes. Yeah, the R-rated yeah, like, superheroes yeah. one. There are examples Patrick's of artists who go on to regret their work, you know. And well, the work stands against. The... I'm. Sub I didn't think I'd ever meet someone who was like fuck death of the author entirely. It's like, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, they that's exist something. On the internet, mostly from people who don't know what death of the author actually entails. I don't believe anybody holds out. that position. Like, actually, I think they must just be mistaken for a moment. Yeah, yeah. deep down. They they have some misconception about what it actually entails that you can usually unpick. That's been my experience. And well, the other thing... He also thinks that he has divined 100% what David Lynch's exact interpretation that of Twin Peaks me. is. Like, what he said, it's yeah, not so... my take, it's David Lynch. It's like, wow. All right. Yeah, then, <laughs> yeah, then I don't need your video. I should just go talk to David Lynch then. Right, the, hold on. The, the entire I'm EFAP stuck. cast hostile against a single person. Now EFAP gloating over their win, regardless of whether he lost or not, is kind of lame. LOL. I don't. Well, I don't think anyone win. won. Man, I just, I don't know, that's like beating up a third grader. It's like I stepped out for a bit. What? What did just, I get? Like whatever, man. <laughs> I don't really care either way. What, um, uh, what I, I just wish it was more interesting. I mean, yeah. th there's no way that there's going to be not everybody's going to be happy with that conversation that doesn't really bother me i was more interested in the ideas of uh... <laughs> this definitely feels yeah. like that that south park episode where it's like you know the other team didn't show so we win no nobody wins <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it was like uh, a little bit like into that janitor it's he's sort of just what well, was like a fuck it whatever it was like even at times not even paying attention not to say that about um uh, twin perfect but like a similar experience where it's just it's very slow and you have to clarify everything and there was a lot of um immediate jumps to absurds which are really annoying like oh do you guys want to go out oh i want to go into the ocean like no like like down the down to the park i don't know we didn't you didn't have to go to the random weird place that we really didn't want to go to um not to mention by the way i think that this won't, uh, I, I don't know what, like, his Discord, by the way, is probably filled up with a couple people who really like Snyder's work. There's a good chance of that. And if they watch this discussion, they're not going to be happy about what he said. Um, <laughs> not in the slightest. I would imagine so, yeah. You this, would think. It, but, it, uh, they people do who are believe. Snyder, Zack Snyder film lovers, who knows what they think. Well, like, what kind of audience do you think you'd get by making videos like this? People who value getting the well, details just... correct about the Snyder stuff, like, quote-unquote. And then they'd be like, yeah, see, they are objectively strong. And then he comes onto a podcast and he's like, okay, yeah, I was wrong. I don't care, though. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. But whatever, something made him, of all the videos you could talk about and devote time to and effort, he watched the video, he says, nine times. So I'm like, you clearly are very passionate about this in some way. <laughs> there must be something love... about this movie that you really want to yeah. defend. Do you have an investment love... in the honor of this movie? I love how we like we asked him if he uh, if he thinks that Man of Steel is better than uh, better written than Civil War. He's like, you know, I don't know. And so we just simply ask him. Like, like he's like, oh, I haven't seen Civil War uh, outside of the one time from several years ago. I was like, okay, how many times did you watch Man of Steel? Nine. Like, okay. I guess I'm a little. I, um, <laughs> I feel like it's weird because before you know, when, when you look at all of the comments and stuff, and it's like, man, this, and the explanation is not super cool either. It's just like, oh, people were telling me this is what it was like, so I just assume that to be the case. It's like, man, that's a. Uh, not very charitable. Yeah, I'm sure Especially. you wouldn't want people to uh, have that position towards you if people said uncharitable things about yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, um, 
if you hear that somebody's making certain arguments, like it's probably worthwhile to actually check and see if, <laughs> they're not, if they are being. You would <laughs> think so, Fringy. You would think in so. Interpreted correctly or not. And then, of course, you know, when it's like, I think the general approach to reacting to a video is usually going in as charitable as possible, especially if you don't know who they are. And then usually as it progresses and your sanity begins to dwindle, you just naturally become less and less charitable. Yeah. You get like when we, when we don't want to answer yes or no questions, like, man, I am just, ugh, yeah, stop wasting is, my goddamn time. Yeah, but that is definitely like internet sort of um debate bro. Kind of, well, not debate bro. Usually you're accused of being a debate bro if you do these, if you try and get a yes or no out of someone. Yeah. <laughs> I just was... want to know what you think. Just tell me. Ugh. Mm. I thought it was really interesting when he said he didn't want to commit to saying it was a bad movie because he he likes the movie. Like, it was offensive to the movie. Yeah. <laughs> As if Zack Snyder is, like, really going to be upset if he finds out that you didn't like his well, film. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just like, that is so alien to EFAP. Like, the idea that it could possibly be considered something you should avoid doing because it could upset the film. Like, we're just like, oh, oh. <laughs> The film's the thing. It's it's It doesn't have feelings. Especially uh, this movie. I suppose it's... I'm gonna... I suppose it's the process of like having saying that, but also holding the position you really enjoy it feels like he he shouldn't do that. Like it's it just those two things can't coexist in his brain, sort of thing. I guess like it's uncomfortable. I was just annoyed by his refusal to commit to any set standard. I mean, he he he's got. You always allude to it. This is better. This is you know this more than some, this. This is that more than that. But... Through many different avenues, so many were tried. I did like five myself. Like to to yeah. to tease out a sort of something more definitive than whether or not he liked it. It would eventually circle back to well, yeah, because I like it. You're like ah oh, fuck. Yeah, well, like I disagree. That's what we've been talking about this whole time. Um, it's like man, no. I thought we were getting somewhere. Well, because like Damn. there were a couple of things that he did agree to, like the man in the on yeah. the chair reading the script. He was like, yeah, so that would be like fucked. It's like, aha, excellent. But then he also <laughs> so there is a thing. That, but he also agreed that there is such a thing as just like fundamentally good and bad story crafts. But then it's like, oh, but it doesn't matter, or at least I don't think it matters. Yeah, you'd have to go to the super basics, like, is the room just as good as the prestige? Is one better than the other? Are some films better than other films? Is the super, super basic stuff, just to see where you are. And this thing kept getting glimpses, because it was like, oh, well, I think the yeah. film did well in, in its philosophy, and you can't really have anything but an opinion when it comes to uh, execution of philosophy. <laughs> then get him to admit that that's not the case, and then get him to admit that Man of Steel fucks up when it's not the case, th th the thing. And then he was like, well, yeah, that would be a small law. And it's like, wait, but if that's possible, surely we can eventually have the whole thing is destroyed, depending on the references. And that's, you know, you try and get there, but you don't quite make it sometimes. It was. Uh... I'm going to get a drink. I will be right back. <laughs> yeah, interesting I, chapter. Uh, what, another, yeah. another one for the books, everyone. Going down to the annals of history. Oh, yeah. Is this uh, one of the first... One of the first videos that we've like just stopped watching, like we just sort of gave up midway. I mean, well, I well it's not so much give up. It's that, yeah. yeah, it's like what's the value to pull from? We didn't this complete video? it. That's the Is point. It... We didn't complete the video. Um, I mean, I, I don't mind. Yeah, I'm not time. like. There is still we... time. No, I don't want to. I don't. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't. I think. Um, I think that the conversation was elucidating. Um. At least yeah, in terms say of that. the way that he approaches film, and I don't know that there's anything that we, because of course it's like all that's going to happen is like, oh, these arguments are bad. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. This is like, you know, well, at that point. I mean, who cares if he cares about the arguments? Um, I yeah, guess like... there's that, but it's almost like, how do you continue engaging with it when seemingly like the only objective uh, of the critique is, hey, look, all right, they they had a point to make. You know what I mean? Like. I'm yeah, fine continuing if you would like to. Just um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the game is, for it. These are going to try and be attempts at like we just got past him saying it makes sense if you think about it that the story doesn't line up with the crime scene because everyone involved in looking at the crime scene would have been corrupted by Lex. Like that was the reasoning. That's a terrible argument. And then if That's he said, insane, "Okay, yeah. fine, I don't care," I'd be like, "I don't care that you don't care. That was the argument, and it was wrong." The argument mm -hmm. is there. The argument exists. Yeah, uh, I get what you mean. Yeah, that's true. And so, because um, there are people out there who there's going to be someone in chat right now who fucking hate us, really like his video, 
and they're like, I'm willing to hear out what their responses may be to the coming arguments uh, or something. Yeah, I, I suppose. I guess, um, oh, I saw somebody mention the whole clickbait thing. Yeah, that was a mistake. You don't, don't, whenever you're trying to defend yourself, don't say, oh, well, lol, it was clickbait. Well, it was weird, a lot of the- Yeah, uh... at least say, like, I believed it when I wrote it, or I didn't realize it was whatever. It's like, I really thought that it was wrong. Something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, then I start to wonder, is it that he just didn't want to commit to the idea that, yeah, I did think people could be wrong about movies? And because that leads you other places, so he has to then say, I've since wrong, which means the video's fucked, or um, I still agree with that, and that leads him down another rabbit hole of having to fight I for the position, lie. and he can't yeah. win because it's Man of Steel. Yeah, I don't know, just commit to the video screwed. But like, <laughs> it's okay. I think it's pretty fucking interesting that we get told by a lot of people who are upset with our Man of Steel coverage that, like, it is very good. And, like, one of the core content creators that made videos defending it just said, like, yeah, lots of it doesn't make any fucking sense, but I still love it. Like, right. Mm. Like, that, that's a moment of, like, well, my work is done. <laughs> it's like, you can love whatever the fuck you want. I'm just here to tell you whether or not it makes sense. It reminds me of the janitor debate. Yeah, yeah, I, I mentioned uh, that earlier, like, it felt reminiscent. They're, they're from different worlds in a way, right? Like, you know the, um, the Spider-Man 2 debate, sorry, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 debate, that one was like a fight over the accuracy of references and how much they impact the story, while this one was mm -hmm. like a fight over whether that's even something we could have a discussion about. Like, it was, it's, it's almost like a meta conversation. Would you think it would be because his video was about those things, but I well, guess not? That's something I think one of us asked him at one point, right? It's like, why did you make a video like this if this isn't what you care about? Like, that's a really weird thing to do. Yeah, I asked him that. I don't know. <laughs> well. I, just, I, I don't know. I'm kind of disappointed. Uh... Is there another video on BVS? I mean, th this one is, uh... I'm still more than happy to go through whatever the more arguments about Lex I'm fine are. with going through it. Alright, let's continue then. Very well. Uh, Cavalo's not back sure. yet, but I'm sure it's fine if he... Oh, well, while he's gone, I'll go ahead and get a... top off my drink myself. Yeah, me too. I need coffee. <laughs> oh, I guess. Gonna wash Taking down a break, then. Because oh, we're, we're... We're saving that other video for the offline EFAP, right? Yeah, I mean, the way this is going, it might be that we do um, the offline one, we, we, we do the super chats on. I'm not sure yet. Maybe half and half, just because we're at five hours and we haven't even finished half the video yet. <laughs> um, you know how it be, how it go, how it do. This is EFAB, after all. True. Fatalitism. Do Nostalgia Critic Man of Steel? Why? Is it... Really bad, really good, because it's a nostalgia critic. People get upset when we cover nostalgia critic because he's very annoying. Remember what he did to Van Helsing? Come on, chat. You don't want that. No, please, we suffered enough. So frustrating. Just the idea of like the execution of uh, of what they're trying to go for doesn't matter as much as the point that they were trying to make. Like. The execution is the point that you're trying to make. That's what I, yeah, I mean, this is what gets so weird about the whole Death of the Author thing, because if I make, you know, Pingu, then I'm like, this is about communism and the, 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 the proliferation of wolves in certain areas to bring down the population of other animals. You should be like, what do you mean? There's, none of that is here. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to watch the thing and then draw from the thing instead of listening to you, because, like, why would I even... But then sometimes... <laughs> The author can give you loads of like, oh, this is this, this is this, and then you can look at the film and be like, oh shit, that is that, nice. But that's, you know, that's not even, like, someone will be like, oh, you're violating death, the author's like, well, no, that's just like a friend making an argument at that point. It's no different from anybody making any argument about what is in there and what you can find. Is... <sighs> Nostalgia Critic didn't like Man of Steel. The review is a collab with Angry Joe, who does like it. Hmm. Huh. Is that like they both make arguments, like on like like one of them presents for and against it? I guess. Yeah. Alrighty. Sounds like I it'd be am... weird, but alright. I'm rejuvenated. Lost it could be frustrating because, like, maybe we we'd be dealing with Angry Joe giving terrible defenses, but then we'd also be dealing with Nostalgia Critic making terrible criticisms. Yeah, possibly. Like, oh, it's I don't know. I'm trying to think. It was Man of Steel. What would be a bad 
criticism of Man of Steel. Product and, placement. Yeah, and then Angry Joe would be like, well, you know, movies need product <laughs> placement, and then that's the end of that <laughs> discussion. That's an explanation. That's something. That's how bar that that's how bar bar the low has gotten. That's how bar the low has gotten. <laughs> is we're just like, yeah. I mean, that's I'll that's something. That. I mean, like you're engaging in the conversation. That's pretty cool. Oh boy. Um, so we yeah. can do it. You know, it's interesting. I I think that I think it's uh, regrettable that we covered that. Stop uh, having uh, flying superhero fights in movies uh, video earlier than we than we did. Would have been interesting covering that after having rewatched Man of Steel. Uh, for what reason? Uh, just I mean the fact that he tries to frame the uh, the issue with Man of Steel's climax being that Superman and Zod are flying <laughs> rather than all the destruction that they're causing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Wait, who made that video? On their incredible destruction. That was made by. Uh, I can't remember. Nerdstalgic, I think the name is. Hmm. The, um. Yeah, it's a video that says the problem with superhero movies is flight. Uh. Well, that's dumb. It does look kind of silly, but. You no, know. It's, yeah. that's not the argument. It's that whenever they fight in flight, the audience know they cannot die. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me want to write oh. a superhero movie where all that right. happens specifically, just to spite them. Alrighty, we're all here. Exciting. Yeah. I'm nice and mellowed out again. Excellent. <laughs> Insinuating bodies to believe that Lex Luthor has the power to change the story to be whatever he wants it to be. But just in case you need to see it, the extended cut of the film shows exactly what I just described. Lex Luthor's goons recovering bullets and burning bodies to frame Superman. You don't recover the bullets from oh, all the bodies. Oh, how you in the fuck you... did they recover those bullets? You don't. That's so, not what happened. So, if you're going around a compound shooting a whole bunch of bullets, so you like, if you miss and a bullet goes over or into a wall or into a person or it ricochets off a rock and bounces somewhere, they flatten out, they split into parts. Like, give me a fucking break. You don't know how bullets work, do you? No, no, no. You're not no, going to no. go around they, and just recover have, all the bullets. They have a specialized magnet. It's it's locked in on the signal from the special LexCorp bullets. The LexCorp magnet, it all makes perfect sense. Dude, like, Oh, it, yeah, it and he is rich, so he could have made all that, so it makes total also, sense. Also, wasn't yeah. that gunpowder, gunshot residue, or gunpowder residue? Probably all over so the place, There'll be all kinds um, of things. Probably There's... not. That'll just be in the air. Have to if you shoot the close enough too. to something... Yeah, you'll have all the casings. You'll have all the projectiles themselves. Um, you will have... I mean, if if anyone forgets a magazine or anything like that, or if any accessory falls off, you have all the the footprints well, on the ground. Uh, Ink disc in chat saying, I thought the bullets were designed to burn up after they were fired. Then what the fuck is the what? bullet that was in Lois Lane's book? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. They burn These up arguments... after their fire. So what kills the person? These arguments can't coexist, though. They collected the bullets. Also, the bullets burn after impact. Like, what? Unless they hit a, a bullet journal. in the book that Lois Lane recovers. But how did the bullets that one was faulty. They burn up. I don't. You can't expect Lex Luthor <laughs> to have all those bullets work perfectly. It makes sense. And again, this is all ignoring the fact that you will see bullet wounds in the dead bodies. It Absolutely, yeah. Burn yeah. Them. They'll be broken bones and holes in them. Like, I hope nobody is still fighting this. <laughs> yeah, no one's like, they were all killed by flamethrower. That's how they died. They all were killed by and the flamethrower. Blood, as somebody mentioned in chat, blood everywhere. Exactly. Yeah, the blood splatters. Yeah, they kicked sand all I over mean, the inside, the inside of that tank, when the grenade goes off, and yeah, that's gonna be messy in there. Wait, yeah. You ain't cleaning that up. I've got It'll it. It'll take more than 409 to get that spotless. I've got it, so... Wield engine. They took a bunch of assault rifles near the wield engine with the bullets in them. Oh my they God. got them covered in the wield engine goo. Then they took them away. <laughs> then during this <laughs> battle, they fired all those. They took all the bullets out of those guns because they don't want those. But everyone's that will fire. Okay, so they go away. They activate a um a black hole from the phantom zone that only sucks up phantom juice stuff, and so it sucks all the bullets up. Done. 
Like, that would actually situation. create more bullet holes, wouldn't oh, it? Well, because I was about it would to suck say, them back out in a different angle. If you picture this scene, the black hole opens, and then all the bodies start wriggling, moving, flying up, and then tear apart <laughs> as the bullets come out. It's, it's like Magneto when he escapes prison. Oh, no. It's everywhere. This was a really <laughs> bad, a lot complicated of plan. in your blood. It's like, oh, well, th this was the only plan we had. It's like, this was a really weird plan, I, just, I guess. But like, okay, this is all we could do. Uh, but yeah, I don't remember them being shown to pick up bullets, but it wouldn't matter, even if they are. They're not collecting all these bullets, they can't hide the bullet wounds, the flamethrower deaths are hilarious that they think anyone would think that's Superman. We can just move right along. But let me stress see this to reason that Lex manipulated the story. Lex you, Luthor, you it will cannot never be reason reasoned this. to begin with. Yeah. Okay, so that only that sentence only works if we are assuming that the definition of reasonable is in that universe, could it be physically possible? And that is so that is such a bolar that it basically makes with, uh, zero sense and it what is, is this totally worthless. With the intent of the writer, though, it's weird. This has nothing to do with the intent of the writer or the director. That's, well, this is all on us. Yeah, this um, is totally on us. Most of his videos that we've covered haven't appealed to the writer saying... Like, I think he's done it a couple of times here and there, but most of the time yeah, he doesn't. They're, they're sprinkled here and there, yeah. but they're yeah, they're most... definitely not... Yeah, it's not like... Um, I can't even really think of another example. I guess um, Anomaly Inc. would be the closest example with the George Lucas interviews and this is why, this is why, this is why... With, to kind of expand on things, but that's sort of the closest I come up with. Mm. But we've never ever seen it to this, you know. The story to be whatever he wants it to be. But just in case you need to see it, the extended cut of the film shows exactly what I just described. Lex Luthor's goons recovering bullets and burning bodies to frame Superman. But let me stress, you do not need yeah, to see this do to reason that Lex manipulated the story. Yeah, I don't believe that that's um, possible. I don't think that they could do this. There's nothing you could show me from the film that would make me believe uh, outside of the ludicrous things we've been mentioning but even they don't work yeah like, even what we like, said doesn't to, work so like magically erasing like, everyone all of the bullets has, doesn't do it the, yeah like everyone would have to take count of the bullets fired then they'd have to find them all they would have to bring them back tally them up to make sure as many bullets were fired were recovered and that doesn't even matter because it leaves bullet holes and bullet yeah. wounds and bullet ricochets and well, all that stuff no for that you then need the time stone to kind of like reverse a oh. little bit and take away the bullet holes a mother box dude the way to do it yes would have been to get everybody on the ground like so you get all the guns on them you're just like hey, surrender drop your gun get them all down and then have like I don't know if you could... There must exist something like a high-powered laser-burning thing, right? Could you do something, like, poke them all through the I head Lex with Lex maybe could make one. Yeah. Maybe. Like maybe a, Flex could make one. For lack of a better term, a lightsaber, but, like, an equivalent. And then you burn through each of their skulls one by one, and uh, you make it look like Superman did it as best you can. That would be something. I think what I would... What I would have done is if it was me, if I was evil Lex Luthor and I was trying to frame Superman for something, I would orchestrate a kind of disaster um, where he couldn't, maybe I would hide people. Like I would orchestrate a building collapsing and I would trap people in like a lead box or something like that so that he couldn't see those people so that they'd only be discovered in the rubble after the building comes down and he thinks he saved everyone because he can't find them mm. right maybe something like that Messed with his head yeah yeah something oh well, and that's just it, off the top of my head and yeah, i think and see, now we're, we're almost accidentally developing a really cool movie where there's this lex is the head of a company we do that a lot Mahler. desperately trying to create situations that are already a part of other situations where superman believes he's fucking up or people have reason to believe that he is fucking up and every time it's really cl careful really clever and it's just slowly turning him away from the public, and Lex, meanwhile, is advocating, you know, you've got to watch out for this Superman guy. Like, he's, uh, you know, judging from what we've seen. You know, that could have been the movie, but they made this thing instead. Someone said, okay. Rags, but then you'd so, say he would have heard them. Oh, we would have knocked them out, right? We would have knocked them out with Lex Luthor ga <laughs> internet gas, and they would have been collapsed, and I would have had the insides padded just to make sure, uh, so they would have been super quiet. So, yeah. Remember, Superman can't hear through lead. <laughs> what if... What if... <laughs> made him quiet. What if uh, Lex Luthor's men used plug bullets instead of regular bullets? Oh. I don't know. Maybe it would have worked. that they can shoot through anything. So, Especially when fired um, out of a Desert Eagle. 
Mala, you've seen the movie more recently. Does the CIA ever talk to Lois Lane about the incident in her version of it? D Wait, sorry, repeat that. Oh, Isn't shit. The CIA, who was, who was coming into the aftermath of this scenario, they know that Lois Lane survived, right? Well, so the, this is some. I think we even highlight in the EFAP movies, where, like, um, Lois's <laughs> testimony is one of the things that gets referenced as reasons why this wouldn't work. So Lois would say, yeah, so they were terrorists, but they were also this security group. They were all, like, Americans. One of them was Russian. And uh, they all betrayed yeah, PMC. these people, seemingly. Um, their bodies aren't here. They left. Nobody saw them, <laughs> which, by the way, is impossible. And they shot people and looked at all the bullets. The CIA were, were at the scene, and they were they had, like, I don't know what the language for this is, but, you know, like, probably not an AC-130, but they had something watching the area. You know what I mean? So they would mm -hmm. know where those guys went. Also, Superman would have seen the tracks. He, he would have seen the, the motorcycle. Uh, bo he would have been able to find those people. Yeah, so... Uh... Yeah, absolutely, to all of that. I was just wondering if in the movie there's any CIA followed up with Lois, like, hey, what happened back there? Well, you have to assume You'd they think. didn't. You have to assume they didn't because it wouldn't make sense That's if they did. That's insane. <laughs> Correct. However, Luke, Lex, Luke, Luke Lexer, he gave them insane pills, and he slipped it into their <laughs> Jolly Ranchers so that mm. when they ate them, they turned insane so they would <laughs> follow up with Lois Lane. There you go. But what the fuck are you talking about, Rags? <laughs> so they, they, he, he the spiked the explanation. The, you lack he spiked their Jolly so Ranchers. Cool. It's in the film. It's, there's precedent. He gives people Jolly Ranchers. He's a scientist man. It all works. It all fits. It's like poetry. It rhymes. It's so fucking smart. <laughs> I know. He's a genius. <laughs> I didn't know that Zack Snyder was smarter than I did. Someone said most people don't know what a CIA is. <laughs> Some people don't know. That's true. That's... Mm -hmm. Clearly, Zack Snyder had no fucking clue what the CIA were. Maybe he thought they were like accountants, I, for... like a union, a guild. <laughs> I think we forgot to, uh, I just wanted to re-highlight, because I thought it was really funny, but it was, I, I'm probably going to quote this badly, but when it was, uh, I don't think Zack Snyder's that, that bad. And then Free was like, okay, Zack Snyder is, is like a bad director. I don't think he's a bad director. <laughs> no, I think he's a bad director. I don't, I don't yeah, think Michael, Michael Bay. Bay's a good director. <laughs> it's, it's just Michael funny. Bay is a self-aware no, director. I said that. Yeah, it was funny, it was, because it was, it just, the, the pause then. I think he is. <laughs> Why are you saying it like, what the fuck? He's not here, it's fine. Yeah, well, Michael Bay is a fun filmmaker, from what I remember. Yes, he okay. is. I've, yeah. I've never been bored watching a Transformers movie. Same for, I think so. Oh, maybe not for Pearl Harbor. That film's got weird. The Everyone hates their love triangle. But the action scenes in Pearl Harbor are pretty good. From That's why I watch a Pearl Harbor movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Lex Luthor's Congress pay off, gaining him a legal method of importing Magically. the kryptonite, as well as access to General Zod's body and ship. So this is one of those things where you say, this is the reality. Unsupervised access. This is the reality Not of the situation. Access. And it's Ugh. like, wow, this shouldn't be the reality of the situation. It's like, yes, but it is. I know oh. that's sort of the problem. I know we're well, just sort of skimming of over it, but... Oh yeah, the purpose <laughs> was for it to make sense. the point of the scene. Oh, yeah. Zack yeah, Snyder's intention like... was for it to make sense. <laughs> Like, setting setting aside that he has the leverage to get him access, the fact that it's unsupervised access Insane. is unbelievable. Insane. It's, um, like, I could, I could believe the government would allow a super wealthy, like, pharmaceutical or technology or bioengineering company to have supervised access to Zod's body. I'd absolutely believe that, because those would be the entities that would be able to do stuff Especially if they're like, we've got a it. material that relates to this thing's ship, and we think it can, I don't know, we'd like to test it on the body to be able to determine something. Sure, but giving him full control of the ship and the body is absolutely insane. The government yeah. would never also, do that. Also, when someone as, as wacky and strange and off-putting as Lex Luthor, I wouldn't give him 15 minutes alone with a dead body. Just no. saying. Yeah, but to be fair, maybe... I'm trying to make sense of it. Maybe that guy really... You know what they say, it's the old saying, the way to a man's heart is a Jolly Rancher in the mouth. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so, there you go. Just cherry. slip that Jolly Rancher in. 
and you get whatever you need. I will find him. I will suck your cherry lollipop. <laughs> oh. So that he can gain your knowledge of Kryptonians and their technology. What's your wish list? Access. It's you can't show this as if it proves anything. Like in terms, of, it reminds me of just like oh, impossible thing happened, and then you play a clip. Impossible thing did indeed happen. Like yeah, yeah. We're we're still on step one here. Yeah, I, I, I think saw this scene the too. I took issue with it. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. It was, it was fucking dumb. How did it happen? Remember when he <laughs> yeah. cuts off his fucking fingers? Uh, well, uh, fingerprints, and then you that works. And then the ship is like, "Yo, do you want full control?" And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! It's Zod's finger. What's up? So stupid. Lois wanders into that ship and tries to murder her, but with him, it's like, ah. She didn't have the finger slice. Of course. If she only had Zod's severed hand, it could just make it around the whole thing. Terrible. Well, severed terrible, hands, terrible, that gets you terrible. way more than full access. How come it wouldn't be a banned operation on the ship for resurrecting things if the council decreed it, like, you know, abolished as, a, as an operation? That's nah, world building, Mahler. We don't do that here. Like, oh, the council <laughs> says you're not allowed to do this. I will do it anyway. But the council said, mm, mm. well, also, interestingly, when I was rewatching the film, the voice in the ship, I recognized some of the way the words it was saying. I was like, I recognize this voice. You sound like Hill House Mum. Freddy Krueger. I was like, oh. you, you sound like Hill House Mum. And I checked down to be, it's Hill House Mum is the voice of the ship. Oh, Why, I really? had no idea. Yeah, Carla wow. Eugenio. Well, Gugino? Uh, I thought, she, I, th I heard that they wanted her as Catwoman. Hmm. Wait, for this universe? Yeah. yeah, for this universe, yeah, I think so. She's she's not if old, they, but she's older, right? I, I if mean, they played her off with well. that in mind, I could see it working. I was gonna say, I think she's probably the perfect age, right? Because this is this is twenty years past, like the yeah, era. Yeah, this, mm. this is old Batman. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so yeah, she would be the super like she is the the super. She's this universe's Black Widow almost. She's the super sleuth, the mega spy, the cat burglar. You know, very clever. The femme fatale. She kicks people. The grandma, the granny fatale. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, she's, hey, she's not fifty yet, and she, <laughs> she does not look her age. Oh, she's fantastic, and she's a really yeah. good actress. Bonus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To the wrecked Kryptonian ship. Done. Done. Just the like that. Remains of the dead alien for testing. All right. Why play this? Like, yeah, I was there. He got yeah, access we, to all yes, these things. it's insane. That's what we said. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem. The you complaint is that this is insane. Okay. How does Stop showing that part? <laughs> How does a cherry Jolly Roger buy Alexa? No. Why would anyone say that? this? This is not anything. Why? Why is this on screen? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. How does a Cherry Jolly Rancher buy Lex Luthor access to Zod's body and ship? So no one thinks that it was the Jolly Rancher that sealed the deal. Nobody. People don't say this. The people who did say it's that it's this. A Russian account's trying to shit on the film, okay? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, yeah, Why Russian would you bots, respond yeah. to this one? This, the only way I would want to respond to this is if I had evidence that someone said it. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. believe somebody would say this. And if they did, it was probably oh. a joke. You have to test I would it definitely up. show it on screen. Like, no, this is a real thing. Yeah. 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 I, and then it would have I like def... maybe three up votes, so you know that four people out there think that you know this what? is a you know. You know what? At, at, this, at this point, I would not be surprised if politicians and the Snyderverse were bought out by like if you Jolly just gave them candy. Candy? Yeah. In yeah, this joyless crayon, oppressive so world. You, you know candy. what? Yeah. It actually explains a lot because he tried to buy off Holly Hunter with piss. So if that's close to working, yeah. yeah. Jeez, <laughs> Just, man. In, in the DCEU, politicians are bought off with candy. That's how you bribe and them. Jaws of piss. That's, that's that's piss. <laughs> hey, it wasn't piss. Eat Jolly Ranch Ranchers and pee. I came here to eat Jolly Ranchers and pee in jars, and I'm all out of Jolly Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how people can't see this for what it is. 
Lex what knows he can get what he wants, and he knows this guy anything. knows he's. Um, it it's isn't anything. It's just. Remember? It's like look at how weird the bad guy is. Are we making a thematic argument that Lex can do whatever he wants, <laughs> and thus him shoving a Jolly Rancher into this, this government official's face <laughs> is on point? It's like wow. The ch the cherry I would have Jolly expected Rancher more is people. symbolic. <laughs> I would have expected more people's issue with this to be the product placement. We've been calling it Jolly Rancher this whole time without a second thought, and that's a product. <laughs> yeah, um, my, I, I guess if I was to be as, def as like, objective as I can about what the issue is, it's just um, what weird behavior from both of them that I don't even know would match either of their characters. That's the best I could offer. It's but very bizarre. My go-to criticism is much more subjective. It's like, this is fucking weird. I don't, I don't Yeah, if I was going to be so objective. It's supposed to be like a power move, right? I guess. Oh yeah, the old Jolly Rancher yeah. in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. classic. <laughs> classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would compare <laughs> to assert dominance. <laughs> I would, I would compare this to electricity fixing Electro's tooth gap. I call it a toothpick criticism. <laughs> a toothpick. Wait, so I, I will toothpicks say toothpicks ain't helping this... you out with that Jolly Rancher. It melts away. <laughs> to try like to make something more than just like a nitpick that it's a strange line. The fact that he he thinks this guy is, you know, a scientist who wants to help out and all that stuff. And then he's acting really strangely. And I feel like it should put this guy off. Yeah, you know? Yes, like, and, that's and, what I was going to say. Yeah, like should if, know better. If, that's the most objective thing I could think of. It is this guy is super weird. Don't let him near that body. He's trying to <laughs> shove Jolly Ranchers into my mouth. <laughs> who knows what he's going to do is, with Zod? He's going to shove his Jolly Rancher in Zod's mouth. Do about power moves? Wouldn't He's the gonna helicopter see what is the um, helicopter dick thing be the way to go with that? that like assert dominance. <laughs> Just <laughs> well, <laughs> whip your dick out in, in helicopter. He's got to work his. He's got to work his way towards the helicopter penis. He's got to. Yeah. You start. You start off with the Jolly Rancher. Move your way up. And yeah. then you move slowly. Hey. Yeah, you move slowly but surely towards the, the helicopter penis. Hey, but I'll start guys, with the Jolly Rancher. You guys can't prove that off screen he did drop trow and do a helicopter dick in front of that guy. That's true, that's true. And it is logically you don't possible need to within see the universe, that to so assume yeah. it. True. And I think <laughs> yeah, he tosses the Jolly Ranchers into the mouths of his viewers as he spins. <laughs> yeah, and um I I think that we're doing a good job. I think we're doing the Lord's work here. Mm-hmm. No, he's gonna get what he that wants. is. This is Lex showing off that he's making this guy his bitch. I'm convinced that anybody who claims it, no, not he to lets him. Yeah. The guy, no, the guy lets mouth. him put it in there. Just, does he not realize that there is such a thing as being able to just keep your mouth or and just move like, close backwards? It and you you know that humans react to back? things, right? I don't oh, care no, who you. I don't care who what? you are to me in terms of power dynamics. I'm not letting you stuff things in my mouth. Yeah, like, could you imagine? Away. Could you imagine like if, if <laughs> I don't know if you if you're in a room with like Joe Biden or something and he just put a giant. Just like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can I can <laughs> kind of imagine that actually. Well, yeah, just, uh, you know, imagine like just any powerful politician or something. They got a Jolly Ranch. It's like. Fuck you doing? <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> this is just another move of corruption by Big Jolly Rancher to control our senators. It's symbolic so, like, of there how are people... politicians are bought off. You choose this. this. There are that's people whose assholes I've licked, and I wouldn't let them stick Jolly Ranchers into my mouth because that's fucking weird. If I was to, um, <laughs> if I was to be defending this movie, uh, I'd probably skip I'm a this scene. Rancher. <laughs> A malarkey, <laughs> a, peach, a granny's peach tea rancher. Yo. <laughs> Jolly ranchers had their chance. They did. Stan, what's happened simply feels uncomfortable watching it, which you're supposed to, and is using that as an excuse which to pretend you're supposed it. supposed to, or else oh, it, you're a it's weirdo. It's the point of the scene. The point of the scene is to feel uncomfortable watching it. Yeah. All right. The point that is, is the that point it's weird of... and bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't make sense I and agree. add it to their list of things they don't like about the film so they can make fun of it some more. Either you play <laughs> no, like, don't you think it's fucking weird? Like, that, I no, wish I, when point. he was here, he probably wouldn't have answered. He would have talked about bullshit. But I would have asked him, don't you think the Charlie Rancher thing was, like, bizarre? I can tell, I can tell that you're still quite upset about, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, Rax probably thinks well, it's wasted time, which he wouldn't, you know, he's not out of the realm of reason. Yeah, I'm though. not, yeah, I'm not upset. I'm really not. I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm but sure. I'm not upset. I, I would be legitimately curious to ask him, like, don't you think the Jolly Rancher thing was fucking bizarre? Yeah, so but like you said, said here, that said was no, the point. Yeah, if you said no, it wasn't weird, then I would just take that for what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it's not an act. <laughs>
When Lex gains control of the ship, he immediately learns as much as he can. Do you like how we just skipped over that? When he gains control yeah. of the ship. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> like, oh man. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like, our, our, our basic premise is this. Now moving on. Including methods he could use to destroy Superman. The Kryptonian archive contains knowledge from Methods he could use to destroy Superman. As though he asked the robot, how could I kill Superman? He goes, well, you, you could mix your blood with the corpse you've got over there and create a giant <laughs> orc. I don't it's know. weird that you're asking me. It's weird that you're asking me this, Zod. <laughs> What's gotten into you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you feeling the, okay, Zod? You feeling all right? <laughs> like, sensors indicate that you're a lot smaller and skinnier than, than, than you were last time we met. Sensors indicate you're not a but, It's kind of weird. <laughs> what happens? But it's, there's no way you would have cut off his finger and pretended to be him, so I guess it's all right. Ship's yours. What does, does it say it detects that it's him, or does it detect that it, like it's a new entity, or does it assume it's he's Zod? But why would it be a new entity? It, it's it, otherwise the Zod's fingerprint. It's pointless. It's yeah, he specifically got the fingerprint. Well, I mean, in, once he gets into the pool, I guess I don't know. Okay. But then why trying... did he need the fingerprints? Like, you know what I mean? And also, <laughs> it's a gonna... good thing the pool didn't like kill Lex or yeah, gave him, him a weird away. yeah, like that weird Kryptonian <laughs> well, amniotic this sack thing. fluid. He's a genius, so he knows how what to do. It's, it's so great. Well, Honestly, like, yeah, they, they like said the people in Prometheus were smart too. Yeah. He, um, oh, he did make a video explaining all the plot holes in Prometheus, or attempting oh, no. to. That's what? a real thing he did. Are you, are you no. Me? No, that's the, I'm not, that's not a meme. He made that video. <laughs> oh, my <goodness. laughs> oh. Thank and you, that, Look, and here's the thing. <laughs> I really enjoy Prometheus. It's, it's really stupid, but I enjoy it. But, I enjoy it, sure. Yeah, but his video is like, uh, Dude, obviously they wouldn't tell them what the mission is until they get there. Duh. It's like that's it's, something that you'd sign up <laughs> for. <laughs> it's the same level. So, it's the same level of analysis. I just checked it. All it says is, "Would you like to assume command?" Zod was already in command of that ship. Yeah. Oh, that is weird. Would you yeah, like to it's... further? Would you like to <laughs> confirm you're still what in command? Is that? Would you like, it's like maybe you Zod was like, nah, give it to, to a Zord military Lord base. Or whatever hey, name. you, would you like to be the commander of this base? It's like, <laughs> yeah, okay. He's just, he's the ship is just asking Zod for consent because you have to ask every time. Every time yeah, he gets on the ship, it's like, too, yeah. do you still want to be the commander, by the way? You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what a weird question. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm a little lonely. I'm the only <laughs> ship left. <laughs> in different worlds good teach me <laughs> one such method ends okay. up being the creation of doomsday preparing chrysalis and commencing metamorphosis see that, preparing that, chrysalis that was one of her lines that i was like oh i can i can hear hill house mom listen to it again see if you know what i mean i can't even explain what i'm talking about really it well, ends up being the creation told me yeah listen out for it uh, see if you can hear it of doomsday preparing chrysalis and commencing metamorphosis yep i hear it like, Metamorphosis is where I get it the strongest, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have even really noticed. But well, was, I sort of see a, now that you're here. It was all of your lines. Mm -hmm. I could just pick up pieces, and I was like, "What am I hearing?" And then I, I was like, "Oh shit! I think it's Hill House moment." I like it when that happens. It's fun. Lex Luthor says that he hates. Wait, hold on. Before before we move on, I just wanted to say <laughs> that, like, you know, regarding his his attempt to explain the motivations of Lex Luthor, he talks about. How like, oh, how Lex Luthor just wanted power, even though we don't really see that in the movie at all. It would be kind of interesting if we're going to try to rewrite this movie. If Lex Luthor thinks he's going to turn himself into a super being and he turns into an abomination instead. Yeah. Like, it's it's actually him that gets transformed. Yeah, you could have a nice classic story be... about, yeah, the villain's greed. He takes it too far and yeah, he turns into the... an abomination. I'm not sure comic fans are like that or not. I don't know, but I mean, could be. Oh, well, fuck them. It's <laughs> <laughs> But then he creates one. That makes no sense. The story Lex Luthor tells about white people from tyrants is just the reason he gives to Congress so he can gain their trust. You know, Dad was born in East Germany, and every other Saturday he had to march in a parade and wave flowers at tyrants. So he's saying that the idea that he wants to be able to stop them if they get out of hand is bullshit. That's not his actual motivation. Even well, though that he, creates he, way bigger issues. He repeats it several times though. Like throughout the movie, there's this constant that he wants to stop Superman, which is why it's such a problem that he creates Doomsday. Yeah, any reason why he want he 
any reason why he would want to stop Superman. Doomsday is Superman worse. Mm -hmm. And why would we weaponize this material? To use against the Kryptonians so the day does not come, Madame, super stretchy. when your children are waving daisies at a reviewing stand. He's perfectly fine with Kryptonians as long as they're his idea. His what? What? His idea? What? He's fine with Kryptonians as long as they're his idea. Creation of Doomsday is his own decision, an exercise of his own power, his own. If he knew that Doomsday that? would turn out to be uh, that, that makes it worse. What's the I point did. of what? It, no, wait. Mm -hmm. hold on. What's the point of this mm -hmm. graph? If we don't care about the mechanics. All that matters is that Zack Snyder wanted it to be this way. Why do we even? That's need the point table? of the scene. Oh, but what if? That's but the point however, of the graph. however, this we're graph gonna have to take pointless. exactly. What is the point of the graph? Whatever he says it. Look at this graph. It doesn't matter. <laughs> These mechanics don't matter. I don't. Uh, uh, Frame Superman for government support, and thus yes, he but mattering create... doesn't matter. <laughs> is, is he trying to say like I creating Doomsday is <laughs> him like showing that he has power or fulfilling his motivation of wanting to have more power is creating Doomsday? Because those two things I don't think quite line up. Like no, I don't going up so. to a, how, how... if I walk up to a machine that it's like you can create a monster. Sweet, press the button. Oh man, do I feel powerful? <laughs> oh yeah, I, I pressed that button and made a monster. It would make more sense if his idea with Doomsday was to create a subservient creature yeah. that was not malicious or evil or anything like that. It was like he was trying to create his idealized version of what a god being is, and it just went to shit because his blood was, I don't know, maybe he had AIDS or something, fuck it. And so his blood like corrupted the process, and then it turned out to be a monster, and he was undone by his own, I guess, desire to whatever. That would make more sense. Yeah, that'd be interesting. But we got this. Yeah. Hooray. And, and now we have to have YouTube videos from people who don't actually care about the mechanics explaining the mechanics of this crazy graph. Like, it's, that's, that's the, the yep. legacy of the DC. Look at this <laughs> crazy graph. His own way of proving he can defeat Superman by any means possible. He also Sorry, I need to roll any that Any means possible. And his sense. idea. His creation of Doomsday is his own decision, an exercise of his own power, his own way of proving he can defeat Superman by any means possible. Yeah, but what about Doomsday? Any means possible. But, that's yeah, a that weird, just that's a really weird. The, when you create Doomsday, problem is mainly the Doomsday part. Yeah. <laughs> like, if, if you created a... It would be interesting. Like, what if you had Lex Luthor, he creates an infant to raise as, like, his own, to nurture as, to, to raise to be that being that he idolizes. That would have been more interesting. We could have learned about Lex Luthor. But he makes Doomsday, who's a big, scary monster with laser eyes. Mm. So that's cool, too. Yeah, yeah. He also believes that Doomsday is going to obey him. In the making of footage, Lex can be seen proclaiming this. Ancient Kryptonian obeys only me! What? <laughs> So, so that's not something, in the movie. So it's not in the you movie, really which is kind of an that. issue. But even we're if talking it about was, the movie. but even if it was, how does it obey him? How Why would he think that it? We failed twice. Yes. First, and nothing <laughs> else supports this. And second, it's not even in the fucking film. It's not even in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does he think that because I have control of the ship, if I jerry rig some kind of weird, monstrous abomination with blood and Kryptonian amniotic fluid, that it will listen to me? It won't even understand words. <laughs> and it's an abomination. That's was was exactly the was the payoff him. supposed to be that he's like do as I say and that Doomsday does, but they changed that. Because I'm starting to think now. Wait, if they recorded that, what if he does command it to kill Superman, and then it just infinitely wants to kill Superman, and that that's because I'm starting to think like would that make the film better? Marginally better, I would I say. I think it improves Crazy. slightly if you had it that way, but they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason. Yeah, I think why so. Would you have... But why would it want to kill Superman? Well, this is the thing. The only explanation you could possibly have is that the robot is like, we have, we have manipulated this particular engineerment to follow any command you make. You just be like, oh, I guess that's just how it works. Yeah, it would make it marginally better, you know? Because then he wouldn't have the problem of, like, what the fuck did you create this monster for? <laughs> yeah. If after it kills Superman, now you just have a monster.
in your hands. Oh, what they could have done was Doomsday was being like secretly developed from the start, but it takes time to grow. Like that's why he gets the finger to 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 like take back to his lab and take the DNA and splice and whatever or or, or whatever. But basically, he 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 like I'm really trying here with this movie. Mm -hmm. What he does is he. <laughs> takes like his brain scans and he puts them into the krypton machine so that it can put like his brain waves into doomsday so like doomsday's like a version of him but with all the superpowers i mean yeah i guess i, I understand. fuck it try it i know it's yeah it's just hard and then it killed <laughs> yeah and then the the big lex kills the original lex and the original Lex is like, oh, no. And then he says a line about something. And then he dies. And then Doomsday Lex goes out to finally kill Superman himself. And then they fight. And then Superman punches him into space. And then Lex is like, oh, I should have thought of that. Except he can't hear him because it's space. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> I think he just mouths it and there's subtitles yeah. on the screen. Yeah, I think we did good work here today, gentlemen. <laughs> I think we saved the film. It's funny because um, <laughs> if you were on set, right, and, and Zach was like, oh, we'll have him go up, but the nuke will fuck it up and he'll go back down. And then you're like, oh, well, yeah, but he would send him back up and boot him out. And then you could, I know for a fact that Zach would be like, well, that's boring, though, so we're not going to have that happen. Oh, yeah, that's the thing I said earlier. The reason it didn't happen is because we've already done that in this movie. We wanted a fight yeah. scene. We wanted them to fight, and we wanted Superman to kill himself. Well, not kill himself, be like, but, you know, get himself like, killed. Zach, you've got a... How about this, Zach? Uh, it can kind of fly. Like, let's make it so that it's like a... Like, Iron Monger can fly in Iron Man, but he's, like, really yeah. shit. Make it so that he has flight, but it's really, like, weak, but it's good enough. Even then, though, you could just punch him into... Sp the sun i don't know <laughs> well i guess even if it's i yeah you just keep going you know this is the problem with superman he's really yeah, he's fucking you really gotta go out of your way around. to make a threat for him he's really hard to write around yep. yeah he's gonna fuck you up quite a bit he will I'm gonna destroy you in the final cut, he this that? line was removed for some reason. In fin for some reason. <laughs> because Zack Snyder no, because makes bizarre Zach, directing no, decisions. No, it's because that's what Zack Snyder intended, so you can't even consider it. He doesn't intend uh -huh. that you... I would also yeah, theorize... it's not even on the extended edition. I would yeah. also theorize that yeah, he removed so this I element did. because it... Uh, if, if, so let's pretend for a second that he did say that and it was true. I suppose we would be like, damn, Lex, you want to have like this crazy mutant thing just smashing around trying to kill... Super, I can't. It, in some ways, it answers things and then brings up other questions in in a way. Like, yeah, what's the plan after? What are the other going to be your weird orc soldier that you order to stand around in LexCorp? Like, does yeah. it need to eat food or like what? You know, because at least with the whole like I've created abomination and I'm not even sure what I'm doing. There's some element of like, yeah, this was an accident that maybe Zach was hoping would benefit Lex's story. I don't know. Favor of explicit but still sufficient blood of my blood. Lex, uh, oh, that's sufficient. That is not sufficient. You think? Oh, come on! That explains everything. You think that tells that us clears that it all up? Yeah. That it's, uh, that Wraps it all up in a neat little bow. Wait, what is the logic here? That it's his blood, so it obeys him. Yeah. Do you well, obey blood's your smart. parents his... one hundred percent of the time? Like if they no, say, Lex... stand up. And then you just like are compelled to stand up. <laughs> no, Lex is very smart because he perfect. Remember, we got to go back to the earlier in the video. This all ties right. together. Lex is like the comic Lex and the comic Lex is perfectly represented by this Lex. And in the comic, remember, Lex was really upset that everyone around him was dumb and he was the super smarts. <laughs> so that means that he has the smartest blood on Earth. So it makes ah, sense that the blood of that's his where blood smart is, is located. Smart. It's his yeah, blood. if th this couldn't just be any Tom, Dick, or Harry who gets his blood to obey him, but Lex, he has the smart blood. So it makes <laughs> this is all thematically it all ties together. We've established this before, so it makes um, total sense that his blood would jumping to do that. <clears throat> that <clears throat> a that, new super chat that says, uh, "Doesn't Doomsday's back spikes prevent grappling?" Uh, Superman's still shown to be able to boop him in any way, yeah. shape, or form that he wants. He <laughs> grabs him by the spike. <laughs> not, he actually really grabs that him spiky. by the spike. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think the spike. Yeah, why would that uh, prevent it? Well, no. So, like, I guess they think, like, what if you, when you bump into him, it stabs you? So, I don't think they can stab Superman unless there's Kryptonite present. Like, yeah, yeah. They, they would probably do the opposite, where they would work like handles. 
Yeah, you could grab him, spin him around, throw him, and then fly up and keep doing Basically, right, yeah. Superman, because he's an idiot, doesn't realize that that's just the goal. Whatever you have to do, <laughs> get him out of the fucking atmosphere. Go. Well, what yeah. if... Wait, real quick. What if Lex fed Doomsday a Jolly Rancher? Would that make him under his control? Oh, yeah. Imagine, like, you don't exist... Well, you can't, but... You suddenly exist, and then there's this guy over you in this pool of goo, and he's sliding a Jolly Rancher into your mouth. <laughs> you if you woke up one? to that, maybe you would, you know. Do you think you'd be like a big old Chungus Jolly Rancher because he's such a big dude? Yeah. Oh, the, maybe, the maybe he just size. took a bunch. Well, no, what ha I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jolly Ranchers, but if you take them out of their packages and you put them together and you let them sit a little while, they will stick together. So you can make a massive, like a Voltron Jolly Rancher. You can get a bunch of them together and you could just make them into a big log. Worthy of <laughs> Jolly <Day>. log. <laughs> yeah. Jolly Ranchers are one of the worst candies to eat when it's hot outside because they stick yes. to like the inside of the wrapper and then you yeah, it's on gross. your finger and stuff and it's just it's just a mess. It's, a it's mess. just a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. And Lex, I could work. Well, as you can see with Lex, he's very nimble with the Jolly Ranchers. Absolutely, he could slice, yeah, especially when there's Jolly no Rancher resistance Rancher. whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, his real his real power isn't the Jolly Rancher itself. It's having it so that other people won't resist. The sliding Jolly Rancher, that's the key. Anyone can slide a Jolly Rancher. But to have the other person mind. allow it? Mm. <laughs> Lex fully believes that Doomsday won't harm him, but will kill Superman. It, it, it and goes to harm him wrong he is. Erroneous. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why do you believe this? Because yeah, smart for some reason. Yeah, oh, my blood, so therefore you won't kill me. Is that very... There has never been a kid who has ever been, I... like, be angry at their parents before. Yeah, Fring, Fringy, have them. you ever disobeyed yourself? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, because it's your own blood. That's I mean, true. You, you can't disobey yourself. I can't so, blame you. Yeah, it's my you blood. Go. You, oh, got, yeah. you got me. Just funny, because mm -hmm. Superman Zach's saves his fucking life when Superman could have just watched as he's comically thrown across the room by his <laughs> yes, own yes, blood. Just splatters on the inside. He's like, well, that <laughs> solves a lot well, of problems, that's actually. Well, problem. Doomsday's like, no, but then I, they uh, would be saying, no, then they'd say that Superman's a murderer because he could have stopped Doomsday. Even though Superman punched some random terrorist dude through a wall. We don't talk like, about that. <laughs> yeah, well, Lex paid them all off. It's fine. No, wait. He paid them off to No, he didn't pay off that guy. That guy was <laughs> Lex Luthor paid off Superman voice. to punch the terrorist. I just find it amazing ah. the logic of Superman. He'll, he'll kill random goods, but like Lex Luthor is like, nah, you're cool, bro. Imagine. Well, it's the same Joker. thing like the end of uh, Wonder Woman, where she doesn't kill Doctor. She doesn't Pacula. kill Doctor Poison, but yeah, Doctor Poison. Eighteen-year-old conscripts get to die. Yeah, those poor guys. Yeah, that that typewriter assembler. Yeah, fuck that guy. He's yeah. dead. I mean, uh, I was I was supposed to say like I think we're doing good. I could see someone arguing like. Oh, you know, if you watch the film from the point of view that Lex has Martha throughout the whole film, and so every action Superman takes is actually what Lex is forcing him to do by threatening the mum. You're like, oh my god. We're kind ah. of coming together now. He he bribed Superman. You know, this is an interesting loop. So Lex bribes Superman to fight, to allow Batman to fight him, so that Superman could save his mother. I like it. It's crazy. I don't believe that. What would he use to bribe Superman, though? Oh, money. Jolly Ranchers. Not a Jolly Rancher? Because remember, well, here's the thing. If you're Superman, well, here's the thing. Money is a pathway to many Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> True. Some like <laughs> um, Superman, Superman is playing the long game. In service of him. This makes it ironic when the first thing that happens after Doomsday is born is Superman saving Lex from getting killed by Doomsday. I like that it's highlighted. Sort of, like, I see, guess. It's like showing that Lex is it's like mistaken. Poetic stuff. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like coincidental irony, but almost like constructed, dramatic, you know, events playing out. I do like, like, like Cuck uh, Lex in the back there. Just like, oh, oh man. Cuck Lex. <laughs> you can see how guys, could this how like, did any of this happen chad he's Henry probably then. as shocked as we are because all of his other insane plans have gone off without a hitch just, just like he worse. wanted them to yeah. yeah 
And all of a sudden, the universe isn't just going along with his will, so... Yeah. Weird. Now, this plan hasn't fully played out when he starts the creation of Doomsday, but notice how the Genesis Chamber doesn't begin Doomsday's process until after Superman's time so limit expires. He is not in control of that. I am sorry. No, the Genesis Chamber is going to make Doomsday whether or not... Fuck off with this. Yeah. <laughs> That, he that is would be no, an no. Design. Lex Luthor, he is not like you know telepathically controlling this thing so that it only completes Doomsday if Superman is is not dead yet. There's no yeah, it fucking wasn't telepathic way. control. It was a bribe. Look at the way he's standing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, Does that really man. upset you? <laughs> Just look at him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Just look at this guy of Doomsday, but notice how the Genesis Chamber doesn't begin Doomsday's finalization process until after Superman's time limit expires. Out of tricks. Superman's time limit? Out of time. Yeah, well, I mean, semantics. So, like, well. yeah, oh yeah, I guess. It, that's a, if you could program to do that, how come you didn't program him to listen to you? Well, I, I guess the argument he's making is just that this machine is like, you know, once you okay it, Lex, this thing will be a thing. And he's waiting to see if Superman comes through with Batman's head. Which kind of just makes you realize, by the way, even if we accepted that, if Superman had just lasered this fucking asshole's head off, then it would be over. Because, like, you know, theoretically he has, to, he has to do a thing to activate the machine. But the thing is, we're not shown him doing anything, from what I remember. He's, he just stands around. And one... Bat head short. 30 seconds to animation. Ah. Doomsday is Lex's. What, you think that, that that's activated oh, by him well, saying one bat head short? Is that the <laughs> passcode? Is that actually what he thinks? I don't know. That's <laughs> <I'm> obviously <laughs> Jolly surprised. Rancher. Because, like, honestly, as I'm sitting here, I'm just like, nah, no, come on. Nah. I don't know what the argument even is. Oh. I just, I well, figured... <laughs> after that conversation, now you, like, all bets are off. <laughs> kind of. Wow. Well, yeah, because if we masked him about it, he'd just say something like, oh, it doesn't bother me, or because I feel so there. Failsafe. The rest of his plan fails unsafely. So, Lex Luthor has kryptonite and a list of superheroes he can manipulate into using it on Superman. You now, which that. hero to choose? Yes. Yeah, you invented well, that, Well, the my obvious dude. answer is the one who doesn't appear on the list. The one who's already two steps away from murderer in the first place. Wait a minute, if you want to imply that there's actually reason to have... Wonder Woman killed heaps of people. Was, the Flash. The Flash would be the one to yeah, kill Superman. Yeah, the Flash is the good one. Just run up real fast and just, I don't know, jam a Jolly Rancher Kryptonian well, uh, Kryptonite thing in his mouth. Just like, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you can equip any of these people with Kryptonite weaponry, it's like, oh, the Flash then. He can go, and he's just fucked, so... Yeah. Easy win. I'd say either her or either her, either him or super, uh, either <laughs> the Flash or Wonder Woman. Yep. One of the first the film is Wallace Keefe, the homeless X Wayne Enterprises employee, spray He's painting not the Superman monument. He has an apartment. Why do you he is not he's homeless? Do you not know what homeless means? Homeless means you're not <laughs> do, at your house. Do you right not now. know what a homeless means? <laughs> I like the <laughs> man. It's, it's just how some inhabitable or like that he's homeless. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no. Homeless. Um, like, like, he literally has an apartment in this movie. We see no, it. It's not habitable, all right. <laughs> well, in fairness, he won't care. He's <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> you may or may not have an apartment. It's it has a it um, has a staircase in it, so it's no longer at the top half is no longer habitable. This, Our apartment's no longer considered. <laughs> this fucker presents even know. more issues, by the way. This character. Um, the idea is that he himself personally has been. Pushing, so we have to go with a couple scenarios because it, it doesn't work somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's the ultimate plan. Oh shit, wrong one. Uh, uh, no, that's really funny. Get it up there. Let everybody see um, this That's a good one. <laughs> that's a great meme. Oh, I'll just leave that on while I... So, um, scenario. Oh. Batman is in that place and he sees those checks have come back with you killed your family, boo, and all the red writings. Like, wow, so how did this happen? Scenario one. 
Um, the guy didn't know about it at all in the wheelchair. Lex was intercepting the checks and bouncing them back under his name, attaching these weird messages. First problem with that is that the employee should know that he there's a benefits program going out for the people in Bruce Wayne's building that, you know, blah, blah, blah. He should know about it. He should ask about it. That would break that plan. The other reason that plan breaks is that Bruce should be getting those checks. Why would he not be getting those checks? It doesn't fucking make sense. The person he talks to just says, yeah, you should have got them, but you didn't. Huh, weird. Like, uh oh. <laughs> um, scenario two. He is pushing them back himself, but he's not adding the messages. And so Lex intercepts them, adds the messages, and then sends them along. Um, so problem one with that is that uh, they should be aware and they should be telling Bruce, uh, same problem kind of, but then the second problem would be that this guy has shown up in this scene doing the graffiti and that's on, na like, that's news coverage, it's called a hate crime and it's his employee and he says when he's being captured, Bruce Wayne is my boss, he employs me or something like that, <laughs> so Bruce Wayne would find this out and he'd be like, dude what's happening? What's what's going on? And then if he, that he would find out he's b bouncing the checks that way too, so that kind of fucks that. Scenario three... Is there a scenario hey. three? That is a good question. <laughs> this breaks is kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, no Sorry, I'm a what. little, I'm a little hung up on the idea that him spray painting the statue. Like they say that in the movie, but I don't understand that even a little bit. Wait, wait are you saying what, like how did he? You're not allowed to, to deface, like defacing. Public it's a property? hate crime to deface a well, Superman. Well, yeah, statue? he's Kryptonian. Yeah, Kryptonians well, are a minority. Well, Superman oh, hated it. He's the ultimate minority. Is, There's only one of them. So, I mean, he he is white and male, but eh, is Kryptonian eh, good enough? Um, We're always happy so to have a, a hate crime. It's a hate crime against Kryptonians. Oh, is that the idea? Scenario is that not ironically the idea? Scenario three was that he was writing those messages himself, but I'm pretty sure we're told Lex did it, so it can't be that. Yeah. So never mind. I knew I had a third scenario. Fuck. I forgot what it was. Yeah. So anyway, this is supposed to be all in line with like making Batman kind of hate Superman and stuff, and it's part of Lex's plan. And it's fucking stupid. And once again, Batman being an idiot, he's just like. And this person not reaching out to Bruce Wayne if he truly felt this way or that he wasn't getting his checks. Because he says, like, oh, my life is ruined because I can't piss while standing up. And as Rags rightfully points out in found movies, you can't do anything standing up. Why Why are you talking about pissing, you know? All of the actions. It's very do. true. Like, very true. Why are you splitting He also says, I can't p Like, he, it's like, he says three th things. Like, like, ah, oh, my family, this and that. And then he says, and I can't pee standing up anymore. And he says this to a woman. Like, well, neither could your wife. Like, yeah, I know, but he says this to Holly Hunter as if she's supposed to be like, that's so tragic. That's so sad that you can't stand up and yeah, pee. Yeah, uh, you're telling a woman that you can't pee while standing up. Yeah, that must be really <laughs> rough. We have to fix that on us. Like, is it, well, I feel like it's more the fact that you can't move your legs is like the more appropriate thing. <laughs> yeah, to like, wouldn't about. you go with that? Women, um, yeah, women can uh, get shiwis. You guys know about that? Shiwis? They're like... I've oh, never no. heard of this before in my life. No, no oh I no, I know, I know what you're talking about. It's like a little contraption that like. I remember. You shoot uh, it out. I don't know if it was when they first came out, or whatever. But I was fucking laughing my ass off. Like the idea, <laughs> it's like a, well, it's it's like a funnel, but it's shaped to fit, and it just it, yeah, it's like a on the go to fit like between. Oh, let me take a look. I'm I'm fascinated by the shiwi. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna assume shiwi, shiwini. She she we <laughs> Oh, it's called a go girl. Oh. Oh no, that's another one. A portable female trap. Oh my goodness gracious. This a portable female travel urinal funnel woman stand up pee camping toilet. <laughs> that's a lot of things. That's what it says. <laughs> portable female travel urinal funnel woman stand up pee camping toilet. I feel like they need an Does acronym. Does goop sell these? What is the acronym for that? Uh from tough with soup peaked. See that that just flows off the tongue better, I think. It yeah. really does. Found it's not the, the only thing that flows. The P. But it. basically, it's a little funnel that you you attach you you press up to your lady bits, and it's got a little yeah, it's like a long funnel that just goes mm -hmm. out and about. Yeah. So. I don't know. I I guess if, if I was a chick, I'd just like squat, you know. <laughs> now Wallace wouldn't be homeless if All he right had been then. receiving the paychecks Bruce Wayne was sending him since the accident. 
Greg, why hasn't he been getting our checks? He is, Mr. Wayne. He gets a check from the Victims Fund every month. Oh, shit. So, by the way, the CG... Right. By the, we'll go back in a second. I just want to point out, the CGI in... This is a pet peeve of mine for a lot of stuff. I think we talked about it briefly earlier on with the cursor, but the CGI screens of things... Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like with the budget you have, just have it playing on the TV. Like, was cameras can see that, and it looks more real. Oh, I would imagine. What are you talking about? Are you talking about the TV? The the yeah, look at the TVs that I, are playing it. Yeah. The reason I would why they do that, that is because hey. post production. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was doing oh. it first, you ass. Fine, go ahead. Okay. No, you go ahead. Jesus. No, 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 no. It's fine. You know what? I'm just no, gonna. I'll just count with the you. check. No, I'll go ahead. If I no. don't get a fucking answer. <laughs> well, this will be more fun. What do you think the answer is, Rags? I would assume it's so that they can add why I because they really, really want to make sure that the image is the clearest it can possibly be. That that I think would account for poor part of the answer. But what else? There's there's someone else that I think is much more talking like, the the audio. No, oh, the reflection of the cameras. The uh, almost so there, are, there, there are, in terms of like nearly there. Yeah. <laughs> um. Is it the audio of the TV that they're worried about? You're not picking stop up. Stop fixating on audio. That's that's fixed. That's the, is that on... the first time I've first, first time I've touched <laughs> on audio. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what? Well, you mentioned audio a couple of times. Just think about Can... the other. There is the, there is AV. What is the what is the other thing in that equation? Audio, video, AV, visuals. The other thing. Yeah. Vi what, do you well, think I think it's a video anything? instead of audio. Video. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess maybe. I'm thinking of the jack. I'm thinking of the jacks that you maybe. put into your. You, hmm. you use your. You plug up the GameCube with. But but um, okay. Um, do do you need to? What what is it in Millionaire? Like, do you need to call a friend to to you know get <laughs> get there? Because I'm because I, I don't want to feel I. Okay, I'm not operating at 100 percent right now, but. <laughs> I think I've been given some pretty decent answers, and I don't want to feel dumb when you tell me what the answer is. I think you have is. as well. This just it. This one feels really obvious. Maybe it isn't, but like maybe that's you... why. Maybe that's why I don't think about it because it's so obvious. Um, is it? Rags, like, have you the... ever have you ever recorded like a screen that you've have you ever like with your phone taken a picture of or tried to record your screen? Yeah, it has the little the distortion on the the screen. Hmm. That was the first thing I mentioned. Well, that's that wasn't the reason I was going with. But there's another. But there is another one. There's two. You're always stringing me along. There's always <laughs> another reason. There, there um, is a second. There is a second more important one, actually. Yeah. Um. I would. Let's, you say second, but I've given some pretty. Well, good so ones. I would classify like, all the ones we've been over as secondary to what I think the main one is, and that is continuity. I. No. Um. <sighs> When creating this stuff, they aren't 100% sure of what's going to be on that screen yet. Mm -hmm. And if you do it in post, you can get the footage you need or do the second stuff. Yeah, you can't. Oh, I would, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that because I assumed they'd have total control of that well, when they were just playing it on the, the TV. Idea that, um, when you go into production, you may not have these things ready to go, but after the fact, you can do stuff in the computer and have it, as opposed to having the oh, get okay. ready before I gotcha. the film is oh, shot. Right. It's the, and then put okay, it in the tape. it's the. It's the it's it just the gives you order of which it have. Okay, I got you. I I guess I don't know. I guess I assume that this stuff they could have done, you know, like relatively quickly. Oh well, and I would you just put it on there. Even if as but, we're filming yeah, it, you're like, I get you. We're like hundred percent sure of what we're showing on the screen. I'd be like, maybe it's still worth doing a green screen in case yeah, we change our minds. Like, uh... Yeah. Um. Yeah, because because I figured if you did it normally and you decided you didn't like it, then you you will have just you just green screen over it anyway. Um, well, I imagine that's also small sometimes words. you have like you have uh, weird sync issues with the um, shutter speed of the camera and the refresh rate of the TV. Mm -hmm. You can get some weird things, so it's just easier to green I screen. Said, I said the visual thing about they wanted the, the clearest it could be. That was my that was my first guess. Yeah, and and as for like yeah, that's my guess. you yeah. could uh, yeah. po like like change the screen in post if you wanted to. I imagine it would just be easier because like they have like automated shit for when you have green screen right you can just like mask it on and it'll match perfectly because technology is really good now as opposed mm -hmm. to adding the green screen on and then doing that you know that's just i this is by the way part of what's infectious with with post production and stuff where like 
too many directors might slip into. Uh, if we make everything green screen, I can control it all in post. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh no. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And then well, it just I mean, doesn't look real. The interesting thing that I find is that sometimes you see that directors don't have a good understanding of how to do visual effects in their film. And so, like, they'll hand footage off that's really not primed for visual effects. And then the VFX artists have to do much, much more work. Um, yeah. When if they had had more forethought, foresight while they were filming it, uh, they could have made it a lot easier. You know, things like setting up your stage correctly or not having things interfere or you and know, like, planning ahead of time. The headline on the um, the event was probably something they were tooling with for a while. Like, what should the headline read? Should it be like, is Superman culpable? What happened at the Capitol? Superman did not save the, the Capitol. You know, they'd be like, I don't know what we want to put on there yet. Um, so yeah, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, I think. But at the same time, you can definitely notice it uh, when it's not quite done. Dare I say right? I don't know. Don't want to be too mean. I'm sure someone worked very hard when they green screened on the... um. Like the, the, the oh yeah, it, yeah I'm sure they worked hard. It just looks like <laughs> for a, yeah. a whole couple of days. I mean, it's probably automated for all I know. Like it's a thing with a program. And it's just maybe. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure actually, because you got a rotoscope. Um, like Ben Affleck. That's 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 every frame. I think you would have to do some extra work. It's almost like you you go out of your way to make sure no one crosses in front of it or something like that. It, or you would well, could, yeah. Or you'd That'll have be... it be still for that scene and then cut away? I, I think, from what I understand, every time you have a green screen shot in a film, somebody has to go in frame by frame and, like, edit that footage. to Because green screens aren't yeah. perfect. They're not perfect. Like, sometimes you'll get green popping in, and then you have to do that extra work to make it not look bad. Um, and that's probably a ton of work. Every frame. I wonder sometimes if they say, like, split it out into like a thousand frames and then like guy a guy b guy c they all take a hundred each you know or something like that uh maybe i i think i think from what i understand visual effects industry is just broken down by shots like you have a shot yeah. that you need to work on um and then somebody else will have a shot and so like you know any one individual artist may only have like three or five seconds of what their work was in the film just because that's how much work. I think I it's would easy believe, to though, assume that it's really easy. Um, with what technology is available for like users of, of your average, they, like what movie makers have access to at this point, I, I do wonder if they do have stuff that could still automate all of that, even with um, cutting out Ben I, Affleck I and stuff automatically. To be honest with you, to be honest with you, I actually think that we all kind of underestimate how much work has to go into visual effects, like in terms of, I think it's i think we look at like a green screen and go oh well that's basic i mean i can do that and it's like but again to achieve the level that they need to for films pretty i'm pretty sure someone has to go in each frame and like manually do this um or like it's or you know like if you're making a background uh like through a green screen and then there's a window it's like somebody had to make that so it's a it's a lot of work and and you look at like endgame it's got like two thousand vfx artists or something worked yeah. on it or probably a lot more than that. I might even be lowballing it. Sending him accident. Greg, why hasn't he been getting our checks? He is, Mr. Wayne. He gets a check from the Victims Fund every month. He, he returns them. But it's revealed that Lex Luthor had been intercepting them for some time and sending them back with bat how anger though? inducing messages. That doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't. Yeah, how <laughs> does how do you do that? Also, if they're why... going to Wayne himself. Why was he How do you sending intercept those Bruce back? Wayne's mail? Why was he sending the checks no, back? Uh, he's not intercepting Bruce Wayne's mail. He's intercepting uh, Scoop McNary's mail. Yeah, why That's was not he, a real name. Why, 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 was, <laughs> why was he sending them back? Did we ever get a reason for that? Like, I don't want your money, Bruce. Like, oh. That's what I'd assume, but hey, I guess actually, that's reasonable to infer. Like, Bruce what, was the one who what saved if, him. Yeah, I don't also, get it. Also, I'm sorry, uh. what if those checks actually were shown to Bruce earlier? Don't you think that he would, like, That's what, talk to well, him? Well, we've been over this. Like, this Reach out to him? Yeah. This doesn't work. Like, it can't. Yeah, this guy just shows up, and he has all of them with him, and this is the first time that Bruce has ever been made aware and of they, this, apparently. Yeah, they lampshade it. They're like, Lex Luthor I should have... that guy off. It's, it's like, I fucking... This is all over The Boys Season 2, by the way. Like, highlighting an issue exists and not doing anything about it. It's like, why haven't I seen these before? Mm-hmm. Oh, because if I've seen them before, I might have talked to that guy and then found out what the fuck's that, that he's not sending these messages and then known that I'm being fucked with by someone else. 
you bastard. Little red. Did your family die? This makes it clear that Lex had figured out Batman's true identity and selected him as Ow. the Superman. And he never killing... told anybody. Oh well. That's first question. How? Yeah. He, well, he, he knows oh. both Clark and Bruce's identity. Well, I mean, Clark is probably easier than Batman because it's just Superman doesn't wear a mask. I'm gonna go as far as saying that if they want us to believe that everybody can't figure it out, then Lex shouldn't be special in this universe, right? The only yeah, people that should surely. are probably people who are very close to him, like Lois, who are like, oh, yeah. I can fucking tell. But like, yeah, because I agree with you, but also at the same time, I'm like, but wait, like, should the, not the world have figured this out then? Yeah, true. The movie even started. This is how it all caves in. Civilization on the wane. Manners. Out the window. Ugh. Why, why are you like this? Yeah. It all You're such a weird, confusing man. It was so clever. Oh, it's such an oof line to me. It's like, hey, yeah, it's one of those lines oof. where it's like, only can be read in a tism way because the surface way is just garbage. Like, this is how it all caves in. Civilization on the wane. Man is out the window. Like, wh what? <laughs> Like, oh, I meant that it all caves in, you know, civilization, Wayne's manners are out the window, or something. Did he this practice like... that before Batman showed up? I guess. You're well, he's he lost his like mind at this point, him. right? Because he got so much so info. Now... Alright. Alright. <laughs> I don't know, he seems really well adjusted in, at the end credit of the next well, the thing with Deathstroke, right? It's interesting That's to say true. that. That's true. Because, He's yeah. on the boat and everything. I suppose the only way that we can sort of do this, I guess, is like, um, he he got all the information from the ship, and then right at the end he got the information that Steppenwolf is on the way under Darkseid to collect Mother Boxes and fuck Earth, and he was like, oh my god, this is intense. Didn't tell anyone about it, and then decided to recruit Deadshot after he was broke out of prison. Not Deadshot, that's... Oh, Death Deathstroke. Deathstroke, sorry. Yeah. Like, what, I don't... Get right. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand any of that. I'm just like, okay... Is he gonna be in Snyder Cut like a lot or? Uh Deathstroke is for sure gonna be in it. I know that much. I guess he'll be enacting whatever orders that uh Lex No, had I think from. uh he got brought in for like reshoots, so that'll be that future sequence I'm guessing. Okay, well Yeah. I'll the one with all that Jesus goes. Right. Is it is it possible that that post credit scene in Justice League was actually like part of the original Snyder Cut? Like that's taking place midway through the movie maybe i mm. who knows it's it's gonna be four hours long like yeah this is the, South Hall, for all that's the, what the, makes me think that the scene with the bug exploding and it's it's goo splattering mother boxes on a wall that could both not be in the snyder cut and also be the last hour of the snyder <laughs> cut for all we know it's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Batman chooses not to use the kryptonite against Superman? Well, then Lex could threaten another hero, or just use it himself. Now, seems like you should have just opted for that in the first place, but whatever. With what leverage? Yeah, maybe. The, all you have to do, like, I, we, like we said, plan fucking A. He already knows how to get Superman. You capture mm -hmm. Martha, and then Superman blows your door down. He's like, whoa, what are you doing with my mom? Or Lois. Then you go, hey, Superman, open this briefcase, teehee. And then he goes, he goes, ah, kryptonite, oh no, ah, and then vomits up all the old kryptonian juice, and then you stab him with your kryptonian knife. That's the way to do it. Easy. Yeah, you're like, what? you gotta go and get leverage on Batman, well, all of the heroes, and then try and orchestrate it so that you are stolen from to get the kryptonite to Batman and hope that they fight to the death. Like, oh, jeez, man. <sighs> Batman and Deathstroke will team up. Oh, goody. <laughs> Lex needs kryptonite into Batman's hands so that he can do the deed, but he also needs to make it seem like it was Batman's idea to do it. He can't very well give it to Batman without revealing that he knows Batman's true identity. So Lex attracts Batman's attention by feeding him information about a dirty bomb being brought into Gotham by a mysterious criminal called the White Portuguese. So the White Portuguese is a Russian. None of this matters because this graph has gotten un unnecessarily large. <laughs> It's because the plan's so complicated, man. I was gonna say, the element of he wants Batman to steal the kryptonite from him mostly lines up, yeah. But, but this is microcosm uh -huh. in the, the the broadness of the film, so like, yeah. It exists, it could be Why don't you just send it anonymously? 
There's a lot of things you could fucking do, man. Why don't himself. you order your men to, like, not try to run off with the kryptonite once Batman starts chasing them? Yeah, you could literally have them, like, go, oh no, and drop the kryptonite and then go, get out of here, Batman's gonna kill us. Ugh. Yeah. A, but, like, this is all compensation for the fact that it should be like, Lex, you just do it yourself. You you know how to get Batman, uh, you. Superman to you. You can make anything out of that fucking kryptonite <laughs> boulder. Just stab him. Bring a dirty bomb into Gotham. Even inviting Batman to his house, where he can steal information about it when the time is right. Fuck the idea that he wants to, uh, Batman to steal all of his files. It's just like, yeah, there's not gonna be anything on there that I wouldn't want you to see. It's gonna be fine. May I help you, Mr. Wayne? Uh, I just- Why would you even have her go up to him if this was all the part of the plan? Wouldn't you want him to think he's safe? I have no idea. I thought the bathroom was down here. I must have- Hence rooms upstairs. Great. I'm okay. Why doesn't Lex Luthor's assistant oh, that's keep it. <laughs> there it is. So if, he, if he's about oh. to say because she wants him to take the information, then why the fuck did she question him in the first place? Yeah. Why, why did she, she keep an eye on him? That? Remember when he walks down the stairs and she's like, hmm. So it doesn't seem too Was easy. she acting for the audience? <laughs> Batman didn't yeah. see that. Well, also, because it doesn't seem too easy, it wouldn't make sense because she just leaves him. She's like, hey, don't yeah. be in this room. Bye. If anything, that makes it look <laughs> very. In, that looks it makes it look very suspicious. Yeah, she should have never even gone there. <laughs> and wait, Evans. and also, what is she supposed? To Sorry. Also, how does it benefit Lex Luthor? The Batman now knows about all these other superheroes, or like potential superheroes. Why does that help him? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Because Wonder Woman ultimately helps defeat Lex Luthor's plan. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> So what the fuck would you purposely give Batman that info for? Also, he allows Wonder Woman to take the information too. You'd have to agree because yeah. he knows who she is. So, assistant, kick Bruce Wayne out of the server room. What is she supposed to suspect a drunken billionaire music? playboy of doing in there? Oh wait, no, this is perfect dog. Well, so <laughs> she doesn't know. What the fuck? Wait, what is the argument now? Ugh. So she simultaneously is aware of him doing this and kind of wants him to, but then can't claim he should get out of there because that would lead on that she knows what he's doing when he's just a drunk billionaire. It's like, no, you just tell him to leave. You're not supposed to be in here. Can you yeah. go? I know it's please. stupid that we don't have a lock on this door, but please could you not come in here? <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Wayne's normal person disguise actually works in this universe. For anyone that what what do you you say that like it doesn't in others? <laughs> Fuck. Excuse me. It's a commonality for Batman to use Bruce Wayne as his way to get things and yeah, talk to people. Like, he do always mean? does that. He's like, ha ha, I'm a stupid drunk playboy. Like, he, he don't mind me. Yeah. He always. Does yeah. That. What do you expect mm -hmm. him to do? Waltz in with his Batman costume under a janitor costume or something? Yeah, that would be. Stupid! Like he's not gonna. That'd be funny. That'd be really dumb. That'd be hilarious. He looks so I'm, bulky. <laughs> it's like, I'm. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that nothing in any Batman media has ever shown that happen. Mm -hmm. It isn't Batman. That's just a room with a bunch of computers behind some glass. Beyond that, Lex Luthor wants Bruce to hack into his server as part of his master plan. It's the reason Bruce was invited to the party, and the reason Lex's assistant <laughs> isn't too intent on kicking him out. Why does she bother at all? You Why can't have you bother with these arguments, though? We don't need these he... justifications because it was intended for the fight to happen, so who cares how it happens? He made Why you make... two arguments that conflict. One is yeah. she's watching over him because she knows and wants him to steal the information. Also, why would she kick him out of the room? She has no reason to. It's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Hmm. Well, Bruce Wayne can't break into Lex Luthor's house. Bruce Wayne won't have to. He's been invited. How convenient. Lex also uses the party How as right. convenient. That's his argument, right? That was on purpose. <laughs> Which kind oh. of makes um, all of the dirty bar. Well, all of the Russian stuff was redundant because it leads him to wanting to go to this place. But he's just like, you're coming anyway. It must so, be. So, wait, so. Hold on. Wait, so if he wanted. Did he want him to steal the kryptonite? Is well, that so the like way, the argument he's making? Maybe I'm being a little bit unfair. The plot line goes that he's 
Batman is beating up criminals to find out more about the dirty bomb coming to Gotham. By cloning the phone on the Russian phone thing, the phone tells him that uh, it's it's sending uh, encoded, encrypted bullshit to uh, Lex's house. Like this random Russian guy, who he knows is up to no good, is sending those messages to Lex's house. And so he's like, I'm going to break okay. in as Batman and steal stuff. And then he's like, you won't need to. You've been invited. Oh. How will this help me do it, though? Well, as, uh, Alfred is like, it? go downstairs. The server room's right there. Steal it. <laughs> it's like, okay. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty That's really great. easy. Yeah. Isn't that weirdly easy? Hmm. Yeah, I sure hope no one else like is here to do the same thing. He's not much of a detective, this Batman guy. No. No, I mean, did you think a pair of glasses could fool the world's greatest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the world's oh. greatest detective? I, yeah, yeah the same way that Lex is the smartest man in the universe. But no, it's He's just, got you know, smart blood. <laughs> he also, has got smart blood. <laughs> uh, by getting the information, isn't like the only payoff the trailers? Isn't that it? What else happens Wait, what? with that information? Um, he was nice to Wonder Woman. <laughs> Yay, trailers. Um, Opportunity to swing the seeds of Batman and Superman's rivalry. It's a lot easier to get them to fight each other if they already don't like each other. Lex had been steering Clark toward disliking Batman they already don't develop by sending well at all. Yeah, he's no, been like I get the whole. Uh, I get why Batman would want to have like a, you know, a, the Kryptonite thingy. But yeah. they really do not do a good job in kind of elaborating why he's so dead set on killing Superman. I'll tell you why. Um, I saw his other two videos. He says that when Batman says, uh, if there's a 1% chance he could like wipe us out, then we have to take it as an absolute certainty. He's like, some people think this is a dumb line. However, even if there's 1% chance of him doing something so catastrophic, we can not, absolutely not allow it to happen, then we should remove the chance entirely. And he has like this reference to a probability video where a scientist doctorate person is like, well, there's one percent chance of something horrible happening. You would still argue to, 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 you know, erase it completely in order to prevent the ever thing of something horrible. And you just, it all comes back to, well, yeah, but killing him would also lead to that potentially. Like mm -hmm. killing Superman means he can't yeah, save us. Exactly. That's the because you already have proof that there are aliens out there and they can be potentially extremely strong. That only Superman could be good against them. And he so did. Superman, he's not doing like that bad. Maybe, you know, he's not. He's not great. Yeah, like, what, but he's not what would terrible. If another Zod came along. Like, what if another Zod came along? You need him. I think he'd, I'd take my chances with Superman. You know, I feel like yeah, I'd take my chances Superman with Superman. Was really bad at stopping Zod and took yeah, his no, sweet ass though, time. Know, yeah, though. yeah. It's still better it, it, than it, it, Zod it, it, being able to destroy the entire it's, it's world. Said, um, Batman is simply. Uh, oh, wait, sorry, I read the wrong one. His building got destroyed. Rags. Isn't that motivation enough? We never get to explore the specifics with Batman. Does he actually believe that his building getting destroyed was negligence on Superman's part? Does he think that? Or does he think it was an unfortunate I, result of the fight? I don't know. So, so Mahler, here is where you're, you've you made a mis horrible mistake. Oh, no. It's that your question was, what does a character in the DCEU think? Oh. So yeah. we're going to have some issues there. <laughs> I don't really do that much. As for, um, you, well, you, this is the thing. They're fundamentally, the three players in this game of Superman, Batman, and Lex, they're all fucking terrible in terms of, like, Batman's justification is really bad, and it reflects back on him completely. Not only in like a hypocritical way, but also the the whole "if you kill Superman, he can't protect us" way. Then there's Clark, who's being told, "Hey, he brands people," and then they get sent to prison where they're executed. And this has been happening. I I had a look at a a, a pause screen for more than a month. It's been happening, and Batman keeps doing it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Big old yikes for that Batman, one. Batman, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> like. I don't know uh, the question of like I don't know rags if you uh, if you were told by walking on a particular paving as, uh, down a street you kill someone every time you yeah. do it because someone sees you doing it they get so angry they kill someone would you just be like I'm they all just skip that one I guess then I mean someone. I wouldn't want anyone to die yeah like you you'd be like I wanted to do this for other reasons but I guess if people are dying as a result of it it doesn't really cost me to... yeah like, like maybe I'll stop branding them I guess yeah I guess. I guess branding them is not a good idea if they just get killed. Although, like at this point, I may as well just kill them myself. Yeah. 
Because he's obviously not. Yeah, at least I get to. Yeah. And before anyone says, I don't know the whole. Yeah. Well, wait, it was. It wasn't him. It was the Russian people. It's, it's the fact that Batman should know by now for sure that, that the this brand is does that, and yet he continues mm. doing it. Yeah, he is. I mean, powerful. everyone else seems to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, knows. and he's do, the world's greatest detective. Do so. they though, Rags? Because <laughs> what paper would report on a guy dressed as a bat branding people who get put in prison and killed for it? Nobody would report that. That's a boring story. Who cares? We got to cover the local high school football <laughs> team. All right, we got more important shit to talk about. Yeah. Because there's always been crime in Gotham, so who would care about a guy dressed as a bat branding people and then them getting killed? Yep. That's not interesting. Who in Gotham would care I mean, about How often do bat. football teams play each other? <laughs> Come on, this is important breaking news. And so, yeah, you've got... <laughs> what? There's a football game? Clark is sent these images by Lex, I guess, anonymously. Like, look, look what, because he knows who he is, and he's like, do you think this is justice? And he's like, okay, enough of the bat. He didn't even talk to Batman about any of this. Like, imagine he did. He goes, like, why are you branding people to be executed in a prison? And then Batman's like, what? <laughs> I, have no, I have no reference for what you're talking about. He's like, have you not read the articles being made about this? He's like, there are no articles about this clock. No one's interested by this. I can't read. <laughs> I'm old. I like how Perry is just unnes needlessly a dick. Yeah. Wait, who's Perry again? Uh, the one who, uh, oh, editor in the, chief. The, the, I, I can't believe Oh, it. yeah, man. that's a that's a shame too, because I like Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne, he's great. Sure. Character's not. Him grizzly bat brand victims. Benefit for the Library of Metropolis. Someone on the committee requested that Clark can't cover it. Inviting Clark to the party with Bruce Wayne the night he's supposed to be hacking Luther's server is what really puts Clark on Bruce's case. He hears. Oh, don't remind me. Oh, just... that's it? So, Clark chasing Bruce and then noting that he's on a mission through the, the earpiece and seeing him go into the server room. This is all incredibly fucking interesting. And then he sees on the news that someone's in trouble. Uh, oh, I gotta go. It's such a, like, a writer was like, wait, Clark's followed him. He's got the information we want him to have. We don't want him to do anything else. How do we get him out of here? It's like, the TV says someone's in a fire. Ah! There you go. Um, And so the question comes up and this by the way is like it's almost a movie here if they just tried a little harder because thematically you probably want when does superman decide that a life is worth saving versus not because everyone's there's people dying all the time in different accidents all around the world so he, he can't possibly save them all which again seems to me a, a a pretty fundamental thing they do with superman a lot like the, the concept of not being able to save everybody it's, it's, it's neat it sounds neat anyway and he's like, oh, I'm following Batman, or Bruce, and I'm getting all the information I could ever want. This is super interesting. It's like, oh, someone's in trouble. It's like, oh, shit, do I, do I pursue this mission where I'm about to get a big payoff for what I've been looking into, or do I go and save that life? But it's like, that's never really pushed. He just looks like he's distracted, and then he just doesn't care about Bruce at all. Yeah, and he just goes, and then you're like, yep, that's that. All right, well. It's like, oh, man. You I wish I could get, like, into the minds of these characters, and we could explore some of these ideas. They don't have minds to get into, so... And this thing, after this is the mon the sad montage of him saving people. It's like, uh, I guess I'll yeah. save you. Where he looks like he's really upset about having to do all this. <laughs> Remember the, um, the, the, like, the rocket ship people he saves? Where it, it is about to launch and explodes, so that he's just there. He's like, I got you. <laughs> he knew I like it. the idea that he it. was waiting there. Yeah. Just he's like, like, I know he's like please blow, blow up, please blow up, please That's blow up. Like you. Yes. I saved him. I'm so great. I'm like I'm I'm like Lex Luthor. That's tough to say. I'm like Lex Luthor. Um, I'm like Lex Luthor. I uh, I really I'm care about like, my image. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I told you, man. That one. Whoa, whoa. Oh, I get a pass on that one. I'm, um, I'm like Lex Luthor. by the seashore. It's toughy. I'm a little bit curious though. Like, pretend the TV was off or muted or just fucking news channel. It wasn't people dying. And he like sees Bruce go in. He sees Bruce check for his little thing, but he, he gets nothing because Wonder Woman's already taken it. And then he sees Bruce walk back out like. Uh, fuck you, Clark, or whatever. And then he's like chasing Wonder Woman, and then Clark follows him. Like I, I don't even know how that scene ends. I don't, I don't know what happens next. I wonder if Clark would just be like, "I know you're Batman, by the way. What, what are you doing? What's, what's up? Are you, I, I, I could hear Alfred." Yeah, what's up, Batman? And he's like, "Oh shit." What do you? Shut up, Clark. Here's Alfred's transmissions to Bruce and puts two and two together. All right, where am I going, Alfred? We're past the elevator. To the left. That's right, it must be. This is a Just service two and two together. Basement. No, it wouldn't Fair have been numbers. my first guess. I would have guessed he's looking for someone. Like he saw yeah, someone and he's looking for him. 
<laughs> yeah, not that he's Batman secretly trying to get server stuff. I think, it, mm. yeah, I think it's a little bit of a leap to assume instantly that he's Batman. He could be talking to his security. Yeah. Yeah. He is rich. He is rich. Why does Lex Luthor put so much emphasis on the meeting of Clark Kent and yep. Bruce Wayne? Bruce is a well. I'm assuming the answer to this would be that he knows who they actually are. Yeah. But like what? But you know what I mean? Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. It's like that shouldn't mean anything in this world. Well, if anything, it should just make them be like, why would he? Why is he? Yeah, why would you put so much emphasis on... Yeah, that is my name. My name's Clark, yeah. as opposed to... It's for us. That's what it's for. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. for it, us. It, well, it would be something trailer. else if, like, if Clark Kent was an established journalist, like a really well-respected journalist well, of like, Daily Planet. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's the second sentence of this thing. Hey, you covered Bruce, the football game, the Cougars. Like, yeah, yeah Bruce, I, mean, I love you. Bruce is important, <laughs> but Clark is just a guy. Like... Yeah. Clark Kent famous for yeah, his like, incredible articles on the football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it'd be one thing if it was actually comparable to, I don't know, pairing up Elon Musk with Ronan Farrow, but it's not. Um, Elon Musk with some random Twitter checkmark person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you remember as well, because this, this happens more than once in the movie, uh, Perry says after Clark has, wants to talk about the bat, and he's like, no, talk about football. He says, uh, nobody cares about Clark Kent going up against the bat. Yeah, that's for us. Yeah, it's like, the line. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's the it's the kind of lines where you just you sort of hang your head in shame. You're like, I'm watching this. Well, I mean, spending time. If you're this. trying really hard, like you could probably earn those lines if you tried really hard, but they didn't. So, yeah. but that would require trying really hard. Yeah, I know. That's why I, you know so, if. <laughs> yeah. The public figure is an inconsequential small town nobody. Lex Luthor yep. is a socialite and a manipulator, and it's a rich people party. So to anyone else, it just looks like he's playing the social game of lavishing praise onto people and making them feel more important than they are. Doesn't really make sense Dude, though, does Lex? it? Because Clark has never fucking met but Lex I before. Thought... And he's confused that he likes him. Remember, uh, fucking Perry is like, oh, I guess he likes dudes. It's like, what What does that even... Like, if this guy went, oh my god, Mauler meets this guy, I'd be like, do you, have you seen my videos? Like, what's, what's the deal here? Like, why are you... you tri who are you? But they'll just smile. They're like, "Hey, Lex. Oh, Lex. Yeah, how, how you doing?" As if they have some kind of relationship. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't buy him as a socialite. He's not charming. He's super he's awkward. He, he's terrible at socializing. He freaks everyone out when he talks to them. Yeah, I mean, when he was doing his speech, he was like, you know, doing the weird mumbly noise. Paradoxical. Yeah, paradoxical. paradoxical. Mm -hmm. That's not That's what a, a socialite three... is. Paradoxical. That's a five-syllable word you for a <laughs> uh, something with a something. So like... small minds with big penises. Helicopter. It's a five-syllable <laughs> word written by terrible directors <laughs> with horrible visions. So true. That he can get into their good graces. Boys! Mm. Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. I love it. I love bringing people together. But Lex I know, yeah, it's weird. You know who Clark Kent is. We keep uh, unless yeah, he was trying to specifically find out. Yeah, is contextually. It, you know what? If I was Batman, if I was the greatest detective of the world, and I was like, why is Lex so obsessed with meeting this guy? And you really look at his face, like, oh, you know who you kind of look like? Looks like Superman if you <laughs> took off the glass. <laughs> can, mm -hmm. can you take off your glass? He's like, no. Lex also. No He's introducing Batman to Superman, and he's destroyed. excited about it. Of course he is, because there's this weird angle in this movie oh. where he sees this, like, Godzilla versus King Kong, and it's like, why? <laughs> I thought the whole point was he, he had does. motivations for himself, not he that does. he's, like, a fan of fights. That's a great... He just wanted a big fight night, yeah. Fight that's the night. That, isn't that, like, what he calls it? Yeah. Like, that's... fight night of the century or something? Fight night! Uh, it's cringe. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> He that knows he's taking the first step. Cringe is a one-syllable word for people who care about nitpicks in movies. Yes, it is. And yes, they do and should. Toward these two knowing each other's true identities. That's seven minutes. Looks like the transfer's complete. Seven minutes is all I can spare. To How did Clark Kent not know who Bruce Wayne was before Lex Luthor's party? Oh, good question. It's his huh. job as yeah. a reporter. So no, I don't even need to appeal to reporter. I can re re refer to person who exists on planet Earth in this universe. How do you not Famous know? Famous person. Who Bruce Famous Wayne is. They also live, they live in sister cities. It's not yeah. like he's across Bruce the Wayne's country. Like possibly is, the richest like... person in the two cities, like, entirely, right? He's probably, I don't know if him this or Lex would be richer. Yeah, yeah, so. 
This is like not knowing who Bill Gates is or Elon Musk. How do you know that? No, about the people. man who Steve invented Jobs. Gates. I but know then, all about you. Once you move from that argument, you then move on to well, what, what is what is Clark's profession like? Mm, reporter. <laughs> He's a reporter. <laughs> Well, he's too busy covering college football games. Well, to I wouldn't know. be surprised if that'll be the counter to this. It'll be that Clark was oh, is new man. to being a reporter. He doesn't care about the oh, higher class. No, no don't. don't. <laughs> um, there is a line when he asks who he is, and the guy responds like, "Oh, I guess you're new to the whole let them eat cake crowd." But and, like, doesn't he know Lois pretty well? Lois fucking knows who Bat like who Bruce Wayne is. Everyone surely. knows who he is except. Clark, because he's a dumbass. <laughs> it's like, how do you not know who Bruce Wade is? It's so stupid. As a reporter to know- I don't know why it's such a stretch that Clark wouldn't know Bruce Wayne at a glance. We just said why. It's like yeah. this video doesn't even react to us in real time. What the fuck? <laughs> Listen to the <laughs> other guy who tells him who it is. You must be new to the Let Them Eat Cake beat. There you go. That is Bruce Wayne. He doesn't sound very surprised. I don't care if that guy isn't surprised. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, surprised. that guy. <laughs> that guy's kind of stupid. What's that matter? That so, isn't even a character. That's just the writer trying oh, to yeah. Yeah. I, hold, on, know. Hold, hold, hold on. I think that he's mentioning that Clark doesn't seem that surprised. Go back and, and rewind that. No, I think the point he's making is this guy isn't surprised that Clark doesn't know who Bruce yeah. is. No, yeah. That's what I got from it. And that's evidence mm. that it's normal for him to not recognize someone like Clark or look, people might not in general. Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure he is referring to yes. Clark here, not the I'm other guy. I'm going to put seven American dollars on this, all right? His okay. job as a reporter to know these things. That's a lot of money well, for no, you no. people. All right, fine. Eight. <laughs> Why it's such a stretch that Clark wouldn't know Bruce Wayne at a glance. Listen to the other guy who tells him who it is. He must be new to the Let Them Eat Cake beat. That is Bruce Wayne. He doesn't sound very surprised. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so my bad. It'll be ten no, billion dollars. Eight bucks for you. Um, yeah. So uh, I I think it's incredible that this is honestly I'm kind of downplaying how fucking terrible this argument is. It's like um, if ever there's something weird or stupid that happens, if you have a character that isn't surprised by the event, you can use that as evidence that it's not shocking. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Just uh, in case anybody needs to see this guy, there he is. Got to get him. In your scene to say, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, um, the hyperspace kamikaze. If he was just on one of the ships and he looks outside, he's like, oh my god, yeah, so obvious. I think it's just <laughs> this same guy in every film. <laughs> just yeah. pop it up to declare that the plot hole is <laughs> not a plot hole. character actor. Uh, it's totally fine that this thing is happening that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> it's totally normal. <laughs> it's totally fine. I'm not surprised by it. <laughs> you know, me personally, I have. <laughs> Take that for what you will, audience member. <laughs> so this guy has that saved many a script. <laughs> Here's your seven dollars. Also, the letter of the day on Sesame Street today was C. Oh, you. Um, <laughs> I understand. I enjoy their skits that are educational and fun. Yes. Evidently, in this universe, it's not so strange that someone wouldn't know Bruce Wayne by his face. From the amount of reporting we see in the film, Clark seems very intent on breaking big stories and trying to use his journalist- Oh, you mean like, billionaires doing things? Big stories? Hmm. No, Fucking... the Cougars beat the Bears last night, 17 to 3. It was a stomp, man. <laughs> oh, they ran out of hot dogs down at the stands, this so people like... were a bit upset, but yeah. This guy's like the perfect mark for a writer. You just tell him what the case is and he'll believe it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, mark is a good word for that. I... I second that. Stick position to important issues. I don't think the exploits of a billionaire playboy would be- I don't think the exploits of a playboy would be important, right? Is that how you can add that sentence? The exploits of a billionaire wouldn't be important? The I, I think anything a billionaire playboy does is almost by definition news. Dude, listen to Elon Musk. Like, every time he's, he tweets something, it's, it's a major, like, thing that affects- His, <laughs> his tweets- <laughs> Elon Musk the raised his stock in anime cat girls yeah. by 37% with this one <laughs> meme. Yeah. How many people in the world Tesla say, should be traded at four dollars and twenty cents? How many cents? people in the world yeah. fly to like freaking Omaha, Nebraska to hear what um, Warren Buffett has to say about stocks? And how many people can say their tweets can change the economy? 
just like with ease back and forth which is like yeah i mean you know but it's, it's uh whatever i i, I should have let him finish the sentence i'm just already annoyed important issues i don't think the exploits of a billionaire playboy would be all that interesting to clark well it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter if it's interesting to him he's yeah, got a job to do that's right. job. That's you need right. to know these people allow clark to cover the batman story it's much more important and compelling than i don't even know how he's going to counter this Mm. It should be funny though. Prots. I don't know. I think Perry White, the guy in charge of selling the newspapers, knows what sells newspapers. Oh, again! He was told. Oh, uh, he was told that's wow. the truth, so he believes it. It's that simple. Oh. The film says yeah. people care about sports, not about Batman. So believe it. Therefore, that's the truth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> stories about high school football games sell newspapers, not stories about weird about vigilantes branding Batman. criminals and get them, yeah. getting them killed. That doesn't oh, sell God. newspapers, guys. I mean, it's not like Batman v Superman is a billion... Oh, wait, no, an $800 million <laughs> grossing film. How much were people interested in watching this film? Well... How many of them watched this the true test Sport. would be to find a football film that came out that year. <laughs> See how they take how much money it made, yeah. Papers Why aren't we covering this? Poor people don't buy papers? <laughs> people don't buy papers. In this world, Batman has been at it for over 20 years. <laughs> On that subject, uh, we're cutting your salary. <laughs> On that Clark subject, an we're, uh, we've been and we don't <laughs> On this subject, we've been bought by Gawker. I'm sure they'll have a very promising and fruitful career. <laughs> <laughs> people don't buy papers, period, Ken. In this world, Batman has been at it for over 20 years. His existence is not exactly break- Do not argue that because he's been you around could not for have, a while, you... nobody cares. What the fuck? Yeah, you could have fooled me, honestly. I- like, how many times do we have to say this? Like, he's branding people and they're getting executed oh, in prison. How is this not incredibly here's interesting? Thing. Here's an even more apt thing. Batman as a character has been popular for like, 80 years. I feel like in 20 years, a real-life Batman would still be super interesting to people. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure we, just we would vigilantes. all be like, is that Batman guy still running around New York City or something? You know, we would all be like, is that still Have happening? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and how many I, people are still interested in Ted Cru I mean, the Zodiac Killer. Like, how many people still want to know about that? <laughs> happened in the 60s. And then, uh, don't forget, like, the stories that cops could tell. Like, that guy who was like... I entered a dark house. There's these women who are, would rather be in a cage than set free near the Batman. I get up into the room and I find this guy handcuffed to a radiator, exhausted after I heard him screaming. And before I can even deal with the fact that he's got a big bra bat branded into him, I look above and start firing almost just, you know, on muscle uh, memory because this dude is just sitting on the roof uh, ceiling and he's like he starts crawling all over the walls it's just, he, he can take he can tag shotgun shells it's amazing like why would you not want to read yeah. that yeah that's awesome That'd something in gotham has him. even the most hardened of criminals terrified what could it be and then yeah. you're like yeah, yeah 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 that's that's fine that's fine did you see this what about college gotham city bears did they, oh they scored a hoop that's what would the guy. Gotham? They, they'd be oh, well, they wouldn't be the bad. The Gotham would they? City meth bears. <laughs> oh, I think. What were they in Gotham High? What was the? Were they the bats? Were they actually I think they the, bats were the bats in Gotham were, High? Yeah. Why? Why? Because it's very clever. Gotham High. What? What? What is that? The 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 Gotham like the the team of the um, the the, the high school, like the mascot. I think it was the bats. Yeah, oh, it's it a very Gotham cleverly High. written Gotham High comic. Is a book oh, written... it's a comic, okay. Oh, yeah, I guess... Is that what it's considered? I don't know what the correct actual name for that fucking thing is. Young it's... adult graphic... No, yeah, crap. whatever. It's... You should... Fringy, you should totally watch Jay Longbow's put videos out about it with us guest starring reading it. She's... Her animation... Okay. Or her editing, rather, is fucking fantastic. Is insane, yeah. They are okay. incredibly are funny, and you won't believe it's real. They are hilarious. Real. We all... We had a great recording, and the edits of them are amazing, too. Right. Gotham High on Jay Longbone's channel. Check it out. It is Watch an it, it, it is an adventure. <laughs> it's a third thing in the search results. Breaking news. Prime wave in Gotham. Other breaking news. Water. Do you have anything to say Water about that, Water isn't wet, Rex? though. 
<laughs> yeah, water isn't wet. Well, we've I been over this and we've wait, discussed right, it. Would, from your POV, that would just be consistent with his character then, right? Like he's an idiot? <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah, maybe this movie is cleverer than I thought. <laughs> I didn't give Zach credit. All I wanted to do was hate. <laughs> <laughs> You know Clark's glasses in this shot? It looks like a really weird sideburn for this guy. <laughs> Can you see that? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I can't like, wow, oh, dude. No. That's a really weird... That's really funny. Uh, wait, there you go, chat. You can see it better like that. Wonderful uh, style he's going for there. Trying to bring it back. He kind of looks like... Putin for some reason. A little, no, he doesn't actually forget it. <laughs> All right. All um, right. He's yeah. Uh, Perry's really fucking stupid, but he's right at home in this universe. So who cares? <laughs> so Batman now knows what kryptonite can do and where to get it. It's a rock, a mineral capable of weakening Kryptonian. Cells. I feel like calling it a rock is a little a reductive, Bruce. Yeah. It's a mineral. Fucking. Yeah. Racism. Fuck you, Bruce. Well. In yeah, fairness, it's not a mineral, it's a xenomineral. It's they call it a xenomineral. Is it a mineral. crystal? Xenomineral. It looks crystal like. Mineral. Zeno mineral. A xenomineral, so it's a mineral from a different planet? Yeah, that's what they call it. Pretty yeah. high, high tech right. fancy name, huh? Pretty cool. It is a Portuguese being delivered to Lex Luthor, who I am gonna steal it from. All he needs is to push over the edge. And this is where Wallace Keefe comes into the plan a second time. Luther convinces Keefe to testify in Congress against Super- What if he had said no? I guess that's the end of your- maybe, I don't know. Yeah, all right, sure. then. Maybe, maybe well, that like wouldn't a... have been the point of the scene, so that would never would have happened. <laughs> you find, you find a different like, cripple to give well, the, the wheelchair bomb. What you could do well, is- it's like, What's weird is that you ask people about the point of the scene, and you ask them how did they get to- how- how did you determine what the point of the scene was? And if it's by watching the scene, well, now we're in quite the mm -hmm. loop, aren't we? Well, it's okay. You can just yeah. um, break Mercy What's Her Face's legs and be like, "I'm sorry <laughs> no, about dude, that. Dude. I was really angry." But here's a wheelchair to make it up to you. It'd be really funny, funnier if, like, he has her roll it in, and then she just stands up and leaves. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> if you want it, you can crawl on it on your stumps. Superman life and the lives of countless others during Zod's invasion. He made me half a man. Let me still mostly it. there. It, I just, it, I didn't even get enough from this guy, to be fair. Like, this is the thing, this movie just doesn't have it, and Civil War totally has it. But being like, why do you hate him? And it's like, my wife left me, like, yeah, but, so you blame Superman for saving the world, and as a result of the fight, you were hurt. Like, do, do you hold that against him? And do you think that he should be stopped as a result? Because um, the complications in, in Civil War, a lot of the, uh, the examples used, much more, like, just hard to call in terms of whether or not the Avengers made the right choice. Superman broadly made the right choice, like, in Man of Steel. You know, he didn't Yeah, broadly. He didn't do a very good job, but at the same time, it's like everything he did, like when Zod is flooping around and lasering all the buildings and S Superman's trying to stop him, it's like, there's nothing, I don't have any issue with Superman's trying, like, I guess. It's just that he's not very fast and he, he hesitates and throws him through buildings. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it's... <laughs> and so if, if we had that conversation with this guy and he was like, it's not that he was trying to stop Zod, did you see, like, and they've got like a recording from some helicopter that was keeping an eye on it or whatever, and it's just like, Superman is throwing him through buildings. Superman didn't have to do that. And I think we might actually have a good film on our hands if they start doing stuff like that. Be like, holy shit, Superman, you kind of killed people in a way. And then Superman's like, I, I was fighting him. I, I don't know. Like, I was it depends on what your definition of killed is. Right. That, that's probably what he, that would be discussed in the film, potentially. And this guy, if his whole argument was you're reckless and you don't care about the people you who die, you only care about the love you get from the people who you save or some shit, you know, you can make some lines. Lofty dialogue, Zach Levy. Yeah. That this is going to happen furthers Luther's efforts to sully Superman's good name. And now we'll go down a sidetrack for a moment because it's relevant. Oh. What was the Clark, point of the Clark's scenes where name. Lois Lane is investigating the bullet? They ultimately have no impact on the story. So that plotline 
she ends up confirming that Lex did what he did and the whole thing was bullshit. And then I think the next we see of that plotline going anywhere is her getting kidnapped by Lex. And then she's like, I, I know the truth, Lex. You're a bad person. And then he's like, lol, push you off the roof. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? This criticism is making me actually think. Is, is the whole bullet thing kind of unnecessary? Yeah, because nothing comes of it. Like it is, it doesn't yeah. factor into vindicating Superman. They they just drop it. Oh, they do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I think this might be the right. Don't really go anywhere. Yeah. It you're because once we get to the third act, it just totally goes off the rails well, into crazy action. Tell you how we'll know is his defense of it. If his defense yeah. is shit, <laughs> then we'll know for sure that it's yeah. Uh, not that he ever has good defenses. <laughs> um. Well, it's we. It's it. The only uh, big payoff of this um, investigating the bullet subplot is basically Lois Lane figures out what everyone should have figured out from the get go. She's really smart, though. Yeah, she's really smart. I mean, um, I guess she's smarter than the average person in this universe. So she, I mean, she's luckier she's than the average actually person. Actually, smarter than Bruce in terms of figuring out that Superman and Clark are the same person. Smarter than all of the CIA, in that you know she. Finds out about the this this LexCorp bullet before anyone else does. Yeah, it's not frustrating at all. The all of these things happen these ways. You know, it's really fun. Let's hear this defense. Do it. This investigation is only about three and a half minutes in the first half of the movie. D Journalism. So his first argument is it's not that much of the film. <laughs> oh, so you agree? It doesn't waste that much time. This is the this would I be what I ended argument. with, not what I would start it with. Remember, I hate. I think it was I hate everything. It was either he, he or Quentin reviews or TRO. But one of them said like, "Oh, Canto is not that bad. It's only seven percent of the film." I think that <laughs> was. I think. Oh, I forget who that was. It's hard to keep him straight. Quentin reviews. It's, it's one of them. Defense. You can no. Oh no. IHE. Math. It was IHE. Well, I, I, yeah. Like I said, it's, it's either I hate I everything, is, Quentin reviews, yeah. or or the right opinion. It'll be one of those three. Like, Isn't wait? How long is the extended? It's three hours, right? The extended edition. Yes. So yeah. it, it, I think it takes up more of that, for whatever that's worth. It could. Well, there, the there, thing I feel is like though, there were more scenes of her length, going on that path. The length was never the question, though. You know, like it was. I didn't yeah, even yeah. care. I was more yeah. concerned, like, so what did it do for the plot? And I feel like we're in really bad territory if your opening argument is it wasn't that long. Oof. I don't know, three, three and like, a half minutes dedicated to stuff that doesn't advance the plot in any way, shape, or form. That's a long time. Yeah, because it's, it's more, you've already tacitly admitted to something. Yeah, well, that, was, right? that's kind of yeah. what I was getting at. I was like, if you're arguing it's only a small amount of time, it's like, oh, you accidentally oh, just let so slip something. this is something. like a band-aid, not a cure. You agree with the criticism, yes? And you'd be like, well, I mean, not really. It's not that long. Shut up. Um, if you remember as well, when she gets pushed off, um, Lex like pushes her back, and she goes like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then she turns and puts her arms out, and then it cuts to wide, and she's falling off the tower. It looks like she could easily have grabbed him. And pulled him down. I think we I point that out. I would have slid off and let him die. Oh, I just, yeah, it would be <laughs> funny. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull it up quick. Where are ye? No, not the trailers. I was um I saw the 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 red light media of BVS after we watched the film because I, I was interested in a refresher, and at one point they say, um, uh, the, like one of them the, I can't remember which of the three, but they question like how is it that Superman knew that Lois is in, in trouble, and then one of the responses is like it's, it's Superman, and I remember being yeah, like what? fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't like that excuse. It's Superman. It's fine. I was like, I know who did it. Thank you. It's just, uh, because it, this is the thing. If you really wanted to apply it, like, actually 100% that he can just detect, it's like, how would it not be for the mum? And I feel like that's the, the criticism that corners people who make that defense. Yeah, it's for Lois. But see this? Like, uh... Uh, I got it on screen. He pushes her. She flips around and she looks like she's able to, she grabs him, but then he, she just falls. Uh, it's a bit weird. I'm gonna lie. Mm. 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 I'm just gonna show it one more Fine. time. One more time. Here we go, chat. Paying attention now. He goes. Uh... Oh shit! I better be careful with copyright. I hate YouTube. 
I can't analyze, ah. I can't nitpick films, because this would be a nitpick, right? Her being able to pull Lex off the roof with her, that would just, that doesn't really change the story that much. It'd be so funny if Superman grabbed her and let him fall, and he was like, well... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically I didn't kill him. Yeah. See, see that? I almost started to wonder if maybe this was how it was filmed, and they just didn't cut it early enough. Like, it should have showed him pushing and then cut to the wide instead of this. So weird. Anyway, let's continue with this incredible video. Fun times. Yeah. Very fun. So it's not like it was an interruption or anything, but it's far more important um, than you think. I'll be the judge of that. Wait, if he's about to argue it is important, make that your opening argument, not that it's not that long. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah never, that's what I said originally. Yeah. I was like, end your defense with this mm -hmm. as like a consolation. I was like, yeah, maybe it doesn't go anywhere. Also, you don't have to defend this. We've seen it before where people feel the need to defend everything Everything. in a movie. Like, the thing you, like you don't have to. It, yeah, you can you can concede a point. It makes you look reasonable. First, it further as government and military believe Luther's doctored story in the days leading up to Superman's court appearance. That's not good. We haven't been told the That's truth. Here's the truth. That's really the embarrassing. Got greedy for a scoop and went where she shouldn't have. Happy right. Sorry. No, you'll be okay. Superman yeah. acted like. Some yeah. rogue combatant to rescue her and people die. I mean, I say that the audio could maybe be. We'll have to find out. This is this is the experimental EFAP where we see how protected for copyright we are. Right. Second, it tells us that Lex Luthor had to know the identity of Superman to use Lois Lane as bait. And it doesn't make sense. He said that the ambush was arranged to frame Superman, but how could they know that he'd show up in the? You again make this point without realizing that it's public knowledge that Lois Lane and uh, Superman have a connection. Yeah, that doesn't prove anything. Public. Knowledge. They have a... Absolutely. In the middle of the desert. Thank you. And third, for the first in time the in the movie, the it also what does that add to anything though? Yeah, we know, we could figure this out. We didn't need that scene for that. We didn't have to have this whole subplot line for that. Exposes Lex Luthor's deception to both the audience and to Lois Lane. <laughs> to the Wait, as if we Luthor's needed evidence guy? that he's the bad guy. I figured that out with a Jolly Rancher. Yep. No good guy. On the morning that. of Superman's court appearance. <laughs> the metal was developed by a private company. What company? Lex Corp. Lex Luthor. I feel like, because uh, she's like, oh, would you testify? And he's like, no, I don't want to lose my job. And it's like, this is, is this not huge? Yeah. You'd think that, but I guess not. Because, this creates some tension as she rushes off to tell him before he can testify. Sadly, she doesn't get there in time, or he might have been able to stop the explosion. Well, so, but... Uh, telling Clark that it was Lex that set the whole thing up, I don't think that makes him any less apathetic about being framed. Like, that's why he's sad, right? He's like, man, I've been framed for something I didn't do. And it's like, yes, but Lex framed you. It's like... Okay. A little sad. <laughs> but I guess that might have made him, made him look for the bob, but he wouldn't have seen it anyway because it was covered in lead, so that doesn't have any effect on the plotline. Mm. And it also didn't because she couldn't talk to him in time. So yeah, these, these are all sort of not working out. <laughs> a weird sounding bomb, wasn't it? That is a very yeah. strange sounding bomb. It was like a Transformers noise, almost. Mm. Kind of, yeah. Like transform into what a bomb. Was... What was the point of Lex Luthor blowing up Congress? People knew almost immediately afterward about the bomb in Wallace's chair, so if Lex was trying to frame Superman for the explosion, he failed miserably. The only argument someone could make for this is that he was blowing up um, uh, Holly Hunter at the same time as he was throwing the girl on the train. And so he's trying to crush and kill anyone who knows the truth, quote-unquote. But, like, the problem with this is that so many people should know the truth. If not everyone. Yeah. And if you're trying to convince people to hate Superman, if someone tries to kill all these Congress people and Superman, and we know that it definitely wasn't Superman, mm. I feel like we're not going to be very inclined to think Superman is a villain. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, I don't, and I think... I get it. What's the the reason people get confused about this is because of the fact that, like, the idea that he's blowing up all these people to prevent the story from leaking, that it didn't actually happen the way it's been presented, 
I don't even know that that crosses our minds because as viewers, you're like, well, no one believes. Why would anyone believe that Superman did that stuff at the beginning? Why would anyone believe? Like they they would know by now. It's, there's no way that's that's accepted. But uh, I say all this. I don't know what his defense is. Let's find out. What was the point of the blowing up Congress? People knew almost immediately afterward about the bomb in Wallace's chair. So if Lex was trying to frame Superman for the explosion, he failed miserably. Capital Police Here's the idea that Superman didn't know? ...that the suspected bomber is Wallace Vernon Keith. Lex Luthor's plan was not to frame Superman. The explosion at the Capitol achieved two goals. First goal, Lex wants to expose Superman to the public as a fraud. Neither all-powerful... he's not. Also, he's that, not a fraud. That comes under that doesn't... the framing argument. Like, if he's gonna say he didn't want to frame him for anything, but he did want to make it look like he might have been involved, it's like, oh, well, that's just, like, a step away from that same that's idea. That's essentially yeah. the same idea. Yeah. And if the idea is that, like, oh, see, he isn't powerful enough to save every bomb, that just makes him, like, sympathetic, you know? I mean, yeah, like and, and he's, he's seen a victim getting, too. He's seen getting bodies out of the well. I say body, but like, you know, injured people out of the building for a while when it's happening, like after it's happened. Rather, it's like I don't. This would be the kind of thing where if someone like joined this call and they're like, "Do you fucking see that shit with the Capitol building exploded?" Be like, "Oh yeah." It's like, do you think Superman did it? That asshole. Be like, no. He's like, okay, but do you think he was involved? It's like, why? No. Well, because like he didn't why save would he them. That? How would he save them? He didn't know there was a bomb there. Well, he can't be, he, like, is every catastrophe his fault? Because he can't save everyone. And then they're like, well, well, and it's like, wasn't he, yeah, look at this footage. He's saving people from the building. What is your theory here? Why would this be good for him? Why would he want <laughs> this to happen? No idea. Ugh. Put on the tin for. Anyway, if we want to make on? a, if we want to make something about his incompetence, then that, theoretically, the bomb would have gone off regardless of whether or not he's there. Oh man! Because they weren't trying to kill Superman, because it's just a normal bomb. So I guess the thing is, they just wanted like... to surround him with bad press of the bomb explosion. I just, I just love like he wasn't trying to frame him. Shot of was Superman involved? <laughs> <laughs> Nor all. God is all powerful. He cannot be all good. And if he is all good, then he cannot be all powerful. I never cared about this statement. Okay, yeah, it's so it's so so most... Lex Luthor's whole plan here was just to prove to everyone that Superman isn't <clears throat> perfectly capable of saving everyone all the time. Like what? I feel well, like people already so, knew that, and also this just makes Superman more sympathetic. True, and you know what does that better than anything Lex does in this movie? Man of Steel. <gasps> and if you have yeah. characters who are like, you know, that Superman guy, like. He's trying, and then another guy's like, you know, he could be doing a lot fucking better, Jerry. And he's like, okay, jeez. I agree. Yeah. You know, you know and that and that could be the, the that's the discussion on Superman. Why is he doing so shit? And it's like, why is he helping at all? He doesn't have to. He's like, oh fuck you. Yes, he does. And then he's like, no, he doesn't. Nah, slaps. I actually have a question. Uh, is it public knowledge that Superman has X-ray vision? I don't know. Because. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think everyone knows that. Well, they would know right. from the explosion that it was a lead casing, right? That would be something they could tell. Right. Well, why? Probably. Well, I say I guess, that they I mean, literally they... do tell that, so I'm an idiot. But... I get. You know, though, I, I guess that he puts it in a lead casing to get past the uh, the X rays at the Capitol security. So I guess that's fine. I don't think I don't think the general public knows that he has X ray vision. I don't know when that would have come up. Is that how that works? Like, if you go through something and it scans and it just it's like a big blank sort of square. Like, the, 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 does that work that way? That an X-ray, they would just be like, well, well if it's if it's in a like a wheelchair, I guess that is just assumed to be kind of innocuous. I guess. Wait, so he I didn't. They didn't go through like an X-ray machine. They just went through a metal detector, right? Well, like, metal putting detector, putting which... a wheelchair through a metal detector is not going to do. <laughs> much of anything in terms of telling you what's going on there. I, I don't know if he went... Th yeah. It's... Right. Okay. So, so I, then... I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, it, it, it is like a question in my head, but I don't know if it's an actual flaw other than they just, they let him in because he's, he's got a wheelchair. He's a guy who needs a wheelchair. Let him in. It's like, okay. I don't know. Because if they did any kind of scan, surely it would show up as a solid piece in there and they're like, wait, that's unusual for a wheelchair. I would assume, you know? Yeah, but that's assuming yeah, he did I mean, go I guess through that... some kind of scanner. 
Well, I, I guess if they don't put uh, wheelchairs through x-ray machines, they would just go through the metal detectors. So then the question becomes, I guess, that Lex somehow knew about Superman's x-ray vision, which is how he accounted for well, putting the bomb in a lead encasing. Uh, James just highlighted he uses it in Man of Steel in the interview with Lois and talks to the military through the glass, so I guess the military knows. So they know, but okay. I don't think the well, general public Lex knows. Well, hacks into the military's information banks, and he discovers the truth. And he tells everyone? <laughs> Where was that movie? <laughs> well, what you're supposed to do is infer as much as possible that could, could heal the movie. That's what you're supposed to do for Zack. So write it for him, right? Oh, absolutely. The amount of writing we've done this stream <laughs> has been a little, a little intense, I'll, 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 I'll say. Can you be? If Superman isn't seen as the perpetrator of this massively televised explosion that will be talked about in the news media for months to come, he will be seen as the one who wouldn't or couldn't stop it from happening. It, so he he just countered so an he argument. Couldn't. He said if he isn't seen as the perpetrator, he will be seen as someone who couldn't stop it. And it's like, wait, so like if he isn't framed, he'll be screwed over. And when you said it wasn't about framing at all. Also, I don't know. I feel like the fact that he couldn't stop it, I don't know if that makes him, like, untrustworthy. Surely people know. Yeah, it's just thing. he's not able to do everything. But, like, this happened on yeah. a huge scale in Man of Steel. He, there's loads of people he didn't save. Like, why would this be new? Yeah. Like, That's we're, true. We're talking yeah. about, like, oh, he saved, you know, billions, and it cost possibly 100,000 lives or something. It's like, damn. In the next film, he didn't save anybody in the Capitol building and about 50 people died. You're like, oh. I, I mean... I guess that would be the more outrageous thing is that 50 could people be dying that instead way. of a... <laughs> but at the same time, once you get the details, which we would all get eventually, it's like, I mean, what do you expect him to do? It was an inferno instantly. Like, he can't... He doesn't have the capacity to do anything about that. I yeah. guess that maybe the uh it could be somewhat more outrageous given that it happened in the capital with all of congress in there so wouldn't the outrage be... be directed at whoever may have done that and then it turns out it was the wheelchair guy and they're like oh the wheelchair guy did it fuck that guy it wouldn't be fuck superman like what exactly can he do yeah because superman is right. among the people who are victimized by it he just survived you know what i mean like it would make him more sympathetic i think and then one press conference where he's like i came here to speak on the events of you know wherever that place was and uh i respect the system and I, I want to you know make sure that you guys understand where i'm coming from unfortunately it seems someone took this opportunity to do something horrible tragic and i wish i could have stopped it but there's nothing i could do just want to highlight yeah. got got absolutely jets uh jordan crow saying i'm in a wheelchair we get patted down and swabbed for bomb residue we do not go through metal detectors <laughs> so this hmm. this plan really shouldn't have worked this this wheelchair yeah. shouldn't have gone and through the, the capital security. Well, wait, yeah. When, what would they do? Because he said pat it down and swab it. Let's pretend for a second that there's nothing on him and they've protected him from a potential swab. Like what? What do you? What would they do with a chair that's got this whole bulk at the bottom of it that you can't access? Do they leave it or do they go? Hmm, that looks well, a little. Suspicious. Someone else in the comments said sometimes what they'll do is they'll have wheelchairs there and they'll like well, so, train like take someone and put them in one of their chairs. Yeah, like they lock up your one to take back later, and you have to use like a company, a, a special one designed, a safe one, if you will. I mean, I don't know how the capital specifically does yeah. it, but. Hmm. Yeah, you, we just assume there would be some kind of security to stop something like that from happening, but I don't know. That's. I didn't see it, long. Standing right there, and I didn't see it. Clark, there are people Clark... behind like Clark, Let's investigate why it is that you, you know, didn't see it. Well, and then, like, is there anything that you can't see through? Oh my God, a, a wheelchair made out of lead. How about that? I wonder if they found that in the wreckage. Oh my God, someone's trying to set you up. How about no, that? No, I'm a, the... Oh, I, we should contact a journalist. Oh wait. The point of this scene is to make him sad, so he goes and visits his snow dad. No yeah. doubt tells him about the drowned horses that made him give up on the idea of good. Do you remember that? That was a great scene. Fucking, <laughs> he basically says, like, there was a problem. I tried to solve it, and it cost more lives. Like, oh, I see. And then he says, when I met your mother, she, like, gave me faith that there's still good in the world. It's like, what? <laughs> wow, you're a... What? Um... <laughs> I... All right. Uh, you. Ugh. 
And you see, Lois Aye. is the equivalent. She's the one that reminds Superman this is still good in the worst. It's like, you guys have not earned any of this. You just say that it's true. I didn't say it looking. Second goal. This right here. This face. That explosion is for him. But it did not take much to push him over. Yeah, but we've already been over how oh, a rational okay. person would not be angry at Superman for this. And yet, the world's greatest detective is a fucking moron. That's how it always works. <laughs> Hooray, we did it. It's always bugged me. The, there's so much information about Superman that uh, Bruce apparently doesn't give a shit about. Keep in mind that this is his point. His his whole argument is, well, Batman, like this explosion is for Batman, the world's greatest detective. Batman is supposed to look at this explosion and figure that Superman did when everyone else goes, no, he didn't do it. He obviously didn't do it. Yeah, the world's best detective would be like, well, that wouldn't make any sense if he did it. What is the motive? This is the thing, and it would be interesting for him to sort it all out, to p collect as much information as he can, to go to the site, maybe even in the Batman outfit, and look around and try and figure out what's going on. <sighs> yeah, we should call the world's greatest detective Batman to come and see what he comes up with. You yeah. Over oh, actually, red notes. Big bang, you let your family die! The explosion makes Wallace Keefe look like a crazy suicide bomber who wanted revenge on Superman for what happened in Metropolis. This pushes Bruce Wayne further over the edge by adding Wallace Keefe Bruce. and all of Congress to the death toll- Can you not tell by your own graph that this is fucking insane? Look at this. It's nice and simple. <laughs> it's, it's a journey. How does it disgrace Superman if you just said the point isn't to frame Superman for this? Like how, uh, why is Batman the only person who thinks Superman is responsible? And then all of the information- he's the world's greatest detective. All the information points the other way. Any rational person would be like, man, that sucks, what happened. Not like Superman could have done anything about it. Especially if the information about the lead comes out, then there's just nothing. Oh yeah, you'd think that, you know, with Lois being so close to Superman and her being a, you know, seasoned journalist reporter, with a personal interest in this, you think they'd get to the bottom of it pretty quickly? Oh, but I wow. guess they just don't, so okay then. ...all that Superman is supposedly responsible for. And Batman sees himself as responsible for stopping Superman, so you can bet he feels responsible for this. Uh, what? He should not at Someone all. decided to blow up the Capitol building because of Superman's possible negligence in the first movie. We never really know exactly what he's mad at outside of he can't piss standing up and his wife left him. Because, <laughs> yeah, so like the idea that it's like, I'm responsible because I haven't stopped the guy who was responsible for dropping something on another guy whose legs broke when he was saving the world, and so he blew up the Capitol building. You see, the causal chain, it all leads back to me. It's like, what? There you go. That's insane. This is the event to break into LexCorp, steal the kryptonite, and go after Superman. So that's a win-win-win. Batman steals the kryptonite from Lex Luthor off camera. That would have been a much more interesting thing to watch. I mean, yeah. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would have been that would have been nifty to watch. How about you cut out the murder Batmobile sequence? Cut that out from the movie because oh, okay. it's completely unnecessary. So and cool. oh, I feel I think we really, really needed to see how if, much that Batmobile just but wait, fuck wait, shit up. Remember what, what this fight scene they're talking about could be around, I don't know, three minutes, three, three minutes, 15 seconds, maybe. Where could we cut yeah. three minutes and 15 seconds from this movie to make room? Hmm. Something that would represent oh, like, you know, a small percentage, something that maybe doesn't add anything to the plot and yet still exists. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, you're going to have to narrow that down. Uh, you know what? The whole movie. There's a lot of okay. scenes in the movie like that. <laughs> the whole yeah. movie doesn't add to the plot, okay? Do you have even the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> <laughs> Step in. Uh, well, now, this argument is where I catch people being intellectually dishonest with me. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. oh. Tell, us, tell us about that. Oh, not good. This has been an interesting EFAP. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, Really, really interesting hearing him say this after that conversation, after the little detour we went on. Yep. <laughs> this argument also tend to dislike Zack Snyder films, especially the Don't action shit. scenes. Yeah, These hack. people tend to complain about- He doesn't make good films. What do you blame them for? <laughs> yeah, who are you talking about? You're <laughs> just like referring to an amorphous really them.
well, we just said that we would like it, but if he actually said, like, wait, you think the film is bad because it doesn't show it? I'd be like, no, I just, the film's terrible. No, I just <laughs> think it would have been more interesting than the shit we got. Yeah. Hey, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to compliment this movie for just a tiny little bit. The warehouse fight is great. I really like the warehouse okay. fight. Uh, so if we had a second Batman action sequence that was like the warehouse fight, I'd be even happier. Theo, there we go. What do you think of the Batman warehouse fight? Han? It's not good enough. <laughs> well, it's the best How did it make you feel? It didn't really get any kind of response out of me. No. It's fine. There you go. Done and done. Yeah about the Reds action scenes in this film incessantly. So let's be honest with ourselves. You do not oh, want to see try. Batman hospitalize a bunch more guys in another Zack Snyder. Yes, I do. Oh, I so do. That sounds like it's a lot of money. See, that sounds like it's a the, blast. What I expected what from him was to say, <laughs> this argument is pretty subjective, so I'm just going to move on. Instead, he said, you don't want that. Thanks. Yeah, I think I know what okay. I want. This is the one good scene in the movie. This is the one scene in the movie where I'm like genuinely enjoying this movie unironically, even with Batman like killing people with throwing crates at their heads and seeing their brain matter splatter on the wall behind them as their body slides down lifelessly to the floor. I I unironically like this stuff. Give me more of it. That's all. That's all. It's it's so obnoxious too, because I bet he would defend that scene earlier. Now when it's like, well, what if we have this other scene? It's like you don't really want that. <laughs> No, oh, yeah. you know, how, about, how about we go with two more scenes like this? How about three? How about an entire movie like this? this yeah, that'd just, be just cool. a series of short films of Batman being cool with his gadgets and his punching bad guys. That sounds like a cool thing. Yeah, if you can have choreography that's consistently this good, go for it. This was a great action sequence. It was shot well, choreographed well. I mean, the stakes in the story surrounding it were shit, but yeah. everything else, like just in a vacuum, this scene is, is nice. It's a, it's a good scene. You're just looking for more things to complain about. Why would you go that direction, dude? Why would you just... You You're just looking for more this. things to complain about. Ah, horrible look. I Ugh. wish we had a cool action scene. You're just looking for things to complain about. <laughs> Such a big song. <laughs> This would be like in terms of battle strategy, he has some weird choices. He's like, my first defense is that it's not really that long. You're like, you should just don't, just don't put that. In. It's like my Whoa. second defense is you Whoa. don't actually feel your feelings. You're like, okay, Mahler, Mahler. I guess I didn't. Skyler, Skyler Presley and Jet's like, you don't want substance. You want three and a half minutes of filler. What do you call the Batmobile sequence? I mean. Hmm. Uh, the, the so where you're wrong about the Batmobile sequence <laughs> is that uh, Batman needs the kryptonite and he attaches the homing thing on it and that leads to him getting it later so yeah mm. there you go oh okay there you go that's awesome. it was worthwhile for all of that to watch everything blow up and you'd complete the missing scene just as vehemently and now all the preparation is complete so all Lex has to do is kid kidnap Martha personal win <laughs> Personal what? win? Fuck you, that? Martha. So you just have a problem with Martha? He has a well, you you, you Martha. split up your wins into business and personal. Yeah. I like the little faded out crying super <laughs> next to it. Yeah. <laughs> so this personal win thing, it refers to when he was in the supermarket once, she cut in line, and he was like, really? Hmm. Well. Mm. You, think I, you're, you think because you're just... Mm. I'm gonna get my big graph out, and I'm, I'm gonna Lex make Luther. a little slot for you, whoever you are. Ba Martha, Martha. Okay. Oh my God, you're you're that Martha. Martha. Shit. Save Martha. Now, the Kent to lure Superman. By the way, this is why people say that Zack Snyder's films are genius. You you have people making these graphs, and it's like this is how complex a plan is, and how incredible it is, and how it accounts for everything. Except it's the opposite, and it's really dumb, and it makes absolutely all zero of it sense, falls apart and it's torn at each apart. Portion, and it takes seven hours and fourteen minutes to go through all of it. Okay, including comments from the creators saying it's all bullshit. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we're doing a service, okay? Now and I'm into fighting Batman to save Martha. Bring me the head of the bat. If Batman wins, GG easy. If Superman wins, then he no. becomes a disgraced murderer. And no. no, if Batman what? wins, then like. Well, then you got what Doomsday to deal with. What do you think? You think Batman's with? just going to be okay with this? And then you got Doomsday to deal with. Batman's not exactly like 
not the biggest thing. Batman's not exactly the most popular guy around right now, I imagine. Well, do yeah, Batman, Batman doesn't care nearly as much about his him. image. He will fuck you up. And plus, he's going to find out things. And how, how are you going to know what Superman tells Batman? What if Superman did the obvious thing and he's like, hey, this, this is what happened. What are we going to do? Well, imagine for a moment that he goes onto a show for an interview and they're like, you killed yeah. Batman? He goes, yep. And they go, why? Yep. And he goes, oh, he tried to kill me. <laughs> like, wait. He so like, also, one here's one, the uh, story surrounding why this engagement yeah. ever took place. Yep. Nobody ever does that in these movies. Oh, by the way, uh, in his prior two videos, I think it's in the Martha one, um, he argues that the fight scene is fantastic, and like none of no, it's, oh, it's all in line no. with the characters, too. Oh. He also says, um, I would play it, but I just, we need to, this needs to end. Uh, but he says that uh, <laughs> people... I can't keep going on like this. He says that people complain they have no ideological difference at the core that they're fighting over, and he says, well, yes, they don't have to. What? Hey. It's just like, oh. Hey. Is that what people complain about? And, uh, well, I, I think some people do, but the fact is he basically goes on to I say, like, people. no, their fight doesn't have, like, they have two modes of operation. They're fighting because they think that, that theirs is the better one. He literally was like, they fight because they're very angry at each other. And, oh, like, okay. Oh. Until they're not. And then um, they're on the same side again. He, he argues that all of the throws that Superman does to him in the beginning while not talking is to prove to Batman that he's stronger than him and that he needs to listen to him. Listen to what? him do what? He's gonna kill him. So Superman picks him up and throws him and then picks him up and throws him and then drags him through a whole building and then throws him down because that's his way of showing Bruce that he will die if he continues to fight and so he must listen to what he's gonna say next. Like, you see, that was... Oh, where... What? what he's arguing, That's quite the inference. Yeah, what he's arguing is that all of that is in favor of the conversation. Like, it, it's good that he did that, because the conversation can now happen. Unfortunately, Batman uses a kryptonite grenade, and that spoils it. So no. all that time with uh, the miniguns hidden and the metal bins... Oh, he and tried. The, he says that the, a lot of people that's... missed this, that he tried. And he plays the clip where he goes, I was wrong. Lex, and then ching, and he goes, Poof, and he's like, you see, he tried, and then he says, Batman's not interested, and it's like, yeah, he should be, though. He should be very interested, and Superman should be extremely insistent on getting this information out, not just, I tried sort of once, and I got interrupted, well, so I guess it's, we'll remember, it it's consistent. Go ahead. It, it's consistent with Superman's character. He tries one time, it doesn't work, and he just stops trying again. That's just that's just how it works. Oh yeah, Superman. I guess that's, that's true. That's his yeah. rule. Well, this is the fundamental, Sounds right? Like it's him. like he has to throw him again, uh, throw him, throw him again, then throw him through a building to then tell him you need to listen to me. It's like maybe if he just spoke, I'll just do that. <laughs> yeah, you just used your mouth to <laughs> say the words. You know, uh... it's like. Superman knows that uh, Batman is Bruce Wayne. He calls him Bruce from the beginning of the fight. He uh, he deliberately says save Martha because he knows that that's, that name is a trigger word for Bruce. Why not go, hey, my mother, Martha, is in oh. danger. Why doesn't he open with save Martha? Um, his rationale for the Martha thing is that you guys aren't going to believe me. I'm going to say it and you're not even going to believe me that this is the argument. I'm just remembering. Oh boy. So, he says, the reason Superman doesn't say save my mum is because Superman knows that that wouldn't interest Bruce. Because Bruce said, I bet your parents told you that, you know, blah blah blah, my parents died in a gutter. He uses that clip and he says, this is how Superman knows that if he appeals to the fact that it's his mum, that won't work. What he'll do instead is what? appeal to a name, a person, and it'll make Bruce realize, oh my goodness, a human being is in trouble. This is oh. pathetic. And then... Uh, it's when, actually pathetic. And then he's like, but who is this person? Batman's like, who is Martha? Who is this person? Then Lois explains, wait. it's his mother. And that, of course, makes so, him stop. And it's like, wait, 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 but you said, wait. So <laughs> Bruce Wayne, so Batman's not going to care about uh, someone named Martha. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be concerned by a person being in danger, which yes. doesn't change anything but it's it as long as superman says hey my mother's in danger 
<laughs> Remember, <laughs> Batman only stops the choice to- he's about to kill him, and then he reconsiders killing him on Martha. He only drops the spear when he's told it's his mother. So he's wrong. Save the dream. Yeah, he's wrong. He's just mm -hmm. wrong. And by the way, go check out the Martha video, guys. I'm not lying. That's the argument. I was very tempted to play that as well, but fuck me. We're... I think this is the end of our coverage of Twin Perfect, okay? Like, <laughs> it's not happening. I mean, maybe he'd, maybe he'd concede that point, but ultimately he doesn't really care. So um, it's fine. Yeah. He, he, if you brought this up to me, you'd just be like, well, it's more so the point of the seat. And he's like, okay, I need, that. <laughs> I need to eject from this country. Yeah, cool. Love uh... And yeah, I guess the only other thing to say would be that um, th these these videos these are in the category of videos that were pitched to me as very good defenses of the DCEU. Like, what do you guys oh, think? Oh no! Good job. Guys. I think they were. I think they were having a giggle. They really. <laughs> I think they were setting bad. you up. Like these are. I think they were. They were. These are shocking. Also, this around. is this guy. His video on Twin Peaks is the video I get recommended anytime I criticize anything about Twin. Which is good in general, but has some flaws. Anytime I point out any flaws, they're like, oh, you have to watch this video by this guy, Twin Perfect. He explains everything and it all makes total sense. If it is anything at <laughs> all like these videos, it sounds like a dumpster fire. <sighs> well, people have said he explains uh, Lex's fucking motivations. Like, no, he doesn't. He just writes this crazy no, network doesn't. of options that somehow account for every single variable that results in either Superman dying or Superman being disgraced, which is his only interest. It has nothing to do with killing him. It hurts. Yeah. yeah. It does hurt, doesn't it? It does. It makes you just... This makes me appreciate, like, the Major Lee debate and the Yezin debate. Because, like, they were... Like, you know, I it's hard to say. I feel like there was something there to latch on to and go after. Yeah, they cared about getting the references And this right. is just, like, ramblings of a lunatic. Um, well, as but, we now know, yeah, the references don't matter. Because the actual content of the story doesn't matter. Yeah, when we can't right. do anything with a person like that, unfortunately. We, we don't have that kind of power, okay? EFAB chat. <laughs> when someone says references to bad, like, uh, you're in a different realm to us at that point. Um, but yeah, uh, Major Lee did care about getting references accurate. Um, remember Yezin said that there was plenty of evidence for Daenerys going insane, and he cited that she walked into a fire when she knew she was immune to fire. That was good evidence. <laughs> it's a good reference. Ren's reviews cared a lot more about references. He did indeed. Especially did when indeed. it came to the mask making device. Reputation has delivered a killing blow. And then Lex Luthor can use Doomsday to kill Superman afterward. What? GG. <laughs> but then you have Doomsday. Why well, do you never account for the fact that you still have Doomsday? Doomsday is a bit of a problem. I, I don't know. Destroying a bomb with a nuke. <laughs> like, you, but I don't understand. Oh, we destroy, super, destroy Superman's reputation, then kill him. It's like, oh, all right. Well, wow. <laughs> good job. Gosh. And then what does what Doomsday happens, do wait, after wait, that? What's your plan? What happens? After Doomsday? What happens if Superman kills Doomsday, the monster that could have destroyed the whole world? Then suddenly Superman's reputation is looking pretty good. Oh. Everyone's gonna be like, "Yay! Thank you, Superman, for saving us from Doomsday." You did it! Wow! Yeah, all these monsters, man. Who's behind this? And we gotta keep Superman around. He's what, useful. Why is, it a, why is it a foregone conclusion that Doomsday will kill Superman? As we that's see, exactly the point. That's exactly my point. No, I know that's, that that's what I'm Superman saying. I'm saying, Doomsday. yeah, that's what I'm getting at. It's like, <laughs> oh so Superman God. wins, his reputation is tarnished. Then he kills Doomsday, thus saving the world. Oh, <laughs> and his reputation. And now you're going to jail. <laughs> it's a foregone conclusion because then you you're going to go to jail either way. Oh yeah, it's yeah. supposed to kill Superman. This is the kind of guy <laughs> who would chop your arm off to rescue from an infected finger. Be like, that's the way to do it. And you're like, but then I don't have an no arm. Finger? Like, no finger. No oh. finger infection. <laughs> I can no arm. You. No finger infection. Well, if would it matter if you don't have an arm if you were dead? That's the question he would ask you. It's like, that's a solution, mm. right? If I kill you, you won't be upset that you don't have an arm. You're like, oh my god. But it's just an ingrown toenail. I think that's toenail. more it's interesting, just an, yeah. you know? You know, it's just itchy. You don't need to chop it off. It's just a boo-boo. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> it won't itch for long. You've lost. I don't know how to lose. If anything goes... <laughs> Imagine using that clip to support <laughs> this fucking network. <laughs> I don't know how to lose. <laughs> he literally well, loses. Well, that solves it. Is wrong. For example, if Superman kills Lex upon learning of his mother's abduction. Ooh.
Where is she? I don't know. I would not let them tell me. Yeah, yeah like. And he's yeah. In, the, the whole motivation was like, you can't. If you kill me, she dies. You can't kill me. He he. Well, then Doomsday is a ticking time bomb waiting to bust out and kill the whole world. Thank you for agreeing. Wait a minute. I thought earlier you said but... that Doomsday oh. only comes out because Lex activates him. Yep. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> well, no. Hey, whoa. He <laughs> needs bullshit. He needs the opposite argument right now. So shut up. He needs. He needs to use. None of this <laughs> even <laughs> like because the intent of Zack Snyder was that this is exactly how the movie is. So who gives a shit? This is. A... Well, what was the point of that scene? <laughs> Wait, which one? <laughs> all of it. What was the, the point movie? of this network? Yeah, all, all, all of them. them. All. Of... Why are we here? The Why point of the movie here? was for you to think it's it was a good suffer. movie. So I just want to talk I about suffering. He intended. This is according to successful. Plato's Republic. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if, if you were in, like, the call again, it'd be like, so, you agree, right, that Doomsday wasn't just gonna hatch, it had to be orchestrated by Lex, because, obviously, if Superman did kill the bat, then he wouldn't want to just release Doomsday, right? And, he, and he's just like, um, um, and it's like, because if Batman killed Superman, you'd have Doomsday, and that just ruins everything. It's like, y yeah, yeah, he's on, like, a, he's on, like, a button thing, you gotta press it. But if Superman kills Lex... That would release Doomsday, and he would he would kill him like on a timer. And he's like, yes. You'd just be looking at his avatar, waiting for him to connect those two dots. He's just like, no, that seems about. <laughs> I don't, I don't, what? What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's right. in, 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 you there? <laughs> yeah. Either way, this doesn't work out. Is either way, it doesn't work. Some horrible calamity befalls the world, or you get found out and discovered and destroyed, or yeah, Batman the... investigates and sees what's going on. And then that gets revealed to the world. There's just no way that this all works out. You've you've exposed yourself too boldly. Yeah, it's catastrophic. It fails at every level, and like every outcome will give him something that he doesn't want. So great Brilliant. plan. And yeah. Oh, he's gonna zoom out. There it is. A complete map of Lex Luthor's plan, illustrating about oh, nine. Wow. Se <laughs> no maps are like, I. That's kind of an insult to the like it a map. An insult you know. To maps. Yeah. Is, is he about to say, this is just different ways. Just spinning in their grave. Ugh. Separate wind conditions for Lex Luthor. Nine separate wind conditions for Lex Luthor. You hit it here. <laughs> Nine. Wait. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think he's counting the little grayed out one. It's that is the still wind. eight, though, isn't it? It's unfortunate that Lex didn't account for the thing which actually fucked him over. I can't think of a way Lex wins at all that makes consistent sense. Wait, am I retarded? Is is there more than... Wait, no, yeah, wait. There's eight. There's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight <laughs> faces. Map. But, well, <laughs> Unless... what's he counting? What Would he count some, some of these as... What? Would it, would it maybe account for, like, a, a, a different way of getting to the same outcome would be another way? Oh. Uh... Um, these aren't win conditions. The win condition is involve you actually winning for starters. Or disgraced. <laughs> Wait, someone summed it up stuff. really well. They said Lex's plan outcomes. Number one, Superman is mad at him. Or two, Batman is mad at him. Number three, Doomsday is mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> just feel like there's no way it's not one of those. And part four, uh, question mark, part five, profit. Yeah. <laughs> profit? Yeah. <laughs> Lolly can't count because it was his intention to say eight, but he said nine. I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm assuming it might just be a flub, or if there's something I'm missing about this. Map of Lex Luthor's plan, illustrating about nine separate win conditions for Lex Luthor. All roads leading nine? to do. Oh, about nine? eight is about nine. About nine. Eight is a. It's about <laughs> nine. <laughs> about nine. <laughs> I mean, to be Why? fair, one is. One is. It's about two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that Wednesday. works. Even after Doomsday is defeated and Lex Luthor's master plan fails, he still has one final trick up his sleeve. But he had nine one... ways to succeed. One final <laughs> trick up his sleeve? Wait, what is what is he referring to? Like, calling Darkseid? Because, I, you know what, I'm so far gone on this, I want him to say, he, he called up Darkseid, he's like, can you kill Superman, please? If you happen to destroy Earth in the <laughs> also process, the world. that's fine. <laughs> so I just gotta get rid of this Superman guy. He still has one final trick up his sleeve. One last backup plan to a backup plan oh, to a backup wow. plan. In Lex Luthor's use of the ship's computer, he learned about other aliens that want to conquer Earth. 
Now, it could have been an exchange for power, or it sure. could have been some nihilistic desire to destroy the so world the in impotent rage. Nihilistic desire guess... to destroy the world in impotent rage. What? Oh my, so well, I guess. Where did that come from? When? When was that ever in the film? When? Well, it's uh, just like the scene where he Mr. paid Reed all the people to do the things. What the fuck? Where did this come from? He paid himself off to think about, you know. Do you remember when this video was arguing all those different motivations from things that aren't even the movie, and now he's just like, yeah, he could just want to destroy the world. Like, what? <laughs> well, I mean, at least you didn't have to make up a scene for that to happen. You're just saying maybe he wants the world to die. What that's a great, sort of, wouldn't, that's quaint. What a great motivation. His plan he, explained. He maybe, might want to destroy the world, I'm not sure. He's <laughs> on the world. Maybe, maybe <laughs> let Superman just do his thing if you think he's so bad. If he lined all this out to me at the beginning of BVS's <laughs> events, I'd be like, um, maybe just, yeah, just don't do anything at all, you know? Seems like everything you do makes everything worse. Like, there's just nothing you do that, that improves the situation. Yeah, because like the status you... quo that's bad about this, you know, it, if what you don't like about the world, it isn't because of Superman. Yeah, it was bad before he got here. Your yeah, dad and if you're talking you about before he was doing anything about saving the world. Yeah, story. if anything, Superman is just he's he's sort of doing all right, you know, in in his in his off time fighting interstellar demons and galactic enemies. He's you know he's saving people from mudslides and stuff. Just. Um... That's pretty, that's nice. Meme that's repository good. Said, just let did, him keep doing that. Did he just argue that Lex, I don't want to, uh, I want to destroy powerful people, Luther intentionally called Darkseid to destroy humanity? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Fuck, yeah. He did yeah, we were that. focusing on all of the other insane problems, <laughs> but that is a really good point. Dark Absolutely. That is a big one. He oh, called fuck. the person that he, if Darkseid was on Earth from the he beginning, he like would have wanted to kill Darkseid. the most powerful person in the universe. He, I mean, Darkseid is literally a new god, and you fucking hate god, so why the hell did you call him? <laughs> he called it's a like, literal god. It's, <laughs> it's like summoning Yahweh hey, to dad, destroy me, Zeus, because you can't stand a god that is powerful as Zeus existing. It's, it's, none of this has ever made any sense. They're but playing I'm glad. champed up with, and just, with the gods. <laughs> just to, to tie it all full circle, at the end of the day... He says a whole bunch of shit, but what he really wants is just to stir the pot and see. Like, that's the only thing that makes any sense. Yeah, like, he's mixing honestly. the stew and he randomly pulls it up to be like, is this, is this something? No? Okay, mix, mix, mix. <laughs> Pull back up. It's like, this looks like something. He's this just is like, I plan. don't know. Fuck, what if I summoned another god to destroy the world? Let's see what happens. By the way, fuck it. I'll you tell you what, though. This shit, it really makes you appreciate Vulture and Zemo and Thanos. Oh, yeah, fuck yes. yeah. Fuck yeah. The DCEU um, villains. Yeah, I get. Yeah, the fact that. what What's his name? Steppenwolf. That's such a dumb name. <laughs> He's kind of probably the best. Wait, wait, yeah. So, wait, it's insane. One thing. Um, is. Who's the worst currently? Is it Lex now? Um. I. Because uh, this has is been. Lex or Zod? Because we. Zod. Is Lex and Zod might Zod? be drawn for Ooh, worse. Because Lex, Lex is for Zod? fucking crazy. Is. Like, Should nothing Lex does makes any fucking sense. Yeah, let's yeah, let's discuss. Should, yeah, the, we can discuss the point, who is worse. With people defending the movie, are saying he might want to destroy the world. I'm not sure. Is that? Is, hmm. But is that? So they're worse both than really. You've taken my soul from me, so I'm gonna kill everyone. Well, that's not like like the problems with Zod are just the movie. You know, like every decision he makes is all really stupid. We've been over it. It's just I, I'm kind of amazed by it right now. Um. Yeah, I, it's gonna be really tough to choose between Lex and Zod. I'm trying to think of like, okay, let's go this way. What is? Let's go with the the, the highest peak in the lowest valley. All right, all right for these guys. So yeah. if we're gonna compare, because they're both just awful mush, so we gotta go for the extremes, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. What is the best that these? Uh, the best moment for these characters? What's the best that they do? The, this is not a compliment. So start, with, Zod start with Zod. Does is right. yell. He goes, on a farm, so the, Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Zod wants... So what is... Originally, Zod gets imprisoned, right? He's still sort of villainous, kind of, at that point. So what, like, Zod's original motivation to kill the council is because they're going to get the planet exploded? Yeah, and he doesn't want that to happen. And he also wants to... And he to doesn't want that. So good on him. Good, good on him yeah. for not wanting to be on an exploding planet. Yeah. Good job, up. Zod. Yeah. 
our so bow, he didn't our, want our the world bow to is large is right saying. now. All right. Huh? So I'm going to try and provide something. He didn't something. maybe want the world to end. <laughs> I'm going to try and provide something of relative equal value. I don't know if it'll be put above or below or on, on point, but okay. Lex right. was beaten by his father, and thus he hates powerful people. So he became a powerful person? I don't fucking know. So he gets look, it's the best I could do. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. So the highest high for Zod. Could... What's okay. the um, best that Zod is? Like, when he's at the pe at his peak good villain, what would be I, the, the highest high that he, Zod kills, gets to? He kills Jor-El with his tentacle blade. That's what he does. I actually have I think a it's submission. Just a spike I think it might his be... Gauntlet. I think it might be the you know that very first scene where like has the little coup against the council. That might he walks be the best in, thing kills one of them to show him that he means business, and then the rest of them he's gonna have. I'm not tried. gonna let you destroy the planet and destroy our civilization. I'm taking over. That's okay. Fi that's fine. yeah. World yeah, building aside, I mean, I that's fine. Him. I would say either yeah, that or the coup scene, by a general. Yeah. Well, I think I told you before. Was I just kind of liked it because it was like a glimpse of what they could have done when he's like. Sub Zod, and then the girl's like, That's General Zod, and he goes, Oh, we can forgive failures of decorum. Cal is new to yes, here, but... like obviously he wouldn't know about that, yes. so it would be unreasonable for you to be such a fucking bitch, Karen, all the goddamn yep. time. What is it with you? A show of respect, no one... <laughs> but, but maintaining humility and just trying to be welcoming yeah. while also strong. And it's just like, That could have been Zod, that would have been neat. That could have been, yeah. But this is the Bro, outlier not. for him. No, of course it's not him. So that's the, is that the, like, because I, I don't have any ideas for Lex. Yeah, that's a pretty reasonable one. Yeah, I'd say those two are, yeah, that's not bad. Like, does so anyone best, here have anything good to say about Lex? The best thing you can say for Lex, Lex is, is that, best. that really at the end of the, at the end of the day, his only motivation caused chaos. Because so he, I would he, say all that stated motivation, motivation is nonsense. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if we have the scene where Lex is like, yeah, we should have a silver bullet for space aliens, which is a reasonable thing. Oh, that's that true. He, he does say has, that, yeah. So he has that one scene. So that's like... That's something someone yeah, would say. Yeah, that's a good idea. And it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, that would be a thing someone would say. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you have to understand the bar But was that all just bullshit in service right for something else? Well, this guy right, so let's say that, that was wasn't the his best motivation, thing he did, right? He said that this wasn't his motivation. That was just a fake motivation. <laughs> it's like, oh no. <laughs> but I thought he did believe it. It's so confusing. If we pretend that's who he actually was and that scene works on its own, that might be the high for him. Both I'm, of these I'm are super fine. early on. Yeah, I'm I'm fine in believe it's like Max Lord, he's best early on. But I'm I'm fine with the idea that he truly believed that's a good idea. Like because it is. Yeah. It just also fulfills his personal goals of I could use this to kill Superman. Well, of course, we have to assume that he wants to kill Superman, which I think he, uh, he clearly does. Um, <laughs> Sometimes. Despite what this movie thing is trying to say, but it makes so what's sense. what's the lowest of both? Oh, oh fuck. Uh... <laughs> so the lowest of... Okay, let's go back to in order. Lowest of Zod. World engineering the earth that's probably like the most cataclysmically stupid decision he could make for not only his team but also the team that is clearly against him and their powerful alien that's going to destroy him for doing it yeah i would i would say that if it is zod's he really wants to protect those embryos so think. <laughs> his lowest low his lowest low should be centered around that i feel in a in an event that directly ties to its potential destruction that he like that, so that waging war in, on or... earth and terraforming earth is a big thing I just yeah, I feel like that's um, the umbrella, guess, right? In that department. His, his decision to engage in terraforming Earth against all reason. Yeah, when he knows that Superman can fly into a ship and blow it up at any point. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's I, not I just can Superman low. beat me? Superman could just fly through the ship and punch it and I'm it blows up. I'm assuming we all now agree you're that the equivalent low point will be creating Doomsday. What a fucking stupid decision. Yeah. Yeah, I don't um, how do we um I but guess since I'm I more would... confused about uh, Lex Luthor's goals, it doesn't seem as directly contradictory. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean like, like this space to be wiggle really obvious. will create a huge yeah. network of reasoning for why he did everything? <laughs> well, well, Zod specifically says in his Avatar beach scene 
what his point is and his motivation is, and he just spills it all out for everyone. So I feel like we know, we understand him more. But is that that makes his plan yeah. worse? That's yeah. I think I get what you mean. It's like the fact that we know what his plan is means that we know how it's contradictory. Whereas with Lex, we got no fucking clue. Yeah, with Lex is a roulette. So wheel, which which one is Lex worse? Lex can't as contradict himself. I think that is worse. <laughs> Well, I would say at the same time, he can't contradict himself and he only contradicts himself. Like, it's happening at the yeah, same time. Yeah, yeah. It's just all over the place. Yeah. So, what they're both really bad. What a fucking retarded series this is. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just mark them both yeah. as the worst. It's, it's, it's possible. Yeah, maybe it's a tie. <laughs> Should we just toss a coin? A tie for the worst. Well, at that point, you probably want to right, do a poll for chat. Should, right? we, should we have chat vote? Well, and break the tie? No, I'm going to be honest. Chat, who's pool. worse? Z will... or L? I'm pretty straw sure. Straw pull. Straw pull. I'm straw pretty... pull. Go on, on Mahler. What I'm is it? I'm pretty sure that um, chat have a bias towards Zod in a good way because everyone mm. hates this Lex and a lot of people really like yeah, this Zod. Yeah, so that's kind of bullshit. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's unfair because you guys still aren't. Is it? Man, it still sucks, you know? <laughs> Some of you, anyway. Well, it's, it's as unfair uh, as it'll ever be, right? It's just asking chat, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, guess I, so. I would be curious. Yeah, we could ask. Yeah, we 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 can we can Looking, humor them. Wait, so you know, the old chat worked. over there getting way more like, L's than we are Zs. Yeah, I don't know. Oh man, yeah, like... it looks like yeah, it looks like the L's have it. Lex is worse. Yeah, I'm not sure myself. They're both. Said that's Zod the thing. They're both terrible. Just like that. That's kind of true. <laughs> Sounds fucking funny. Yeah, well, in personal enjoyment, I would prefer Zod. Oh, absolutely, because he's not hilarious. even close. I actually, but just in terms like of writing, I kind of, in a weird way, I think I enjoy Lex, but in a meta sense, hmm. like it's bizarre I, to watch, you know. I really yeah. find Zod humorous. Just the on, I think I think he, might he be is the funny. That have helped him out the farm, <laughs> like that's just that's good memes. <laughs> and Michael Shannon he did is, set up. He did time. set up Krypton having its chance, I've so seen, he gets the assist for that. I've seen several people say like, <laughs> seen... Zod is funny, Lex is cringe. That is true. I've seen Zod a lot is of that. Cringe, like at least Zod Lex is, is very fun to watch. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, like, the, uh, do we? What do we? Do? We should probably do it by panel, right? Like we usually vote and oh, wait, let's we... vote. Yeah. Um, Go for it. Yeah. And I, we're gonna have to allow. Uh, I was gonna say abstaining or drawing, I guess, but um, I think I would gun for um, I, I don't, I'm honestly tied because I was about to say like this the thing we've been over. It's like, well, Zod clearly makes less sense because he's so clear on what he wanted to do and he's gone against it completely. But it's like, yeah, but Lex is a jumbled mess of of just nothing. It's just it's nonsense. So I think I'm just gonna ab abstain. It's up to uh... you guys. Hmm. Wait, so do we just go from left to right then? Captain? Sure. That'd be For which is worse? Which villain's worse? Yeah, which is worse. That's what we're, yeah. Uh, uh... Oh, also, before you go, I think that, um, because we're, we're going by diving scores here in a way, um, so like, <laughs> Lex was not in the way that Zod was. Zod was like bio-engineered to be great at what he does. That's true. So this whole time, so the fact so that he, he isn't is embarrassing. Yeah, so it's like an extra hit against him because he was bred in embryonic stages yeah, and born to be an insane tactical. He didn't general. train on a farm. He didn't know. Yeah, Lex Luthor <laughs> probably doesn't even know what a farm is. I uh, I'm gonna say Zod's writing is slightly worse, but he's more entertaining to watch. Go for it. I. Uh, fuck, man. This, this is what it's all been for this whole arc, is just deciding between awful, and it's really hard. Staggering um, awful. You know what? I think I might have... I... Yeah, I think I might have come around chat. Uh, I, think, I think I'm going to go with Lex very narrowly. But yeah, I'll go with Lex. All right, right. I'm gonna go with. Oh, sorry. Maybe he's not there. Rag Rooney. <laughs> yeah. Rags. Um. You... Oh. oh, there you go. <laughs> I am going to say that Zod is worse, 
but le- but he's more entertaining. Mm-hmm. But I think that Zod is worse. We know his motivations, and with his history and who he is, he has less like excuse. That kind of hurts him doubly so. Southpaw. I'm going to say that Lex is worse, just because I think that his motivation uh, for hating Superman is a lot dumber than Zod's motivation. He's just edgy Reddit atheist, basically. It's a lot weaker than Zod wanting to um, preserve Krypton's future. That at least makes some sense, even if the actions that Zod takes to secure that don't make any sense. But we're dealing with Lex's actions don't make any sense either. So, yeah. Which means Theo's the tiebreaker. Do it, Theo. Ah. Just, just, just before you decide, just ask yourself if you ever want to be on this show again. But no pressure. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was going to say mm-hmm. I didn't even know that Theo's heard all of the arguments. So get it for Zod. have you seen our coverage of the Zod stuff? Because oof, not but, much. At the same time, I've seen a lot. But Lex is pretty bad too. So yeah. I remember being viscerally unentertained by Zod when I saw Man of Steel. A million years ago. Thea, the only wrong answer is to abstain. You just gotta pick a side. <laughs> I could abstain. I don't know. I feel like I feel like if you if you don't funny. think yeah, if you don't have enough information, you can abstain. No. Uh based we on can leave it at a tie. It'll be EFAP Civil War, except I don't give a shit either way. <laughs> so it's a <laughs> crappy civil war. <laughs> it's like if I if I if an angel descended from heaven and told me actually Lex really is the worst, I'd be like all right. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> like we, we, it's EFAP Civil War. We meet at the airport and, like, you know, both sides are just facing up against each other. Like, eh, yeah, there's whatever. not really whatever. charging it. <laughs> yeah. you guys, you guys, we, I can, during the I fight, we constantly forget which side we're on. <laughs> like, we care, we care so little. We're like, wait, which side am I on? And everyone's confused. No, it's, 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 it's just like every. Wait, was I on every... the Zod or the Lex side? <laughs> every. Every day in in the Civil War, it's like the uh, the Christmas in the trenches in World War One. We just come together, and we set aside our differences, both so but however small they may be. Well, Theo, uh, I'm probably going to go with Lex on account of him being. It it seems like he's so fundamentally broken from the very first moment of conception. As opposed fair to enough. I think that's God. totally fair, yeah. I think sure. Well, like, of course I, know, I agree with you. <laughs> like yeah. at the very moment they started coming up with this Lex character, they were already fumbling over themselves and tripping everywhere, spilling pocket spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is a fucking amazing meme. Whoever made this, God bless you. <laughs> oh shit. That, this is so uh, good. <laughs> that would be Jolson. That's a W-T-T-M. great meme. <laughs> that's a me joke and I get it so much and it warms my soul and it waters my crops and I appreciate it <laughs> um, it's good that he did explain where he actually trained because Zod wouldn't have known otherwise yeah. yeah, the Jolly Ranch. I fucking love that so much. That's I, so can, I can tell. I can't even laugh at it because I like it so much in a weird kind of way. <laughs> you just kind of want to. It's like yeah, that's just like you just want to say how funny it is. Or... It's just so good. Could have been an exchange for it. power, or it could have been some nihilistic desire to destroy the world in impotent rage. Uh, but whatever the, the case, he game. made a deal with these aliens to help him take over the world. The bells. He t- helped him take them. over the world. Wait, what he, does Lex get out of it? He made a deal yeah, to take over the world. What? When was that? But in I the thought movie? Lex didn't want power. That is not in either movie. That's not in the fucking movie. You can't like. Yeah. And a deal is like you get something, I get something. So what yeah. does Lex get? What do you get? You get death. <laughs> I thought Seems he was implying like that deal. he's made a deal to gain power over the world. But I thought he didn't want. No. Oh. And I would also wonder what he gave in return. Like at that point, it's like I yeah. get to be king of Earth. You get, uh, I don't know. I have like I know, Jolly Ranch. Mars. <laughs> Mars is really nice this time of year. All yeah. right. And they've heard. explicitly shown, but heavily alluded to in Luther's final scene. He's hungry. 
He's found us. And he's don't, coming! Don't play the scene. Don't fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> he's found then they us play it up he's to be hungry. spooky. And then we see him and we're like, oh. And he's coming. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, he's found us. He's hungry. He's coming. It doesn't sound like he's made a deal he likes. He sounds deranged. And, he like, sounds upset. really upset yeah. about this deal. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's like, oh, fuck. I fucked up. <laughs> and they actually show it happening in the extended cut of the film. I don't But yeah. again- Wait, what do you mean they show it happening? Oh. What are they showing happening? They, don't yeah. show it. they just show a weird Steppenwolf hologram. They don't show the deal. What is this- Also, <sighs> once they get Superman in Justice League, Steppenwolf is super easy to kill. I feel like Doomsday yeah. is actually a bigger threat. <laughs> yeah. Doomsday yeah. Was a bigger threat. Doomsday was a way bigger threat than Steppenwolf was. Steppenwolf had no got his chance. Ass kicks. Yeah. Dude, Steppenwolf was killed. I mean, by that his might own change in Justice League. But, I mean, the Zack Snyder cut, but still. How many bad guys can say, "I'm so shit, my minions killed me"? <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, oh that's true. Scar, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Scar. <laughs> well, yeah. But Scar was never about strength. Yeah, he was never. Oh, yeah, that's, exactly. that's the context. Yeah, there. yeah, like, he was explicitly upset that you know he didn't get the the strong genes. He got the brain genes. <laughs> he got killed by his minions because he got spooked. By his also, I I would be more afraid of hyenas <laughs> than parademons. Like if yeah, I was I, a, if I was Steppenwolf, I I I don't know. I I don't feel like the parademons could kill him. But I guess they do, so never mind. Well, he, yeah. doesn't he, like, teleport away? We don't know. And his helmet... Yeah, I mean, they, they go all, into the yeah, portal. Who, guess, does once, he decide well, once, when the portals happen? Once he... I think so. And once he portals away, away from Superman, he'll, he won't be afraid anymore. And he'll be like... Rrr, they all go with me. him in the portal. Well, yeah, well, he won't know, be afraid, I'm though. Guessing. He'll be away from Superman, so they won't eat him anymore, because he, he won't be afraid. But now he's stupid. now his fear is of the parademon. Yeah, what if you're afraid of a parademon? That's a horrible loop to be caught in. What if you as a parademon? <laughs> no, imagine being afraid of a parademon. Or like... afraid of yourself. Yeah. Or what if you're just afraid of life in general? <laughs> like, you know, you're afraid of death and like what it might mean for you and whether there's an afterlife. You start eating yourself. Any... Yeah, and now you know because you're dead. You need to see that to figure out what's going on. You clearly need... And that's no, just you, about all yeah. the arguments people make against the movie that are... No. ...are more than just a personal uh, dislike for Zack Snyder. Not even a fraction. Oh, so there not is a even a fraction game. of them. There is a difference. Oh. oh. No. Whoops. No. No, it's always no. just pistol preference. Oh, I hope I could wow. answer them all to people's satisfaction, and I hope people nope. give the film another no. shot and watch... No. Don't. No, I will never watch... How you watch this nine times is... it, And it's a testament to your own insanity. <laughs> Watch it again with all these points in mind. Maybe you might even start to like the movie, and if not, nah, maybe no, you can at least likely. appreciate. Not likely. Nope. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. While it is logically not impossible, I highly doubt that I will begin to start liking this movie because of your video. What Zack Snyder was trying to do, because isn't a bold and original but failed attempt oh, way more interesting than you... a shallow, safe no. pandering? Huh? No, Justice League was nope. better. <laughs> No, Justice, Justice League, League was, was better. better. Yeah. Justice League was and legitimately better and more right, entertaining. By the way, guys, that's, the hot take may well be that Justice League is the best one. Um, that we've oh, seen shit, you're right. Yeah, I don't, I don't well, think we've broken that out. Well, so, well, I, I don't even... I'm not cats sure out of the bag one. now. <laughs> well, wait, so when we recorded Justice League, it was concluded really quickly that Wonder Woman and BVS are better than it, and I didn't bring it up at the time, because I was just like, maybe I need to think on it. But I don't think... Justice League is beaten out by BVS anymore, and I also right, which means... uh, I think that it possibly may beat Wonder Woman uh, in terms of structure. Yeah, so Justice League. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah I, I'm skeptical, I could but it. I could be convinced. Yeah, yeah I don't want to call it. it yet. We'll do a Justice League EFAP. We'll talk more about it. I'll go over more of it. There's probably more wrong with it than um, we've seen just from yeah, the EFAP movies. Yeah. But uh, they're, so, all, they're like, all trash, so whatever. Why are we here, Eddie? Why are we here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the thing. I was about to say, I'm kind of known for my rather strong positions I take on things, sometimes just for pure arbitrary entertainment. But I I don't give a shit at all which one of these is worse. I could totally be convinced and swayed, and these yeah. are super tentative positions. Hang on, hang on. Uh, you got people saying, no, Shazam is. We haven't watched Shazam yet. It might be the best one. Yet. Shazam is not included yeah, in the list it, yet. It could very well be the best. Birds of Prey could very well be the best. Aquaman could, no. No, <laughs> no Aquaman, there's no Aquaman way. is non-functional. No yeah. It's gonna be fun, though. 
Um, but yeah, Justice League was, like, when you really take it apart, yes, it sucks, but, like, when you talk but... about BVS, Man of Steel, Wonder Woman 84 type of sucking, it's a whole new scale. It's like, whoa. We've entered into new realms. Like, the best of these movies are just, like, regular bad. Yeah. If that makes any sense. They're not, like, horrifically, catastrophically, mind-numbingly bad. They're just, like, a, you go to the movie theater and you're like, well, that was bad. And then you just move on with your life. Shazam is easily the best. You're going to be sad when we cover that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be easy, even if it gets it. So yeah, even if Shazam is the best one, it won't be because it's good. It's probably going to be no more than a five, I would imagine. No, I'm it's not going over a four. I was going to say four is probably the, the skill ceiling for well, that one. I guess I'm just being so charitable that like I feel like the, the highest we're going to get with this stupid universe is like a five. That I feel like that's as high as it's ever going to get. It's very charitable of you. Also, yeah, I, I know. I know. The, enthusiasm, it, uh, the uh, optimism. I mean, said, is, not... uh, is saying Justice League's better really a hot take? I think not only is it a hot take in general, it's a hot take in this community even, which is the community it's of the DCU take. sucks. I'm pretty sure that's a crazy it, hot take. It is a I don't understand take. it, why it is a hot take, Justice but I just, that's just, what I hear. It's that's considered, the thing. That's, it's odd. It's just it's considered god-awful, Justice League, like just for Everybody all of the it, reasons. Yeah. And the, uh, what I think adds to it is that the normal people who just dislike the movies are like, it's bad. And then the Snyder fans are like, yeah, it's really bad. So it's like double points. There's no defense squad. Oh, man. It. So they do think movies can be bad. Oh, huh. yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can we please finish this video? Yes, we can. Focus, yeah, I'm so dumb ultimately this. inconsequential, failed attempt. That is, if you didn't stop I watching know. after two minutes or spend the whole time seething at me for daring to try to find something to enjoy about a thing you don't oh, like. Salty. Oh, he's upset. He's upset. Man, I wish we saw this before the debate. I wish we saw this before the debate. Yeah. <laughs> he is upset. God, this is like the stocks guy. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, you don't watch it before talking this, to them, and then this, you watch the thing. This has been a roller coaster. What a, what an episode, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I feel like we've gone on a such horrific a thing. adventure. Just so contrarian. Oh, it's so contrary. Oh, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> I have to write a review. I have to write a comment about this. Oh my God. Well, that was embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, this image here encapsulates how I feel about that last 15 seconds. He certainly got us. <laughs> and that's the wrong <laughs> Classic Wojak right there. Yeah. Awful video. I don't want to talk about Batman v Superman ever again. There, there are. Agreed. Well, we've got we've agreed, got an offline agreed, agreed. EFAP to do. Yeah, there's uh, a chance we still have to do one sorry. more. Sorry. Oh, do we? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we, and then we've wait. got to talk about oh, God. Justice League. I'm so, no, Suicide Squad. Arc. Look, I know, Justice League. I know you're this totally done with end. the BBS arc, but you know, people, they, the the fans <laughs> haven't even seen our EFAP movies of it yet. You know, they catch it up. And then we've Come also on. got. Aquaman and Shazam versus Prey. I just want it to be and over. It's the Snyder Cut. It's never going to be over. Because I mean, no. we're, we're, we're still doing this even as they release new DCEU movies. We've got the Suicide Squad to do later this year. Hey, that, Hopefully that, that one's good. good. Hopefully that one's good, yeah. <laughs> I hope it's it's good. really impressive how bad the DCEU is. Yep. Yeah. Like, have to it's try. All right. It's, it's ambitiously bad. It's so bad, it's defenders argue, hey... It's that's the point of the scene, though. Hey, it's not that long. <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Yeah. Hey, you're just looking for things long. to not like. Hey, you don't feel what you feel. He's not as a genius, okay? You just and, don't in appreciate a certain his sense genius. He is, yeah. In a certain sense, he is. He's managed to convince so many people that he's really smart. Yeah, that takes uh, some kind of skill of a kind. Yeah. It was stylistically designed to be that way. Oh, I yeah. agree. So. Well, Stonklistically. Apparently the veneer of intelligence is a good substitute for, you know... For intelli actual intelligence. intelligence. Yeah. Um, I believe well, it. I'm, I'm, just... I'm afraid I am too sleepy now to be able to reasonably uh, give good responses to read out Super Chats, so I think that this might be one of the ones we, we, we get to, we haven't in a while, that I'm going to add them to our overflow. Which, by the way, we were getting pretty close right. to finishing. But I was thinking... 
recording that offline one, uh, maybe we can respond to as many as we can in that, you know? So it's a, it's a level sure. out a little yeah. bit. Um, because yeah, I don't know. I think it was. I think it was the debate portion. Like, um, it, yeah, it tired me out. Yeah, that really sapped our energy. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Very demoralizing. <laughs> it was. It was a little. And I don't know. I guess I expected better. <laughs> like, Dude. I don't know. I expected more sincere conviction. So yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. You know? Yeah, that was very depressing. It was very disappointing. Frustrating. Yeah. All of the I would have much preferred someone who actually looked all these things sincerely and by all of them, and I then we could actually discuss. I the honestly points. thought when he was like, I, "You can be a person who's like, I like this and I don't like this," but when you say it's bad because of these reasons and they're provable references, I take issue with it. It's like, oh my god, this guy. He's, finally, he's, yeah. yes. And then he's like, oh, "Well, yeah. I don't really care about that." It's like, what? What do you know? <laughs> you, you no, st- but you let us on. No, why? All, you let us like, on. All that I have to say is that there are no words in the tongues of men, elves, orcs, dwarves, or any Xeno species that can describe what a horrific experience that video was, and and that debate too. It was like a package of. I mean, I um, thought it was kind of fun in a in a good, like a popcorn eating yeah, sort well, of way. So <laughs> good one thing fucking I, God, though. One point of compliment, <laughs> and I think I said this when we first covered him. I like the video's formatting because. It primes you for subjects, and it gives you a portion of time to get your position ready before he gives his defenses, so you can make sure that the appropriate information is available. So if he's like, oh, criticism, blah, 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 then you're like, oh, so he's referring to this, this is what happened, this is why it's broken, let's see what his defense is, as opposed to, like, jumping around at random points and having to do it. And it was easy on the eyes, he actually put visuals in. You know, like I I know this sounds retarded, mm. but like he he's like this is like better effort than a lot of people tend to put into their videos. It's just that's really true. Bad that's true. It was a lot of effort for something he didn't he's really a... care about. <laughs> the editing, <laughs> the editing and presentation, the editing and presentation at least were fine. I'll I'll, I'll say that much. Makes you think about it, doesn't it? Makes yeah. you big think. You put some big, big that's a big thunk. Really, that's a big old <laughs> thunk. Imagine a video twice or three times as long as this with equally shitty arguments but worse presentation. Wouldn't that suck? That would yeah, be that terrible. Be awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be a great video. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I, f- I feel Good like times. that's probably it for Twin Perfect coverage, especially at the point of knowing like, he doesn't give a fuck. It's like, oh... Uh, yeah. Like mm. I said, anybody who's That's too bad. um a fan of his work, I got to imagine that was annoying to hear, you know? Like you'd be like, Probably, "Oh, what? Yeah, that he doesn't give a shit." Yeah, like it has <laughs> to be something that makes you just go like, "Oh, no, nah, I thought, oh, okay." Um and I don't know if it was because he didn't want to do the other argument. If he said he did care, he would have to start accounting for all of the counters, right? But if he says he doesn't, yeah. then you can avoid all of it. That's the only thing I could assume might be the other option. But who knows? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I've, got a, I've got a wave of tiredness from that experience. It was eight hours, so, you know, it's mm. not like a short So trap. don't get greedy, guys, all right? <laughs> we, well, sap it. We're not your dancing monkeys, all right? Yeah, racism. <laughs> um, they, so the way this will work, right? What day is it right now? I forget. It, it is. is... Oh, well, yeah, Sunday for me. I don't know about you. So yeah, Saturday for me for another what two and, and a half hours or so. Minutes. So Monday, oh, we got we got things to do Monday and Tuesday. I'll probably drop an EFAP mm. gaming on Monday. Wednesday, hopefully, will be EFAP movies, Man of Steel, sorry, BVS, and then Friday I'll release this on Mula, and then Saturday we'll be streaming EFAP and so on <laughs> as i figure out exactly how to release all of this in a reasonable manner at some point we'll be recording the offline bvs and then um after the next efap is probably going to be not snyder arc there will be snyder arc again because we're running low on time we're trying to catch up to uh to the snyder cuts continuity we're almost th- well technically speaking we are there right because all you needed to do necessarily uh, was we are BVS. yeah we don't Suicide need to squad. watch anymore we don't technically yeah, I, need to watch anymore yeah, yeah i think oh it's, right our doctors they our doctors recommended that we are only allowed per month to watch so many hours of Zack snyder films <laughs> so well we're kind of I mean, we're, we're not trying to overdo it 
Technically, uh, Zack Snyder didn't do Aquaman or Shazam or Birds of Prey, so I think that we're clear to but cover those. Oh, we might yeah. Right. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's in continuity. We are we are up to date. Like we've seen all of the material that we need to see to uh to to be. You know, this was his original vision. This was how it was meant to come out in 2017. For real, definitely. So we've seen all the content we need to see. I just yeah. Right, yeah. right down to the Joker's we live in a society line. That's right. Isn't that right, Batman? Um I love being in a Hunka Hunka. Hunka Hunka. Um like I said, when we record it, I'll try and do the super chats from this stream in it. We'll get as many as we can done. We've got uh next Friday is the Dark Souls 1 race between myself, Fortier, and Metal. If Rags is available for that, we will do uh, as many catch-ups as we can as well, because that's going to be a long stream, trying to beat all of the all right, Dark well, Souls 1 when bosses. You, when are you thinking of doing it? Friday, EFAP time, probably. Yeah, that'll, yeah, I'll be around you. So, yeah, you got that, then you got another stream after that, you got the release of this one, the release of the EFAP movie, the, oof, being, a, being subscribed to Moolah, oh, videos, videos everywhere. It's a bumper crop this year. Yeah. But when is Batwoman? That means that there is a lot. I don't know when the next Batwoman will be coming out. That's what, when I said, like, I have no idea. I'm not sure about that one. Um, but as Ooh. soon as it's available, it shall arrive on your screens. Because uh, we got to record another one of them, too. Fun ahead. But, um, yeah, I guess we should do some, uh, some, some things of everybody talking about what they're up to in their respective... Journey's online, I suppose. Do you want to go from the left? Makes the most sense. Makes sense to me. That's you, Capital. <laughs> Wait, sorry, what? Um, you, I got distracted. What are, you, what are you working on? What you up to? Oh, shit. Um, I am uh, working on Devs Episode 4. It's really bad. Devs? Oh, you are doing Devs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Devs, devs is more four. shit. It is absolute horseshit, and it's a lot of fun to. Devs is, I imagine that is fun to cover because it's so bad. Um, oh. Just uh, out of curiosity, do you think that the protagonist of Devs is the dumbest protagonist you've ever seen in a show? It might be. She's awful. Maybe she's she, she her. She has this plan to like convince everyone she's schizophrenic when she because she thinks that'll go really well for her, and it totally backfires. And it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's great. So, yeah, it's great. go check out. You don't have to have seen devs to enjoy us shitting on it. It's a good time. Go check that out. I can't believe it. It was a really bad show. I'm glad I saw it so that I know the context of you shitting on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, how, so you, um, all right, yeah, I need to go check those out. I didn't know. I would love to hear someone shitting on devs because it was, because when Mahler and I, we watched them, we were just like, Ugh, oh, fuck. On Jay's <laughs> recommendation. Oh, oh, my goodness gracious, yeah, Jay. Fucker. Oh, fucker. <laughs> he did apologize for recommending that to you, though. He should so. apologize. I think Jay <laughs> has watched oh, devs, but he has not watched Lord of the Rings. I know. I know. <laughs> that is a true statement. What a thing. Oh. Hunka, hunka. All right, Fringy, you're up. Uh, Crash 4 video is getting there. It's soon. Um, also, I'm working on Fringy Comic. That's soon. Uh, streams fairly regularly. Um, and that's it. Um, I guess we jump over to South Ball. Well, uh, working on multiple projects at once, a couple of uh, fresh hot takes that I've got brewing. I won't say what they are. I'm going to keep that on on the DL. Um, but I'm also working on my Last of Us 2 video. It's a very long script. I've got over 100 pages written down. It's uh, it's going to be a, a chonker. Um, yeah, but progress has unfortunately been slow between work and having to help raise a puppy at home. So don't have a whole lot of free time lately. All right. Well, fun stuff ahead then. Fun stuff ahead. Um, I don't know which video you want to promote here, Theo. Probably the, probably the, <laughs> the series on The Simpsons. Plato's Republic. Yeah, that one. Yeah, <laughs> series on Republic. Plato's Republic in The Simpsons <laughs> and how it relates to <laughs> Batman. Well, yeah, that one. 
working on a critique of Devil May Cry 5 between uni work and stuff and trying to keep motivation after the script died a few months back. Uh, but working on it. Mm-hmm. Stay away until then. <laughs> Alright. Cool. The, the second you do drop a video, we'll be like, guys, remember the Theo one? Yeah. You made a video. <laughs> like, oh my god. It's working! I don't know if it's uh, myself, I am I am trucking along with the boys, and I imagine Rags is trucking along with Mando. Mando? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the script is just about done, and it has been a wild ride. Going Every time, I, I get the thing that Mahler does now, where you go through and you look at it, and you're like, eh, I'll change that. Change that. It may be cool to take this away, but yeah, and we'll add this little bit, and then and, maybe and then people will be like, "Yeah, I didn't like wow, the delivery of that one." We'll go ahead. You're not making anything, and you're like, "I'm trying to make it really good." You fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, I suppose. That Don't worry. Mo- not all my projects will be. This is the biggest thing I've ever done in terms channel wise, um, mm. and I, I'm not too keen on doing it often, but uh, it's it's a nice project to do. I want to take a poop on this show just so I get to be that person, that meanie on the internet. That one guy <laughs> who doesn't fall in line. I'll Man, be right weird. there behind you, Rags. Yep. Man, that was bad. Hey guys, do you remember really when The Boy bad. Season 2 was considered like pretty good and it was a hot take to say it was shit? Remember that? Fucking oh, hilarious. Those, those days died oh, quick. <laughs> um, so there's only Season 1, Rags? Oh, originally it was. It's only the first four episodes. It's done when it's done. I might have, I might have overdone it. I might have just lost all sanity and reason. The show's really bad. There's lots to talk about though, so it's fun. It's fun. It's great. Have a good oh. time. We have fun here on EFAB. It's great. And and I guess I, I should mention, uh, in the past, I I wasn't really good at making videos, but uh, the last December, I I made a a pretty decent one. I oh. think uh, my 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 best one yet, I'd say. I made a video on Spider-Man 2. Um, uh, you may have heard about it here and there, but if you haven't watched it yet, give it a watch. It might change you your mind. It's some good rat, all right? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I, I think it's a good don't video. Don't know about it. Convinced here is me. Lank. Uh, Spooderman 2 is awesome, and here's why. That's what the video is called. Check it out. That... that <laughs> That video is representative of the quality content or the quality of the content that I'm going to be producing uh, from this point forward. I'm putting an equal amount of effort into every video that I make, as I did with that one. It took me about a month and a half between writing, recording, editing, as well as uh, filtering all of my arguments through tons of people that disagreed with me to see that they held up. So. Mm. Well, me personally, I've decided to stop putting effort into my videos, and everything I do for will be a five-minute quick whatever movie came out this week. So stay yeah. tuned for more of that. Exciting. I, you know what? I'm that gonna, efficient. I'm going to check out you both. This is a good little, like, you get some of one thing and some of another, you know? That's, that's Best good. of both worlds. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that about does expect it, expect a lot say. of clickbait titles. Uh, we will catch you all on the next thing that happens on whatever channel you're watching. So see you there, whether live or from the past. Dead. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um. Is it, okay, bye. Bye, uh-huh. everyone. Thanks for bye. out with us. Thanks for sticking it through. Y'all are troopers. Yeah. Damn straight, yeah. S- super pooper troopers. I didn't even hit end yet. I just, you know, it was just... Oh my god. Well, yeah. Twin Perfect had his chance. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell, that joke is never gonna die. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks for That joke's out, neck everybody. will never be snapped? No, Is that won't. what you're saying? Yes, that is, that is what I'm saying. <laughs> thanks for hanging out. Thanks for donating. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye again, everyone. <laughs>